I wasn't all live, all that gold. All, all of that <laughs> gold was missed. All Is this gone. gonna be unlisted gang only? This this opening few like twenty seconds, yes. Only the re-upload gang will hear this. All of that pure gold, all those nuggets. People are gonna miss all of those shiny nuggets. All those truth bombs you were dropping earlier. Yeah, about the <laughs> Well the about, well, oh, the blacks and the Jews, but <laughs> not in the way that people would you know it's... the internet just isn't ready, Rags, okay? Not ready. Just, we have to make right, them ready. I guess okay? make to live them our principles. Sounds we have so to we have to get God. slowly. We gotta work our way to mm -hmm. just missed a teachable moment. Very yes. sad. So we have to What's get... the opposite of a teachable moment? Dying. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I think yeah. for other people well, for other people maybe, but for you, no. Like you have to learn. Well, teachable moment is for other people, isn't it? That's degree. like what doesn't kill you make you stronger. Except I don't know how much I believe that. What does kill you kills you. Like what yeah. if you step on a landmine? Um, like well, that might not kill you, again. but it's not going to make you stronger. It's not going to make you. Yeah, you're not going to step on one again. That's correct. <laughs> well, you'll nope. think twice next time, <laughs> so you're stronger in your mind. Totally makes sense. <laughs> but what if you get robot legs? Well, it depends oh. on yeah how much. The da how far the damage goes up, that's really the problem there. Well, that's... Robot legs are good, as long as you have something else working. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. What doesn't give you robot body parts makes you weaker. Well, I mean, it's pretty cool. We just cracked that. We've actually created a new saying now that I think everyone should adopt. Mm -hmm. So, nice, nice job, Rex. Um, oh, thanks. Yeah, you know, we'll 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 just chat about some stuff. Well, some people here and there maybe drop in, you know, as they do, because we only just went public. Um, got recent events, recent events. What has happened that we could possibly talk about? Um, nothing. Much. Snyder uh, cut. I assume, you I assume you invited me and Adam here to talk about the impeachment trial for four hours, right? Oh, definitely. That was like the specific thing. There was this like comics are lame and for kids, so who cares? <laughs> and and superheroes are even more for kids. That's right. Matt Mola, yes. tell Adam and Sish to go on EFAB. All right. <laughs> are they so desperate they're impeaching someone who isn't the president? Why not? You know? Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking, mm -hmm. what if they impeach us one day for shitting on... Uh, I hope I get impeached. So. EFAB gets impeached. Nothing will change, but well, I'll just get impeached, I guess. What does it mean to be impeached from EFAB? Does it prevent you from responding to videos online? <laughs> like, no. It sounds like, like <laughs> it sounds like a that sounds like a Floridian festival. You getting impeached? Floridian? Hmm. I'm not following that one. You, you lost me. Yeah, on like Florida, the peach what? place. There's That's a lot Georgia. Of in That's Florida. Georgia. 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 Same fucking thing. <laughs> name three. <laughs> name three. Name three differences between Georgia and Florida. Uh, alligators. Florida, right. just man. Got alligators. Florida man. Florida man. Florida man. Yeah. Georgia doesn't have alligators. They have peaches. To have have all the peaches are eaten by alligators in Florida. Flor <laughs> the Floridian the Floridian alligators are carnivorous, but uh -huh. the Georgian <laughs> alligators are omnivorous. I see. I see. They eat peaches and man. <laughs> Fucking the Discord is like fucking up on me, and it randomly doesn't keep the cover on, so that's fun. <laughs> so let's just enjoy that for the day, everyone. It's just gonna randomly flicker for some reason. I don't know why it's doing that, but whatever. Um, we we'll probably the cover. probably awkwardly segue into it now because it was just flashed on screen. What have you been, you guys, been doing, Sitch and Adam? What's the thing? What's the big big news? What's what's going on? Introduce the thing. That's what I'm trying to say. Just go ahead. Adam, uh, sell our comic book. <laughs> tell him, tell him about the peaches. Yeah. Is Adam here? Did Adam disappear? Adam died. Oh no. Well, and I guess it's up to you, Sitch. Hey now! Me and Adam are working <laughs> on a comic book called Super Villains Anonymous. My god. It's an amazing story about a world taken over by supervillains, but they make everything boring. Oh, oh it's a fantasy name. world, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, it's very relevant to, uh, to the, the world today. And uh, me and Adam are like, no, we need to bring back chaos and disorder into the supervillain world. So you, you guys are like I annoyed. Thought that's in the how they line. operated was chaos and disorder. No, because basically the supervillains take over the world and then they realize that once you take over the world, you have to rule it. So they make everything sort of boring and lame. Like you have to get permits to rob banks and to commit acts of villainy. 
It's all oh, very they, they get bureaucratic. bureaucratic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wait. So you it's... guys are you fighting bad guys? Like the. Uh yes. Well, we're so so part of the plot is that we're in order to uh, rank up in the society, we decide that we have to fight heroes, but no heroes actually exist anymore. So we're going to pretend to be heroes to inspire other heroes so that we can then fight those heroes to rank ourselves up as supervillains. Hey, that sounds subversive. I'm playing the, the little trailer on mute, and I think it might give the wrong impression about the quality yeah. of the... the, <laughs> the, well, we show pan no, we show panels. That, you know, Don't worry, guys, there's panels. Actually, art panels. Sounds a we bit like Wanted. Wanted is awful. So, first of all, how dare you? <laughs> Uh, wanted I isn't like that wanted. the Angelina Jolie movie? Not the movie, the comic. <laughs> the comic is so like Edge Lord. Oh my god! It oh, is. yours uh, isn't. I like it. Hmm. Ours is super not Edge Lord. Okay. It's very serious. Is it like like Venture Bros? Ours is. Yeah, it's it's a comedy. Like it, it, yeah, Venture Bros. Venture would be Bros. Bad. is good. That I, that would be great. That's is it like an Cheers? That's a good sale to me. Cheers. It's like it's like Venture Bros meets One Punch Man. How about that? Oh, that's very good. It's nothing so like it was cheer. something really good, and then you had to make it an anime. Yeah, kids like the animes, Rags. I don't know if you know. Oh this. yeah, they do. You gotta, you gotta know who you're marketing to. Yeah, exactly. What are kids like? They like the animu? They do, they do. And so you're gonna have, um, you're gonna have anime stuff in there. You're gonna, be, be our, our audience pictures. likes anime. I'm pretty sure. Sell them on it. Go right ahead. The big yeah, we're putting a little chibi faces, the reaction cutaways. Ah. Japanese sound effects. Okay? Oh. You can't get better than that. Kind of we're fighting robot Hitler. Because that's oh how you God. know that we're on the right side of history here. First like issue, the real Hitler. First issue, we're like, robot Hitler, taking him out. You doing an origin story for robot Hitler? I need to know his motivations. You're starting off with robot Hitler, you're not going to build up to that? <laughs> Actually, we do We do explain why robot Hitler exists. You do? Because <laughs> in like video games and stuff, he was like the last level you worked your way up to yeah. robot Hitler. Mm -hmm. No, but that's part of the joke. Blow your robot Hitler load. Right Hi, off Adam. the bat. Oh, speaking, you know. Oh, hey, Adam. He got very upset we were mocking Robot Hitler. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you listen to the video, we explain the the logic and reason why we go after Robot I Hitler. D I do. I am aware of this. It's the idea of, like, you got to go for the most villainous person that has also been around within the last hundred years. And what was the like other requirement? Hasn't, hasn't... Like, Israel. You can't have yeah, big Israel, ones. Yeah, Israel, yeah. Israel? I often confused <laughs> Israel wow. with Israel, wow. but no. That is an ignorance of the pausing between two pieces of a word, Rags. So what you just said mm. was so mean. What I think is interesting is listening to two people try and explain fervently to an audience why we have to go after Hitler. Mm -hmm. That he he can't just be left to do his, his nefarious alone. business. Poor Hitler. Everyone like, shits no, no, on guys, Hitler. This is, Look, this is serious. What did Robot we Hitler have to go do? after him. Yeah. Okay, he just wanders Bye, around Adam. the city shouting anti-Semitic things at people. He's like a meme. He's, he's like a, a celebrity. Just leave him alone. Who's that over there? Oh, that's all crazy Hitler. All he lives Robot under the Hitler. bridge at 2nd and Main, and he's, he's, a little, <laughs> he's a little out there, but he really doesn't like those black Hebrew Israelites. That's actually the way he's portrayed in the comic, is everyone's like, oh, it's like, <laughs> it's a Hitler walking down the street being racist. He he used to, I mean, he used to be a big name back in the day, but, you know, he's kind of washed up. Hey, can you guys hear me now? Fine. Yeah. 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 No. Hey. We can hear you. Yeah. <laughs> we're uh, talking about Hitler. Yeah. Uh, great stuff. Continue. Yeah. As you were saying about Hitler. He's like, um, <laughs> he's like uh, Hannah Montana. He used to be a really big name. Everyone knew about Hannah Montana and Hitler. And years go by, and it's just like everyone, y'all remember Hitler? Because no one, no one ever, no one ever says you guys know Hitler. There was a you remember Hitler. Mm -hmm. His glory days have long since passed. Well, you know, it's like nowadays everything has to be a sequel or reboot because you have to pick what people know. I was about Hitler to say, too. don't you feel it's a bit iterative to bring back Hitler? Hasn't he already had his his main storyline done? <laughs> like, come on, everyone expects you to bring some new things to the table, but you're really doing a sequel to Hitler. It's some not a people, sequel, uh, okay? It's a reboot. Hitler it's true. robot Hitler. It's Hitler totally true. different. It's what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> it's a reimagining. Are you gonna? It's a, it's a, it's Hitler remastered. <laughs> are, are you gonna respect the director's cut? Are you gonna respect the source, or are you gonna fuck with the it? Hitler cut? Release the Hitler cut. Oh, is Hitler shot in actually, full by three? With the source, tremendously. I'm very. We are fucking with, but I did continually. I did actually uh, 
it was funny. I, I came up with a bunch of like racist quotes for him. And Adam's are like, wow, Sitch, these are really good racist quotes. <laughs> <laughs> you created and i was like no 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 no! i looked them up these are real <laughs> these are real oh yeah 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 i'm not well, i thought they were all you found some real hitler quotes. quotes that were racist oh, i surprisingly crazy. i know it's very hard to find and then you scroll book. through his tweets he just organized them from like <laughs> oldest to newest <laughs> I, I, started I, I googled his tweets. Uh, hitler hitler tweets my god it'd be so awesome if before, he had a twitter account before, uh, Yes. This is before Twitter banned Hitler. I want to know what Hitler thought of the sequel trilogy. That's we've always said this. It's so interesting. Oh I just think we need to know Hitler. If Hitler, uh, probably well, I guess that. not Hitler. I mean, Hitler's handlers of his cryogenically frozen <laughs> body. If he can, if if you can hook us up with Hitler, we would love to have him on the show to talk about Disney oh Star God. Wars. Someone in chat just suggested you should totally do this. Look through the worst quotes from Movie Bob and have him say some of them. <laughs> At some point, oh my god, that's Hitler would be like, Who's, would be a, awesome. Who's the hell is oh, this man? He oh, was very evil. I was gonna say, Hitler would be like, It's a bit far, isn't it? Some of these quotes seem out of character. This so vicious. <laughs> <laughs> I would pay Hitler, I'll pay you 10 Deutschmarks if you say that Movie Bob is not the Ubermensch. <laughs> Just so I have a sound clip of Bob it. in the comic. As his own Harry, super oh, what's that service oh. called Cameo? If Hitler had a Cameo, and it's like, I want you to oh, say... Oh, Hitler would make a great Cameo. And then you're like, cameo Hitler, for $50, credits, I want you Adolf to say... Hitler by plays himself. The Jewish people are fucking awesome. I want you to say that. And he's like, <laughs> mm, well. I cannot get into this character. I don't understand the motivation. Hitler on Fiverr. Hitler so anyway, on yeah. Fiverr? What? This, um, the reason we're talking so much about we Hitler... We should drop some quotes from other YouTubers. <laughs> what, that would be praise. great. No, no, ask the Hitler quotes. I was just oh. thinking, if we substituted <laughs> out some other... Like, you some should make it so he hates notorious DLJ. Notorious quotes. Yeah. yeah, is it movie Bob or is it Hitler? Here's the quote. We, did, we did a whole thing Bob, on that. Yeah. It was horrible. If someone made a quiz, and you have to try and tell the difference, it's really hard. Movie Bob isn't... Is, is, it would he's be good. Just, he's quite We'd the immortalize them. But anyway, since you're here, Adam, and you're not you're not flooping out of existence, sell the sell this thing to the audience. Why should they be interested? Well, it's amazing. Sitch and I made it. Obviously, it's a, it's a unique work of art that we are building on our own. Like, mm. so of course, of course, just just the fact that it's unique, and there's a lot of uh, a lot of. Uh, cultural stuff that we cram in here, but not heavy handedly, of course. It's, you know, it's like old school Star Trek where, you know, they are saying stuff about the world without actually coming out and saying it, without hitting you over the head. I, I like to think that it's kind of what. So like uh, the original series where Kirk gives yeah, the, aliens the, the Constitution? Original, the, the original series. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Where it's not heavy handed. Plus, you know, I think we have a lot of self awareness in this book, which I think is unique. Mm. Uh, a lot of times oh. you see in in comics where uh, people are uh, overtly self inserts. They are completely unaware of what's going on. We are completely aware. Like we uh, take the self insert thing to the next level, basically by making fun of ourselves as much as possible. So no Mary Sue's. A lot of a lot of yeah. This this is the thing you guys were talking about the Hitler thing, and I was like, I are we. Are we going to get in trouble if we fight Robot Hitler and Robot he Hitler actually the Hitler thing beat, beats us up? Well, you got the Hitler thing. I think it only makes well, sense uh, that you would have trouble defeating Robot Hitler. He's a tough enemy, you know? You got to make well, sure you're he, consistent. We, we definitely think he's not necessarily a tough... He turns out to be one tough cookie, let's mm -hmm. put it that way. So, but uh, yeah, no, it's it's a lot of action. We did a lot of uh, a lot of action. I started off saying, you know, strudel. we have to have uh, we have to have a lot of action in this book. We have to uh, we have to make fun of ourselves uh, judiciously. We have to obviously uh, touch on culture. The idea came uh, from an idea that I kind of had floating around, but Sitch definitely helped me develop it. I mean, he he did like a first draft that was pretty amazing. So yeah, no, it's a it's a great uh, it's a great story. It's a very topical for today. I mean, it takes place in a world where uh, the supervillains have basically won and enacted a totally uh, dystopian nightmare where everyone must do everything that they say, <laughs> regardless of whether or not. 
uh, it's it's moral or correct. So it's a it's a it's a fascinating story. I love it. I was uh, working on some pages yesterday and laughing my ass off it. There's a lot of jokes too. It's a it's a comedy wow. fest. So your own work, you, yeah. you're laughing with it, and you celebrate how amazing it is. Well, mo so most most of it most most of the jokes were in fact uh, Sitch's jokes that mm. I was laughing my ass off at. Yeah. So this is the good thing about working with a writing partner because yeah, it's you can sit and laugh at your own joke, but you don't know if it's really funny or not. But if somebody else is is sending you jokes and you're going, okay, well that's hilarious, then then you kind of have the uh, you kind of know that it's hilarious. So yes, laughing at your own jokes is not necessarily going to be good. Well, there you go. What's um, what else? What else we go? Is there any any comics that inspired you guys making this one? Mein Kampf. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Only the best. There isn't a graphic novel for that yet. Yeah, so there's one. Yet. There's one Someone comic. Yes, there's there's one comic that very much inspired us. What's that? Do you do you want to uh, One Punch Man? Ah, I love One Punch. Yeah, oh. One Punch Man is yeah. I basically showed Adam a bunch of One yes. Punch Man panels, and he just fell in love. He's like, "Oh my!" God. I totally fell in love. Yeah, One Punch Man is amazing. So there's definitely like a homage to One Punch Man going on in this. Mm. So yeah, yes, yeah, very much. I I love that comic. Sitch loves that comic. So and we're yes. trying to up the artwork so it's it matches that kind of. I mean, One Punch Man. The artwork is amazing. Go ahead, Sitch. I was saying, and there's going to be a, a magic special cameo in the <gasps> comic as well. It's going to be a comic Who's going to, what? Right? Someone's going to be in the book? Who's going to be in the book? I don't know. Who is, what? I have no idea who these cameos Someone could be. Someone special? Someone special? Movie Bob? <laughs> Someone <laughs> in addition movie. to Someone Movie in this Bob's call quote right now, as me and Adolf Hitler. Well, yes, we you know have... the Kool-Aid mascot is One Punch Man. Yeah, uh, Mahler. Mahler was nice enough to sign up for our draw-in tier, so he's actually going to be drawn in the book. Yes, there you go. Do we oh, have yeah. to run past you how we're going to draw you in the book? I mean, if we say we have a scene that's kind of like the scene from Pulp Fiction, I don't know if you remember the scene in the end of the movie. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> if we have, I was going to say if the we scene have a from scene Pulp that Fiction, takes place, like which one? <laughs> Are we are we allowed to put Adam I mean, wants to know if he's allowed to draw you getting raped? Um, <laughs> That's what I, said. I suppose you know a, I want you scene. guys to not be stifled creatively. But, do you oh, remember the scene artist. in Pulp Fiction? The rags. Where where movie Bob uh, owns the pawn shop? <laughs> what? <laughs> the, the only way I okay that is if it ends with me with a shotgun, right? I guess, or something. <laughs> do we, don't I don't know. Be a Bruce I, Willis character in that scene. I feel like out of respect for Mahler, we should give him like final say. That's another thing that's that's fascinating about doing a book that is self-insert because you you don't realize how how tr how problematic oh, I use the word. How, <gasps> what's the other word? For annoying. <laughs> how dangerous it is. Yeah, how annoying it is to do a a self-insert character when you're thinking, okay, well, we have to have we we have this great scene that's like the end of Pulp Fiction, but I don't necessarily want my character <laughs> being the one with with the ball gag. But you know, someone needs to be the one with the ball gag. I I thank you, Mahler, for volunteering. Have it. Well, you could have a BJ. Well, Jay. I'm guessing you, oh. you you have to do it with the cameos you've got, is it? Or uh... We don't have the ball gag scene, but don't we worry. Could, we'll we'll we make could. sure uh, you and Literature Devil, who also is going to be in the comic, or drawn to we'll, we'll yeah. have you guys like giant, buff, manly <laughs> men. You have like ten women on each arm. <laughs> well, it'll be it'll be super awesome to see what happens. I'm looking forward to giving it a read through. Um, yeah. So cool. We can I can I be hit with will... shoulder angels? <laughs> Both of them are angels. <laughs> Both of them are me. I'm I'm offering. Well, both we good assume and evil you will let us know if it's Hitler. any good. I mean, um, we're, we're, depending on how much I would not want to hurt your feelings, maybe I won't be honest with you. I'll be like, "Oh no, guys, it's great." Well, and that's you, the thing, though. You the way you can honest. tell maybe we should... is if I have nothing specific to tell you what's good about it. If I just go, "Great," maybe we should quote <laughs> Mahler a draft. <laughs> maybe. I like your you... I like your attitude though. I have the same attitude. Like if it's if it's not great, just you know, keep your mouth shut, right? Uh, that's totally me. I totally do that. I always shut up on things that are controversial to say about. That is that is me all over. But well, it depends. 
you're not exactly friends with Ryan Johnson. So, I mean, you can be honest. I don't necessarily know. Maybe I am. Maybe this was all a big ploy. And it's, it's I'm trying you, to think of how been, this You've been working for... <laughs> he, he's my great-great-uncle, or great-distant cousin-uncle, so I don't fucking know. And, and he was like, if I make a movie real bad, then you review it early. I can make you a YouTube career. And I was like, oh my god, thank you, Uncle Nephew Ryan Johnson. He's your this uncle is a nephew. great story. <laughs> uncle. This is going to be in the comic, right? <laughs> this yes. Storyline. Um, How Ma this is the Ma the Mahler origin story. Yeah, it all it all fits in now. It all makes sense. Uh, yeah, EFAP people in in the chat live right now and later when this is a vod of sorts. Um, there's a link in the description. You can see it right there. There's lots of lots of tiers, different options, different covers. As you can see, this is a uh, you're in for a ride. You got your superhero stuff. You guys like superheroes, don't you, chat? Be honest. People with powers doing things. What are you guys' powers? Adam has, like, laser eyes or something, right? Yeah, I'm the light, stitch of darkness. He has a shadow portal power. He has the shadow power, yeah. What, is the, what does that do? Which goes into no portals the whole good any, versus evil. I can create portals in any shadow that I see. Or my character. Excuse me, my character in the comic. <laughs> Oh I'm like, we need to come up with names for our characters that are not our names, so we stop projecting ourselves onto the comic. That's the toughest thing because you want, <laughs> you don't necessarily want your character to do anything dumb. So, well, my character does a lot of dumb shit, though. Yeah, my character is kind of from Social Justice Detective, my short uh, film, so it's not really as me as I, I think Sitch's character is. But your character is not you, Sitch, obviously. Of course not. You're I completely like different. Like, I do like the idea of like a floating robot rags telling Robot Hitler what to do. <laughs> like on each no, show. No, it'd just be me. Just I regular just, rags. Just He's like, just regular rags. Mm -hmm. rags could be the mustache. Oh, yeah, there you go. Got, got, a, Hitler's Hitler's mustache, mustache. got a reference Hitler's image, right? Hitler's yeah. mustache is basically... Hitler's mustache is kind of a character in the, in the, in the comic. Oh, does it talk? A, char a character of itself. Yes. Oh my god. It talks. Hitler's mustache is actually like a really good person. But everyone <laughs> oh, no. always refer everyone always refers to it as Hitler's mustache. Understandably, you know, the propaganda, you know, mm -hmm. now no one could wear that mustache. Which right. is which is a lot of Hitler's fault, a lot of, you know, our fault for, you know, but it is what being, it is. Yeah, being mustachist. There's always Good people in service of bad ones. Exactly. That Can't win the stash. <laughs> What's up, Gary? Oh yeah. Uh, have you guys met? Oh, I don't even know. I'm always really bad at that. Adam, this is Gary from Nerdrotic. Gary, this is Adam from Adam. <laughs> That's... Yeah, I. Uh... <laughs> from Adam and from the Adam and Sitch show. This is Adam uh, and Sitch yeah, and Adam the show. Adam and Stitch yeah. show. Sitch and wow. the Adam and Stitch show Snitch. exactly. Uh, yeah. No, I. I I uh, follow Gary's work. Yeah, I love hey. it. Nice to meet you. I think this is the first live stream we've been on together. So. I think it is, Adam, unless yeah, we were on an definitely. Ethan one randomly back in the day. But maybe, uh, nice maybe to meet so. you again. Yes. Uh, nice and to meet and you again. Yeah. Nice to meet you. I know we have <laughs> Yeah, and Stitch. We all, How dare you, Rags? They they run a Propagate podcast competing with EFAB for length now. I've seen you guys. Your numbers are climbing. I'm offended. We are along. Have we, have we passed you up? We're very close to you. We're very close uh, in um, show numbers too. I think. Oh, we're in numbers, like I think you've passed one twenty-five. Yeah. Oh. what are you at? Really, you're at one twenty-five. This is episode one twenty-five. <laughs> well, hey really? Now. Oh, yes. yeah. Oh my oh, goodness! My goodness. goodness. This is terrifying. Can we count this? Can we count this as our one twenty-six? Since technically, <laughs> just, just, and I are here. just take yeah, just download and upload the vault onto your channel. It's like, why does everything yeah. look different? It's like we're up. we're ahead of you now. <laughs> That's right. We're in front of EFAP. <laughs> Holy shit! What was it? We haven't even come close to your 24 hours, though. Oh, well, yeah. our, yeah, we I think it. we did 30, right, Rags? That was our... 30 yeah. hours? 30. I was on. I was there. Yeah, that for one was... For um, seven of those 30 hours. We were very dead by the end of that one. Yes. I don't even know how many videos we covered. I think it was like eight. <laughs> it wasn't that many, considering 30 hours. Of... <laughs> 30 hours. That sounds about right. Yeah, that's... <laughs> we're already halfway. Each one was five minutes. 25 is halfway Waller, to 50, start, which is the next anniversary one. Did you start hitting those kind of numbers, or did you start off uh, shorter? Like, 
an oh, hour, yeah. so two hours, three hours. This is the um, I can I can help you with a with a useful visual on efab.me, which has all of your efab needs for information and stats. But that is a record of how many hours we were have we we've been we were as we were going. And as you can see, they sort of were like fours, fives, Trending and sixes. Up. Can't you can see the two massive spikes where we were oh. drunk. <laughs> yeah. We were insane. Those are this the two is good. We need to get something drunk like on this. power. This is awesome. We well, already started off at four or five hours. So mm -hmm. the next was our first, first mistake. mistake. Four or five hours? I don't even remember. I think we started off around four or five because we did the Jordan Peterson debate, and we were like, "We're never going to get through this," but oh, of course right. we did it's get like, through it. Yeah. yeah, it's like an hour and a half video. I always picture like if you guys see a video, you're like, "Oh, it's a three hour one." I just be like, "How do you even possibly have, have you done like parts?" I'm assuming you have yes. before. Yeah, we did. Um, yeah, we've done multiple days. The Eric Weinstein Project Veritas one, we did multiple Hitler's days. Yeah, parts. we're going to be Georgia. doing <laughs> tomorrow. We're doing uh. We're doing the three and a half hour Vosh Destiny debate part two. So oh we're going to have boy. to split that up because that's no way we're going to finish that in one day. But there's so much good stuff in there. There's there so is. much craziness. Yeah. How come, how come you never invited us? What's that about? Hmm? Do you hate us? You know, Hitler bleeds. You're invited you're right now. We're inviting you. Wanna come, you wanna, well, this is a problem. Yeah. We're trying, like, I want to find a video that we could do with you that's not so overtly political. <laughs> On your but politics let's channel. Do <laughs> Baller, political, let's do impeachment. So yeah, I, well, yeah, I'd probably be, um, I don't know, we'll try, no, maybe kidding. we can find one that sort of lines up a little bit. I think we, once upon a time, we would like, do a Quentin one, <laughs> as long as it's something to do with Quentin, it's probably worthwhile. Yeah, that actually would be a good idea. He's a I funny mean, you, one. you can come on tomorrow if you want, you want to talk about Vosh and Destiny? Um, could do. Uh, you know what, we'll, we'll, we'll exchange some notes after okay. this stream, see if it'll work out, who knows, but the, um, yeah, yeah just to make sure everyone's going, you know, like, uh, they'd be doing... Their uh, their comic link in description. Check it out and and grab a copy if you want. Support it. It's pretty neat to have yeah. fellow creators creating some some core mix. Um, I hope it goes well. You play? You guys planning? I know. The, I I think I watched your video talking about this when you first released what? it. And it's like, stop talking about a sequel. We haven't even sold the first one yet. I was like, buddy, you guys thinking about doing a sequel? <laughs> it's like, yeah. But... Well, promise when I like. Sitch wants script. to do ten books. Yeah, oh. I'm like writing the script, and then oh Adam's God. like, this uh, is like 10 deck. scripts, Sitch. This isn't one script. And I'm like, oh. Deck -ology. Yeah, well, no. Deck no the, our, our book has a, a satisfying ending. It does, but we leave it open for a second book. So, And it's got a twist ending, which is I think people will like. So. Alrighty, well, Mahler's going to give it. Mahler's going to give it an excellent review. I ten can, out of ten. I can. I can say that right now. He's going to go. He's going to love this book. He's going to say. He's going to say. That, this is excellent. He's going to nominate us to write the next Star Wars movie. He's going to say these guys know yep. what's up. This is this is we we're, we're tired of this this woke. But don't trash you guys think that, that the Hollywood sequels is are better than the prequels? So why would we do that? <laughs> no, I think I oh, think Sitch, that. Sitch, didn't you? I thought you changed your position on that. I, I think you my did position, it on our show. First of all, to be clear, my position was that they were both equally awful. But I've actually have changed my position that the prequels are objectively better. Hey. Look, he came to the light. Yeah, all right. Hey, all right. high five, all right. Sitch. Yay. High five. We were working hard on the comic, and we were having a discussion about the prequels versus the sequels. And he, he said, "Adam, you know, I think Mahler is right about this situation." <laughs> That's what he happened. Said, yeah, we, <laughs> I was just listening to Mahler on a me. loop, and then the voice just crept into my mind and just took over my thoughts. And I was like, "Yes, maybe." maybe said, I've been wrong about, about super villains and the time. prequel sequel subject came up, and I don't know anymore. <laughs> Well, maybe when we little... started to get to the robot Hitler part, <clears throat> I was gonna say robot <laughs> yeah, Hitler's exactly. little angel rags may have you know jumped out of the page and onto your shoulder and was like, you know, the sequels really yeah. always just saying. But which one? <laughs> but which one said it? Was it the angel or the devil? Oh, it was, it was, it was both actually. It was a tie. Yeah, it was. Every, everyone knows <laughs> Satan and Jesus. They're both like yeah, I've joined like, forces or shit. The Star Wars sequels. The sequels came out and God looks at Satan and he's like, I want to look at me. I don't this. <laughs> um, we need yeah. to we need to come up with like the most obscene thing that we can uh, do for a page and show Mahler and go like, is this OK? Is this how, like for your insert? Just to is make this me okay? go like, guys. Yeah. <laughs> how about Muhammad giving Hitler? But that's really not life. part of really not part of the book or anything. <laughs> um. But I was gonna say because we don't have Gary as as long as we probably like to, so we're probably gonna jump into the video at this point. But yeah, 
Links, Let's do it. Links are available. It's a neat little project. Support it if you if you want to. And uh, like I said, who knows? Who knows what you'll see in this thing if you wanna if you wanna pick up a copy. Um, but yeah, today we are gathered. Also, I I, I forget. Gary, do you have any issue with uh with with watch together on your end? Hitler. Does it work? With <laughs> Yeah. I don't think so. I didn't last time. Alrighty. Well, what's, what's, oh, you'll want to jump it. in. It, 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 it's, it's so funny because sometimes I'm like, got to explain the format to like new guests, or whatever. I'm like, no, Adam and Sish, they do this. They do this all the time. They know exactly what's up. Yeah. yeah so you're this good. is a link. You click it. You know, so. Yeah. So like, how does this work? What? People are like, do I have to download look, something? I'm actually in with my account. <laughs> yeah. Look at this. We have so, our name. Sitch and I account. have. <laughs> Oh, losers. Who has accounts got on user watch PCB. together? Come on. I do. I have a named account. Well, I the don't. So I guess I'm the lame one. I don't. The problem is I don't remember how to sign in, but I do have one. <laughs> I think. Well, you have to sign in before you click the link. Otherwise, it doesn't work. So Okay, so because I don't know how to sign in, that doesn't help? <laughs> well, you Okay, so I, there's this amazing thing where you, you go to the website and you click I'm sign there. in. Where? And There's no sign-in in. button. On, on, no, the, the normal, like, the main part of Watch Together. Just the main to, like, part watch of Watch Together. together. Yeah, a little top left. Watch so together. if I click yeah. the logo? Yes. Oh, okay, so if you click the logo, it goes click through. Okay. an R-rated movie. The following video is a... It doesn't have an option at the top right, like every website ever. Okay, that's fair enough. We need to explain how links work. You click on the link. <laughs> No, 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 no. I got the link it's, brought me to link, the room. A link watch takes together you to another is very website. oddly designed okay. in that I cannot sign into my account through the other places. Well, you know what? There are these things called websites, okay? And this one is different from the rest, yes, which is why it's unusual. <laughs> Every website is unique. Every I've, website is special. What is this website thing? That sounds pretty cool. Especially this one. It's super unique. Is it like okay, a construction site made of There's web? There's this thing called the internet. Ah. Oh, this is the, and this um, doesn't match the rest of it. <laughs> this is the um. This is clearly a, 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 a strange place that Hitler made. Does anything on the internet really match anything on the internet? It's all a collection of nonsense in a good way. Um, is everybody? Are we all? Are we all in? The following video is about R-rated movies, and this. thus contains. Some R-rated material. So is this that is... like our trigger warning? Yeah, honestly, yeah. Because yeah. this is this is Patrick Willems. We haven't we haven't seen Patrick Willems in a while. Good to see him. Hope he's. It's hope not he's doing correct. I haven't they signed into Watch Together in so long. I watch Together one two three. <laughs> it's, it's okay. We won't shame you for not signing in anymore. I was, was going right, to say just, right. Just That's in the fine. final cut, just edit this part out. Oh, I will. Yeah, this is offline. <laughs> Send me instructions to reset my password. All right. Your email, if your email address oh exists God. in our, if I, if your email exists, exists in our database, then all right. Now I'm gonna go to my email. So I'm think sure. Look, that have the chat just. Give it's the not. Chat we your only login. do it because we're. Everyone can try to guess. We only your do path. it because it shows up on screen, but. Well, I guess so, well they can't see it showing up on screen. So yeah, there's, there's no benefit for the audience. But, well, they can see our little icons anyway. You know, it's all it's all good. Uh, this is the um Star Wars. You're not, is made you're not showing the video in the video. Hmm. hmm? I mean, they can see us in Discord, you know. This is the Star Wars is made for children, Space Wizards guy. Yes, that is the same guy. And of course, I was gonna say oh we could goodness. talk about um the, the like the video's title before doing the video, but I imagine the topic will come up anyway. It's called "What's the Point of R-rated Superheroes," and uh, it's gonna mm -hmm. relate to comics and movies and adaptations and stuff. Um, but of course, it'll be relevant because the Snyder Cut so you is can show R-rated things. The the Snyder Cut's gonna be R-rated, right? Sort sure. Of yeah, it looks like it. Are you guys super excited for the Snyder Cut? Well, <laughs> I think <laughs> you'll get different answers depending on who you're asking. Oh. Uh, I think Snyder's hilarious as a filmmaker. Oh, find... oh my goodness gracious, this is Patrick Willems. It's going to be dumb. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. So The following video is about already move. He has to put a fucking trigger warning for his fucking YouTube video. Well, there's blood. That's pretty relevant. Is it actually, really a trigger to... warning if it doesn't say it's a trigger warning? It literally has the word R rated in the title. Yeah, but he could have blurred it all out. He's... Remember when mm -hmm. remember when Cinema Winds blurred out? <laughs> oh, you guys know Joker, right? The movie? Um, yeah. Yes. yeah, that's so, uh, that's so, G rated, right? Cinema Winds. I think it was Cinema Winds. Was it Cinema Winds or Sin? Somebody we were covering wanted to blur the, the, the scene where 
Joker shoots Robert De Niro. Didn't they hmm. blur the blood splatter on the background? They, they didn't blurred, blur Robert oh De Niro's face getting shot. Yeah, <laughs> so they showed Robert De Niro getting shot in the head, and they blurred the blood splatter on the wall behind him. And that was all that they blurred <laughs> oh out. God. It was one of the most bizarre things ever. We laughed That's for hilarious. a long time. Oh, so it, that's hilarious. It to be hilarious. That had to be a joke. Yeah. No, it wasn't. We cover some dumb people. <laughs> you have to understand that. You don't understand. Like, it's, it's the, we've got a hall of fame on the EFAB. I mean, for like the craziest shit we've come across. Okay. It happens. Um, and who knows if we're going to add to it today? Oh, for uh, people have been saying it in chat and Discord and stuff that Cinematic Venom is working on a response to us. I thought he already had been. I thought that. He had been for a long time. Um, from what I know, he made a documentary on himself, and there was a brief portion about EFAP where they said EFAP are vicious and mean. It was like, okay. And oh, then, what video of his did you cover? Where he said Lord of the Rings trilogy was awful. What? <laughs> you should watch the episode. It is oh, a no. it is a roller coaster. That That's episode. That's not an opinion that's allowed to be had. He he said he the the Gimli highlight is he said that Gimli was out of character when he when he suggested that we they let Frodo die. <laughs> yeah yeah it's, you should be it's confused. It's a wild ride. <laughs> it's a wild ride. <laughs> um, yeah. So if he, apparently he's making something else, um, I, I don't know I don't know how that's gonna go. You know. Whatever we we gotta. Someone gotta said. Right along. Someone said. Mention the argument about Earth isn't habitable in Man of Steel. Oh, that was on Fringy's stream. Someone was annoyed at us for saying that um, uh, that they they decided to terraform Earth and not leave Krypton when they've got loads of worlds that are habitable, according according to Jor El in the beginning. And they mm -hmm. said yes, but that doesn't mean planets you can like habit because. In some ways, Mars is habitable. You just need to have a dome on it, and Earth isn't habitable because of a human can't survive in the woods necessarily. Well, Earth's got all those buildings already made, you know. Well, just move in. I'm pretty sure that's just not how we use the word <laughs> habitable in the first place. Like, because uh, at one point they said like you can't live in the Antarctic as a human, and it's like okay, first. Well, yes, that actually. rules out Earth. But also, there is life in the Antarctic. What? So, <laughs> the majority yeah. of Earth is water, and humans oh, yeah, can't live where, in water. That's where therefore... cryogenically frozen Hitler is. There's even life, <laughs> like getting close to the bottom of the Mariana Trench. Earth life is quite a bitch to kill sometimes, or at least um, right. it, it adapts. You know, it's, it can be a beast. Anyway, the topic we're on today is is what's the point of R-rated superheroes? I feel like we could answer that question before doing the video, but we'll probably just Im involve it as it, it did. goes. I think, uh, yeah, it's to show R-rated R-rated content. Um, so everyone well, like, thanks for showing up. We'll see you next episode. Yeah, like it would have been a blast. It's like a it's like a before Hitler. and after situation, right? Because like before it would have been most movies are just coming out, content wasn't. They're like, oh shit, this person shouldn't see this because they're too young. We should probably say that people over X age can't see this content because it's a bit too. There's things in it that could that could fuck with a kid's brain. That's probably where it all began. And then you, what? Uh, what? I'm sorry. The other set is like. You should tell people what's going to be in a thing in case they have personal issues with the thing so they can avoid it, right? And that's what, like, all... I forget what they're called, but when, when they say, like, there's drug abuse, there's strong language, there's sexual... You know, they, they have the stuff, Oh, so... you're talking oh, about the, um... On TV? They do it for games as well, right? I forget what the name is. Is it ESRB? Is that or my... So that's the organization that does them. Right. But I think content mm -hmm. warnings are a uh, thing. Yeah, um... So, not to be confused with trigger warnings. Right. Oh, I'm not, I'm not even... <laughs> I wasn't even going into that. I was just trying to talk about, like, how did it come about? Why do we use them? But it's like, yeah, just to tell you, to warn you what kind of stuff you're about to get. And then if someone said, so why even have them in the first place? It's like, well, because you can portray what is happening as it would happen rather than trying to avoid showing any of it or um, portraying any of it. And this applies not just to, like, gore and nudity, but also just heavy topics. Things that we don't necessarily like to talk about, or things we don't want to face, that sort of thing. Um, yes, and I'm a rated being R, a modern rated R is, you know, a PG from 20 years ago or 25 yeah, yeah. years ago, too. Right. It gets worse and worse. feels weird how, how much it's changed at this point. Um, and then, of course... There, like... there are scenes in RoboCop that, like, changed me as a kid, though. <laughs> like, oh my god! <laughs> Like it gave you RoboCop is body. famously rated R. 
Uh, well, no, R for not, Robocop. Well, that part wasn't. I'm talking about where the like the the waste, like the nuclear waste or chemical waste Guy or something. You remember car? that scene? Yeah, exactly. And he's like, yeah, melting he just as he's... he just he is like, oh no, I'm ugly and horrific. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> holy he shit! Hit, he gets hit by the car and he goes. <laughs> Does he, he does like, he like yeah. get by, Does he like explode when he gets hit by the car? As yeah, well? he yeah. does. Yeah, <laughs> I saw that. I was like, "Oh my word!" <laughs> you knew the movie was for yeah. you at that point. Yeah, I knew. I was like, "This is all about." Also, the it the robot that doesn't stand down and blows the guy away, blows him out the window. That scene is pretty yep horrifying. So, and then like, they wait, later, wait. Well, dude, when he's telling him to stop. Then yeah. they made a kid's cartoon and, and a toy line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Robo kindergarten exactly. cop. Yeah. Can you imagine <laughs> oh, getting the toy and not being be familiar made. with Robo Cop and like watching the movie and going, Oh shit, my Robo Cop never did that? Yeah, you'd probably be surprised. Especially with yeah, how that's all that's really interesting to think about how like you can make toys of any franchise, no matter who is for. The kids will just be like, "That's a cool, Robo Man with guns." Like, yeah, it's like, you don't want to yeah. know. Well, that's a... <laughs> it's just it's fine. <laughs> well, um, don't they have like a Warhammer for kids or something? Oh God! Well, that's the thing I I remember being super young when I was first thinking like Alien and Predator were fucking awesome. You know, and it's like, do you know what these things do in the movies? I'm like, yeah, I saw the movies. They were like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. Yep, so cool. Uh, Hello. I think Hello. I think Alien it's called Warhammer disturbing. Adventures. I <laughs> might be mistaken, but I think it's called Warhammer Adventures. Where That's it's like, that sounds wonderful. Yeah. Um, um, they have like Magic Treehouse books or something, but Warhammer. I don't know if that. Uh, they have, they have Magic School Bus, but Warhammer characters. Is that what you're saying? Magic School Bus, <laughs> but they go. Through, but there's the horrific journeys through the the awful. <laughs> awful places this just a horrific universe well yeah i think that's what yeah. this video is going to want to talk about most less so the creation of it on its own more so the transferal from things that were x and then they go to y in terms of age ratings because i was going to say the simple vision of getting to what's the point of r rated superhero movies would, or r rated superhero content would be all the reason we just established why r rated exists and then you add people with powers in these stories and then you've got what you just asked for right and it's like why wouldn't those exist what's wrong mm -hmm. with them and so perhaps yeah. We will be provided an argument. The following video is about R-rated movies and thus contains some R-rated material. It's also brought to you by Skillshare. Yay. Sign up at the link in the description for a free trial of a premium. <laughs> this is, this of, course it is. of course it is. Of course it is. Premium membership. Previously on Patrick H. Willems. This is Charles. Charles. Charles? I can't take any more of this, man. I'm I'm leaving. Hey guys. Chloe is going to be our new cast member. Where is this disgusting building? I don't know. What's this? I don't know what any of this is. Hopefully, hopefully it's over soon. Can you make that happen? Is this a joke? I think something very weird is going on. Okay. So at the beginning, it just seemed like some kind of delusion. Maybe in a moment of crisis, minutes? Patrick created a friend for himself. I'm hoping lots of it can be moved over quite quickly. You know, he looks like a really, like a really, like like an alternate universe, very young Lindy Beige. Huh. I'm not, I can't it remember what like he's been inside like. for a long time. Like in that movie, The Beaver, starring Mel Gibson. But I think it runs much deeper. I think that while Patrick was on that coat indoors. Movie, Maybe it's cold. Maybe the heating broke. He's uh, social distancing. Yeah. From his, from the air around him, so he's wearing a coat. Maybe he's in yeah. the abyss, you don't know. <laughs> a coat is true. like a mask be... for your body. Okay. It could be in a just an endless black void or a Patrick Willems video, whichever one is <laughs> distinction without a yeah, difference, yeah. right? <laughs> I know, is everyone's like, Oh, you're just being mean. It's like that's okay, we're past that. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't worry about it. It's, it's dark dark and stormy night. A coconut fell from a tree and just happened to land on the head of a serial killer. And in that moment, the killer's soul was transferred into the coconut. Man, we're doing great for EFAP this, ratio in terms yeah, of time me, and coverage. I was about to say, it makes you appreciate our hilarious memes. <laughs> I don't even know what this is. Maybe really if we were does. really big fans of Patrick Williams, we would get all of this. It would be great. We don't know the lore, okay? Yeah. The Patrick lore. Oh, I think this is the lore. This is explaining the oh. like the character. They, they hot glued some googly eyes to a coconut. Which, just I, I've describing watched one it other video of this. Actually is. 
I've watched one other video of this guy where he gushes on about the Matrix, which is an R-rated movie. I don't know if R I don't know if Matrix well, you gotta, is a yeah, we gotta wait movie, for though. his I'm I'm just that's what I'm in it for. I wanna get to the argument. So. This Passing by and he saw the car. Gotta, gotta put up with this part, you know. Coconut in the sand and he thought, hmm, let me get some of that sweet coconut milk. And he drank from the coconut, thereby transferring the soul into his own body. Wait. So does that mean there's a serial killer running around with the soul of a coconut? The ADR? Like Freaky Friday? Maybe. Because they would have sounded like ass with the microphones <laughs> trying to get through the mask, yeah. Why don't you just stand six feet away from each other and talk? It's too far. It'll look awkward. This movie would be way better if the coconut was the serial killer. Maybe uh -huh. it is. How do you know that's not going to be the reveal? This yeah. video would be better if a serial killer yeah. showed up. Oh, no. If the, if the body of the <laughs> serial killer went into the coconut hey, and Patrick the coconut isn't... was the killer. Patrick isn't here yet, right? So <laughs> there's some hope he might arrive and ask me to live who knows. Off the table right now. Look, all I know for sure is that Charles is alive and he is evil. Charles is just a silly merchandising ploy. No one gesticulates like this when they talk. It, well, it's, it's the whole like overacting you know? thing, right? Like where you're like, you need to act and then you forget how real people even. Yeah, <laughs> you do the weird arm motions mm -hmm. and everything like it's a video animate. game. Well, how else are like, you people don't talk? I have met Italians, real Italians, Italians whose only English they know is like swear words. And whenever they're late, they'll say, oh, I shall, I say that I take a big sheet and that will be their excuse, like real proper Italian. They don't even do this. I'm they disappointed. don't even do this. Don't like Minions or Jacob Tremblay. I myself have a Charl enamel pin. It's perfect for a lapel or even a backpack. They made We're me. just making YouTube videos. You don't have to make it all dark and gritty. Yeah? Jake, the next video is happening. And this time, we gotta make it dark and gritty. For over. Okay. He added get, something in there. Did you see getting, that little flicker? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was like a little devil or something. I don't know. Over 80 years, the superhero genre has dominated comic books. And in the 21st century, it's come to dominate film and TV as well. For most of those 80 years, the genre was primarily aimed at younger audiences. The film and TV adaptations usually existed in the- Just the way he dresses, look at this. It's, I, it's, if, it's a style, it's a style. He looks like I could, here, let me, let me save this. I bet I could probably take this and make a funny, like a, like a picture, let me see. What's the matter here. with turtlenecks? Okay. Well, it's not just the turtleneck. It's like the turtleneck no, where the what? the jacket oh. is way shorter than the sleeves. Oh underneath. yeah, that's a bit weird. Well, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. That's that's good, really good weird. catch. You know, I... it's odd. Yeah, I I, I caught it because it's yellow. Yeah. Look, he got up at the crack Super of dawn hip. to shoot this. Well, so it's it's the the rising dust. sun in the background. It, yeah. Oh, it he, is he dust. The, Maybe it's dust. The, the sunset or dawn, whatever it is. <laughs> It's better if it's dawn. It's stylistically supposed to be Is like it? that. It's a color palette. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, is was this video made in like uh 2007 or something uh, because uh, is there an r-rated superhero movie problem that we're having <laughs> well <laughs> I, I was gonna say he's they're just not good he's laying the foundation and uh we, we're, we're getting close to starting to make some claims and that's the part that excites me about r-rated superhero content not even just movies okay in the pg or pg-13 realm but in recent years there's been a shift happening a trend I find kind of strange. Not surprising, but strange. More and more often, the superhero media made by Hollywood is like this. Oh, fuck you! Ah! Fucking deserve! So this seems a little bit unfair already. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's just taking the little bits of violence and stuff and showing them at the... You know, against all the other stuff, but also he didn't even blur the blood splatter. What the fuck? Yeah. yeah. Oh, trigger warning. <laughs> I thought it was great. I was like, more, more, yeah, more, um, more, more. Well, yeah, Joker, but, um, especially what's the is matter not, with this. Joker is not gratuitous as a as a violence film. It's, it's no. very few no. scenes even have violence in them. Um, and this is it. And that, well, that's why this was this one especially, and the uh, the prior when he showed they hit pretty hard. You're like, holy shit. Um, yep. But you can't do these scenes if, if you have just one of these scenes in your movie it's already already that's how it works and so yeah 
you know, well, it's a it's risk. Not like there's, there's like some huge amount of these R-rated. He's he's saying like there's like all these R-rated superhero movies coming out. That's not really true. I mean, he shows the Joker, which was fairly unique. He shows the one like Wolverine movie where it's Logan, supposed to be yeah. kind of dark because he's all old and everything's kind of terrible. Like that's oh. kind of the point of the whole story. It was 2017, right, Logan? Yeah, like this isn't the norm. Like, the norm is like Avengers. And yeah, like that. yeah, Avengers are definitely yeah. And even like the DCEU, which was you know dark and gritty and everything. Now they're doing Aquaman's and Wonder Woman's eighty mm-hmm. fours and things. Yeah, there's obviously know, it like, oscillates in the DC like universe. F- yeah, it seems odd. And, and Spider Verse came out, and that's very kid friendly, yeah. right? Right. Well, also very yeah. Good. So you know, and this is the thing. It's like he's only shown a montage. It's just like, yeah. Well, I'm just trying to address like what the implied point here might be, and not saying that he necessarily holds these views completely. It's just that I don't. Mm-hmm. I already don't like the attitude. And we're like, hmm. <laughs> Plus, he conflated PG-13 earlier too. So he was already laying an aside to his argument to go after Marvel. Right. Yeah. Um, well. And to me, it would make more sense if you want to, crit- I mean, I don't know if he's criticizing this yet. It seems like he is to criticize not something being rated R, but something being needlessly edgy. Yes. Yes. And it's funny because I would say that the Zack Snyder movies or some of them are needlessly edgy and they're not even rated. I don't think the Justice Leagues or the Batman or Superman, they weren't rated R, were they? I can't remember yeah. what what exactly. I think the uh, Snyder Cut's been, they announced there's rated R, I mean, right? Well, maybe rated his R for retarded. <laughs> If you take the scene out of Joker, though, is Joker the same movie? I would argue not remotely. Dude, scene like, is the, the whole movie. Yeah, this movie's this scene is essential to this movie. Right. Yeah, and this is the thing. I they, would they, agree. They yeah, this is the climax. Yeah, they could have shot. Yeah, it. this is the scene. The whole movie revolves it around builds this up scene. To this. Like, well, and that's, and that's yeah. I mean. they could have shot it so that we get the angle of him aiming the gun at the screen, firing the audience, react, and then we never see the body or the shot. They could have done it that way. Not but of the course, same. Not that's the, the thing. same. Not even remotely the same. It evokes yeah. something in you to see how rough Hell and straightforward yeah. this is. Just an execution. And it's all been building this. It's been yeah. building this. This is the emotional climax. Yeah. It's all about this scene. Like, I don't think Joker would be like nominated for Academy Awards. Like, people wouldn't be raving about it without this scene. Oh, yeah. I think everyone was referencing the, in- it was just the interview scene, the, the, the talk show scene. Yeah. Totally. Look, he pulled it out for his video. He knows what's up. Yeah. Yeah. He knows. <laughs> mm-hmm. he did all of this. I can't help but go. What? In the. How ironic is it that the this guy is woke as can be, and he's using Rorschach, which is the most conservative character, like in all of comic fandom, as his voiceover? I just think oh, that's well, pretty ironic. He's probably going to. That's probably going to be something of a tie-in in terms of like the oh whenever something comes across. Oh, he's going to make fun of him. He's going to yeah, throw Rorschach under possi- the bus. Possi- oh, I was going to say, yeah. whenever something comes across as hypocritical, there would there would probably be a counter argument of like, ah, oh, you missed the point or something like that. Like <laughs> Rorschach, the last man with principles. <laughs> the past few years, films and TV shows based on DC superhero comics have been aimed exclusively at adults. There is currently oh, no. no Justice League cartoon on TV. But there was an R-rated directed video. I'm a little disappointed right. that Birds of Prey uh, is R-rated and they still didn't show any skin. Damn. Yeah. Uh, really? Well, not the I, good R-rated. I mean, totally wrong. Well, yeah. They had they the R-rated. It, they could have went sexist. crazy. Damn, what did they do with that movie to get an R-rating? Did somebody? Yeah, get, I was like... wondering the same thing, but I've never seen it. <laughs> so... I've not seen it, yeah. Um, do you see it, Gary? Good for you. What's that? Birds of Prey? Birds of Prey. I did see Birds of Prey. What are they it's, doing uh, it that gets an R in? Violence, probably. Uh-huh. And it's it's pretty mild. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I about to say, for just violence alone, it's got to be pretty violent. They, dropped some, they were probably begging. They were begging for an R rating. They're like, yes. no one's going to watch this movie. Please give us an R rating. <laughs> no, Adam, that's the studio mentality. They, they, they were totally. like, hey, Joker was rated R, and it made a lot of money. Hey, we got another supervillain who's kind of like Joker. Let's make it rated R. It'll make the same amount of money. And then it doesn't it, matter who directs exactly. it. Yeah, the writer exactly. and director is not really right. Those, they always, what, I can't remember who it was that commented on that. Was it James Gunn who put out the tweet saying like people are going to learn the wrong lesson in terms of studios from the R rating for uh, Deadpool? I think is what he said it about. Um, because Deadpool, Maybe. people say Deadpool led to Logan, and Logan is a, like possibly what uh, gave the pathway to Joker. Um, yeah, it, it's interesting yeah. to think about. 
video. And then he makes an R-rated movie, James Gunn, with Suicide Squad. Isn't it going to be rated R? The Um, Suicide Squad. I I don't know, but I wouldn't be too surprised, yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, But yeah, as for um, what is currently available in terms of new DC content, and if it was all R-rated... Wouldn't it just be like, oh, well, they can go and watch, um, they can still watch loads of really great not R-rated content, the kids, I guess. Yeah, Star Wars has it covered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, I saw a, a scene of Teen Titans in here, so if, when we get to that, like, <laughs> I'll agree with them on that one. Well, Titans, because it was a it was a effing terrible show written by Akiva Goldsman, who wrote Picard, and he's oh. one of the worst writers out there. He he wrote Batman and Robin, just to let you know. Hey. So he's uh, amazing. He's phenomenal. Somewhat <laughs> complicit in putting nipples on the bat suit. Uh, in oh, Batman I, Forever. I, I will defend the bat nipples. We yeah. needed them, Gary. Well, we oh, no, I just want nipples. consistency. If they were going to be on Batgirl, then I'm good with it. But right. they weren't, okay? Oh, Great yeah. so, uh, And Great I wanted Camel Toe, too, but we didn't get that either. <laughs> uh, bat. Bato. Bato. yeah. Um, so, but yeah, the, the, in Titans, it, when we get to it, there's there's something that's just there just to be edge lord. Oh, absolutely. And, I, I've only associated yeah. that show with edge. It's, it, that, I remember the trailer. Is that the uh, fuck Batman? That's what he says. Fuck Batman. Yeah. Fuck they, Batman. They, Rob, Robin stabs a dude in the dick with a pair of scissors too. Oh, okay. So, yeah. See, that's we we were just talking about how necessary the seated Joker was. That Robin stabs one of the bulls, or oh, the dick with the scissors. You're like, did you need that? It's like, yes, thematically, I needed it. You're like, All right, well, we'll see how it works out. The Justice League movie this year, the director's cut of Batman v Superman: Dawn of Justice, is rated R for sequences of violence, and based on the success of a lot of these. Major studios seem eager to make more and to keep catering to audiences hungry for movies where superheroes rip each other's limbs off. I don't know that it's about wanting to see them rip each other's limbs off, all right? I know you'd be well, a little bit hyperbolic, but... Yeah. <laughs> the two successful R-rated superhero movies was Joker, which was not at all that. It was a very serious, non-hyperbolically violent movie with, like, one scene of violence. And mm-hmm. Deadpool, which was a comedy, so... That's not really a fair. And if criticism. you want to throw Logan in again, Logan is so it needs that rating for what Logan is. It can't right. be what it is without an R rating. Like everyone recognizes that. And the interesting thing about it is that it was created for an audience that kind of would have been, you know, younger to teenage uh, when they saw X Men. The two thousand was that mm-hmm. two thousand or two thousand two? I can't remember. But um, oh so you cool. add ten years to a person who. Who saw that movie, and they're going to be hyper invested in Hugh Jackman's portrayal of of uh, the Wolverine, and so that that movie lines up, if you will, and you're allowed to go a little mm-hmm. further. Because the thing is, I don't know if you guys remember when you watched the X Men movies, but there was always people like he is stabbing people with these claws, and there is no blood ever. And it's just mm-hmm. like, yeah, it's weird. Uh, a lot of the times that that violence that's depicted in media is to remind us of how kind of it, it makes us believe it's more real. That it's actually happening, that it's not being colored up and hidden away, but it, it helps you kind of it helps you get invested in the world because you'd be like, shit, yeah, that's what would happen if this was a yeah, this, that was a yep. thing. I got, um, yeah. Wasn't it Black Panther like one of the guards gets her throat slit open and she just there's just nothing on her throat and she falls over and everyone was like, Yeah. Huh? <laughs> like, okay, that's the because it's, it's funny because when they do stuff like that, sometimes you're like, oh, are they, is she okay? Or is she, oh no, she's dead. Okay. Did she just faint? Yeah, yeah, you don't really, you might have missed something, but yeah, you know. They did that in The Dark Knight. Remember the Joker? Like, he puts the knife in the guy's mouth. Yeah, and that's, then it just um, kind of and that's, you're like, what, what happened? Like, how are you dead? That's that almost should like, be, that should hurt a lot, but. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's actually a good point. I guess you'd have to sort of dig into their face and just like, try and get the knife into his brain. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that would be an example of what they could have done in Joker, um, but like it changes Joker. And the same thing, thing for the Dark Knight. If they had shown you in explicit detail the Joker executing that guy, it'd be like, well, this is R-rated now. <laughs> There's no way you're getting around it. It's, yeah, it's just about what kind of movie you're, you're making. What's happened? Where is it going? And what does it mean? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Look, I'm not trying to go all hell in love, Joy, here. Won't somebody please think of the children? 
I'm just trying to answer the, 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 the bit. <laughs> I'm just trying to answer. He did his best to be manly for as long as he could. <laughs> oh, I, I like oh, the voice bro. better. You can only hold it. Oh, it so long. Gave him a cold. Yeah, I'll be honest. I, pr I prefer <laughs> using his normal to voice. The testosterone. Uh, the the cringy. Uh, I'm glad it's over. For the big. All right, we did it. We passed the intro. What is the All point right, of our rated superheroes? Which, and in the question, it implies a sense of like there isn't a point to them, and it's like, wow. All right, mm -hmm. that's going to be super interesting. So many to see. R, so many R-rated movies, uh, R-rated superhero movies are so badass. You're like destroying a, a huge chunk of movies, dude. When when I because I went to see Logan the cinema when he fucking he like slashes the shit out of the first set of people who try and they, I think they're trying to mug him or take his car. Yeah, and it is it's like amazing. whoa, because it's like this is, and it's not about like a sense of oh, I'm so not used to. It's it's more so like they're actually portraying what it would be like whoa, instead yeah. of you know hiding all of the gore. Now I know a lot of people are going to flood into the comments before they watch the whole video and accuse me of being a fake nerd who doesn't know the original comics. I, I didn't even know that wasn't even my first thought, but all right. It's, it's weird, we're at four minutes and it feels like we're about to start, you know? He's doing our Always job. Good it feels like it's not greatly paced for a, a video essay, but all right. And claim that I'm trying to impose restrictions and censorship upon storytellers. First of all, I do not think that R-rated superhero stories are inherently bad. Many of them are great. It would be weird to take that position. I, uh... Yeah, even for him that would be bizarre. Yeah. But good, I guess. I like Logan a lot. I'm excited as hell for James Gunn's Suicide Squad. Deadpool is... Wait one sec. Fine. It's perfectly fine. Oh so God. no, I'm... <laughs> I don't even... <laughs> I, I Deadpool's okay. amazing. I don't. You just, okay. I like how it made all of us like. Why did he do comedy the violence like... is the best violence? It's it's Deadpool's amazing. I mean, I, I was. What's the thing with the lighting and the camera and the weird it's, outfit? It's, is this like a Macintosh ad from like the nineties? It's cool. It's like a. It's more interesting than just someone with a with a camera rags. Okay, it puts him above. It's it's filmic. Cinematic. It would be better if he had like blood all over him, though. Be honest. <laughs> yeah. If he had just had blood like all his over his blood? hands and face, just pieces of flesh well, no, randomly I, I, falling fake from blood. the ceiling. He doesn't have to go real oh, blood. Okay. okay. Just oh, okay, okay. jam. That's it would be crazy. hilarious in they the did, context of what he's saying. They did jam in the Batwoman episode recently, where the girl slammed against the windows as a jam. He could do jam. Oh yeah, it was like this weird ketchupy sort of. <laughs> it was. It was clearly not blood. They didn't know how to make fake blood, which I. Which I imagine is one of the first things you learn how to do as a filmmaker is learn how to make oh, fake yeah, blood. Oh yeah, of course. Especially when dealing with. Or else there's going to be a, uh, a lot of. Lot of they've had and... people's faces getting torn off in that show. Feels like they should probably you know get on it with learning how well, to. That get didn't that look good blood. either, though. No, no. I'm not. Saying these shouldn't exist. And please, I beg you, don't accuse me of not knowing the source material. I've been reading comics. Hey. No one cares. I'm more concerned with your arguments, less concerned with yeah. whether or not you know yeah. your source material. And also, um, as for, he's not, he's saying, I'm not saying these shouldn't exist. I'm going to hold that statement in my hand. Mm -hmm. See see if that changes as we go along. Look for a copy. Weekly 99. Here's me as a kid when I exclusively wore clothing with Batman on it. Here is my collection of trades and graphic novels. He's just not establishing picture, here is my collection. Cred. Which is what do you think, cringe. Gary? What's that? How's his nerd cred? <laughs> uh, trades and graphic novels a little weak, personally. Damn, if you're collecting <laughs> what? <graphic> novels. <laughs> what this outfit and this lighting? Yeah, you can go to weird. Barnes and Noble and get trades and graphic novels, not at a con, you can get them anywhere. It's basic bitch stuff. I do picture like if he invited you over and you, you this was the seed, I'd just be like, oh man, what are we? What's are you a vampire? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like not like one of the lame vampires from like uh well, what was that show? Twilight oh, or Vampire Diaries. No, it's like the fake documentary about vampires. 
You don't like what we do in the shadows. You don't yeah. like that. You don't like those it's vampires. Thing, like they're all like the vampires. They're lame in it. They're He's lame. got the emotional vampire thing down. Let's just he has emotional vampirism where he sucks all of the emotion out of a room he's in. Oh, yeah, like, yes. He goes yes. down with like he one even punch, looks like the guy but... who plays the emotional vampire. <laughs> he does. He looks just like that guy. <laughs> he's not vampires can can do vampires bleed? Yeah, well, it depends on the fiction, yeah. I guess. But yeah, because. Yeah, like, so can well, so they can also mm. theoretically cry. Like a vampire can cry, right? Yeah, yeah. They, sometimes they cry blood, mm. especially in an interview with the vampire, right? Mm. Which was mm. uh, pre Twilight. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember interviewing. But yeah, yeah. a yeah. vampire has to feed on another vampire's blood to become a vampire. So a human has to feed on a vampire's blood. Yeah, yeah. That's um. I can't remember who who was it. Um, Bram Stoker's Dracula that popularized that. Um. I, so I remember, I because funny enough, I'm pretty sure Joss Whedon took a lot from Bram Stoker's Dracula for his like core cool vampire rules for Buffy, um, and they he have did. that one. Because a lot of people Can't wonder say. the difference between like, like oh, do you, with vampires it can't be like zombies, right? It can't just be a bite; it has to be something else too. And it's like, yeah, usually they uh, you have to drink a vampire's blood as well. Yeah, Ooh. it's drink a vampire's blood, or 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 sometimes they get bit, and you got to bury them, and then kill them in the grave in some you got to mm -hmm. put a stake through their heart in the grave Spread or something the like ashes or take a piss on them whenever you watch a patrick yeah. Williams video <laughs> it's like oh, blah, blah, blah. yeah yeah or movie grind bomb. them up in a smoothie Charbo. and drink them yeah all righty he's got a of literally got sandman of single issues here are my copies of watchmen and dark knight returns oh, wow. whoa you just bought off amazon like, well the funny thing to me <laughs> yeah look at that they look brand new this yeah. is like this is like tryouts for the Virgin Championship. Well, it's yes. funny to me because like he's not even like this is stuff that I'm fully aware of. Like I'm not even I'm like, well, that isn't that like entry level? Like you of course you have them. Yeah. Well, I see that's like you Google like what graphic novel should I buy and you get like the like the IGN uh, page that's like Watchmen Dark Knight Returns. You're like, yeah. yeah. Um Batman good. year 1. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I give you a thumb up. Good job. Man. I have a first printing of the infamous issue where you can see Batman's dick. So look. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my goodness. That's like from the last whole few years. All right. Well, now we're at the point where I'm like, wait, what were we proving? Because <laughs> like, now I feel like we're proving yeah, exactly. something else. I don't know. Yeah. If people came over to my place, they'd be like, this is my sword. These are my guns. Um, <laughs> this is Batman's and, uh, dick. <laughs> this is that Batman's dick. And this, dick. I have Batman's dick on that book over there if you want to check it out. No, well, I've got an actual Batman dick. I got a one six scale Batman dick in a cave. <laughs> does it does it come with its own bat vagina cave? Like it does, and it comes with well erection action too. Okay. Inciting erection, erection action. figures is that what you call it? Yes, <laughs> they're not dolls, mom. They're erection figures. <laughs> Think of the the potential with them and how much they'll be worth as time goes on. Perfect. Well, the one six are you know? getting so detailed. I'm waiting for them to come with dick and balls, with erection action. It'll happen. I'll put, I'm gonna there put that. That's gonna be in the but nobody's gonna. Yeah, I guess it already exists. Maybe. Hmm. Even if you disagree with everything I say here, just. Don't accuse me of not having done my homework. My God, he's bitter already. Well, that will depend on that will depend on the arguments. Yeah, I make. don't. It would be like if I said you can't say I'm inaccurate on this particular movie or this particular argument because I've been watching movies my whole life. It's like that doesn't correlate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. totally. So now that out of the way, let's answer an important question. All right. Who were these characters originally for? Oh, oh if we're no. going to talk about oh. why is this relevant? I don't like it. They were, uh, if they're going to adapt and progress, for the kids. Well, that's the thing. Does it matter if it was originally created for a child? If, as the story progresses, the character gets older and the audience gets older with them, right? At that point, does the content not match its audience? Still, wouldn't that be an argument for making it R-rated as it as it progresses? Not necessarily in terms of we got to get violence in there, but at least in maybe um, going for harsher sort of storylines. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm I'm wondering what is the answer to this question that would possibly change the final answer. Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess we'll see. Nothing. Bros, we need back to where this all began. No, we don't. The comic books. 
I can sense the blowback already. The people in the comments saying, um, actually superhero comics were always made for adults. No. Did you even say Sorry. that they weren't? Uh, yeah, you know, that's I don't know. Well. <laughs> he's... That's an Sorry, that's an instant straw man. That's bullshit. Uh, let him go. Sorry. I, I need to let him go. Well, I was going to say, I'm a little bit like off center because it's like he's already trying to counter arguments instead of just making his position clear first. He's yeah. Like, yeah. You have to say and, things first. And don't start your sentence with fucking actually, please. <laughs> actually. Even actually. <laughs> It's, it's just amazing to me that it's like, I know all of you are going to disagree. And it's like, say what you believe first, please. I don't even know what it is. And it's even worse. Because as you said, it's a counter to a straw man. Is anyone really arguing this point? I yeah. guess someone out there is. And well, yeah. I guess he's going to show those people out there that they sure are wrong. I didn't know that those any, people. but I've not heard anyone say that comics were always exclusively for adults. Like, I've never a, heard that either. Like this is a first for, for me. either. Well, it depends if you're talking about like Yellow Boy and the propaganda stuff that was out there back in the late 1800s or the Penny Dreadfuls and stuff. Could they kind of were or the pop uh, uh -oh. or the. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, but then if you're talking about the if you're talking about the collected uh, Sunday funnies that were put into a magazine and sold, uh, those were made for kids. Yes. Yeah, I, that's what I would. If oh. someone asked me, I'd be like, "Well, so my limited knowledge, I assume that there were there were runs and IPs and different things that were more so meant for for kids to teens to adults. Who knows? Yeah, they're probably all over the place. Much like most media and most formats and most yes. mediums, you know." From view in the late 1930s and into the 40s and 50s, superhero comic books were produced primarily for an audience of children. Sure, primarily, teenagers and adults primarily, he even admits it. Yeah, I was going to say, as long as, as long as nobody's being defensive. Primarily. <laughs> all right, yeah, yeah, all right. Follow yeah, him. Read them means well. the other minority They were very adults. popular with soldiers overseas during World War II, but the writers and artists making them were fully aware that kids were their main audience. Main as, audience. Okay. Oh, this doesn't even... Uh, yeah. Because this is like, Yeah, this doesn't seem relevant. Because I was going to say, there's a bunch of principles here that can totally smash this. First being, it doesn't actually matter who you created something for intentionally. It could end up being for a completely totally. different audience. That just could happen. Yeah, My Little Pony. <laughs> <laughs> a perfect example, right? Yes. Um, who then, knew? Who knew the bronies were going to evolve? And then you have, like, uh, who was reading it now defined. Like, this is the thing. Who it's for? I'm not even sure how I would define what defines that who it's for, you know, it's like, I don't, I don't really, be for a lot exactly. of different people at different times yeah. in different places, like, I, it's hard to say. Julius Schwartz, from the 40s through the mid 80s, put it, we were putting out magazines for eight to 12 year olds. And Julie Schwartz didn't like comic books. It was a job to him. He wasn't a comic book fan before. I mean, he sh certainly appreciated him when he was there. He was the better editor at DC for sure, but it was just a business to him. It wasn't a passion. So yeah, he was telling him it was eight to 12 year olds. And that's why eventually Marvel came out and kicked their ass. And we're in, we're wasn't, in... wasn't this a guy that was totally upset about the fact, like he felt belittled that comics were only being made for these kids. Like he felt like it ruined his status. Yeah. Yeah. He was uh, Julius he, guy. Cause uh, Will talking? Eisner always wanted, Will Eisner always wanted to be like a more prestigious yeah. thing. Like he felt bad that comics were, were looked down upon. He wanted it to be like novels, like respected. Yes. Yes, and he was a pioneer. Schwartz, well, I mean, totally. he was a good guy. He was a good editor, but Roy Thomas just did an interview in Bounding uh, talking about Julie Schwartz. Just, it was just a job. It was an eight to five. He was happy to have it. He's from the, you know, the, the depression generation where, the, you know, working was great and uh, having an income because they knew what it was like to be poor. But it, there was the, the passion didn't, it didn't start changing until people who actually started loving comics came in. Yeah, this guy's like the garbage collector of comics here. Like, it's just yeah. a job. I'm just yeah. here to do a job. Yeah, there was two editors at DC, right? And uh, and uh, this, he was the better one for sure. And I find Will Eisner's like, I want a Pulitzer. And I yes. find it interesting because it reminds me of the the people the the comment they always wheel out when they're talking about how everyone's man children with Star Wars. They're like, uh, did you know that George Lucas even said it's for twelve year old? And it's always like, okay, so when I watched The Simpsons when it was coming out when I was a super young man. I used to watch it with my dad, who was not a young man, and we both loved it. 
Do you know? Yeah. That's possible. It's like the idea that it's like it's not meant for you. Or so like the, there's this implicit statement. It's like I don't care who you put it out for. Like why why would you even want to have a story that doesn't appeal? This is like it comes back to Wally and, and stuff like that, where it's like these stories are totally. clearly kid friendly, but they're some of my favorite yeah. stories. Like, do I have to? Do I just I got I can't like them once I grow up to a certain age or something? This guy's not a segregationist to... right here. Totally. He wants well, to segregate it, it... us. Well, and that's where we're at with entertainment right now. It's not made for you. Uh, you know, yeah, uh, totally. Too bad. I, I like it. I still have comics I bought when I was 8 to 12, and I read them now, and I enjoy them. So basically, Maul so, is invoking Lucas's authority and denies it. Self-contradictory nonsense. I, I don't even... Oh, take when, that. When do I ever use George Lucas as, an, as a, like a... He said it, therefore it has to be true in relation to arguing people's enjoyment of stuff. Like the idea yeah, of poetry. George Lucas. Rhymes. We've already been over like how it's George Lucas is not the Oracle. No, it like no. As it, as I was gonna say, what about Jar Jar is the Oracle? If He's anyone wanted to, to make this. the claim that uh, he would decide, <laughs> no. you know, X Y Z is like it won't take long for him to say something that you're gonna be like, okay, nah, okay, <laughs> going a bit far with that. Wasn't George Lucas like super praiseworthy of TFA when it came out? He was like t totally chill with it. Yeah, I, I can't remember what like stuff he said in relation. Like he approved and stuff. And people were like, mm. I thought he was devastated by it. I thought he was like, "You guys trashed my treatments. What the fuck? What oh, is that, this garbage?" That po maybe it was all like sort of uh, promotional. And, was, and, you know, I thought he was crying during the premiere. Like, the obligated statements he made. At, you know, he's like, "It's something to the effect of it's fine." Right. Right. I just. He loved TLJ. I, I could have sworn his TLJ comments were very, like, limited, and then it was like, hmm. I thought he sort of was like, he gave a backhanded compliment, which ended with, there's no new ideas in it. Mm -hmm. That was his big... Uh, yeah, that thing. was, yeah, that that hurt him. Um, Because whenever you appeal to, like, an outside source just for their perspective and opinion, we, we had this when we were looking at um the Twin Perfect video. Um, They started playing a Zack Snyder comment, or someone from some audio track, and Fringy was like, Stop appealing to an authority or whatever. And it's like, well, it's fine if they want to present someone's argument or someone as a as an example, and then you can uh, approach their perspective. As in, in this case, look, Julius Sw Schwartz said this. It's like, that doesn't mean that yeah. what he said is true just because he said it. Mm -hmm. True, or yeah. What it Appeal means, to authority. Yeah, and what it means necessarily, I suppose, in this context is he's just saying, yeah, these were the people who are our main audience. That doesn't mean the stories aren't going to be read. By all kinds of people, it's just it's just a weird. Right. But you know, we'll see where he goes with it. I guess How you could pull out ten Will Eisner quotes that totally put that to shame easily. When Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, and Steve Ditko revolutionized comics with the Marvel Universe, why would you get a picture of two of them and then label them with their names <laughs> and then but then not say not pictured. pictured a third one that you didn't just put a picture? Yeah, you of could have just gotten for. a picture of it, but <laughs> like, all right. Why did he get a picture of the poor man? He's probably going like, hey. It one's enough. I have, uh, okay, all right, it's fine, whatever. At Muller and Rex, you guys 60s, should do some fat minis about my little pony, Friendship is Magic. I, 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 I been... Hey, no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? It's, I like the people recommend us media. That's cool. Kirby and Steve Ditko revolutionized comics with the Marvel Universe in the 60s. Part of their approach was skewing just a tiny bit older. The comics were still kid-friendly, but they were a little bit more psychologically complex for a target audience of- I, I have to rush. I'm very late to an appointment. V very late indeed. The and poor he kid. says the, the poor, poor kid, kid she, she was scared was... stiff of me. And who can blame her? The only reason Alicia put up with me was she's blind. Aww. <laughs> Aww. Even oh my anymore. All she his friends are blind. <laughs> Some oh, no. freak from another world. And why should she? Because yeah. my dick is made of rock. <laughs> <laughs> All my friends are dead. How could they put that in a comic? Oh my god, this, well, the rock this should oh, be R-rated. Talking about his rock hard dick. <laughs> Well, it's and funny because even then she couldn't take me anymore. Oh, there you go. She couldn't take him anymore. We're doing the the whole like, yeah, we get some some stuff. We're doing the concept was like, should should how cruel is it that he is treated as a monster for this unfortunate result? And it's like, oh my god, I'm it's probably because he looks like a big monster. That's mm -hmm. that's cruel, ranks. Shouldn't judge a book by it its cover. It's cruel. I'm sure he's a nice guy. Yeah. 
but you might have some relationship issues. I'd have the thing Can't on EFAP if he wants the blind to. Chick. The thing. Come on, EFAP. We'll we'll talk about your monstrous, yeah, mon on. monstrous face. Yeah. <laughs> I want to hear about how a blind person couldn't, you know. Couldn't even not even you. they could see the point in your relationship. <laughs> 10 to year olds The fact is, people tend to become fans of superheroes as kids. My generation was introduced to the genre mostly through the cartoons about X-Men, Spider-Man, and Batman, plus the 90s Batman movies. Mm -hmm. On its most basic level, these are stories about good versus evil, full of bright primary colors and larger-than-life characters. What was no Hawkman matter doing to Superman back there? I don't know, but... Uh, Did you see that? This is, this, when they say stuff like this in these videos, I'm just like, alright. Alright. Where, where are you going with this, then? Yeah, where are we going? I like primary colors. They're cool. I'm, I'm in the car with Patrick Willems, but I'm not sure about the road we're driving. I'm not sure where we're going. Not or how sure dark the uh, Grimber is kidnapping you yet or not. Mm. Primary colors and larger-than-life characters. No matter how dark and gritty and morally complex what, they sometimes what become... Marley? At... Yeah, what was that? That Jesus was weird. I, it, was that watched well, together? Was that his video? That was, that was him. He... That's the thing that came up before in the, um, the first... Two minutes ish, it's like a little character. Mascot that's all fuzzy. I think it's whenever he says gritty. Oh, is that his name? Possibly. Gritty. Gritty. Primary colors and larger than life characters. No matter how dark and gr gritty and morally Dead. complex oh, okay. they sometimes mm. become, at their heart, these were designed for younger audiences. And you know what? That's okay. Lots of great. I did, okay. Yeah, we're all sitting here like, all right. <laughs> okay. I I guess somebody out there didn't think that. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm sure. assuming he's building this because it's going to be relevant in a moment to something else. That's all I can assume. Yeah, I I agree surely. with your premise here, Patrick. I'm on your team for now. Things were made for. Years. Miyazaki movies are gorgeous, emotionally mature pieces of art. I know for a fact that you, yeah you, right there, have cried watching at least one Pixar movie. And lest we forget, old George Lucas himself created Star Wars for kids. Uh, it's a film for 12 year olds. Okay now. <sighs> yeah, there it is. The right, he created it for a very large audience, yes. He knew it, the, the, the George Lucas, the, the, the apex <clears throat> capitalist was definitely ready to make those movies for a lot of people, think, kids included. I don't think they don't even realize how this is folding back on themselves when people make this. Because you know where this comes from, right? The whole, like, why do you kiss so much? It's meant for children. Be like, are you implying that because the story doesn't have the gore and the, the nudity and the drug use, that that's the key element to make us justified in getting angry at a bad story? Like, those things, instead of how poorly they botch a story and like messaging or consistency or whatever. If there aren't tits, then don't even bother. It's like if, you know, like if Star Wars did just have this random full frontal dude scene, it's like, finally, I can be angry at this movie because it's for me now. I just, uh... We talk about the children. Won't somebody please think of the children? There's an important distinction that I need to make here. There is a difference between okay. something made exclusively for children and something that is appropriate for children. Like Star Wars? Um, yeah. That would, that would come into that. Exclusively so, for children is probably like Teletubbies, yeah. I guess. Mm -hmm. it, it, yeah, exclusively for children. That's why in The Last Jedi, it's, it's uh, you know, uh, intersectional feminism is something we need to be teaching 12-year-olds. They gotta understand. Absolutely. Oh, Who's this fucking bear? Wait, what? Bear? Is yeah, this fucking bear That's who speaks Spanish bear. probably. Oh, right. What did you think it was? Uh, no, no, what did you think it was? I didn't have a frame of the, that had it. Now I do. Oh, uh, oh, it I looks thought like... you you mistook that for some like a beaver or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute, Riggs. How could you call it a beaver? It's a cuddly old teddy boy. Oh, girl, it's a pink bow. So it has that's to be a girl because it has a bow. Yeah, mm, you're assuming it's gender. Exclusive. <laughs> you bet your children. ass I am. <laughs> and something that is appropriate for children. The former is something like Dora the Explorer, or say DC superhero girls. Oh my God! Look at this. Yeah. Oh thing. my goodness. I don't gracious. even. I don't, I don't know what this is. I've never heard of this. I have never heard of this. So I guess we have that. 
woman, woman girl, bat girl on the Is that left. Owl girl. And then we have owl hawk <laughs> lady. Hawk girl. Yeah, hawk girl, yeah. Hawk girl. And then we have uh the cockroach. The wasp. <laughs> the wasp. And the then we girl. Oh, I didn't even know. I don't know what wasp is. I don't know. I guess it's wasp. And then we have, we have the the snake charmer, which is why there's a s there on her <laughs> chest because that's the sound that snakes make. He he's arguing that RoboCop should be in this style right now. Yep. What? No. <laughs> well, that's exactly what Stop he wants. Saying bad that's things. exactly what the he wants. Is, he set no. all of the footing that's required i would say to now not need this video to exist <laughs> so like i'm curious where we're gonna go you know the left is something like batman the animated series and that is what we're talking about here that show okay. is ostensibly a kids show it aired on the Fox Kids block of Saturday morning cartoons during the 90s it spawned an endless line of kids merchandise but as we all I don't think that's a all qualifier right. for um, I how you know what I mean like we just talked about like yeah, so I... much non kid stuff that generates kid merchandise so like why why are you bringing that up oh, he said... yeah the merchandise is secondary oh. or not exclusively for kids batman animated no of course it's just that like it, he's like yes yes but it's right. it's aimed for kids, and I'm just like, this is going to do a lot of work for wherever he goes with it, like, making sure we agree on this, and I'm just like, hmm. All know, it was made with such a degree of artistry and intelligence that adults loved it. I would argue that it is the single best version of Batman that exists in any medium. The show's feature film spin-off, Mask of the Phantasm, has significantly greater emotional depth than any of the live-action Batman movies. And to date, none of those live-action Batman sure. movies have a sequence as disturbing as the one in which the Joker tortures and brainwashes Robin in Batman Beyond Return of the Joker. I don't have much of an issue with any of this. I'm just right. like, all right, so where are we going? I'm still waiting because... Yeah, um, yeah what, I, I'm still waiting for the punchline here. Yeah, because I'm, I'm, we're, we're just trying to get to the point where he starts to say R-rated superhero movies shouldn't be R-rated. I'm assuming that's where he's going. We're we're only eight minutes and thirty seconds in the video. I mean, do you expect to know what the video is about eight minutes in? I mean, I would. I want to know in the first ten seconds. I already know from the title what this is about. That's why we're all waiting for him to get there. <laughs> we're just like, what? Oh my gosh! Joker turned him into a little clown boy. <laughs> he did. Yeah. Oh That's my good. goodness. And all in a kids' cartoon. So as okay. we continue this discussion, but if it's let's drop. The but if it's not like a violent or realistic depiction of those things, then it's fine. Like, you could have murder and killing and kid stuff. I mean, they'd straight up plug bad guys in Johnny Quest, but it wasn't depicted in like a, a, a horrific or graphic way. Yeah. Kids can handle like death and murder and stuff. It just depends on how that's presented to them. Mm -hmm. And then you go, Bambi would always be referenced. It's just like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> the mom just gets annihilated yeah, totally. in that opening. Y'all remember the, um, you guys remember the mechanical shark from James and the Giant Peach? Yes, that thing was scary. Yeah, that shit was spooky. I'm like, holy shit. What a, ooh, that's a scary one. Yeah, that because something is aimed at younger audiences, it means it's any less intelligent than a hyper gritty R-rated movie. If you're embarrassed to enjoy kids' movies... Why do you think he's inserting those frames? For a meme, I probably. guess it's like a little joke meme um, thing. Yeah, I, I don't think any of us know. have ever said that like intelligence directly correlates with age rating. It's like there's like a little Monsters Inc. guy in there that flashed real quick. Fine, but that's on you. So starting in the early '70s, a shift started occurring. He's got to have a Fight Club reference or something. Like that's a Fight Club yeah. thing. He's, there's going to be a Fight Club reference. I'm there guessing. Is. Gradually comic books started targeting a slightly older audience who were demanding more realism and more writing. complexity in their stories. And this steadily increased into the 80s and 90s. Why? What was happening here? 
Well, to find out, I did some digging, cracked some skulls, sent a couple emails until I reached the source. Mm. A man who had experienced this all firsthand. Ooh. I talked to Jerry oh Conway, co-creator of characters like The Punisher, Jason Todd, and Killer Croc, writer of The Death of oh. Gwen Stacy, and an eight-year run on Justice League. For oh. many decades. The, I, was, I guess uh, I was expecting something different. Jerry Conway, who wants to now cancel his own character, the Punisher, because he's a pussy. Really? <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Let's hear what he has to say. All right. Perception of the audience for superhero comics were boys between AirPods, the ages though. of uh, 9 and 13. But starting in, I guess, the, the 1970s, as my generation came in as creators, um, we started trying to create stories that were still of interest to us. Uh, we wanted things that were going to address the concerns that we had now as uh, older adolescents or young adults. And this persisted through the decades. As we creators grew older and as our audience grew older, um, the tone of comics and the, the perception of the audience started to shift away from that original conception all right. of uh, yeah. kids in their uh, yeah. preteens. Right. I yeah. think that the, the stories that we did and the, the uh, turns that we made were artistically uh, uh, justified. But from a practical publishing point of view, abandoning an entire market just to follow uh, a uh, dynamically decreasing a market drink. seemed to me to be uh, mm -hmm. pretty self-destructive. I don't object Self-destructive? Like, does he mean like in a in a capital sort of way? Like, um, we're gonna be making less money? Because I wouldn't necessarily consider it a bad like choice to be like, you know what? Our audience is getting older. We're getting mm -hmm. older. We're gonna move into telling different stories. It's like, oh, that's self-destructive because you won't have many people as many people to read it. Like, <sighs> oh well, I don't think that's as much of a problem. Yeah, it's, it's, oh, did he say something worth commenting on? It just depends on how you'd sort of define you self destructive. I mean, I know like people who were yeah. coming in in the 70s uh, were more into comics, they were actual fans now. So you, you're, you've got like the next generation who actually gave a crap about these characters, and yeah, they were telling more sophisticated stories. And Denny O'Neill was, you know, putting in politics here and there. Uh, with uh, with Batman and uh, Green Green Lantern, Green Arrow, Con Conway's a legend. Not going to say, but he's you know come out recently against Punisher because of all the crap going on in the world, uh, and a lot of people have wanted to cancel that character for, including Joss Whedon. Joss Whedon hates the Punisher. Is it because uh, he kills but, people? Is that why? Because <laughs> yeah, he got pregnant. Joss Whedon said if he took over the Marvel universe, first thing he would do is kill the Punisher. What the fuck? Oh. What, what's the well, that's what's the beef with the say. Punisher? Probably because he kills people, I guess. Yeah, he kills people with guns. He, you know, like he's, he's vigilante. Oh yeah, Josh yeah. Whedon's very anti guns. The Punisher isn't a woman. Josh Whedon can you know abuse into. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that's he can still he, be he, mean. He heard the Punisher got pregnant. The, the Punisher fights back. That's the problem. <laughs> yep. God damn it. The but you can't lose the Punisher. The Punisher is like you need him to rep, to help represent a scale. Like, the Punisher is a great little addition to the sort of um, a sliding scale of where the, all the, the heroes lie. Like, P Punisher rests on, like, as far as you can go before people will start right. definitively calling you a villain. Like, um, and I think it's important to to address that line, to talk about it. And mm -hmm. I mean, people love the, um, what's it called, the story where he and da Daredevil cross over? Or at least have their, um, is it, because I, I, you're going to know this better than I will, Gary, but like, um, because they do it in season two of the Daredevil show, right? But that's like directly from the comics. Some stuff is borrowed from the comics. Like the, the Dare, uh, Punisher got popular because he was in Daredevil, Fr Frank Miller's Daredevil. Mm -hmm. So they borrowed a little bit uh, from that, or actually a lot. But it, it's it's not. It's kind of like the comic, but not really. It's hard to explain unless you read it. But mm -hmm. uh, they were following some of the same beats. Uh, love Daredevil on Netflix too. Fucking great, dynamically violent. Mm -hmm. That's like there's certain characters that are absolutely built for rated R. Obviously, I mean Batman's kind of in between. You can do both, right? And Daredevil should absolutely be a rated R character all the time. 
uh, unless he's in like guesting in a Spider-Man movie or something. So, well, yeah, it's like when it's, people um... go ahead, go ahead. No, you go first. I was just going to say there are some um, when people find out like, oh, they're doing a this thing for this character and then they go, it's not going to be R-rated, though. You'll be like, oh, like, like if they go Mortal Kombat movie, it's going to be PG. you will be like, what? How? What even? Okay. What? It's and, like Warhammer, but just without all that violence. That's the thing. It's not like an appeal to we want gratuity. You just be like, oh, that's strange. But, um, like, you know, because it... <laughs> If the storytelling's like amazing, but at the same time they don't have any gratuitous violence for the Mortal Kombat movie, it would be very, very odd. And the same goes for stuff like Daredevil and Punisher. Like every time he shoots his gun, the camera cuts away, and you're just like, "All right." <laughs> it feels like you're gonna get a very different experience when uh, when watching something like that. But anyway, let us see what else this man has to say. Well, I, I'm just curious if he's. I'm curious if he's arguing that those dark desires that human beings have should not be explored because I feel like exploring them in our fictional media does us a huge service because people oh, sure. don't have to live out these complex feelings that they have about, you know, wanting to kill their neighbor because he fucking did some shit with it, their hedge or something, you know, mm, they, they like can watch a movie and think, <laughs> yeah, I would assume yeah, yeah. that they're going to be gunning for, um, should it, come from its own thing rather than be transferred from something that was someone else's thing. That's probably what it, it seemed like over time. Should the stories mature up or should they just start something new if they want to start telling mature or, you know, more adult things? I don't know. We'll have to see. I, I, didn't, I didn't see Birds of Prey, but I'm under the impression that Birds of Prey lays out a particular type of fantasy for a particular type of person. It someone does. who maybe exactly. hates men. <laughs> someone who thinks all men are evil, someone who really desires to like bash their heads in with a baseball bat. You know, it's exploring these complex feelings <laughs> that people have. Hey, it's a theme. Okay, man. I mean, you guys kind of suck. I suck. You know, it's, we, we, it's, a, it's a, 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 too many males on this podcast. It's fucked up. Get some diversity <laughs> okay. in here. I know we have a shadow person, I'm just saying, but. I'm just think. saying, you know, there's complex ideas that people like to explore in their fictional media rather than in their normal lives where, you know, there's consequences to exploring those ideas. Oh, yeah. That, and I would argue that's another thing that R-rated pretty much guarantees a lot of the time, except with like really shitty writing. But your heroes won't be protected from consequences in because typically they'll be like they have they're free to have everything that should happen happen. That's kind of what I was saying with the Wolverine stabbing people. You're like, ah, we won't be limited by ratings, which happens every once in a while. You'll watch something, you'll be like, wait, that, oh, right, this is for kids, so, hmm, okay. Yeah, I, I can't tell if he's making the argument that the depth of our human exploration should be Dora the Explorer. Well, the, yeah, the <laughs> Dora part... Dora the Explorer is about exploration. The part that stopped me here <laughs> okay. is him just saying it was self-destructive, but I don't know in what context he's referencing that. If he strictly is referring to how much money they could make, then he's probably vaguely correct in terms of they'll make less but i just don't know that that really matters when you're an artist trying to you know tell your stories it's like oh it'll appeal to less people it's like yeah but is it is it worth telling how, how long before they launch Follow. dora the gender explorer the gender explorer Boots comes out as non-binary dora the gender explorer <laughs> I'm sorry. Also, I'll, Boots I'll no longer it. identifies as <laughs> a going to like the gender cave and just he's a tiger now light it up uh a uh, dynamically decreasing market seemed to me to be uh, pretty self-destructive. I don't object to the idea of who who has more money, kids or adults. Well, the adults just will buy saying, the kids, though, right? I'm just saying. Yeah, hey, you got to buy one for you and one for your kid. True. True. Stories oh. aimed at adults, but I believe that those should be the uh, the tail <laughs> and not the dog. <laughs> They should be the thing that, that Whoa, you can, wow, slur. can go to uh, after you've, you know, grown out of the original uh, uh, material. And that material... They should be the thing that you go to when you grow out of the original material. Well, if it was written well, I wouldn't grow out well, of it. But, like, isn't that what it is? It's, it still would be that at that point, wouldn't it? Because it could still be that, I mean, it could operate that way. He's saying, like, oh, we built comics for, you know, kids for so long, and then we started to build them for, like, older people, and it's like, well, you probably shouldn't do that. They should be the tail of the dog. I don't even know what that really means. It's like, it should be the thing yeah, you go to. It's probably one of those old boomer sayings. 
I was gonna say I, I know a lot of boomer sayings, but I don't know that. Like, like it's it should be the exception, not the rule. Well, that's what I thought he was going with, but then he said it's the thing you go to after the other thing. That's how he characterized that. So he, so he, okay, so he graduate to it, kind of. Yeah, like the thing that's weird about this is you know, for the examples he was talking about, you know, death of Jason Todd and some of these other more adult comics. Uh, in the 70s and 80s like i would still read that stuff if i was eight or ten like i'm not gonna be like oh someone died in this i'm not gonna read this comic anymore yeah. did i agree with this point when i'm done with the original material i immediately look for port of it <laughs> like, well <laughs> yeah it's fair enough yeah. yeah i guess that kind of applies all right yeah. that will be the tail end you see i have to go find that comic book with oh. batman's dick <laughs> that's what everyone wants uh, after you've you know, grown out of the original uh, uh, material, and that material should be timeless, and should be aimed at a at a, at a well, young readership with a uh, a slightly well, less sophisticated or less uh, why uh, demanding. You know, uh, uh, why best stories speak to both though they do speak to both. I was gonna like say the like, kids can understand them and the adults can understand. Them. It should be less sophisticated. That's interesting. Like, why kind of story? Appeal to both ends of the age spectrum. I yeah, say both, totally. all rather. Right. Um, so is it just it a weird way to phrase it? It has aspects that are less sophisticated that kids can understand, and aspects that are more sophisticated that'll go right over the kid's head. But the adults are sitting there next to the kid, going, "Wow, this is amazing!" Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Lots well, of subtext uh, stuff that I don't pick up. As yeah, a, a thirty-year-old reader might have. There's nothing wrong with addressing a 30 year old reader, but that should not be the mainstay of your. Uh... I don't follow that. I, Why like, not? You know, if, if someone said you shouldn't appeal strictly only to 100 year olds, I'd be like, why not? If you want to do that, <laughs> make your comic for oh, 100 year olds. I don't know. That's a, that's a diminishing market. For it is. Sure. A, well, it's a small market. It, it sort of cycles. <laughs> you want to corner it. That's the thing. Yep. Yeah, totally. You're the guy that caters to 100 year olds. <laughs> The Centigenarian Weekly. I would like to read Not a, a lot comic. of readers, but they are devoted. I'll read a Spider-Man comic exclusively for 100-year-olds. I'll see what they do with it. I'd be interested. <laughs> the words will be really big. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like Spider-Man's at the old folks' home. He's just like... Eh. It's like when you see your grandparents, yeah, on their on their cell phones, and the words are massive <laughs> on it. Well, do you guys ever, like, one of my grandparents' house, when I was much younger, they, they telephone... You like hold it wholly in your hand. Each button was the size of like two thumbs, and it had the the number was huge on it. You're like, oh mm -hmm. man. Well, you know, if you need it. Efforts when you're dealing with, let's face it, a fundamentally silly uh, and childish conception of fiction. Uh, I don't like Superheroes that. are fundamentally uh, silly and childish. Why? Why would you say that? Yeah. Sorry, totally. Epic of Gilgamesh. Fuck I, you. Oh, that's the kind of state where I'm just like, oh, this isn't gonna work when you start getting the definitions, is it? Like, you see, it's yep. it's silly because they wear costumes. You're like, mm, does that? Is that it? Is but that that's what actors do. Well, it's silly yeah. then. Movies are silly. Think about it. They're all very it's fundamentally just, silly and childish. It's right. the kind of thing where I think a lot of people would agree with it in passing, but then when you really dig into it, you're like, "But that's not really a fair comment at all, is it? Not really it's silly because it's superhero." Uh, I don't know. Is no. anyone going to describe yeah, Logan as fundamentally silly? Jesus. Yeah, the Bible's for children because it's about a superhero. <laughs> at the oh, same, yeah. well, that's what I was saying about like he mentioned Logan and uh, De well, Deadpool. Maybe this would be easier to try and argue is silly, but like who calls Logan silly? Like it's like okay, but it's fundamentally silly. Yeah. It's like who's saying oh, that? No one's saying that. No one. They're they are trying to get silly out of the costumes. No, like, of course the, the silly they... the costumes have, have gotten. The costumes have gotten a lot less silly over the course of the yeah movies. and that's why i'm totally willing to agree on aspects but like saying it's fundamentally yeah. silly the concept of superheroes yeah. i'd be like how not silly at all no totally no i have no problem with the, i think the costumes have gotten worse well the costumes have gotten much less imaginative over time seems to be there, yeah. there seems to be a little a smaller resurgence in the past like there was a there was an era where they were like no fuck the source we're just gonna go for like costumes that people might wear in real life and now they're trying to like combine that trying yeah. to be like you remember that the source is this <sighs> okay maybe if we can tone that down move that around eh, like, like they seem Jesus, to want to do that these days. yeah like a lot of the marvel costumes are like you know this isn't you know 
like silly and childish, but it isn't like dumb and drab either. Yeah, it's no, no. kind of balanced with a lot of that stuff. And some people are asking, by the way, what's the problem with silly? It's like, well, so the the argument being made is, if it's fundamentally silly, then shouldn't it be uh, created for a younger audience? kids yeah well i hear silly and my brain thinks like so it doesn't make sense like silly means like nonsensical in a sure. way um yeah. like it's absurd yeah and, and in the way like x like your, your superhero wearing super bright strange and colors you could be like why would you uh not want to... yeah why are you running around in your pjs i'm more hung up on childish yeah. Silly ones. It depends I'll, on the I'll character. Say that, yeah. 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 Well, that's the thing. In certain contexts, I I'd love it to be like I said, Batman, Robin, I fucking love it. And if someone was like, shouldn't we make it less silly? I'd be like, no, no, <laughs> Are you crazy. More, more, more. Give me more. So yeah, complicated. But like to argue like that is like baked in to superhero con is like, mm, but we'll see where we go in next, Patrick. Where are you taking us? Oh. I hope he gets somewhere. We're t we're a fourth of the way through, and he hasn't made a point yet. We're back yeah. to like the sketch. Oh no! Did you just get a notebook delivered? Pat said he was sending us the script for the video. <laughs> it was nice of him to write it all out by hand twice. Uh, is yours really damp? Yeah, and it has this weird smell. Urine. So what's our assignment this time? <laughs> More dance montages? Um, right. I think he mentioned Silly. we're supposed to find ways to make the video <sighs> gritty. Gritty? Like the lovable orange monster from Philadelphia? I literally can't imagine he meant anything else. So what's up with the rating system? I'm glad that you have people willing to be in your videos. He pays them, surely. <laughs> well, Unless he's that's super lefty, so he might not. Oh, true, maybe true. I don't know. You know how you know how they are with you know, their stingy capitalists. They're very good capitalists. Exposure yeah. for yep. non-American audiences. The R rating in American you can't pay film a woman an exposure. That's sexist. <laughs> what? Oh no! Really? Don't, don't expose Hollywood. yourself. Not for a Patrick Willems don't video. Tell, don't <laughs> tell Hollywood that. Have some have some standards. System. For non-American audiences, the R rating in American yeah, film, given by the Motion Picture Association of America, stands for restricted, uh, and means that if a viewer retarded. is under the age of 17, they are required to be accompanied by a parent or guardian. Mm -hmm. Now, the American rating system is famously fucked up. Lady Bird is and it? The King's Speech are rated R, and so are The Passion of the Christ and The Raid 2 and The Hostel films. And look, I know a lot of people see okay. R-rated movies when- I mean, yeah. Like, sure, I guess to it, there are, there are two different levels of things. I was gonna say, ultimately, it's run by people. They do presumably their best. I don't know that they would have some kind of agenda to want to R-rate things to get them away from the- like, maybe there's some people like that, but it, I imagine it can be tough sometimes to know exactly where a film should be rated, right? And I'm, yeah, yeah especially when you've only got like basically four categories to work with, right? And, and of course, there's different reasons for the rate. Like in King's Speech, they there's like the whole scene where he says "fuck shit" like a hundred times. That's probably Obviously, why it has the R rating. Yeah. yeah, totally. Two F words. Yeah, yeah PG thirteen. You're only allowed one fuck. Door Dora the Explorer rule. says the F word twice, and it's rated R. Mm -hmm. And then also, that's right. But if she says once, it's only PG thirteen. Yeah, it's like perfect. fuck boots. Can't she we just go to the effort. goddamn beach? Having like um yeah to get R rated. Let's say for an R rating, uh, all you need is someone to get shot through the head and to show through the whole thing. Do you have like a Joker type film or something with just that scene? And then a film like you know Flesh Pound, the film where they just it's just all gore constantly. It's like how are these two films rated the same? It's like well that's reductive, isn't it? Like that's <laughs> the idea is just that they both qualify. It's not that they both have the same content or anything. Um, but you know, fine. Yeah, I I agree though in some sense that like there's there seems to be some weird shit going on with how things sure, get rated I, sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Super Smash Brothers Melee should not be rated T for Teen. So it's so terrifying with the hand when it grabs you and throws you around. I don't know. You, you get it, yeah, you get yeah you know, with Sephiroth. It's gotta be rated. So violent. And their kid, I did too. 
But also, a lot of parents are strict about that and will not take their kids to see an R-rated film. Okay. And Hollywood knows that. Okay. So the choice to release a movie with an R rating essentially means that they are deliberately cutting off a potential younger audience. Okay. And this is where things get interesting. That doesn't have anything to do with the content inside of it. He says this is where it gets interesting. I'm just like, all right, finally. <laughs> all right, finally. We're getting somewhere, sort of. 45 seconds. Here we go. When we have these major corporations producing movies based on characters originally intended for children, but saying, this is not for them anymore. See, the thing about Hollywood is not that for it's- them anymore. A, they anymore. They no. kids never had a monopoly oh, yeah. on them. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> We're making a specific story for adults about the Joker. It takes place in a completely different world without a Batman. Doesn't mean like no more kids. You're done. That's it. You had yeah. your fun. And if you had a kid who was like, "Oh, but Dad, I really want to see Joker because I love the Joker," you, you'd be like, "Yeah, you can see it when you're old enough. For now, you're gonna have to just enjoy all of the other Joker content that is mm -hmm. suitable for your age." Why is this even being brought up? This is just like, yeah, that's how stuff works, I guess. A reactive. It never has any real plan. It just constantly attempts to copy and replicate whatever money. After the huge opening weekend of the first Deadpool movie, filmmaker James Gunn wrote, over the next few mm. months, you'll see Hollywood misunderstanding the lesson they should be learning from Deadpool. They'll be greenlighting films like Deadpool, but by that, they won't mean good and original, but a raunchy superhero film, or it breaks the fourth okay. wall. Yeah. yeah, so... Sure, we're... I believe that Hollywood will miss the point of a lot of things, and they'll try to copy the aesthetics and the surface-level stuff instead of the deeper meanings or the heart or the soul of something. A sure. lot of people say that, mm -hmm. like, uh, that's what Su Suicide Squad was, like, almost a mishmash, trying to copy several things, one of them being Guardians of the Galaxy, which you can tell from the soundtrack. They were like, Guardians of the Galaxy used a lot of pop songs from, like, the 80s and stuff. We should do that. Let's just throw them in randomly and turn them on and off randomly. Like, there's no rhyme or reason. They just show up and you're just like, oh, there's another song, I guess. Because that's what he's highlighting. They'll learn the wrong lessons and stuff. But, like, this is just a problem that's everywhere. This isn't exclusive to, like, uh, R-rated right. superhero. Because he's already conceding, seemingly, that Deadpool was worth it, it being an, an R-rated Deadpool. And I'm assuming he'd say the same for Logan, despite uh, Wolverine being very much a character that was appreciated by much younger people. So I'm curious how he draws the line. Is it is it not the fact that it happens, but the fact that it gets bungled and it gets excessive for some mm. projects? And it's mm -hmm. just at that point, it's like, yeah, you have a, you have a problem with something else at that point. Mm -hmm. Totally agree with that. And it more R-rated superhero movies, assuming that's the reason it was successful. And a concern I have, just like Jerry Conway said about the comic book industry, is that by continuing down this path, they'll lose the next young audience that is supposed to find these characters. You can't say this while showing Avengers Age of Ultron being promoted here for children. Like, there's way more kid-friendly stuff happening still than there is R-rated stuff. Yeah, especially yeah. when it comes to Marvel. I think we're at either a good balance, or we could use a little more R-rated stuff. Like, um, and I'm not looking for, like, gratuity. I'm looking just for, um, again, stuff like Joker, Logan, whatever. Like, um... Marvel is filled to the brim for children to enjoy the it's so weird that you would appeal this way where it's like, yeah, you'd be the dominant content for superhero stuff that kids can enjoy. Mm -hmm. That's what you're referring to. Yeah. We're all outliers. There's just enough of that deeper stuff to make kids go, huh. Yeah, and, hmm. and, and and so you can't appeal to the idea that there's nothing for children left. He has to go for a balance, and it's like the balance is clearly tipped in children's favor, so I don't know what, what exactly you're advocating for other than enough. No more R-rated children's stuff, or R-rated adaptations of children initially uh, created characters or something, which is just like, dude. Yep, and, and I don't, I mean, Conway was talking about comic books, right? Which is going through a completely different problem than film that would that i wouldn't call it a problem with film by the way but the comic book problem is is going uh too far down the watchman road with certain characters over and over again for too long <clears throat> i yeah, felt like i, I feel like they, there's an argument for possibly them being excessive right like i i would totally yeah. see that argument
Well, comic comics burn everything out, right? They they if it's successful, they'll copy it and just it, you know it's better to burn out than fade away, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the problem currently now is is political and ideological. Uh, they don't want to tell heroic stories. But there's people hungry for them. There's still a huge market out there, and that's why manga is selling like crazy right now. And Indiegogo projects are doing well, and back issues are selling really well, but nobody's buying the new stuff. Uh, and it's political. I wonder but, if Patrick would consider all the woke politics being shoehorned into comics as, you know, inappro- inappropriate adult content, or would that be? Uh, okay? It's not. Bloody. I'm sure you would consider it, it just fine. Probably just fine with him. Yeah, if it was his politics, you bet he'd <laughs> be course. totally fine with yep. it, and he would come up with a reason why his politics are absolutely okay, but politics he doesn't like. Those. Well, this is the thing. No bueno. It's not even quite clear yet if he's simply taking issue with like the baseline stuff like gore, use of drugs, and nudity, or if it's something more significant than that. Like, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Harley is a character on a cartoon for kids. Okay. But those kids grew up and took the character with them. And now she primarily- Does he know that, like, kids are constantly being made? Well, this is the- this is the- <laughs> why I'm confused, because he seems to be going between- <laughs> These arguments himself. He's he's almost highlighted right now. Ah, that's why Harley Quinn stories have changed from being in, almost entirely like uh, mm-hmm. bouncy and friendly to oh now she's in a movie that's R-rated. I'm a cunt. Well, yeah, I was gonna say that's sort mm-hmm. of aside, but agreed. Uh, but, the, but the but then he's Way like to get he was, to the point. <laughs> yeah, he's like that's um that that ex- that explains why that's happening, but. You know, now she can't be enjoyed by kids. It's like, well, what are you talking about? All that stuff you just said that those kids enjoyed still exists. All those kids can still watch it if they want to. They're in the same way, right, that um, something like a Harley Quinn, if we just pretend that he's 100% right, she was a kid's character, now she's been made into an adult character. And that sucks because children can no longer enjoy her who are being, as Rag so aptly pointed out, created now on that little um, conveyor belt of in the baby factory they're all coming out and they can't enjoy harley quinn oh no but like but there's all kinds of kids content getting made that's brand new that they're all gonna love everyone grows up with different characters it's it's okay um i i i know that there'll be parents who are like no 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 uh someone like harley quinn or whoever is like no this character is amazing i want my children to grow up with them and i'd be like oh yeah that's still you still can in the same vein by the way that i would happily show my kids if ever i had some the, the ot I would hell. I'd show them the prequels. I'd be like, yeah, that's yeah. Some fun. Old stuff is still like you could still put the DVD in the tray. Yep. Or yep. stream it. It's still good. And then if they were like, just because it's not new, the like, sequels, kids don't give a shit. I mean, the first time you see it, it's new. And and it's yeah. so, well, and, and I was gonna say, and if someone was like, oh, you know, the sequels are still kid friendly, you can still show the modern Star Wars that's built for them. I'd be like, nah, they're all right. They don't need to see the sequels. <laughs> it's gonna be fine. There's a lot of kids right now exclusively reading manga and older comics, including mine. There, there, there's you can read those books whenever kids. you want. What we're I mean, not the... in a we're not in a children of men universe. There, there's we haven't reached the last generation of kids. And here comes the, uh, the <laughs> there might be take. some being made right now. And, As yeah. we speak, and here comes the, right. here comes the super Can't take. All right, the what people want and what is created sort of work in tandem to a degree. And so like. If you're gonna advocate, like, we should stop doing that. You're like, well, clearly people like it and want it. And if they didn't, it'll die down. And if they want more of it, it'll ramp up. Like, I don't know what else we can mm-hmm. really advocate for at that point in terms of like, I don't, why do you guys want more movies like Logan where you take a superhero you all know well and they put them through a really raw and rough situation to have a movie that's very introspective rather than cheery about how he beat the, and won the day. You'd be like, I don't know. I'd be game for that, that's all. I, mean, I wouldn't mind seeing it. And then if a bunch of other people see it and go, you know what, this is my, yeah, this is my jam. I'm liking this because I'm, I'm in this for different reasons, but I stayed for different reasons. And uh, yeah, yeah, I guess we'll just see how this all unfolds. Early exists in media adults, the HBO Max cartoon and the R-rated movie Birds of Prey. And these things aren't bad. The show is good and the movie is pretty solid, I think. <laughs> I like pretty that he... solid. I mean, I haven't seen it. I just, wow. It seems, uh, that's a low rating considering, right? We'd expect him to say it's great. Pretty solid. Pretty solid. Yeah. Well, he yeah. likes TLJ. He thinks it's a fun. That's he what I'm TLJ saying. He's like the best. If he's describing Birds of Prey as pretty solid, it's like, ooh. <laughs> that's pretty a, solid. quite the indictment. Mm. Which actually means not solid at all. Yeah, I, f- I feel like that's him saying it's not very good, but he can't say it because his team, his team is supposed to be okay with Birds of Prey. Yeah. 
I'm glad that I don't have to worry about that. Nope. We don't. <laughs> certainly on EFAP, we don't have any teams. It seems like we Warner could... Brothers and DC. Oh, did you, were you going to say something? We get to like whatever we like, which is so liberating. Oh, yes. Yeah. Isn't it? Freedom. It's great. And these things aren't bad. The show is good, and the movie is pretty solid, I mm -hmm. think. But it seems like Warner Brothers and DC have <laughs> abandoned solid, the 10 year old audience good. that. No. Is he is he I, arguing I, that is he arguing that IP should have some consistency like they should like Batman should be either G rated or R rated but having various properties at various different rating levels is the problem seems like he might be going down that road mm -hmm. I mean wouldn't you argue that the last Jedi destroyed you know destroying the character of Luke is is needlessly edifying or trying to adultify complicate his character as opposed to just appealing to the child character from the originals um, didn't they have like I charred remains exactly of his aunt character. knuckle in the original movie i mean i felt yeah, like that as a good. kid <laughs> i was like holy cow they're still on fire the whole notion of like you know in, in the original star wars you know luke is good and the empire is bad it's a simpler you know mythos that tlj kind of destroys and turns upside mm -hmm. down Tilja destroys everything. Uh, the, that, the, that's heady stuff. Having the 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 uh, uh, uncle and aunt immolated, uh, I feel like it would actually get them a higher rating if it was released today, because that is quite the visual. You're just like, holy fuck! Well, it was is. that before PG yeah. thirteen or was that after PG thirteen? Good question. It was, it was the seventies, right? I don't know. Let Char me double Char check. Oh. First PG thirteen movie. I remember seeing um, that as a kid and was Red like, Dawn oh my God. was 84. So yeah, this was seven years before the first PG-13 rated movie. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah, episode three has some stuff in there that they probably had to, they probably, I could imagine episode three had to go through a couple of edits after the, they, it was first watched in terms of like, you can't, you've gone too That's far. That's what I've heard. And, yeah. Do I heard the original a... like uh, Order 66 was a lot more like dark and uh, but see, like, showy. I wouldn't hmm. actually be against that. I'd be like, I'd be oh, fine shit, with it. we want to do that? All right. But then again, this is getting really complicated because if you had, like, a PG-rated story and its sequel is R-rated, it is getting a bit like, wait, okay, yeah. that's, hmm, all right, mm -hmm. this is weird now because continuity-wise, like, you have to wait a few years before you can see the rest of this story. Like, okay, that's, to me, that's really unconventional. It's not something I want to say you can't do, you know? Be like, hmm, hmm all right, I guess. Um, but over the well, it's, this... it's the only solid argument. It's the only argument that may have some merit to it, just for practical reasons. Like well, yeah, if you do course. a Deadpool that's like PG thirteen, and then the next Deadpool is X rated, and it comes out like <laughs> in a year. But the there are going to be a lot of kids that are like, "I'm very disappointed by this." I think the argument's on shaky ground though, because if we went, let's say, there's fifteen movies in the series, and the first one is PG, and the the twelfth one is R rated, and in between is every sort of shade that extends between yeah. it's like is that all right and it's like they come out yearly so it actually matches up with your average audience member's age or something i just be like hmm doesn't yeah, i don't like, know that he's making that argument though no I well don't i don't think he would be either yeah. i'm saying like what do you think about that what do we think about that it's like i think it's really interesting to have a movie grow up with the audience member in terms of what it's willing to show and talk about i would argue that that's actually happening because i always yeah, I feel so. like these people you know, each generation, they want their guy in there writing their movie. Like, he's the one that knows all the inside jokes of that generation. He's the one that has experienced all the things of that generation. So I argue that artists do grow up with, you know, the generation around them. That's uh, Harry, logical. Harry Potter did that. Yeah, totally. You might yeah. yeah. Harry Potter. Um, because one of the, a good example, that's the one just brought up in chat. It's like uh, Buffy. Se have come. Se season one of Buffy is very campy and silly and stuff. By the time you hit season six, it's like, oh, let's talk about grief, suicide, drug abuse. And you're just like, Jesus, okay. Um, yeah. Wait, for mm -hmm. Harry Potter? Oh, yeah, definitely. No, Buffy. <laughs> oh, I was about to say, yeah, because I, I, I don't know. I guess my mind blanked and I thought we were still talking about Harry Potter and like drug abuse. Harry Potter, day oh. one, Harry Potter is suicidal. Yeah, remember Harry the... Potter takes crack. Harry Potter and the Harry dangers Potter of withdrawal. The chamber of weed. <laughs> Harry Potter and the magic meth. Oh yeah. yeah, there you go. I'm down for that. Really, if yep. they want to make that movie, I would totally watch it. 
Harry Potter with a half pound of cocaine. Like, Harry oh. Potter. <laughs> there you go. And, <laughs> and the magical cocaine. Harry yeah, the, 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 the final movie. Abortion. Harry Potter and the machine elves. The final movie starts to pause it like, what, did any of this actually happen? And you're like, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. No, Harry Potter no. wakes up under the staircase after a horrific LSD trip about him becoming a <laughs> wizard. And then it, now you're talking. You do the zoom out of a mental institution as he bangs against the wall saying, I'm a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, let's go really dark. We have that movie. It's Pan's Labyrinth. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's true. Mm hmm. Um, all right, anyway. That the character created for. If you spend much time in nerd circles of the internet, or if you, like I have, tweet about the idea of R-rated superhero movies, you'll encounter an indisputable fact. This is something a lot of fans want. Twitter and Reddit yeah. and various yeah. forums. I think that makes complete sense. Um, sure. It depends on what kind of argument they would be making, though. If we were in a call right now and someone said, I want R-rated superhero movies because I explicitly want to see Flash, I should be like, Okay. <laughs> I just... That's yeah. weird that that's your goal. Yeah. Um, if you ask me, I'd be like, well, I'm interested in stressing out the characters in situations that are really difficult and, like, morally dubious and seeing how they deal with it. Especially characters with power that go beyond, yeah. like, what we have in our everyday life. I, A Superman having to deal with really hard... Because a lot of people like to try and argue that Man of Steel is that. It's Superman dealing with it in a realistic way. It's like, yeah, <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> um, no, stop it. And you know, the boys season one wanted to try and sort of say that. It's like we're we're trying to do mm -hmm. superheroes but in a real world and how they might behave and what could happen. It's like, I really like these ideas. I want to see more of them. I want to see them done well. Um, it's not at all tied to I want to see tits and, and, and just blood splatters and drugs getting used all the time. It's not really about that at all. Yeah, in there fact, I would say that hurts that. season two because season two of the boys, it comes across as very childish and immature with its depiction of those things. Oh, it it's loves just, doing violence all the time. It's like, it's, look at our violence. It, it's kind of, it, it almost, I, I can't think of anything else that has ever made me be put off by that sort of thing because of just how, I guess gratuitous is kind of a word for it. Well, yeah, she uh, How gratuitous that, it is. There's a part where Kamiko, like, peels off a man's face, and you're like, yeah. Why are we doing yeah. this? It's like, well, why? you know, it's and and I wouldn't even like if someone was like it happened in the comics or something. I'd just be like, yeah, I mean, but why? Like, <laughs> I just. Oh, um, don't ever look at anything by Avatar Press then. Oh no, that's yeah, that's horrible. Then no, that Garth Ennis really loves to get his uh, darkness out with that stuff, and the boys wow. was tame compared to his other stuff. And if, and if anyone wants to be like, wow, season one had violence too, it's like, yeah, I know, but season two, uh, when they drive into the whale and they have its heart beating next to Huey as he sits on it mm -hmm. with flash all over him, it's like, clearly they've cranked it up a bit. Yeah, it's just, we that, have to, it's like, it feels like it's just violence and gore for its own sake. Yeah. But best case scenario, it's operating at both levels, though. Like, it's operating at the intellectual level, and it's operating at the... I mean, you can't deny that there is an audience for people who just want to see, like, fantastical gore. Like, yep. how the whole horror genre is based sure, on that. Yeah. So check this out, right? Yeah. You got all superhero movies should be R-rated. So fuck that guy. I don't know who said that. That's stupid. All superhero movies should be R-rated. It's like, no, no, no. But look at this one. X-Men doesn't need a new set of movies. X-Men needs a... I, Netflix, Netflix like series, series an R rated series written by people who actually care about the characters in the story, not by soulless people who only care about something and filling seats. Dollars. Um, so like, I, I, I might be, I, this might not be the argument this person's making, but I would be interested in knowing, like, yeah, so what can we do with R rated X Men? It's like, well, first of all, X Men is about a group of people who are like considered different and worse than humans and there's lots that you can do with that that have, is very mature and they have powers to fight back and Mag Magneto as a character and what he does it's like I could see that being much but like in isolation you'd be like well of course whatever movie he's going to be a part of is going to be probably going to be adult rather than childlike and it's like there's there's lots of potential with X-Men um, in terms of making a very adult sort of storyline in terms of how things turn out of course, you remember X Men: The Lost Stand. It's like mutants versus humans to a degree, but it's very yeah. tame. There's a woman who is stabbed by a hedgehog man, and it's there's no blood, there's no anything. She, she sort of falls over. <laughs> it's just like yeah, it, there's lots of killing. There's lot and, and there's lots of harsh things being said, and understanding what it means 
to be in a, a society and accepting people for who they are and stuff. And it's just like, yeah, there's lots you could do there. I'm okay with that. And if someone said, yeah, but X-Men is meant to be for kids or something, I'd just be like, you could still watch the kid-friendly stuff. It's still there. I never just, went the, away. The thing about the gore, though, is the gore lies on a spectrum where the story doesn't necessarily lie on a spectrum because there are certain people... You know they're they're not going to be a f turned off if the story is intellectually interesting, but there are people that are going to be turned off if there's too much gore. So it really seems like it's a battle over the yeah. you know how much gore is the right amount of gore without losing the entire audience. I, I'm I could go pretty far. I mean I think I like the like ripping off of limbs and stuff just for the sake of it, but I I don't know I, well, I'm straight that department yeah I, i'm not trying to come across as like a prude who's like no i don't want it unless it's absolutely necessary it's like it really depends on on like a context all i want to do is not be seen as someone who's like that's why i like our raid stuff i love it when yeah. Batman rips a head off someone throws it at the wall it smashes into pieces like no that's not like that, yeah best i want to know that nothing though, is necessarily off limits yeah best case scenario though is if the story is totally tight like you're feeling the story and the gore is there at the same time and it's done tastefully and why well, it's done well let's put it that way i don't know if but then of course because well. i'm boobs. thinking about it and i'm like but then yeah, i wouldn't mind definitely. maybe an over-the-top superhero movie that does go nuts with the gore but it's in a tarantino kind of way i suppose totally yes and, yeah, and yeah. but like the tone reflects it and yeah, you know robocop did robocop broke all the rules doing that shit and this is like the thing we've million... got so many options and i don't want r rated to suddenly be like you want to see heads explode it's like no it's like it maybe but like in certain you know no, i mean as long as it goes with the story <laughs> sure yeah um random so, heads exploding there's so well, that few could be cool as well um the the, the it, it makes me wonder why even this video seems like it might be relevant someday at some point but like now doesn't seem like the time like we're yeah. not because um i was just thinking about how uh yeah they're saying evil dead in the chat evil dead too oh man come on oh, yeah, this, this is this is evil dead season one was great oh my oh. god incredible and they always tried to uh, outdo themselves every episode you yeah, like, there are totally times crazy? where we could totally do this stuff that's the thing and so he's collecting everyone who said they want r-rated superhero stuff it's like all right mm -hmm. in the context it's of comedy it really works because that you're allowed to go a little bit further when it's comedy because you know it's it's comedy of course of people begging studios for R-rated movies about Superman or the X-Men. Matt Reeves' upcoming Batman movie doesn't have a rating yet, but a hell of a lot of people are hoping it gets an R. So... I would presume... I just, I'm just hoping it's good. Yeah, same. I presume people want the R rating so that it has no restriction and it can be whatever it wishes to be. That That's yes. usually a sentiment we appeal to. Yeah. Um, exactly. I know if something if something is supposed to happen in that universe, it's allowed to be depicted to us. Yeah, and we think that's pretty cool. Um, and this is the thing: if someone wanted to be like, "Well, in fairness, Batman is meant for an audience of blah blah blah," I'd just be like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, like this children. There's like a bazillion <laughs> Batman at this point. I don't see why we mm -hmm. can't have one that's R-rated." Yeah, there's no intrinsic rules baked into Batman that it has to be this rating. Yeah, I mean, Brave and the Bold was great. I loved that. Yeah, was a Batman kid's could cartoon. Teach me the was... alphabet. Fuck. Why yeah. Not? <laughs> so. mm. Why is that? Looking at the various R rated superhero media that exists, they tend to get that rating for one specific reason. It's not sex or nudity. It's Gore. not really profanity. It's definitely not drug use. It's violence. <laughs> If a superhero movie oh is rated R, God, that, was that, <laughs> that was awesome. Okay. I mean, he's right, I think, but like now, I guess we wait for why this is a bad thing. I suppose. Oh my yeah. God, that was awesome. That guarantees that it's because it contains more extreme violence than the genre usually has, and this tends to be for one of two reasons. Okay. Reason one. Indulgence. While in real life, I flee from any instance of conflict and do not <laughs> generally condone violence. 
I can totally he's just not. He's where he's like, do not. <laughs> I think he said do not generally condone violence because of the riots. He probably said that because of that. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. Riots are good when my side does it. Honestly, I'm very pro riot when it's my side. I think he would have said he doesn't condone violence if not for the riots having happened. He probably would have been like, "Yep, violence bad." He's yep. like, All right, yeah, violence is sometimes bad, though. Yeah. <laughs> Except when we do it, then it's fine. It's the language so of the unheard. Is it's like punching Nazis. I'll well, oh okay. my you should God. There we go. Oh, yeah. What do you know? Just like fucking clockwork. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, oh, damn, Patrick. Like fucking I was, clockwork. I was Can inferring it, him? and then he just came out and said it. Because obviously, the what do you think we're going to say to this, Patrick? It's like, and who's deciding who the Nazi is, Patrick? Hmm. Mm -hmm. With the amount of times that I've been called Nazi, yeah, I'm not too confident in your guys' ability to accurately uh, point out Nazis. Yep. He, he did that in his Matrix video too. He drag he drugged Trump into the video. I was like, <laughs> Jesus, what the fuck? Wait, have you covered have you guys covered Patrick Willems before? Or? What the fuck? Have you guys ever covered Patrick Willems? That sounds amusing. Uh no. We oh. did. You totally should. <laughs> Just we, grab a topic. We may have. You know, when you're when you're at 126 shows, uh -huh. you know. Oh yeah, difficult. we uh have you ever but to remember I think it was it episode 100 rags that it was the first time that we I, I started up a video and I was like oh shit it's people in chat were like you've covered this before and I was like oh fuck uh, <laughs> I <laughs> think it was oh, yeah it was bound to happen yeah we've never done that your time will come one day uh, no. maybe you could <laughs> that cinematic violence can be ex also it's, very, it's not okay to punch nazis you can't just go around punching people for their political beliefs i don't know why um, this is hard to understand if you the yeah. logic ends up in the fucking dumpster you're like but we can punch the super bad satan people right and you're like yeah that sounds okay on paper i guess and it's like but how do you define them and like well now everything falls apart so actually no Come on, you guys have seen Indiana Jones. You know how we roll. <laughs> it's very clear. You can always spot them. <laughs> I have to rip their heart out before they rip my heart out. The oh yeah, that's right. Rags. I have wearing... no heart. <laughs> if they are wearing like a Nazi armband, yeah, you know, maybe we're having a conversation. The... <laughs> it says punch me on, you know. Full Nazi outfit and is part of the German army in the 1940s. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You they still pulled can't out punch a, him and let your arm out for. You know what? I love the idea that Patrick's walking down the street and some guy is just open. He's wearing the whole Nazi gear, and then Patrick is like, "Wait, you're you're a Nazi?" He's like, "Absolutely, I believe fully in every single aspect of the, of the Nazis." And, and he just goes, I "I'm gonna punch you." Just picture the Nazi. Black like, Lives Matter. <laughs> this is yellow Blacks turtleneck. His. Punching outfit. <laughs> the guy, like, I can picture the guy moving toward him, but then he just like, you know, keeps his head down, puts his neck into the tail deck, and slowly walks away. Like, yeah, okay. Don't. I generally Patrick so slowly that. retreats into his turtleneck. <laughs> he goes all the way down and shrinks, and then it's just clothes on the floor. He's yeah, gone. his head could probably go down there. An actual turtle crawls out of the clothes pile. <laughs> is true ultimate form. Mm. Unless it's like punching Nazis, I'll be the first to admit that cinematic violence can be extremely satisfying. I'm only human and I've okay. cheered at my fair share okay. of headshots. I'm gonna say, Patrick, you're not doing good for your argument at this point though, if you've just yeah, established no. this. Well, now we're in a little this bit of video. trouble. And impalements and disembowelings. I'm not trying to start a whole exploration of the psychological catharsis of on-screen violence, but I understand the psychology. impulse for more. I remember when I was 14. And oh, okay, all right. Look, you don't like. I don't know. Maybe I'm reading this a little bit harshly, but I just like the idea. He's like, look, I understand. I was 14 once. You're like, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was young and sure, when I liked the things that you like now. Yeah, that's sort of aspect. 14-year-old girls don't typically like violence, though. So you have to be a 14-year-old boy to understand this argument. Mm -hmm. And how excited I was at the rumors that the extended editions of the Lord of the Rings movies might be rated R for additional violence. They weren't. They remained PG-13. But at the time, I was thrilled that Peter Jackson snuck in a few extra decapitations. And then I got older, and I realized how... You see what I mean? And then I got older. Like, okay. and I bought a turtleneck. <laughs> I, I started reading. I decided and... turtlenecks with jackets was the way to go. Yeah, mm -hmm. something happened along the way.
absurd and pointless an R-rated Lord of the Rings would be. Absurd and pointless. Okay. It wouldn't be. It wouldn't be absurd or pointless. Like, this is an interesting one because if someone said like, "Do you want to see Lord of the Rings in R like R-rated?" I'd probably be like, "I, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't really. Not really." I, I'm I, I... wary to see another Lord of the Rings, regardless of. Rating. Yeah, I think that's where my I'd actual say, issue I'd comes from. I say go from. for it. Sure. But if, I don't know, if someone said, like, Peter Jackson wants to do a cut and he has all of everything filmed where it's an R-rated sort of version, and if all that was added was extra gore, I'd be like, I don't really care. But if, um, I'm trying to think of how you would do it. Like, maybe more is, is, is addressed, more things that are a little harsher and going further into characters that are, like, like not necessarily as, as obvious. Into, just, like, really rough stuff maybe um about the different because there's plenty in orderings you could possibly explore there like obsession and addiction and like the you need a giant vat of toxic waste that's what you need oh yeah definitely. yeah it would just be violence there's nothing else they could really put in from the lord of the rings that would make it rated oh yeah on. it would have to be something they're yeah. bringing to the table because i doubt the I books i want to see Arya's tits <laughs> unless you put the hobbits in dancing around naked after i want to see frodo's Bombadil hobbit team. hole well, yeah some people are. but yeah um not something i've ever this is the thing, I would need to be sold on the potential, I guess. And that's kind of where I'm looking at with the superhero ones, like the X-Men one. I feel like you can make a good case for why you could make an R-rated one that's worthwhile. But if also what's got is, well, it's gonna be like Superman, but there's gonna be heads exploding and stuff, I should be like, I don't, I don't know, alright. You, you want to go on a little bit more than that. And, and like he's like, yeah, I grow up. And you're like, eh. <laughs> I, I feel like he's conflated two mindsets, you. right? Like, mm -hmm. um, the, the investment in sort of like the grindhouse type stuff doesn't make you a fourteen year old enjoying like uh overt violence with with the right context versus someone just who's just like Lord of the Rings would be better if there was more heads getting chopped off. Like, yeah, okay. But go on. That was always intended to be for all ages. And then the extended edition of the third Hobbit movie, an R rating, which is extra weird because the Hobbit was always more of a children's story than Lord of the Rings. But look, we all know. Oh my God! I didn't. I didn't know there was so much <laughs> violence. Well, it was happening so fast you couldn't see it. Yeah. So. Jeez. Yeah. That they made some questionable choices with the Hobbit trilogy. I'm using that anecdote as a way of saying that I understand the desire for amplified violence in these stories. But my question is, what is it really adding? Superhero stories are, in one way or another, power fantasies. The premise is that people uh, gain spectacular, impossible hmm. abilities and use those- I mean, it depends if- I don't know. Like, it, it depends on how you see yourself in relationship to the superhero. Uh, I, I think it's in relation to the superhero. Like, I, I would say it's a power fantasy if you imagine yourself with them, or mm -hmm. if you. This is the thing. I'm much more invested in seeing what they do when I understand who they are and how much power they have. That's sort of my yeah. connection to it, rather than, man, I wish I was this. Because I'm not going to say that's not like I'm sure that is for a lot of people as well as perhaps myself with certain uh, superhero movies, I guess. But like, for example, like you know, Civil War is like I'm much more interested in seeing who I understand to be Cap and Iron Man trying to wrestle out what is happening in this world. If someone's like, well, it's power fantasy, I'd be like, not really. Like, honestly. N not, not really. Um, it, it is when, I mean, like, when you're a kid, sure. Yeah. Like you guys just said, if you're imagining, like, I am going to pretend I'm Spider-Man for the next two hours, and that's that's like a seven, eight, nine-year-old mindset. It depends on when you watch it and how you watch it. Like, a bunch of us wanted to see these superhero movies because we read the comics, and then some people just went in cold without reading the comics, and just a good story, a good timeless story will be enjoyed for different reasons, uh, mm -hmm. no matter what time it, 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 you change throughout life yeah. uh he just said that so i i yeah i have no idea where he's going with this it's it's seems contradictory because you know patrick seems to be arguing that it's there needs to be more stuff aimed at children and as you said the comics aimed at children superhero stuff aimed at children could be more about power fantasy the kid wants to imagine himself as being a superhero but all the adult uh superhero material that he sort of seems to not like or thinks is too mm -hmm. much of that stuff could not be it. That stuff's not at all a power fantasy. Like, no, no. one's watching Logan and thinking, like, oh, I want to be old man Logan slowly dying. <laughs> yeah. no one's Joker thinking, like, oh, I want to, you know, 
be isolated from society and yeah right? well and this is what i think he's doing so, so many he's doing so many of the situations are of like the people are powerless batman you know his parents are killed uh same with spider-man spider-man is uh his doesn't uncle. stop the yeah his uncle is killed uh x-men they're all uh under the thumb of the humans i mean it's all about being powerless um being able to fight back against a power i suppose with power you could you could argue um right. sort of there but uh what i think he's he's doing a little bit of a sneaky here he's he said like they become r-rated and it's like agreed what is the typical reason they get the r rating well gore and what is that even adding to these films almost as if we've now got the formula up in the air that they only are rated because of gore gore adds really nothing meaningful therefore they shouldn't be r rated i'd be like whoa we're missing a lot of um as we've kind of gone over it's not necessarily like like there's lots of the things that get added i'd say that the gore will be so like a circumstance like you know joker if you remove all of the overt violence it's still pretty mature that film in terms of like mm -hmm. what it's dealing with I don't think kids yeah. are going to watch it and be like, woohoo! They're going to be like, whoa, this is uh, hmm. Joker's a total, another powerless character. Do you think he's going to mm -hmm. make the argument that since superhero movies are power fantasies and adult ones are more violence driven, that this is creating a generation of, of young adults who want to enact violence on people? <laughs> Might be surprised he's if gonna he... lack all self awareness whatsoever and say that. I, I don't know that he's gonna go that. <laughs> that it's direction. the car, it's the comic um, books that are causing all of this. Is violence. he gonna make the incel argument? But this is the thing. I think that um, a film being mature and aimed for adults is actually not in the same category as whether or not it's R rated. In the sense that um, you can have what was that like Eli Roth is a person who makes a lot of R rated stuff that is absolutely fucking juvenile. Um, <laughs> but then you have films that could be quite like not necessarily child friendly but rpg um hey rpg i just said that in a sentence without it meaning mm -hmm. what it sounds like uh, oh weird um, role playing gore <laughs> um what rate what age rating was um 12 angry men for example cuz the original or the remake 12 12 angry men the 50s what one, age right? range um yeah cuz well, cuz are you saying that all ages. I could be theoretical anyway. So let's just say there was a film like 12 Angry Men and it was a PG or even, what is it, U is, is like universal. Mm -hmm. It can be watched by everyone or whatever. But like a kid watching it would be like, this is shit. Like, I'm bored. A bunch of guys right. are talking yeah, about something. Totally. And you'd be like, yeah, because it's more for an adult audience, I would say, but it's not R-rated. And so what I guess I'm getting at is when people see that the next Batman movie is going to be R-rated, they'll be like, oh shit, that is an indicator that there may very well be content for adults in it. The, lots of stuff for us to think about, to chew on, more so than is typically present in some... So present basically, by definition, yeah. if it's rated R, there's content for adults in it. Well, I'm trying, I guess, to separate out, like... Because he's he's almost made it seem now that it's mainly gore that makes this happen. And I'm just like, yeah, but it's, it, that's not necessarily what we're in it for. Like, Right. Well, it's like the King's speech is, you know, it's only rated R because of the cursing, but the studio didn't care because they knew kids weren't going to like it anyway. Yeah, so I don't like think they feel like they've lost their market if they are rated. Right, exactly. So you're saying like with the Batman movie, if it's rated R, it's not just a signal that, oh, it's going to be violence and gore it's a signal that maybe this will be a more darker you know grittier interpretation of batman that's yeah. not necessarily um, action because if we had two batmans you didn't know who wrote and directed it but one was pg and one was r-rated which one do you think is going to have the light like likelihood not is just likelihood which one's going to have more adult shit in it and you'd be like the r-rated one r-rated one right. And it's like, well, it turns out the R-rated one is just this goofy, childish set of gore. It's just blood splashing all over the place, and Batman just be like, uh, with his machine gun just killing everyone. <laughs> Meanwhile, the PG one is something really contemplative, but safe in right. terms of allowing kids to see it. And you're like, oh, so I was wrong. But the R rating implied to me that it wouldn't. And that's just how people look at it, I think, which is totally fair, because it often will uh, be the case. Like Logan. Logan's R-rated. And it's like, oh, shit, we're going to have like a... And you watch the trailer, and you're like, oh, my God, this is going to be like really introspective because it's it they, that film looks back on like the the franchise uh, as it as it stands the uh the one that hugh jackman's a part of and it's like this is really really interesting i can't wait to see how he defines power fantasy mm -hmm. i think birds of prey is the only superhero movie i know that's a power <laughs> fantasy yep the premise is that people gain spectacular impossible abilities and use those abilities to do what we wish we could 
fly or save the world or fight. <laughs> save the world shows Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> if you say so. All and right, he, sure. Pedro Pascal, okay. Mm. Mm. It's corruption and evil. And most often, these stories are about characters using those abilities to solve problems with violence. And again, to be clear, fictional violence is very often cool and fun. The audience is usually okay. meant to identify yeah. with the heroes. So when the violence is amplified in our race, Oh, is it real violence can be cool and fun? Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> what is, what is like, like what all you... of the violent sports? This is how about if not like something that they want to no, do like, what, like boxing ufc that's yeah cool that's what i'm saying real sure violence. totally football yeah. is violence. if you don't want to admit that the people doing it are finding it fun you can't deny the audience find it fun like of course they do mm -hmm. weird that he said that again to be clear fictional violence is very often cool and fun the audience is usually meant to identify it seems like a weird edit he put in after the fact do you for think some maybe reason, he like, but I don't know why. Yeah, maybe I'm trying to think of why he would think he needed to say that. I don't know. Like he well, wants to yeah, clarify that know. he does he's, he's okay with violence in, in films, I guess, in case people thought he yeah. wasn't. With the it's a weird thing. The default should be that you're okay with fictional violence. Fictional violence. Yeah, we yeah. like I guess cuz you want you want to knock out like gratuitous stuff and just like yeah, we're suitable in context. O obviously, everyone everyone thinks yeah, I'm, this. Yeah, I don't approve of literally everything ever. Yeah and fun. The audience is usually meant to identify with the heroes, so when the violence is amplified in R-rated films, what is it accomplishing other than making these heroes appear more powerful and brutal? Why would that more not realistic be... realistic consequences to the things that they do. Yeah, and why, right. why would that cool. have no, like... He makes that sound like it's worthless. It's like, isn't it really useful? We talk about this all the time with villains being introduced, showing how much power they have to let us know where the stakes lie. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And same with heroes. If we want to believe, like, how strong is Superman? He fucking punches someone and they, like, fling across the room. You know, punches a car right through. He's just like, oh, I get it now. I get it. I've, I'm very there, clear there's on this his thing power. In there's this thing in movies called stakes. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. It can achieve a lot. Um, it's, it's, very, it's very simple. We have to know what the stakes are. As well, yeah, yeah, I never feel like the stakes in Dora the Explorer... Very high. Well, no. she could like, get worst lost. case scenario, she doesn't get to where she wanted to go that day, so she tries again the next day. It's high stakes. You know, it, well, I don't have to worry about worry about her being kidnapped and raped and sold into slavery <laughs> somewhere. You know, she's I like, think Dora's gonna be all right. She's like on a waterfall edge. She goes, "Whoa!" We're all expected to be pulled back. There's no she real consequences falls. for Dora. It's her head on a rock, her teeth splay out, and blood's everywhere, and she struggles to get up, and then she drowns, she can't quite swim properly at that point. And you're just like, wow, we went into Happy Tree Friends all of a sudden, because that's... Which, by the way, anyone without context will be so confused by what I just said. One of you guys know what I'm talking about, right? I know about Happy Tree Friends. Yeah. Violence, is so easy. Violence is like the stakes, just manifest. Primally yes. manifest on screen. Yeah. Yes, I mean, it's, it's a tool, and um, by the way, you're if we're going to get up. really... If you're fucked up. If we're gonna get really thingy here, like like uh, seeing someone punch someone, is are you only liking that because you just enjoy watching the violence or watching justice being served to someone who's a piece of shit? Someone should be like, is that bad? Yeah, maybe I do <laughs> just yeah. like seeing people get punched. Like, yeah, we can yeah, enjoy we a like. fight. Uh, so like, yeah, you need to convince me why that's not good enough to have it in there. I guess. In game theatrical. Oh wait, sorry, you gonna say something? No, I was gonna say in the Daredevil series, I think one of the the violence is important of the story it shows you again the stakes the realism and this guy with no power well with the only power is he can uh, see in 360 he's blind and he's taking on this like extremely dangerous world guys are getting their heads cut off with car doors he's fighting like nine guys in a hallway and he's coming mm. through and it, it adds to it it adds to the realism the verisimilitude so it's a very important and yeah what you said earlier it's ridiculous to have wolverine killing a bunch of people there's not a drop of blood anywhere and, and you ask your you know and the same thing happens in the comics too to be honest with you you know and it gets I, ridiculous that's kind of the, no the thing i guess like takes. It, 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 it that's what i mean with like when you watch logan you don't go oh my god they've taken my child thing and they've made it an adult thing instead it's like oh shit it is what it is now whoa yep right it was something different that i mean in that case that they, they took x-men somewhere where we never thought they would take it was like the darkest ending possible saddest it, it's a it's a dark ass movie but it's great that i've only seen once because it's so dark but and, that, and and i guess this bringing us around to a point of just like yeah i mean 
superheroes. They have way more power than the average person, and they typically fight crime. Violence? Mm -hmm. That's gonna come up. That's gonna <laughs> come up. Once in a while. Once in a while. It would seem silly if it didn't come up. And then you'd be like, well, now we talk about should the violence be pow, and then they fall over, or should it be and then blood splatter, you're like, oof. And it's like, yeah, well, that's the conversation, I guess. And it's about context. Well, pretty soon, uh, you know, Marvel's going to start adapting their modern comics and we'll have She-Hulk sitting around a table watching YouTube videos and eating food. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Ooh, yeah. I, ooh, I eat food. That's relatable. Yeah. Yeah. Food's relatable. I do. Too. <laughs> it's relatable. She's going to fight crime by streaming. She's going to have a podcast. That's right. Called Cut. Man v. Superman. Batman flings a wooden crate at a random goon and we go... <laughs> Wow, Batman really hurt that guy. But the R-rated no, director's cut them. adds a smear of blood where the goon's head hits the wall. And we go, wow, I think Batman killed that guy. I always thought he was dead yeah. regardless of the yeah, blood splatter. Yeah, I don't know yeah. how you, yeah. He, you he toss a crate way, into mate. that man's face and it rams him into a brick wall. He's dead. <laughs> Getting recovered from that's going to be he tough. He fucking died. Um, I suppose I the... Made the Oh, wait, is that, and the blood. <laughs> is that him almost advocating that the blood was a plus there then? Because it tells us the truth of the situation? Or is it mm -hmm. that he's saying, is the only reason you put it there to tell us he was dead? That's that's lame. Definitely raises the stakes, doesn't it? The I blood it raises is. the stakes. Well, that's, that's the thing, it, right? It's if you... confirmation, I guess, in a way of yeah. in what isolation, trying to say. When you have a person punched and they go, oof, and then they punch back, and that person goes, ow, and then they carry on versus one punch and it like hits like the watermelon and it's they slow it down a little bit and then like blood comes up. you remember um the end of spider-man one the raimi one like you definitely get a sense of like oh shit this battle's a little bit more um this is a little yeah, bit more this serious is life or death. yeah now i'm feeling like i'm actually very concerned for spider-man's life because of how they're portraying the yeah, fight this is no common thug and so I'd be interested to know if you would think that it was unsuitable there or, or what did it achieve by having it more violent um yeah, this guy does story essays. I don't know why he's not bringing up the stakes. Seems important. Well, we're only halfway through. <laughs> Maybe he will. Oh God! Stop! He's already dead. You can't oh, apply that. Good. That was the first thing he did to the guy. First and last thing. <laughs> A crate to the face can really fuck you up, I guess. Yeah. Even when he showed fight Batman, what the fuck? It's making the inherent power fantasy more sadistic. What? Sadistic. No, that's just oh. no. <laughs> Somebody okay. was shooting at man. Okay, Somebody was shooting at him. A bunch of guys were shooting at him. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, it makes it more realistic. I was that's gonna say, it's just like, wait, on the flip side, you're just looking for a world where you get to hide away from real consequence of what things do to you. Like, you're just like, I don't want to know. I don't want to know that someone sadistic died. Is deriving pleasure from inflicting pain, suffering, or humiliation on others. So, no, because it's a movie, there is no actual pain or suffering or humiliation happening. Well, I suppose his argument would be, what's the word when you say, like, you enjoy it from, like, a... as though someone's... you enjoy it that someone else is performing it and you get it, um... There's a word for this, I've completely forgotten what it is. Come on, guys, Vicariousness? Vicariously? Yeah, I think that's what I was going to go Direction? No, sorry. Wrong word. <laughs> um... Like, like I vicariously enjoy watching someone torture someone else, even in fiction, because I can believe that that's what I could be doing right now. All right, oh, so but it's like no, fuck off. If if I would again, we brought the spear example with Black Panther. I was in the cinema and I saw that happen. I was like, that's strange. It's not that I want her to bleed from the deck. It's that I was just like, mm -hmm. wait, what are you telling me just happened? Like, did she is she okay? So is yeah, okay? how did she die? Yeah, what's wrong and, with her? And so if you show Batman crushing a guy's fucking skull with something and it's just like, yeah, he fell over, he's okay. I'd just be like, okay, fine, I guess. <laughs> and what? someone's like, oh, I added blood. Don't you feel sadistic now? It's like, no. What if we know, what if they set up that that guy's a huge transphobe? Is it, <laughs> and is it okay? And he deserves <laughs> it. Uh, he's a Nazi. And it wasn't sadistic enough, right? What matters here is simply what happens on screen it's how it's portrayed. Right. The thing about cinema is that the visual language being used tells us how we're supposed to feel about it. Oh, really? So when it comes to portrayals wow. of violence, mm. look at... Yeah, I'm getting such an education here. So. This wow. scene in he A went Clockwork to film Orange. School. It shifts between these dispassionate, static wide shots 
Yeah, every everyone watches Clockwork Orange as a power fantasy. Oh, yeah. exactly. They just want to kill and rape. I guess that's his yes. point, is that it's it's portrayed as much more clear in terms of what is happening is bad, and he's obviously going to cycle back to BVS and be like, the violence here is awesome, and that's wrong because all, this is sadistic or something like that. We're all here empathizing with Alex. You know you are. You know you wish you were Alex. You sadistic in fuckers in chat. No. We know. This is so poison. It is the real well. droog posting hours, my dude. Well, it's just, I think he's, he's counted himself. He's trying to say, like, um... Patrick? Know, no. So, cinema, as a, as a format, it will tell you... Like, so, you know, like, if I punch um, a little kid to death and the, in the background the music is, is triumphant, you, you'd you all be like, what the fuck? Like, why? Yeah, totally. <laughs> like, um, guy, the, the child has been vanquished. Meanwhile, if, if we win the day and sad music plays and I look really sad, we're all like, oh, is there something going on we didn't catch? What's 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 wrong? Like, what, why, you know, because it's that's just how it works. And he's, I guess he's trying to say, that when Batman threw that crate of that guy in the blood splat on the wall, that the film is happy for you to enjoy that sadistically. And you're like, oh. Because there's only I mean, two. It's a, it's a means to an end. Well, I'm glad this is that what a I'm... good thing is happening as a result. This is where my point's going. He's he's almost implied, even though he set this up with film language is complicated and can tell you many things, he's basically said, like, either you condemn it or you promote it. And it's like, or you're no, sadistic. there's loads of things you can do with violence. I'm sorry, but he just said you can punch a Nazi. Yeah, yeah. He, well, even he shows a clip earlier of Watchmen, and and part of the the violence in Watchmen, sh I always thought was interpreted as a bad thing. Like when Doctor Manhattan yeah. is blowing people up, you're not supposed to be like, oh yeah, it's kind of like us. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was weird. He chose that as the example of being excessive. When it's like, well, isn't the point of that scene that like, what do we think about Doctor Manhattan ending any war that we're looking to win? Like, ooh. It's really one. weird how violence, you need the context to understand if it's good or bad. Isn't, isn't that odd? Mm. That's human. Mm. Like, you won't catch me doing much defense of BVS, but I'll defend that Batman scene as not, it's not sadistic. He's fucking fighting for his life. Totally. Also, yeah, self fucking cool. Mm -hmm. self well, well, this we... isn't self-defense here in Clockwork Orange, though. That's why juxtaposing these two scenes is, is mental. Yeah, it's very it's crazy. strange. It's... Alex is clearly the bad guy. Yeah, everyone is never break... not what... portrayed as the bad guy. That's his. Yeah. He's saying the film makes that clear, but BVS isn't. They're just like, this is even remotely fair for so many reasons. Like, it's... Not fair, yes. The unjust. It's happening. And then the perspective of the victims with the camera on the floor looking up at the attackers. The violence is disturbing and cruel and unpleasant. Yeah, but it doesn't always have to be, even when it's. Yes, Gosh. he's yes, he's a villain. Yeah, it's it's almost like you can't compare these because Batman is doing it to save a woman's life, and people are trying to shoot yeah, him to from death. Clearly, very bad people. This is stupid. And then this fight scene from the first episode of the show Titans. Okay, I guess we're not gonna. I thought he was making it more about BVS, but you know what? I put words in his mouth. All right, fine. We're talking about Titans. In pretty much every shot, Robin is the focus. We're experiencing this from his perspective. The camera moves with Robin, amplifying his movements, making him look more powerful. It zooms in on his attacks, like this guy's face being dragged across broken glass. When he's beating the guy on the ground, we focus on Robin's face and how he's feeling. The whole scene is lit with glossy, moody lighting. Everything looks shiny. It's cool. It's it sexy. Look shiny. It's, it's cool and sexy. Everything looks shiny. That's not true, though. Okay. You can't show me a picture of not everything looking shiny and then tell me everything looks <laughs> shiny. Um, there's lots of things to say about this. First of all, haven't seen it. Second of all, I know that those people think it's shit. Third of all, it's very well could be considered gratuitous for whatever reason, but we really need to remember that, like, having consequential damage being dealt to people shouldn't always be associated with sadism. That's just stupid. Mm, yeah, that means that. that stuff that we see has, a, like, impact it's going to come back later. If someone breaks their leg or jumps off a building or something like that, it's going to have an impact on what happens next. That's just basic cause and effect. And so, yeah, like, I'm not defending Titans. I just mean that, like, I guess he's mm -hmm. saying in this instant instance, Titans is taking pleasure in dealing pain to people irrelevant of whether or not these people are attacking Robin with lethal force. I, this is the thing. I'd have to see the scene. Is this all In Titans, it doesn't even seem like it's a sadism it seems like they're trying they're trying really hard and you could say it's over the top mm. of to be like oh this isn't your this isn't your father's robin this is 
a new Robin. Yeah, yeah. this yeah. is cool, it's Robin, for the yeah, cool just trying to kids. appeal to like a different crowd. The sadism line seems to be if it's just violence for violence sake, but there's so many, all, all of the superhero movies, it's like, it's justice. It's like retribution. It's like, it's not violence for violence sake at all. Yeah. And the understanding of fake versus real suffering is a huge distinction because if you watch suffering in a fictional context, like in a movie and you know, it's cool and awesome and fun, you wouldn't be okay with that if that was a real person suffering. Well, yeah, totally. the vast majority of people wouldn't. That's why people who would be okay with that are like, they're the sadists. Deranged. Yeah, the, the BBS, <laughs> yeah. the BBS scene, for example. If we were told that was security footage, I, uh, my reaction is very different. I should be like, Jesus Christ! Like, what? Yeah. What is happening? Here? This man, like, wow! This is all okay. Oof! That guy's dead. <laughs> that sort of thing. I don't think when like a kid is playing Mortal Kombat and they do the like the X-ray fatality that they're like, oh yeah, if this was happening in real life, I'd be so excited. <laughs> this is what I mean. I don't <laughs> think you horrified. should toss around sadism so casually, Patrick. That's all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and and it well, obviously Batman versus Superman and Titans are completely two different things on two different networks. Mm -hmm. And if he centered his entire argument around well, this over the top edgelord try hard garbage titan show is on a thing called dc universe a streaming service that was meant for kids that sure i mean i you know uh it, it was uh especially the uh i mean fuck batman whatever but uh, <laughs> robin stabbing a guy in the dick with the with the scissors it was just it was it was it was uh it was it wasn't sadist it was just fucking bad it was just poorly executed i understand their creative choices and what they were trying to do is just the writer for that show really sucked so mm -hmm. i mean well, to yeah. make an overall argument about and try to conflate batman versus superman and titans which i guess they were trying to be like that but it just didn't work i would say there's another yeah. thing to take into account it could just be incompetence you don't have to assign yeah. that like the person making totally. it was like oh, i love making people bleed you're like okay yeah <laughs> well and there's an irony here too because you like with Titans, usually when something's too edgy or too ridiculous, it becomes childish. It's not seen as adult. Yeah. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Things being grounded is, uh, it helps with investment a lot. Right. Absolutely. R rated material being used to say anything? Or is it just there to indulge our desire to see more hardcore versions of these characters? He says, is it being used That's to not say bad. anything? Um, it could be as simple as. The punches delivered by people will actually be punches like in real life. Okay, audience? Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay. That's already saying something. Sure. It's, it's I still weird. say it's there to raise the stakes. That, like well, that's that kind of what simple. I just advocate for. Because yeah, when our, yeah, when speaking, our hero gets punched, that, that shit is, that has an impact. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, it's an annoying yeah. if you have just an average movie, two, two normal dudes fighting each other, one of them punches, the other one punches, and just like nothing's happening to either of them. You can just be like, oh, we this is like a chill movie. There's not really any like worry for anybody. And yeah, okay. But if one punch knocks a guy to the ground and he starts bleeding out of his nose, you're like, ooh, shit. Yeah, okay. Like, I follow. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, stakes. Yeah. There's reason number two for R-rated violence. Oh, here it is. Raise the stakes. In the comic what? book. What? Deconstruction. Oh, my or God. Is, is he saying deconstruction? Like, this is now my deconstruction, or it is for deconstruction? Is, I'm is, assuming he's going to say that violence, like in Logan, is deconstructive and therefore good because it's deconstructing the character, but violence that's gratuitous is bad. Yeah, like violence designed to make you aware of what you've been consuming and what it means and stuff. Um, almost like critical commentary on the genre or something like that, I'm assuming. Like, you look at these superheroes, look at look at them committing to what they can do. You should be, ups you, you should be thinking more about what you're enjoying, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Watchmen. Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons very deliberately chose not to portray any of the action or violence as cool. There are no badass poses or big action splash page shots of a hero punching a bad guy. Any okay. instance of violence is shown yeah. bluntly. Yeah, I mean, that seems like entirely different goals, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. And unspectacularly in panels that are the same size and shape as any other because the superheroes of this story are not meant to be idolized or glamorized in any way. There is nothing indulgent about it. Okay, we're Dude. getting into weird so when you, places. 
So when he started this video doing Rorschach's voice, was that not mm -hmm. idolization or glamorization? I'm assuming he hates Rorschach. He probably hates Rorschach. Like, and that was just sort he of him making fun of something. So there are. I think the thing that we, I think the thing that we like, the thing that uh, entertains us, is violence plus justice. Like, if the violence is unjust, then we we shrink from it. We don't like yeah, that at all. Yeah, we like it when so, the knight slays the dragon. Yeah, and we want to yeah, exactly. up the bad so, guys. We like so, violence that is like used as an like like it, it it's channeled into virtuous and good yeah things, you know, so, so taking that 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 super high feeling of like ultimate justice and ultimate violence and just stylizing it in a way to make it that much more ooh so tantalizing then i mean that's 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 what the movies are designed to do and but he's completely ignoring that moral component here which is essential yeah, we want it proportional as well. That should essentially be baked mm -hmm. in with justice. Totally, We're yes. Not looking for jaywalking, like guy, you yeah. know, decapitation and jaywalking doesn't necessarily go together, right? No, but um, a guy is like, I'm going to melt every child in the city, and then you fucking rip his head off. You're like, well, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. This is one of the four things Zack Snyder got wrong in his film adaptation. As slavishly faithful yeah, as what? the whole thing is, with each shot perfectly recreating each of the comic's panels, Snyder portrays violence in the exact opposite way that Moore and Gibbons did. Well, care. that's that's the only way Zack Snyder knows how to portray violence, so I, I, you can't really blame him for that. <laughs> so I guess... It's gotta look good, right? We're suggesting that the Watchmen comic was um, trying to bring light to like how yeah, rough a lot of this violence. is while the film was having fun with violence i still don't i don't like i need to see the film again but surely this is uh, uh significantly dependent on the viewer as well someone could watch the same scene and come away like man that was mm -hmm. rough well, rather than that was if, awesome if Zack snyder yeah. hadn't made any other movies but watchmen i would say oh no he's using the violence to show it's wrong but i guess if you're judging it based off his other work afterwards you can say well maybe he's qualified. 300 was before watchman right mm -hmm. oh yeah he, right. i think so yeah and like 300 is absolutely a movie that's like let's fuck shit up yeah. <laughs> 300 yeah. is amazing i love it but th there is a point that 300 does have like the violence plus justice model and watchman doesn't necessarily like this First scene in Watchmen is completely devoid of moral content because you don't you don't know the situation. Yep. Yeah. I I don't I don't think it's glorifying. I I, I mean it is pretty to look at. I, I don't mind that, but you can argue that in the comic they used the four color palette. They didn't uh, try to tone it down, just because they didn't use big splash pages and stuff that I don't. Know. Well, they did occasionally. Like the I know the the scene where Ozzy's like hitting that guy in the face with the pole yep. before like a big splash page. Hmm. Yeah, the, what, it's not all uh, nine panels I got. This the best I'm violence sure. though in Watchmen is, I mean, for me personally, is the scene with Rorschach in prison because the guy totally has oh, it yeah. coming and he oh, fucking God. lights him up like it's so perfect. What he puts the, I don't even know, is it just like grease or whatever he pulls on? Yeah, him? he like pours Oof. the fryer on him. Oh my God. <laughs> It's badass slow motion shots with the heroes striking classic comic book poses. The violence is sexy. This is what I don't get about people like Patrick Willems. They talk all the time about how subjective everything is, and then they suddenly are like, this is glorifying violence. Well, unless violence. it's my point. Yes. The point yeah. I'm making it's like, yeah, yeah. well, wait a second. What if someone just comes away from this like, geez, look at that arm I don't break. think that's Oof. glorifying. I hate it. Yeah. yeah, that's what I mean. And a lot of people can be like, oh, man. And then they start to question, like, is this even like, ooh, I don't know. And, and he's like, no, it's glorifying. You're like, oh, okay. Sexy violence, mm. right? That's what he's been saying. <laughs> it's just like, oh, because of slow mo shots. Can't you use slow mo to enhance the pain of, of a situation? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's slow down Demons that clockwork orange cool. scene. It's reconstruct. Also, whether or not it's cool as well, I feel like this Subjective. is complicated now as a feature. It's like, if it's cool, it can't be something that tells you like it's it's rough or something. You'd be like, I don't know about that. Couldn't they work together? In the sense that you're like, oh man, look how it's being portrayed in a sense of like, it's kind of um, badass. But at the same time, I don't know that I agree with how much violence is being used. And so I'm like conflicted about this. This is what I mean. Mm -hmm. There's so much going on in a person's brain when they see this stuff. But he's like, no, he did it wrong. And you're like, oh, 
Okay. Yeah, he's so matter of fact too. Yeah, like that's what, that's what I'm saying. I'm not even saying I necessarily disagree because I need to watch the film again, then I need to go through the comments, see how it's all uh, adapted, and, and and maybe make different arguments to him. But it's just interesting to me that he's so definitive about it. Acting the myth as quickly as the story attempts to deconstruct it. If the comic is saying superheroes are actually damaged, fucked up people and fighting crime is a pathetic way to feel a sense of power, the movie is saying, yeah, but also it's awesome. This is the same contradiction is Snyder it? continually falls into. I mean, <laughs> like, I almost have to take his word because I just, I need, I don't, my references aren't refreshed for Watchmen, unfortunately. But like, okay. Batman v Superman wants us to question the purpose of superheroes and whether or not they should exist in the world, but it also really loves it when Batman stabs people and blows them up in slow motion. This is what makes the Amazon TV series The Boys so effective. It uses similar aesthetics and visual language as Snyder's films, but tells the story from the perspective of regular humans. Uh, okay, see now he's just he's just picking and choosing at this point. The boys has plenty of, of violence being done by the bad guys that's still cool and flashy. Gratuitous violence. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, this is yeah, again, Homelander those, going that and laser vision is amazing and things like that. You yeah, know, like, yeah, I don't, I don't know, but cool. this just feels like you're just gonna choose whatever you think best matches what you're talking about. Like, he showed that scene, Homelander throws the guy- remember he melts his gun into his own hand? Like, Homelander oh, has the yeah. power to take these people out without having to torture them. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah. I don't know the- it's just- I don't know. This- this feels really cherry-picky to me. He's just, he's just choosing whatever he wants to support whatever he wants. Perspective. The superheroes using their powers to kill and maim isn't cool. It's terrifying. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, ex yeah, the times that it's not terrifying and it's fucking awesome, though. You know when you see Batman brand people in BVS and then the people left behind are chained up and, like, whimpering? I don't- th even Zack Snyder, I don't think he's saying it's it's super awesome. I think he's being like, what do you think? Do you think Batman's going too far with this? Yeah. Especially when you find out that they're getting killed in prison because of the brands. I'd be like, again, I'm not, like, Zack Snyder's- fucking person but like why are you saying that he's trying to say that that's just cool it's like clearly not the conflict this in the is movie like is superman calling him out justice superman's like you fucked up when you did all that batman i'm gonna beat you up for it like that's that's it's like no nah, the visual language is trying to say it's cool it's like you're saying that that's the case <laughs> like, i don't know do you remember the guy in bvs who's like please don't put me in the um in that group of people because they'll kill me and the guy walks up to him, just stab, 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 stab his belly. It's like, yeah, that's so awesome. It's not at all portrayed in a sense of just like, wow, that guy is now dead. That, yeah, he just got fucking wrecked. Totally glorified. Only glory. That's what I mean. He's just being really unfair. The trope of Superman's glowing red eyes is no longer shorthand for badass rage. It's now a symbol of sociopathic violence, as we see it rip through innocent civilians. Oh my god, I, it bugs me so yeah, much. Wh that what's the point? He's, but yeah, he's, the boys season two is so bad with how it does this. Yeah. It's just annoying. Or melt people's skulls. But really, the ultimate example of the R-rated superhero deconstruction is the one that everything else has been ripping off for the past 35 years. Oh, Alan be. Moore's Miracle Man, which was originally called Marvel Man until Marvel Comics got lawyers involved. It's a reboot of a comic from the 1950s that's really just a ripoff of Shazam, about really, a kid who really turns really into a superhero when he says imagine. Costumes. I'm assuming he's just gonna this this particular thing is gonna present an idea the idea that everyone's been ripping him off it's like oh, it's not gonna be true but i'm assuming he's hyperbolic right. Word. i would but i more... would i would argue that the style because you seem to be making an argument that the style the stylistic element of the whatever it is the violence it like has some sort of influence over how you feel but i don't i i think that's completely wrong i think that all the style does is crank up whatever moral component there is to the scene like if it's uh the boys and obviously he's being bad or doing bad things the style component raises up that feeling of oh my god this is so terrible and if it's someone good you know batman good, destroying someone who deserves it it cranks up that oh my god this is so good but yeah. i don't think the style is even the style is like the volume but the moral component is 
you know, the feeling. He mentioned slow mo as being a component of like glorifying it. It's slow mo when Green Goblin punches Spider Man at the in the climax. Yeah, I when he's like I losing. completely disagree. I completely disagree. I think all the slow mo does is crank up well, whatever what saying, moral component is going. The um that final fight, we're all very aware that Spider Man's life is at risk, and they're doing slow mo hits. So Patrick yes. would have to concede that the slow mo is being used there to actually show us how. Horrifying the violence is, right? Horrifying, than, yeah. exactly. Yes. And so this is the thing. I feel like you can use all of these uh, things to do the opposite of what he's saying. It's just like you know, your argument's not that. Uh, it's leaking. It's leaking yeah, I everywhere. Wish, I wish we could well, ask him. Yeah, I mean, like not talking about what led up to the violence. The I mean, I hate to say the obvious here, but the actual story, uh, mm -hmm. the payoff, like. Maybe yeah, that has exactly. something to do with it too, you know? It's not just we're not just there to see I'm waiting for Batman to fight. I don't care what the words he's saying out of his mouth or what everybody else is saying. I'm just here for the you know, like 66 Batman for the pow died. Yeah. It's it's I don't yeah. Sounds like Where's... he was light on material, needed to come up with something. I will I mean I think it's clear at this, <laughs> this point. This was a rush video. Yeah. Which is weird because it's one of his longest oh. ones, but like he just yeah, seems upset. this is a lot of. There's not a lot talking about what I thought there would be talked about. You know, consider mm -hmm. my expectations subverted. <laughs> Story <laughs> oh my God. decades later, when the kid has grown up and longs for the fun and adventure these stories used to have. He's a stand-in for the adult comic book reader who loved superhero comics as a kid and never moved past them. So in the story, um. when Michael Moran remembers his magic word and can fly again, it starts off as a glorious thrill. Until the real world seeps in. Until the gross, cynical truth behind those innocent early adventures is revealed. And Miracle Man encounters his former sidekick, whose godlike powers have turned him into a monstrous psychopath. The series culminates in a massive superhero battle that is not fun at all. It's a genocidal nightmare. It's like Moore is saying, okay, you want superheroes for adults? Well, it's not gonna be cool or indulgent. It's going to be awful and dis- Jesus fucking Christ, there's more than one way you can do this. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, why, like, look at that image. I okay. <laughs> this I don't is... think appealing to sadist is like the widest audience you can grab. It seems. Well, like... uh, I'm guessing the point here is supposed to be like, l look at this horrifying. Like this is how this is what can happen when people with so much power are left in a realistic adult world. And you're like, okay, chill. This chill seems silly. Out. It's going. To, it's a bit far for me. Like, like there's absurd. literally a, a woman walking there you with know? both of her arms taken off and no eyes. It's like, okay. Yeah, it is uh, a little horrifying. Disturbing. And the story points to a new way forward. It moves beyond the classic superhero tropes and conflicts as Miracle Man remakes the entire world, abolishing all weapons and money. <laughs> abolishing money. Oh no! Okay. Oh, no. Yeah. Abolishing all no. weapons. Abolishes and weapons and money. It's the weapons and, weapons money. The the weapons and money. What the fuck? If no. only there were no weapons or money. How do you even we'll keep... do that? What do you use? Magic? I'm guessing. I don't know. Has That's he gone to stop. like? The outdoors, where there are no weapons and money. <laughs> Abolishing <laughs> weapons and money will get rid of all the killers, uh, cure racism. Everybody will live together. They won't fashion new weapons or find new ways to trade, find new barter. <laughs> probably old porn. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Uh, I agree with Into Gundam. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think uh, it, it, that's a great answer. It was funny. The that, first... there's, there's no political slant from Alan Moore, who, by the way, is an adult fucking wizard. I, yeah, the first half of that was like I mean, interesting no judging, to me but... when he was explaining it. Like, oh, you know, a hero grows up, but he finds out a lot of when he was younger as a hero was there was lots of cynical shit behind it. And then, you know, a friend of his from when he was younger is older and powerful now and is doing things he doesn't approve of. I was like, this this could be a cool story. That it's like we abolish <laughs> weapons and money. <laughs> I know. Okay. Yeah, it's. Listen, I like this when it came out. Okay, there's there's things when when you read them in, at their time, they're mm -hmm. fine. Uh, they're they're played out now. You know, Mark Wade used to be able to to write, and uh, he did a, basically a rip off of this, irredeemable, uh, and tried to jack it up even worse. And they were trying to out edge lord each other in the mid two thousands. And I just shared with you, you guys don't have to share them like Avatar Press, which is just which 
just a gore fest. It's by it's violence porn. That's all it is. Yeah, that there's that aspect. But what what Mahler just said, there's another way you can portray it too. And yeah, cherry picking this one. Uh, everybody's copying Watchmen. There's a bunch of people that didn't even know Miracle Man existed. So yeah, I, 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 I guess that's the point that's he's making. He's like, there was the Watchmen before the Watchmen, you know. And it's like, all right, the idea of taking stuff that we often associate with like an altruistic happy sort of thing and turning it on its head it's like i think it's going to predate even miracle man right it's going to uh -huh. an age old idea it's superhero stories for adults can be full of challenging new ideas not just amped up gritty violent versions of what we've seen before yeah, but that's like the shallow version like oh let's take spider-man and make him rip people's heads channel off this is like okay, I, I don't care if Spider Man's ripping people's heads off or not. That sounds lame. And you're just like, what, you, what do you want to do? Is actually like, there's so much that comes with trying to convert something from child friendly to teenage friendly to adult friendly, and to reduce it down to a woman without her eyes and arms or something. Okay, but I mean that seems to be the main contention here. It's like, what is, what is the point of R rated? Right, really depends on who's making it, and what they yeah. want to do. Oh, check out this one. Gritty's wearing a suit. He's classy, but he still knows how- One thing I noticed about this channel is that it tries really hard to be pretentious, but it's extremely shallow and surface level. Yo, mm -hmm. man. Like, there's really- It's really pretentious empty. is. At a party. Uh, so is this what you do for every video? No, it kind of varies. Sometimes I just sit there and listen. Sometimes I operate the camera. I was in the band for the talk show. Oh yeah, I did that too. It's weird that Patrick doesn't seem to remember. I think he just took it hard when you didn't come back. There were a lot of disappointments around that time. The good thing about this is that it gives us a lot of time cut out of the video that we don't have to watch. You know, like, yeah, that's true. Just move past um, it. It's, it makes me think about how awkward it must be to make a video. Like, this, this here's the video? script, you guys are gonna talk about me. Hmm. <laughs> on this Zoom call. Anyway, okay. Uh huh. So. This is self insert done incorrectly, is oh. what he's saying. <laughs> What's our job title, anyway? You know, I uh, never actually asked. Maybe I should. Oh my god, look at this. It's gritty dressed as Rocky. <laughs> Hell yeah, that's what I'm talking about. This notebook smells good. I kind of like it now. I what have no fuck? idea what's going on in that. <laughs> yeah. Do you, does anyone know? What's happening? Can enlighten me. Somebody tell me what's happening in this. These are these the skippable parts narrative. of the video. You put them in there as buffers so we can all come back down and then we go back up. Something when... about a wet script. Something about a super wet script and this guy that's been popping up Fight Club style, but I don't. In Fight Club, we find out why the scenes were spliced in. Are it we going like... to find out in this? I'm skeptical. Chat are having plenty of fun. They all seem very happy about this. It almost seems yeah, like they want us to, to play it again or something. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I know you want I, us to. yeah only once. We can't, uh, we can't let the lunatics run the asylum. Why? Exactly. Why? Let them play it again. Go ahead. There's no, a quote from Roger Langridge, who wrote the great all-ages comic Thor the Mighty Avenger, that I think about a lot. He said, You don't think about I really it don't think Marvel and DC are helping things by having gritty, R-rated versions of their superheroes in their main comics. How prevalent is this? Like I guess Gary's R-rated versions of superheroes. Uh, well, in Lord. main comics, because I don't, I wouldn't know. I didn't uh, know. I mean, the Ro the Roger perspective is that what you're saying? Like yeah, people just, are just... complaining about. Yeah, I don't think it's no. It's well, I, I don't know. I'm asking. Is it? Is it? Is it really common now? Is it like a lot of comics are just R-rated now? If it's now? not R-rated, it's not the real. You know. Mm. It, well, okay. I mean, I'm not selling newer comics now, but no. I mean, it, they're they're more, well they're. They're not violent. They, they, everybody's talking about well, who they're going to screw, and everybody's turning gay right now. So <laughs> uh, maybe, yay! <laughs> that that's a video that needs to be made. You know, uh, maybe we'll start adapting Phoenix. You know, turning Iceman gay. And, oh, there uh, you go. We can have. What's the point of gay exactly. superheroes? Exactly. Um, no, <laughs> it's, a it's the gritty. The gritty thing was played out. But like I said before, that's what comic books do. And uh, th they missed the opportunity of kind of returning back to heroism uh, because of 
intersectional feminism and going woke and just turning into trash and hiring shitty comic book writers who aren't even who have probably never even seen a comic book until they got hired at Marvel because they were hired for their politics. It has much bigger problems. And uh, Roger Langridge, I, I don't. That's not the problem comics have right now. Are yeah, the already gritty thing. He's conflating it with with films, and it's not even a problem in the film. I was about to say, if he was talking about films, I would have to completely disagree. It's like there's hardly any. What do you mean, like R-rated yeah, superhero had, movies? How many R-rated superhero movies have we had? I mean, superhero movies, not adaptions. What Birds of Prey, oh, Joker, Deadpool, Deadpool Logan, Watchmen, Deadpool Two, Logan, and then it's so like, like five. five Oh, that's yeah, a if, glut. That's if awful. anyone thought, oh, well, that's still a significant amount, I'd be like, let's name the ones that aren't R rated. We'll be here for a while. Daredevil, Hellboy, Constantine, The Punisher. Were all of them R rated? Like the Constantine with Keanu Reeves? Was that R rated? R rated superhero movies. Oh, I didn't know that. The Crow, Bird. Blade Trinity. Oh. Birdman, Defendor. Everything in the MCU, basically. Wait, Judge oh. Dread. Oh, Dread. Was, Daredevil. Was, yeah, I assume Dread was all right. Constantine was pretty badass. I don't know if Constantine could be. Is that superhero really? I don't know. I'm kind skeptical. Of. He's, he's uh, his superpowers. Really. He's, uh, he kind of. Absolutely be rated R. They should not make a PG 13. Oh, dude, Constantine, Constantine is oh, like yeah. perfect for R rated with the fucking demons and the like suicide shit. Yeah. yeah. She killed herself. Oh, no. V for Vin Vendetta. There you go. The movie was all right. Yeah. That's not huh. a superhero. Barbed That's Wire been... with hmm. Pamela Anderson is R rated. What about, um, what was the, that in the theater? What was the yeah, superhero movie R-rated. with? Was the one with Pamela Anderson? Is, what was his superhero name? Was this... here, here, here's your example Kick Ass 2. Breastacles. Breastacles. Kick Ass 2 is R rated, but Kick, Kick Ass 1, I think, is probably PG 13 because it's not on the list. So there's your example of the person seeing, My I saw Kick Ass and now I have to wait. I have to wait for Kick Ass 2. Damn it. Again, I'm still not even like, convinced that that's story. such a bad thing. I don't know how I'd feel if I really enjoyed like a PG movie and then the next year they released a sequel that was R rated and so I had to wait until I was older. I, I don't know how I'd feel. I, I guess just, I'd be annoyed. I'd but, like, watch it. Oh, well, these I kids would, are watching obviously I would watch it. But... Jeez, it's not like. Well, that's it's the thing. Not you like never know. Not be able to see the R-rated movie. R- ratings are guidelines, like it, right? You it. never know what a kid is going to not be able to handle. You never. Yeah, know. in the age of unlimited free porn. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I was sneaking into movies when I was like ten. So. I mean, to this day, there's still stuff and that I didn't all of us care. struggle to handle. I didn't care about the rating so much. Well, Go um, we. No, like we've gone over it before, but like, uh, any of you guys seen Bone Tomahawk? This is an example I use quite a bit. Is, I'm I have, not. No. Uh, there's what a scene it? in it that is gore related but it's not excessive like Eli Roth it's done in such a way that it was like the first time in so long that I've seen gore in a movie that made me go like oh and like it's just like Jesus like the sound sound effects and the the way they did it mm-hmm. um and so what I was saying is I see Silence of the Labs when I'm like eight and it doesn't bother me at all and I see this movie when I'm absolutely old enough to see it and i have a worse reaction so it's just like yeah it's complicated we don't really quite know what what yeah you know. totally oh yeah i saw alien uh well i'm gonna show my age now uh <laughs> i saw alien and a 20 minute version when I, back in the 70s if we wanted to see a movie outside the theater they they used to make these 16 millimeter or 8 millimeter films that are that are shorter edited down versions of like star wars and alien so mm-hmm. i saw the the alien come out of a stomach when I was eight, freaked my shit. Yeah, uh, but I loved, but I knew I loved it. I was like, yeah, I, I had. I it's fascinating as a kid to watch stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, the face hugger scene was like crazy. Just Ooh. the guy, like, why did he well, stick his face in there? What a dumbass! And, yep. <laughs> and we've talked about it before, but like, there are movies that are like not at all rated high, like they're PG, and then there's some of the stuff in them you remember forever, because you're like, that was terrifying, and it's just like, yeah, the rating system didn't think so. You know, that's how it goes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, anyway. Gritty, R-rated versions of their superheroes in their main comics, what they sell as the real versions, while simultaneously selling those exact same characters in kids' comics and plastering them all over lunchboxes and animated cartoons. So, so he is making the argument that the IP should be consistent. That's basically the argument he's making. 
and then it's raiding that's weird it is like, weird. I, like, this is the thing make I, less money i'm not kids. sure like how to properly make the consistent argument here of just like but is it that bad though if if like there are versions that are just you know that you're like oh this is I like this character. He's across all these different mediums. I've seen Batman's parents get killed seven times, so I know that it's not all one continuity. And there's this one that only my parents can see, and I can't see it yet. He's got because it... parents. And is that so bad? And I'm just like, I don't think so. Um, and I think really honestly, if this was prior to 2017, I might have trouble generating real world examples. But I really feel like Logan kind of just proves this is true. Just like it's done. The fact that you took something that was so kid friendly in the um the X Men movies, even though they're like it's more so for teens, I guess those movies. But, but I mean, fuck it, kids love them. Um, Logan is definitely not for kids. That movie is is not something you'd want your uh, your ten year old to be watching. You'd be like, nah, that's probably a bit much. Um, but it worked. And if someone was like, yeah, but Logan, uh, you know, I was I was I was about to say, look, what is Logan's full name? Is it just Logan and then Hugh Jack uh, uh, Wolverine is his like code name? I forget. Um, Logan Jackman. Logan Jackman. The, um, <laughs> if someone was like, you can't make him R rated. He's children expect to be able to watch stuff that relates to him. I should be like, yeah, but then we don't get Logan. So I don't know that I think this is a good standard. I guess. You can't make that standard. That standard's ridiculous. And I think it does spit in the face of the whole idea that your audience grows with the content, too, that you can't ignore. Yeah, that, too. That, too, it's exactly. very complicated. Um, I understand, like, I guess, but again, it comes back to what we were just talking about. Like, there's some kids out there who, maybe they saw X-Men, you know, 2000 and the rest of them, a year before, and they were the right age for it, a year before Logan came out, that they saw Logan, they were like, oh my god, Logan's fucking amazing. Like, even if they were, like, 11. This is how complicated it gets, because obviously the, the assumption here is that children of that age can't can't be watching stuff like Logan, not only because of the age rating, like, legally, but also it'll fuck them up. They can't see that. But it's like, And well. by the time they're old enough to watch stuff like Logan, they already have, like, a brain that can compartmentalize different, like, iterations of the same superhero. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. like a basic adult. Like the, the low, low, low bar of being an adult. Being able to do that, just distinguish between different fictions. Uh, yeah, does does Logan definitively take place in the X Men universe, or is it in alternate reality that you're looking at? It I mean, we don't know. It definitely references it, but it, yep. you could definitely consider it like a an Elseworlds what if thing if you wanted to. Yeah, and I, I think that's a great idea. I think that's a brilliant idea. That's the one thing DC. That's why Warner Brothers is stupid. They should be killing Marvel in film right now because they can tell stories Marvel can't because they're stuck in a continuity. And they can make five. They can have you know Tim Burton's Batman come back. You know Michael Keaton and, oh, and yeah. a brand new one right now. You know, they're, they're, Tobey Maguire should be in a Spider Man four with Sam Raimi. It would make all the money in the world. But then they're oh gonna my put god, a cameo in Spider Man three, which I guess isn't going to happen now. Spider Man three should I, be R rated. Everyone's heads need to explode. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. one time, one time. I, Lots it's, of it's, TNA. It, it, the brand, I mean, we're way past brand confusion. We're way beyond that. And and I think uh, there's been a lot of comic creators to go, I think they're just trying to rationalize why their industry is falling apart and they just don't ever want to recognize what the real problem is. You know, guys going out and attacking fans on Twitter and they've just alienated customers for the last five years and people are fucking sick of it. And their story yeah. sucks. They really do have horrific talent. The art is bad. Uh, I mean, give me violence over, you know, I wasn't joking when, you know, She-Hulk sitting around a table eating food, talking about a YouTuber. That that was an actual storyline. Mm. Um, Justifiable violence, though, Gary, because they mix it up in, like, uh, Captain Marvel. Like, oh, it's God, ambiguous. Yeah, yeah. Like, when she's yep. stealing some dude's fucking motorcycle and she, what yep. did that guy do wrong Jesus well he asked did a smile he asked for a smile that makes him well that's that being. is like the de that's the decapitation yeah, over jaywalking Dude, that's he, exactly he was probably, what that is he was probably yeah. a nazi though he probably you know and it's okay to punch them you couldn't tell by his skin color of course he was a nazi <laughs> jesus <laughs> you got punched no see this He's Thanos with ahead, the Infinity Gary. Gauntlet, right? Just bounced right back from that. But of course, in WandaVision, we found out that uh, you know Captain Marvel could have just taken out Thanos by herself with the Infinity Gauntlet. Oh, totally. You know what? We, the, they should have had a throwaway the, line like... I would know, argue that Thanos... She gave him a chance. I would argue that Thanos... 
No, so, you first. You um, first. I'll, I'll be quick. I swear. It's like they say, oh, you know what? She could have taken him out. She just didn't want, you know, it'd be too easy, you know? It's like, like we got to give yeah. Thanos a shot. Otherwise, it's boring. You know, Captain I mean, Marvel no could beat her. There, right? We wouldn't want him to waste their trip. So. I just want to make a comment about moral ambiguity because the moral ambiguity in Captain Marvel doesn't work at all. But I would argue that the the moral ambiguity in the Thanos character is great and adds like a whole nother dimension to it. Yeah. But they're dealing with like real ideas there. In Captain Marvel, they're dealing with like intersectional feminism. Like, you know, isn't it terrible for me to be walking down the street and get cat called at? Like that's that's their moral uh, well, lens capability and, there. And to boast you on that movie, because uh, some people don't quite share this point or don't really see it this way but like i think it's important you have um the life cycle in that movie is she's a hardcore member of the kree she goes down to the planet mm -hmm. she slowly learns that the kree are full of shit and she's been taught something bullshit her whole life and then the kree attack uh, are attacking earth and she's got three major ships i think and she blows up one of them she flies through it and just explodes the whole thing killing every single person inside and then she says ronan leave or i'll you know fuck you up too it's just like whoa she just killed like could it could be yeah, thousands totally. of people who were just yeah. like her a day ago? Yeah. Or, or, wow. Because the thing yeah. is, they've been lying. We don't know how many of these people, like, and you might be like, well, they were attacking Earth, though. And it's like, it's not really about whether or not you should have killed them. That's a different conversation. It's that there's no acknowledgement Even of this. Even attempts at anything else. And, uh, no. But the, the yeah. film's unaware of this. The film is just like, those bad guys. He's like, but that was her yesterday. <laughs> like, what do you mean? This, 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 the woke they, lens on morality is really they weak. lied to Go her ahead, so it. they all deserve to die well i they, mean that's probably <laughs> that's what i get that's the message i get that's what i'm trying to bring up is that many were lied to in the creek culture because there's no fucking way that every single person in the creek culture was in on the the meme except her <laughs> like they were like everybody is aware that how they're totally evil they just pretend to be good it's like no nah, i'm pretty sure a lot of people are being sold along the same lie she was do you remember Nick. go ahead they had the exact same problem as Star Wars because it's like Finn is brainwashed as a stormtrooper, and yeah. the last one they meet a bunch of stormtroopers who ran away, and yet every time they kill them, it's like, oh look, they killed a stormtrooper. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fuck that guy. Well, yeah, um, because that's Aren't we supposed thing, right? to be empathizing with them now? Wiping Finn, them out, right? Um, right. You, you... No, they're still white. <laughs> <laughs> you can only empathize with the black ones. If you had to, if you had to wipe them out, and she recognizes like this is the necessary like thing to do to save Earth and stuff, it'd be one thing. But she, she yeah, she's like woohoo when she slams through the ship, and you're just like, oh my god, oh my god, <laughs> that's so weird, that's so bad. Because <laughs> um, a lot of people like Gosh, to bring up and... a New Hope as a comparison, where they're like, but Han Solo is like a cowboy saying yeehaw sort of thing when he when he, it's like yeah when he saves Luke from about to be shot by Darth Vader to destroy the Death Star is about to blow up old uh, sorry Yavin Four right it's just like that's a little different I think right yeah and the Empire portrayed in New Hope as being morally ambiguous at all yeah they're, they're like, bad no definitively uh, bad. they're very bad nobody's being lied to on that Death Star. They they know what they do. You know why you're here, Carl, to blow up planets. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Press He's like, the button. Hey man, you know, you I didn't put, think we'd actually do it. You gotta put food on the table, you okay? Know. Gosh, and here I was thinking moral ambiguity was not knowing how to properly identify mushrooms. <laughs> oh. oh my god. <laughs> oh yeah. by kids or by parents for their kids is effectively impossible the way things are structured. Casual readership is effectively impossible because of how things are structured. Bullshit. Casual readership is impossible. That's not because... true at all. That's insane. Well, it's impossible not because of well, this think... issue. It's possible because, like, well, if you try to get into a comic that's got like ten years of backstory that you need to understand to get into it. Well, no, but because like the implication of this statement is, I have a kid and he's like, oh man, I'm buying the new Iron Man or Iron Heart, whatever the fuck it is. He's like, I'm gonna go buy. Oh, it's cool. They also made this little TV show animated. Oh, it's really cool. I'm gonna go watch this Iron Man by 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 who is it? Oh, Quentin Tarantino. Oh, okay, yeah, whatever. Oh my God, <laughs> there's yeah. blood everywhere. Ah, I can't even casually enjoy my Iron Man now because I might slip into something super adult. It's like that doesn't happen. That's ridiculous. Mm -mm. Isn't this the whole point of the rating system? I mean, Jesus well, yeah. Christ, it says R-rated on it. If I pick up 
as a kid, a movie called, like, Happy... This happened with Happy Tree Friends. It's rated, like, 18. I remember being like, what? What is Happy Tree Friends? It's like, it's but it's a, a cartoon. Oh, it's yeah. so good. <laughs> it's what I mean. It's, it's a really fun thing to find out. But, like, as if people just... Oh, you know what? I just... I accidentally fell into watching an 18... Like, a R-rated thing. It's like, no, yeah. you didn't. That's bullshit. Not you really. Do. Not happening. And it's an exception, if anything. And he's like, oh, casual readership. You just can't do it anymore. It's like, yeah, okay. So a children's book writer, I mean, like I've said this before, not in all cases, but in most, uh, the last person I would ask about the sales of a comic or how to sell a comic book is somebody who writes it or draws it from a store in a store perspective. They, yeah. they, they don't understand the business side of it for the most part. Not everybody. Some people do, and mm -hmm. they do very well when they figure that out. But, uh, yeah, no, it's up to the, uh, wherever you sell the comics for the, like, I have a kid's section and I direct the kids or I parking lot. Have, uh, yeah. Right. Uh, no, it's usually in the back room in the van, the white van. Uh, <laughs> oh, shit, Gary. Uh, no. Superman. No, Gary. <laughs> Stay away from the white bat, van. Go take you to the kids. bat cave. No. The bat cave. Just don't tell no, your parents actually, it's a secret. My kid section had bronze comics in it. I didn't even buy the modern because uh, they're dumbed down. They're fr the guys like Roger Ling, whatever his name is, would dumb down like a Thor comic. And I would just rather re have them read the comics I read as a kid that were made uh, supposedly for eight to twelve year olds that I still enjoy now. So maybe I'm immature. I don't give a shit. Uh, and that's that's how I got kids reading comics. It depends on the person selling them, and it depends on the parent. You can't just say like Mahler said. You know, there was violence in one thing. The characters ruined forever. And, and, can, and can we also remind everybody that kids have parents like if your kid is like I want to know everything to do with Iron Man and you find out Iron Man is about 50% friendly to kids 30% friendly only to teenagers and then 20% is all uh, mature stuff it's on you to get all that children related stuff and provide them to your kid okay don't make the kid go I'm just gonna casually check out a Google Iron Man oh no there's all this violence ah, I'm traumatized now <laughs> thanks Disney also you know it's, just, it's like what do you mean this doesn't happen no, we have to safe space the world, man. That's exactly yep. what we have to do. Kids have to be able to go anywhere. This was like the whole meme. I remember back in the day, parents would be like, you can't see this 18 movie. And I'm like, oh, man. And you go into a, a, a video game store and you pick up Mortal Kombat Resident Evil. This is legit happened to me. I saw the 18 ratings and I was like, hmm, can I have these? And my dad was like, yeah. <laughs> like, it's a game. <laughs> they didn't, my parents didn't take games seriously. They were like, oh, it's a game. It's fucking, it's like little pixels doing stupid things. Like, who cares? 18 what? 18 months, right? And luckily for me, they never, like, with Resident Evil, I remember when I first booted up they the They never Cube. walked in on you? No, because, like, this near the beginning, you, you open that door, and there's just a zombie eating someone, and it slowly turns toward you. And I remember being like, Jesus Christ, this is terrible. Yeah. This isn't Mario. Yep. Um, Mortal Kombat, though, never struck me as too violent. I was just having fun, because the context of those games' violence is so different. And again, which I guess I'm just talking about how kids take violence is so... The hard. realism adds a completely different level to it. It does. Yeah. Like, if it's if it's real, you're like, oh my goodness, holy cow, what have I stumbled into? I mean, I can remember all the movies that affected me that way, when you're like, this is weird. <laughs> I love it, though. The moral complexity is the most interesting thing about movies. For you, I like it when heads explode. I think it's the strong yeah, but that's part of it. Messages. That's part of it. That's a huge part of it. And I think the one far now to claw that ground back. I think it's insane that DC that's has spent true, 70 though. years making Superman as big as Mickey Mouse and branding him to be understood by parents as being pretty much as kid friendly as Mickey Except Mouse. Except for the movies that have a clear R Last, rating yeah. on the posters and yes, the boxes. Yes. All right. Exactly. Yeah. Now we need to talk about like, what is how it? dumb are parents? If there's two operations happening at Strong. once here, being what is created for them as content and what people are being told about them in terms of who they're friendly for, it's going to be pretty hard to separate those two things. If they made 50 years of R-rated Superman just ripping people to shreds, and then someone was like, yeah, but they had 70 years of making him a friendly person, so now I'm confused. It's like, what do you mean? Just look at the fucking rating, you weirdo. <laughs> it's not hard. Yeah, you'll, exactly. you'll figure it if out. If it has an R, that means don't show it to kids. Because this is an entirely different crazy. argument at this point. This is actually advocating that people are going to get confused and then end up watching something they didn't want. It's like, you just have to read. Yeah. yeah. Well, this also goes counter to Patrick's point, because 
Patrick's point was violence in adult themes is fine as long as you're deconstructing it. But this guy's point is completely different. He's just saying, no, no characters that are on kids' lunch boxes should ever be portrayed as R-rated characters. Yeah, yeah and, and he said argument. only to piss that brand away, implying more so a monetary like uh, consequence now. Which again, I don't give a fuck, to be honest with you. If, so, if someone said like, well, if we make our child-friendly thing adult-friendly now, we might lose a, a viewership or whatever. I'd be like, okay, but I'm assuming you... You weren't doing it to make more money. You were doing it because you want to tell that story. And again, um, if someone was like, well, you may not care about it, but they might. I'd be like, yeah, well, that would be valid. But like, I thought we were talking about things more meaningful than what makes the most money. Mm -hmm. so, you know, at that point, I'd just be like, yeah, I mean, there's lots of things you could do to make the most money. It's that brand away in a decade. Nothing wrong with doing mature content in comics. In fact, it should be encouraged as often as possible. I mean, I agree it's but, not the maturity of Superman that has led to his, I guess, I don't know if it's not downfall per se, but lack of quality. It's yeah, not the R rating. Again, right? we, we come to this impasse of like being R rating doesn't mean being adult content. They're not entirely synonymous. It's just indicative. Like if it's R rated, then surely it'll be for adults. It's like, well, yes, yes, it's yes. It's about quality. But, yeah, we want... I'm more than happy for someone to have an adult take on any content as if it's well-written. Like, go for it. Um, and again, we, we're sort of tossing around words like adult, mature. Um, it, all, all it really is trying to come to is just talking about things or presenting things that children are typically... If you sit a kid down who's like eight years old and you're like, let's talk about addiction and the results of, of bottling up grief to the point of taking your sure. own life, the kids yeah. will be like, What? <laughs> Why yeah. not? And you're like, oh, well, I, okay, I guess you don't want to talk about that. That's fine. Like, the best you'll get in terms of, like, a Pixar-type movie is only things that could allegorically represent that sort of thing. Where an adult is like, ooh, I can kind of see a message here. And the kid is like, huh? I was just looking at the characters running around doing little things. I can't imagine the intro of Up not disturbing children. I mean, it I, totally well, I think that was a risk. Me, so. That oh, intro geez. is a bit risky. Like a lot of kids probably did not enjoy it. They were probably like, "I'm going to gear." I'm going to go out on a limb and say that that movie's not R-rated either. Like I, they're really just talking yeah. about sex and violence. They're mm -hmm. not talking about like uh, adult subject matter. The beginning of Up is very much adult subject matter, is it not? I mean, it's yeah, like the same thing you that love, you spelled like, out. So yeah, why can't I yeah. fuck a baby into this woman? Oh, she died. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, um, because he said nothing wrong with your mature content, um, as well. Which, by the way, you probably don't want to bring that up after everything you just said. Yeah, but doing it with characters who are on your kids' lunch boxes is kind of moronic. I don't even know what to say about this. Yeah. Oh, People put fucking crap. RoboCop, T Terminator, Alien, Predator—they were all on lunch boxes too. They would never. I forget. found a birds of prey lunchbox. I looked it up. I think we need to like reevaluate what we what we're thinking about when we say kids. Like when I was a kid, yeah. I fucking like I said, I loved Predator. Predator was fucking amazing. It was like, oh yeah, that Hell children's TV yeah. show. Yeah. <laughs> like no, how to quite. catch a predator. Oh, <laughs> a little Chris yeah. Hansen on my on my lunchbox. <laughs> He's my favorite. Oh my god. <laughs> Don't talk shit about Don't my lunchbox, or I'll find out where you live. Whoa. With characters who are on your kids lunch boxes is kind of moronic explain yourself why take a lesson from watchmen and come up with new characters for that stuff and then go back to superman and why? batman and put the same kind of love and effort and craft and intelligence you've been putting into all those rape scenes and so if it's watchmen oh, content it can't be creative or intelligently made yeah, to be like, honest what? with you, now it seems like he's more so saying, because at first I thought he was trying to say, like, remove the gratuitous nature and make Batman and Superman mature. Sure, that's fine. But then he went on to say, like, no, actually, don't do that for things that are on kids' lunch boxes. Do it for something new. And so now it feels a little bit scattered. Mm -hmm. um, well, why doesn't Patrick use this argument against Star Wars or any of the other stuff? I mean, this is... But he uses arguments when people exploring new territory. When Star Wars does it, it's a right. new take on Star Wars. Ooh. I mean, would Patrick make this argument if someone was complaining about, you know, well, why is Miles Morales black? Why is Spider Man black now? Why don't they make a new character? Yeah, is Patrick yeah, going to agree with that? Right. Now? Ooh, I think we could ooh, reflect ooh, this back ooh, on him. Yeah, because um, this is the thing when you talk about adaptation, changing elements and keeping elements. It's like, shouldn't everything be on the table? 
that's all yeah i yeah. mean and that's it's, yeah. it's so hypocritical because that's the argument that i thought patrick and and people in that genre have been making for so long about you know being able to insert politics or change the gender sexuality or race of characters so the human centipede lunchbox <laughs> 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 I'm getting one of those. Oh, definitely. Um, and yeah, also this seems like a little bit bitter at some like it just turns to bitter. It's like go back to Superman and Batman, put the kind of same kind of love and effort and craft and intelligence you've been putting into all those rape scenes and body mutilations. It's like okay. Is, is there a rape scene in Batman or Superman? It seems like I don't know that I remember. I mean, Zach kind of wanted to put it in there. Every time they have sex with someone, it's <laughs> great because of the power dynamics involved. Okay, in okay. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, you're right. I, I forgot about that. Intersectional feminism, exactly. Yeah, quote is Mutilation weird. Into something kids can read, and adults can also be proud to read because of all the love and effort and craft and intelligence you put into I'm not proud of my rape fetish, but... Um, like, right. <laughs> at this point, it just seems like he's not advocating at all for what he sounded like he was. At this point, he just, he just doesn't like gratuitous violence or... Right. Uh, nudity, which again, it's like that's a different argument, different thing. Or, yeah, or I don't know. I mean, he kind of seems to be dwelling. He's not talking about Marvel very much, obviously, because there isn't anything. But mm. yeah, th there's not this glut of violent rated R movies. That's the thing that's kind of yeah, because uh, just like that's think the he vibe content, the vibe of the video. It's like stop this from happening. We're all looking around like Whoa, what? it's happening. Oh, uh, <laughs> all right, Mitt, we did it. Hooray! And it's funny because he compares himself, he's like, I'm not being Helen Lovejoy from Simpsons, who's the stereotype, like, thing of the children, but it's like, you kind of are, though. Yeah. Like, nobody brought they it always up. Pull these, they always pull these quotes out to kind of add, like, some authority to their video and stuff, but I always feel like it's super safe for them, because they can say, oh, you know, these aren't my words, this isn't the way mm -hmm. I feel. I'm but, just pulling up I someone mean, that I yeah, sort of agree exactly. with, but exactly. it's not me, it's such, you know. It's kind of... It's kind of safe. I want to know what this guy feels, not what he thinks this other guy feels. Yeah. But they um, never do that. Because, yeah, it's hard to, it, sometimes it gets hard to, like, sort of pass out who you're supposed to be talking to. But, like, at this point, it's just like, okay, your issue is that it's Roger, guys, an idiot. A kid <laughs> loves his Batman, puts it on his lunchbox, and then one day he watches a film where Batman gets raped or something. He's like, oh my he's God. Robert Pattinson as Batman. <laughs> Yeah, what movie is that? I'm taking you to the bat rape dungeon. You're like, oh no, and it's like we can't have this happen. Oh, we need to find a better way, and the better way is make your own fucking thing called Rape Man, and he does the rape. And you're like, oh, okay, Robin, it's time to slide down the bat pole. <laughs> and I think we can all agree that the other solution is, hey, you know that R-rated Batman? Just don't let your kid watch it until they're older. Simple as that. Where's the white van mobile? <laughs> the Batman <laughs> white <laughs> Rape man has a white van mobile. <laughs> very, very well named. Very adult. And those the real versions. I think this sums it all up pretty perfectly. No, that is confusing and weird, but I, I, mean, yeah. I know. Sums it up perfectly. What? This is why I have absolutely no problem with things like Watchmen Are the Boys, because those characters only exist in those stories. They were created exclusively for adults, and there's no kids' version happening simultaneously. You can't do this when we've or we've already gone over how much kids love like adult shit. Again mm -hmm. with the the, the lunch but he made the lunchbox comparison. It's just like the lunchbox. People had all kinds of shit on their lunchboxes that weren't for them. Like he just. Yeah, Modern Warfare 2 is full of 12-year-olds. Do we, um, I guess, like, to prove this, it's like, Patrick, what if I told you that we, we, we polled 100% uh, of the children audience of Batman, and we told them, do you want a Batman who hits criminals harder? Maybe there's some blood involved. Are these children, the, and the majority of them voted yes. Would you at that point just be like, well, they don't know what they want, okay? They're wrong. <laughs> like, all right. <laughs> they know what they want. Yeah, they do. I mean, I, I still remember being that age. It's like, hell yeah, I'll watch a Batman who hits harder. Sure. This is still like a like a boy girl thing too. Boys like violence far more than girls do, so Fuck yeah. they want to see their Twilight movies. And yeah, exactly. Slow. Yeah. yeah. And something like The Dark Knight Returns. Sure, it's about Batman. I just want to say too that I nailed it with the IP consistency. Like that's exactly what he's advocating here. Man, but it's an out of continuity miniseries. It's not the main ongoing Batman. Comic. Oh, 
Oh. So you're okay so with it so in okay the IP it. as long as it's Elseworld type shit or what if or alternative. Oh. So it's now it's not about the IP, it's about the literal timeline. All these so what rules. is he actually criticizing? We don't even know what he's yeah. criticizing. He doesn't want a mainline timeline to ever change its audience. It has, if ever it does, it either has to be a different IP or it has to move outside of the universe. Which, by the yeah, way, but... you can just treat it that way. Yeah, because I'm assuming that's how people are treating the DC movies. No one's looking at the Zack Snyder ones as a continuation of the Michael Keaton Batman movie. No, no, no. Dude, it's people the, don't even... it's now the Snyder verse, right? It's funny right. because, like, even as a oh, kid, yeah, yeah. I never treated um, the Schumacher Batman movies as continued from the Tim Burton ones. Right, I always thought right. they were new, and it's like, no, they're shared continuity. It's like, I guess. Are they? Even as a kid, I knew there was the animated show, there was the Batman and Robin stuff, and there was the other thing. Like, they were clearly different. Yep. You know what I really think made him do this? It's because he knows he can't, he can't advocate that we don't have Dark Knight Returns, right? He has to account for that. And so now he's like, okay, that's okay, but here's why. It's because they said it's an Elseworld thing. Um, I wonder if we could just have something like mm -hmm. Logan. He might, he might even say it now that Logan's acceptable because of that reason. Um, mm -hmm. But again, as you just said, can we treat all of the DCEU this way? Can you just, and even if it wasn't right, even if the creator said no, no, it's absolutely mainline, you could still, as a parent, be like, sorry, child, this is not mainline. You can't right. see it yet. Like, simple as that. I don't know. Yeah. It's well, an alternate version of the character made for an older audience, which is why it's kind of weird that that's the version that Zack Snyder based his main canonical... Does that not make why your entire weird? point fall apart, though? Like, it he's does, like, yeah. He's like, oh, Zack Snyder shouldn't be doing it this way, but it is weird that he had, he did the one that I said was okay to do in the way that he did it. It's like, wait, but that yeah, that's well, in line with you. Why is that wrong at all in the first place or weird? Why is it weird he chose that one? I don't understand. Well, like, the, isn't that it's, the one he should choose if you want to... From Patrick's perspective, I mean. I mean, Patrick's argument would only apply if there were no previous Batman movies. If the very first Batman movie was, you know, gritty Batman, and, the, and that didn't match the comics. Then he'd have an argument. But would the that's argument not even work true. if the first one was, like, all you'd be advocating for there is, like, why didn't you choose mainline instead of what if for your first... Right, but that is his argument, that the mainline should be kid-friendly or something. Um, but it's an adaptation. Surely just because it's the first adaptation doesn't mean it has to be the mainline one, does it? Well, it's a bad... I mean, I don't agree with that. It's a bad argument. <laughs> right, right, yeah, right. Okay, I understand. Like, that's the argument At least his argument be would be consistent with himself. Yeah, because... Well, maybe he thinks that all the Batman movies haven't been <laughs> the correct adaptations. There are some people who feel that way. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I'm confused now because as soon as you open up that you can um, alternate universe it in your own head canon, it's like, yeah, so surely we're now fine. Anything goes. Batman. Anyway, when Alan Moore wrote Superman comics, they weren't full of murder and brutal violence. They were very much in the mold of classic Superman stories for the classic Superman audience. Now, the other Alan Moore comic we must bring up is The Killing Joke, the famous Batman story in which the Joker shoots Barbara Gordon through the spine, strips her clothes off, and photographs her naked, writhing in pain, and uses these photos to torment her father, who is bound and gagged in bondage gear. Well, okay, <laughs> that's odd. Good book. Damn it. <laughs> I love it. it. It's got a great reputation. I've not read it, but like, wow. That yeah, is, that's it, what I hear. I never saw it as anything other than an Elseworlds. Right. Uh, and made it canon, you know, but when I was reading it at the time, I, I just kind of thought it was uh, like Dark Knight Returns. That's, that's, if someone said like they read that story to me, they're like, do you think this is the mainline source Batman? I'd be like, Probably, yeah, I don't think so. Probably, probably an offshoot. Not. Like I, this I just... is when it was like when it came out. It was eighty seven, so I was seventeen, and that's about the right age to read it. I thought it was the coolest effing thing I ever read. Mm -hmm. uh, the art's amazing, and it was different back then. It, I mean, now it's just it's played out, but uh, I loved it. Yeah. All right. Let's see what he's got to say about this. It's uh pretty grim definitely grimmer than a regular Batman story. And so for decades, it has been held up by fans as one of the best ever stories about these characters. But Alan Moore himself well, it called is? it 
a regrettable misstep. I don't give a well, fuck. Well, he can be wrong. I don't give I don't, a fuck I don't, I don't if he said care. it's a regrettable misstep. I don't care. Yeah, if George Lucas tomorrow said the Empire Strikes Back was, was shit and I shouldn't have made it, that wouldn't change a goddamn thing. Nope. And he shouldn't totally. think it does either. Death of the Author is something these people talk about all the time. Like, bye-bye yes. author. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you think it's bad or a mistake. I'm sorry. Justin Timberlake just made a big apology yesterday for all the stuff he doesn't really regret doing at all. So, yeah, and don't listen to Alan Moore. He's I, I love him as a writer. He's a great writer, and he's a little off. Not judging anybody, but he really does think he's a wizard. So that's okay. Oh, he's yeah. a little jaded, too. He's so, a I'm very jaded jaded wizard. Person. Yes. Yeah, I will, yeah, okay. Jaded off yeah. the charts. <laughs> off the charts. He said, I've been told the Joker film wouldn't exist without my Joker story. But three months after I'd written that, I was disowning it. It was far too violent. It was Batman, for Christ's sake. It's a guy dressed as a- You just no. said that it's okay to do this if it was an alternative timeline. And now you're saying like, no, nah, I can't do it because it's Batman. Can you make up your mind? Like, Which one is it? Saying it. Adam Moore is saying it. Well, that's what for I mean. Him. It's like you're presenting right. this as though it adds to your argument, but it's like it's co totally against yours. So you need to contextualize yeah. this a little differently. The best version of Batman was Adam West, which didn't take it serious. Okay. Hard disagree. <laughs> what? Yeah, I don't know about Opinion. that. I mean, it's I it's know. fun in a goofy way, but mm. the best well, version. It. That's not the it's, best version of Batman. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I don't I don't really mind what anybody thinks is the best version. I'm just like, yeah, that's fine. But like, best series. Why also? Best is your best. Denny O'Neill. Why does it say I've been told the Joker film wouldn't exist without my Joker story? As if this is like regrettably the Joker movie was inspired by my work. I just feel like I mean the movie's pretty awesome. So, so you made a great comic <laughs> and you inspired a great movie? Like, okay. Yeah, I don't know. You don't seem too happy about this. What's wrong with you? Yeah. I, mean, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even believe that. I mean, the killing joke in the Joker movie, I don't they don't seem that well, similar. I can believe it was inspired. Dark. Uh it's just that it's obviously doing loads of different things to the point of there's no real like batman isn't in the batman is like an ip really isn't in that much of the joker movie uh with obviously joaquin phoenix because there's probably gonna be more than one joker right. movie eventually um it, it's it's a it's clearly a character study and he's called joker in it and he wears the makeup but like this this is a point of um criticism for a lot of fans right they're like it doesn't have enough of the source in it and so it annoys them and i understand that i'm just saying that uh you can see uh, where pieces came in from uh, what may have been read. I'm pretty sure uh, the director's on record as having said The Killing Joke is definitely referenced and um, inspired it. This is probably where he's gotten this from. ...as a bat. And Crank, the best version of Batman, was Adam West, which didn't take it at all seriously. Whoa, Alan, go off. So tell us what you think about superheroes in general. Well, uh, I have no... It's weird that he's like, the best version is the version that didn't take it seriously. It's like, hmm. Mm -hmm. hmm. This, feels, this feels weird. It's like, okay. Hmm. Should it not be treated seriously? I was like, intrinsically, you should not treat it seriously. Also, this quote is something else. I mean, we haven't heard Patrick read it out yet, so I guess we'll let him do that. Interest in super. They were a thing that was invented in the late 1930s for children, and they are perfectly good as children's entertainment. But if you try to make them for the adult world, then I think it becomes kind of grotesque. So Eleanor's an idiot? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yes. So that's what I'm pulling away from these quotes, is that Alan Moore is a fucking moron. What do you even say to this? Twice. Like, hmm. I'm like, I scoot away slowly from him at the weird wherever it is that I've met him. At the gas station, like he's behind you in line and he just is randomly talking and you just want to pay for your gas and your Snickers bar and leave. You just want to get away from him. That's how I picture Alan Moore. Like, where, where does Greek guy at that gas station in? in Sedona, Arizona. I feel like we'll be... Where does Greek mythology fit in with this? Oh, this grotesque, here? I'm curious. Like, right? <laughs> well, I mean, it, it is, but... I mean, Greek mythology is kind of superheroes from a thousand grotesque, years ago, right? It's I fucking mean... awesome. Uh, it... Yeah, it's all his politics. He's like leaned hard into, you know, he's very anti patriarchy and any kind okay. of violence is jingoism or whatever. Yeah, it, it's it's all his politics. Uh, he's just gotten crazier wow. as he's gotten older. Wow. And, um, uh, yeah, he's a comic writer. It's 
Talking yeah. about, by the way, um, trying to make them for the adult world becomes grotesque. So you, you look at um, Iron Man again. I, I like bringing him up because he's one of my favorites, all right? And it's just mm -hmm. like this, this story of a man who, through his intelligence and his, the family he, he was, was brought into and, and his you know, technology um, investment, he's created weapons and he's sold them and he's made a really good life for himself as a result. Those weapons end up being used by people to do horrible things to other people. And then it's like, he, as a result of obviously this already, is he can design himself a suit that makes him more powerful than basically any one person on the planet. And he's, he's, he's going to change because he has the power to people being able to use that against him. And he's usually portrayed, if I remember correctly, he's, like he's, got a, he's an alcoholic as well as feeling as though he's responsible for a lot of what is essentially absolute misery mm -hmm. in the world. And it's like, you see, it, gets, it becomes grotesque when you try and tell that story for an adult. It's like, that already sounds like an adult story. That's what do you a mean? kid's story, though. Clearly, what you just described for me was like, that's like after Dora, yeah. there's <laughs> Iron Man. Yep. So it's... Uh, I remember learning about arms dealers in preschool. Yep. Day one. <laughs> it's, it's, everything's got to go to extremes, right? So, uh, you know, adults can't uh, enjoy superhero films because it's... You know, it's it's arrested development or something like that. It, you can't be an adult and j enjoy superhero stuff. That's I mean, that's utter bullshit. You know, I like my stuff. I like my st superhero stuff. I, and then I can be a dad. I can turn dad on. Yeah. Whenever the fuck I want. I'm not I'm not stuck in one mindset all the time. But you at know, the same time, give me any film that is definitively like adult. And then, and then you do. And it's like, OK, so what if I made this film? Totally bullshit. But I also added in that one of these characters was born with an ability that gave them stronger strength than anyone else. And then they started fighting crime. It's like, oh, well, you've become grotesque now. I'd be like, oh. Yep. And childish. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that those variables... Because are... this is the thing. I don't... You know when people talk about genre and they're like, superhero is a genre. I'm always just like, superhero is a genre? Couldn't... Isn't superhero just encompasses like everything? The only variable is that someone has power that puts them you know, higher than other people yeah. in terms of ability, and then they decide to fight with it for whatever reason. Um, yeah, yeah, and you pretty can, it, it could be noir, it, it could be a rom-com, it could be anything. Yeah, yeah that's, and, and that's you the can beauty do, of superheroes. It's like, imagine Alien, and then you go, okay, but, uh, you know, Dallas, he's he's got laser vision. You just be like, okay. And, and I'll say, like, oh, this would be good. I'm, I'm saying, no, I'm just saying, like, does that out? I guess he could use it on the alien. Maybe if we make it, he can go invisible, and it's just something that he could do. It's just what I'm trying to argue is like suddenly it becomes like this. It's superhero now. I'd be like, that's weird. Like, what if it never even comes up? It's just something he could do. Someone here said Alan Moore wrote a graphic novel about Wendy from Peter Pan, Alice from Alice in Wonderland, and yes. Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz telling their sexual adventures when they grew up. What? Yep. Oh my god. So oh, they say that kind of makes Patrick's argument insulting. But they're not super. Yeah. Do you see the person? Yeah, of course. Yeah, they're women. Do the person asking you about how Thor apparently at some point had to dress up as a girl to try get his hammer back from a frost giant? <laughs> what? <laughs> Did that happen in the comic books? That sounds hilarious. I can do it. I want to see this in Thor four. Okay, actually, no, they would probably make it really. Dora lame. the Destroyer. I'd watch it. Dora, 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 the Destroyer. Yeah, Lost Girls. That's that's the, <clears throat> the name of the graphic novel that came out, and he's still writing stuff like that. He's Alan Moore's full of shit. He's the kind of guy who, like, one bad thing happens to him, and it the whole day's bad. It, my my day is bad. I can't get mm -hmm. over this one bad thing that happened. You know? Oh yeah, and I think some people are like a little bit like like Rags and I are not commenting on Alan Moore's ability as a writer. Okay, simply these comments. Yeah, he just comes Great across writer. as a crazy person at a gas station that you want to get away from. Uh, it, if he wasn't writing comic books, he would be that crazy guy at the gas station. If that. that's a picture of him. Then he looks like a crazy person at a gas station. But he's a, great a weird homeless comic book person writer. who snuck in and is just <laughs> biding his time in the air conditioning before he's asked to leave. And he doesn't have to work. He doesn't have to work for the rest of his life because he wrote superhero comic books and he cashed a lot of checks. Now he does give away a lot of money. He, he refuses to take any residuals from Watchmen, the film. He doesn't hmm. want his name on it. So he's got, you know, at least he's got a little bit of integrity oh, yeah. there. But. That's a lot of integrity. Oh, yeah, I can respect integrity. It's just that mm -hmm. his beliefs are strange, okay? They're just strange and worth discussing, yep. I think, because 
Yeah, the because I'm still in my head trying to figure out what point of, the, the the better explain the point I was making with um having a superhero ability, right? Does that then make you a superhero genre movie? It's like I don't think so. It's it's no. And so there's more that comes with it, and it's just like, is it automatically grotesque if ever it's for adults? I just find it it's all very strange. I maybe it'd be interesting to talk to him about it. I don't know. I don't know that he mm -hmm. might be a little set in his position. <laughs> it might not be worth well, that. Well, he recently came out and basically said if you like superhero comic books you're a, you're a yahtzee oh great did a pulled a pedro oh. pascal recently so. are you talking about did he really that, yeah it was like, but like all superheroes are fundamentally fascist right yeah they're fundamentally yeah. fascist and you like it you're one too what the where's fuck? indiana jones fit in that in mm. that uh idea because i don't necessarily know well, still a nazi he just the thing. Uh, internalized indiana nazism jones? Right. It's especially relevant with um, Iron Man because he doesn't actually have any powers. He has technology, and so He's super rich. Like this is if superheroes. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. If superheroes were like automatically, f there's no point going into that. It's so absurd. <laughs> Just can't even like the amount of counters you can have. It's like okay, you know what? Whatever, it's fine. Okay, okay. Maybe a little more extreme than I would go, but yeah. I get it. Won't somebody please think of the children? It's good that you play these clips. Yes, yeah. it's very important. Was it, it is was the, the too. Yeah. Was the all superhero fans are Nazis in response to this video? The response to this <laughs> video, rather, because it seems like it might be. It might. They might be related. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna guess here. Feeling more Nazi by the moment, mm. es especially if it was recent. Well, if he's going to watch this response, of course, but then it all he's, makes sense. Oh, we're Nazis. He doesn't we're like angry. to recognize I that I exist. Super <laughs> it's not a something that. If if Pat, I could, could you imagine Patrick Willis watching an EFAP episode? I think he he would be very upset. It, his brain would explode. It implode. It would do a plode of no. some kind. Uh, he watches all these. Are you kidding me? Absolutely. He cleans his gun no. while he watches them. <laughs> he doesn't. He's not a gun owner. I love superhero comics and superhero movies, and I love that this genre has become so embraced. Admitted Nazi right there. Race by the mainstream yeah. audiences. Fascist. But we can't forget that at their core, superheroes are inherently kind of silly. Uh, there he goes no. with the silly again. Uh oh, trigger warning. So. Well, I'm going to call. I'm going to call. Are we talking about unrealistic? I it's don't know. That's the thing. We that's need the word weird... sort out. Yeah. Because you get that Iron Man could happen someday. It could. A billionaire who made weapons, like, and felt really bad about it, that makes a suit that's revolutionary with technology he has access to. It's just like, that could happen. So you must not be talking about realistic. You must be talking about uh, campiness, I guess, or just... Yeah, because we've got... Ability? Right now, and Elon Musk, you know, two yeah. sides. You know. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think TLJ's uh, silly, so, yeah. Oh. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Um, by the way, I can't wait to see Elon, Elon Man. Elon's awesome. He's gonna he's the Muskman. Gonna, gonna go Musk to space man. in his spacesuit and fire lasers yep. at the aliens Take over Mars. Him. Yeah, he's gonna have like a giant harem on Mars. Yeah, yeah. He's gonna establish a muskocracy. Absolutely. <laughs> These are stories about people who gain magical powers in freak accidents. So it's that it's not real. Is that it? Is that it's not? Yeah, Star no Wars is silly. Real. Everything's silly that isn't real. You dress in tight, colorful costumes. Oh, is that an important That's factor that this the costumes yeah. are tight? <laughs> what the like fuck that. is this? I like, like it when they're tight. Yeah. I give themselves made-up nicknames. Oh man, when you give yourself made a, a, a made-up nickname, I made guess up. all of you guys that would be really fucking weird, yeah. wouldn't it? If someone did that. Like you gave yourself a made-up nickname instead of your real name. I would never give myself a makeup nickname. <laughs> what a weird thing to do! So silly born, and unrealistic. I was called Rags. I was Alpha of the litter. I don't. Why would you even say this when, like, most of the time is to protect their identity? Like, for, first and foremost, why would you even make this From point? Freaks like him. <laughs> Same reason <laughs> superheroes do it to protect their identity. It's funny because categorically there are more fake names if you will in chat than there are real ones it's like what this oh, is kind of how we probably. operate these days especially with how we have to stay inside all the time oh you silly folk all of you with your silly names Blech. i bet Great. you wear skin tight suits 
superheroes would be more childish if they could all run around with their own names and no one cared. They're like, mm-hmm. oh, look, it's John, the guy who's super <laughs> powerful. No one's ever going to attack him while he's sleeping. And Isn't could a... you believe what chaos the world would be if you were allowed to like legally change your name? Like that would be insane. There's Whoa. no way that would they'd ever allow that. No, no, no. <laughs> That'd be ridiculous. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's John Smith. It's Adam. <laughs> Here he comes. <laughs> it's it's Robert. It's silly. Uh, <laughs> Robert. Oh, oh no, time, Robert. Punching criminals in the face. No. Nope. It's so weird that they punch criminals in the face. No one does that. What a weird thing. Yeah, I'd punch him in the the shoulder. Yeah. It, yeah. It's it's bizarre too because it's like this is superheroes are just the continuation of the hero mythology that has gone on through human history from its existence. Yeah. And People it's like it when someone with an extraordinarily extraordinary circumstance can use it for good. That's something we like. Right. We're okay with that. We give it a thumbs superheroes up. It happens in real life. In- before 1930, there was no superheroes. Yeah, oh, Inkadoo's a fucking faggot. The internet. You'd, have to, you'd have to just deal with the fact that everything sucked. Nobody did anything special ever <laughs> with anything. Adult stuff. No matter how serious and mythic and profound and gritty these stories can be, oh my God, there I'm is always going to be that silliness at the heart of it. Yeah, there's no, nothing wrong. what is no, the silliness it, at the heart? So first of all, what you if they don't define... have a silly costume and a silly name? I was going to say, all the Who things he defined are things that we can erase and maintain it being a superhero movie. They they wear a baggy outfit, they wear their, they use their real name. They don't have a magical okay. power, they just have a power. They don't even like... have suits. Fuck yeah. it. Uh, I was gonna say this. This examples of like, a, isn't Punisher just a guy? Yeah. So but he's wearing a skull in a shirt, so it's a costume. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> well, if we take the skull off and he calls himself Frank Castle and not Punisher, looks like we did it, Patrick, by your own <laughs> stupid system. What is this? Also, the way this camera is aimed is very. <laughs> this is a boomer angle. Yeah, yeah. uncomfortable. head. There's wrong with people forget vision. that when um, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby and uh, Steve Ditko were creating Marvel and making such a huge impact on uh, comics uh, with doing, quote, adult stories, if you actually read those stories, they are not adult stories. They are silly. And I don't care. What does that even mean? Tell me what you I mean. I don't care. Yeah. In, the, in context, they were more adult than what they were getting before. So it was a progression. Yeah. Right. Which is, which is probably it, what they meant. Up. Yeah, he's not even be like, Jerry Conway was there with Roy Thomas when, you know, it progressed again. And it evolved. And that's what we're in right now. Well, it was evolving. Now it's devolving. But for a long time, it was evolving. And it was very good. Mm-hmm. And more violent. <sighs> the embrace that material we're embracing it at least in part because it gave them the freedom to to be silly you know to to embrace the silliness of these characters uh by the eye winking and the and the the uh acknowledgement that it was silly that came with stan's commentary fine silly exactly i'm so like oh let me tell you what silly is wearing a tight costume you're like (laughs) does he mean fun yeah that's the the other thing yeah He's he looks like, like the kind of person who would call fun things silly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As he as he runs his bank in nineteen fifteen, that's supposed to Great be Alfred, Britain right? and London, well, in the smoggy it, city, and like he it, forbids singing. It's weird because Patrick has like his Patrick has his own point, which is not fleshed <laughs> out and kind of muddled. And we don't really understand what it is, and then he keeps cutting to. Older guys who are basically saying, back in my day, comics were better because they were, you know, sillier back in my day. And they have nothing to do with Patrick's point, really. Not really, no. Patrick has a point? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Rob's talking about films, and he's talking about comic books, two completely different media. But, we do get, as you say, self-conscious over time, and we start looking for excuses for why it's really good stuff. Well, it's really good stuff on its own terms. So when- What the fuck does that mean? Yeah, what was that? That's so confused. I'm so confused here. Who's who's finding an excuse to like our stuff? Yeah, Are you guys find that... looking for excuses to like your stuff? I'm not. Yeah, if, no. someone, if someone was like, "Oh man, I love Adam West Batman. It's so good, but I want to make it better by making it gritty," and then he's like, "You don't understand. It was good in and of itself. 
I'd just be like, okay, you guys are all taught. You need to define these terms. I don't know what fucking anyone's talking about anymore. You, you talk about you just like it and you want to make something else you also like, in which case, more power to you. But then the guy saying, yeah, like, right. hey, it was already good. I'd be like, okay. <laughs> it could also be different, right? Like, I, I'm so lost with all of you. You're all weird people. <laughs> I don't want you. Isn't variety the spice of life? If, isn't That's it great to I have variety? Of That's what I Yeah, think. what the fuck? What's going on here? <laughs> all need to think the same be pod people i want pod people i want all i want it all i want the silly i want the gritty i want the violent the gratuitous sex i want yeah, it no, all the, the conversation was cut off before the end guy a says i no longer want silly campy i want edgy because that would be good and then the guy says hey it was good before and that's where it ends it's like no 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 the guy should then said hey maybe it was good before but i want to make something else this good and different yeah oh shit yeah we can have all the good. Yeah, let's do it. Let's have all the good guys. More good. When you have silly. Robin, this guy saying "fuck Batman." Fuck Batman. That's not. But <laughs> that's a different it's not argument. That, the part you, yeah, you you put up a different Robin though. That's you can not have that a, Robin. You can have yeah. a gritty adult Robin. That yeah. you can you can have this <laughs> like saying fuck that Batman. Robin would never the f word yeah yeah because this is the thing you have to be definitive about what the problem is here we all see this we go oh my god how edgy of you to say fuck batman robin that's like the one of the people you don't expect to say it. however there could be a context where robin is perfectly justifiable in saying fuck batman sure yeah. totally sure there was he's driving around well, of course it's it's white man i don't believe for a second that titans justified it but <laughs> you know i could have been sold on it completely and stabbing people Dick with garden shoes yeah, while right also there. wearing a colorful spandex <laughs> costume. Hey, yeah, that's what silly. My, my viewers, that's silly. One of my viewers uh, cut that to the Teen Titans theme of him, him just stabbing the guy in the dick over and over again to the. <laughs> Teen Teen Titans. Titans. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's out there on the internet. You can find it. Yeah, he, yeah, edgy would be the word that comes to mind predominantly yeah. with this sort of thing. All righty, he's. I'll just him in the Google Robin Dick Stabbing Musical Interlude. There you go. <laughs> Bring it up. Let's all enjoy it. Trying to find it. It creates this dissonance. It's trying very hard to be serious and adult, but it's like a 13-year-old's idea of what... That's a different problem. No, it isn't. That's a different problem anyway yeah, from what yeah, you've been talking right. about. You're talking about being edgy for the sake of it, not actually trying to portray adult stuff. That's not what you, you're, you're making it sound like you can't do this. You can't make Robin and Batman and Superman and Spider-Man a mature thing because you end up with this. It's like, no, that's a result of someone being incompetent. Being like, hey, yeah, isn't it edgy to stab someone in the dick? Mm -hmm. that's, that's a different thing, Patrick. I always said Going Teen Titans needed more they dick they stabbings. Fail. Absolutely. But adult mean clearly embarrassed about what it is. It's so afraid yeah, I would of say it ain't. It ain't embarrassed about what it is. It is very confident about yeah, what it, it is. Yeah, it thinks it's doing great. <laughs> yeah, the problem is not. It should adult. be embarrassed, but it isn't. Adult memes. It's so clearly embarrassed about what it is. It's so afraid of being silly or childish that it ends up even more ridiculous. It's like watching. No, a that's not why. Also, if you want to say mm. that after saying that silly is good. You, you're now in trouble. Oh, this yeah. is even more silly, which is bad. <laughs> like, wait a minute. Getting a little bit crossed over here. I don't know what's happening anymore. Unironically sing a Nickelback song. Look at this photograph. That, why even bring in... What the <laughs> fuck? I mean, I agree that that is super cringe, and I wouldn't let any of these people <laughs> close to me. But... How did you connect this? <laughs> Like, look at this other thing that's extremely cringe and embarrassing. Like, okay. How is this for an analogy? Making Robin stab someone in the dick is like singing Nickelback. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> just, okay, okay. I love Lamb. There is a moment in Batman versus Superman that should have a Nickelback song playing in it. All of it. It's the moment when he's like, Mom, your mom has this. Nickelback should come up while he's saying that. With Martha. Yes. Why did you say that name? Look at this. <laughs> Nickelback would take that scene to the next level. They would you have to admit it. It would elevate it. Okay, listen Look, to this I... music. It's so inspiring. Yes. Our yes. moms have the same name. 
I know comic books great. were dismissed for decades as dumb, childish stuff, and I remember when I was younger and I desperately wanted them to be taken seriously. But this desperation is how you end up with comics like Identity Crisis, DC's crossover event. Most of the story revolves around the reveal that years earlier- This is a earlier, comic book, not a movie. And he's also, again, it's not, it's the execution, clearly. It's not actually the idea. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Every time, Dr. Every Light. Thing, he just refuses to acknowledge that of course it can work. Also, we also have the fucking escape card that he gave us earlier, which is, well, this is Elsewhere, Patrick. This is, this is a what if. That was fine. Yeah, that was fine. What a terrible video. What? Wouldn't he have really to be arguing one. that it never works uh, in order to make this well, argument? That's the thing. This video should be called Why It Sucks When People Get Really Edgy. Because <laughs> like, it's, it's mainly yeah, what this is about. I mean, yeah, there's some Highest exact. Lord Edge, Patrick Willems. Yeah, and that's the other thing. I'd probably end up disagreeing with that video because it's like really hard to be definitive about that sort of thing. It's definitely a personal preference. Like, like I consider the Dark Saber too edgy, but someone else would be like, "That's the fucking best thing ever." It's like, all right, <laughs> it just <laughs> you do you. Super villain Doctor Light sexually assaulted elongated man's wife, and then the Justice League covered it up. The entire thing is an agonizing attempt to cram quote unquote adult themes into inherently childish material. It's not inherently childish. Jesus Christ. Yeah, what, is it silly or childish? You said silly earlier. Now you're saying it's childish. And um, the, when he was explaining it, it's like a team member um, raped somebody and the rest of the team cover it up, I assume for the sake of their image. It's like, that sounds pretty adult. Um, and it could be yeah. very well executed for all we understand, and it's something that could be relevant for something of a in a superhero world. And it's like, well, this is meant for children, though. We're like, oh, I really don't think you've uh, made a good argument in that case. I don't know. I thought he was going to say it's really edgy, but um, I don't know. That scenario does seem like you could make a really good story out of it. Yeah, absolutely. The result is just unpleasant. But I'll admit, when I was. Is that your argument? It's unpleasant? Yeah. Y your Big argument reveal. about trying to cover up rape is unpleasant? It's like, yeah. Probably. Yeah, rape sh sucks. It's amazing to me that we you have this 40-minute video with so few points. Like, you could make totally. a distinction about why an identity crisis, the sexual assault is stupid, and why it works in Watchmen. But he just says, no, it just doesn't work. It's just gross. Take my word for it. Yeah. Yeah, it was this uh whole video. popular. I sold the comic. I didn't sell it to kids. I had of good course. covers. People were into it. They were shocked. It was there to shock. Uh but he's not like really he said the JLA covered it up. It was mm, I don't know. It was it was more of a mind wipe by Zatanna. We're not going to go down that road though. Mm. <laughs> Make her forget about it and stuff. But it was still uh, wrong. And then DC relaunched their universe like you know, another year later. So it didn't really happen. Oh, wow. Again, though, like, you could even just consider it that way. A lot of people don't consider the sequel trilogy canon. <laughs> like, no, fuck that. It's Elseworld yeah. bullshit. And they might even make that the case if, as time goes on. Who knows? I was 16. Thought it was awesome. The I think once they establish that... its replacement, it you... will become much more likely. Did you catch that? Once he they the realize that people will clap at anything. He did the thing. When I was when I was young, I also thought it was cool, but then I grew up. You're like, okay. Yeah, he's done that before. Yeah, he, he likes to always... But yeah, like, comics are super childish. Like, he's constantly devaluing the medium. things that he... Like, yeah, the whole medium. But at the same time, he's saying, you know, I, you know back when I was a kid, he was a super cringe and all that stuff. But I thought it was cool, but not me. It's like he's looking down on the thing that he his livelihood is. It is, mm -hmm. it is weird. It seems like an inconsistency for him that he's like, you, uh, well, I wanted exactly. it to be mature, for, but it's not. I mean, but it's okay to do a 41 minute, whatever video on it, which I don't think is silly at all. But I mean, based right. on your argument, hmm. uh, why are you talking about it this much then? If it's so silly and childish and you don't care yeah, and this you is... had to show off earlier yeah this is the guy who was recommended my video and said uh, i'm not gonna watch a five-hour rant by some angry guy on youtube it's like oh okay <laughs> i am okay, oh yeah 
I'll watch it. Yeah, I mean, cool. I'm okay with an angry guy ranting. Go for it. <laughs> Let's see what he's got to say. Earlier Man. in the video, he was saying that inherent, like wearing a costume is inherently childish, and yet he's what wearing. Is he wearing? This, yeah, he's wearing this <laughs> costume to try to. <laughs> Turtle. This isn't normal adult. person clothes. Like, this is yeah. like yeah. Well, it, look, like, I used to like violence when I was a kid, but then I bought a turtleneck and grew up. But imagine telling that yeah. I was incapable of violence. Like I know this I is absurd, but jump into the Iron Man movie with Patrick, and he's like, "You're ridiculous! Look at what you're wearing." I imagine Tony Stark would be like, "What do you mean? It's like it protects me from bullets." <laughs> 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 Why are you saying this to me? And like, who says the Iron Man suit, especially in Iron Man One, looks like ridiculous? It's like, I think it looks awesome. What do you mean? It mm -hmm. does look awesome. Yeah. When I was six, I thought it was awesome. The R-rated uh -huh. versions that work know how to navigate this. Deadpool leans into the silliness and absurdity and positions itself as a wacky and- See, so what he had to do was say, don't do this, but then the ones people liked, Deadpool, Logan, etc., he has to justify them. He's like, no, they're yeah, okay, totally. though, because they did it right. Because of this, this, this reason. This, yeah, 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 this reason. So but you know what? The execution individual stories yeah this is what he should have figured out it's not that you shouldn't do it these are the exceptions it's that these guys didn't do what titans did which is stab a guy in the dick over and over again and say fuck batman it's right. edgy cringe shit i mean basically he's this whole video is just critiquing Zack snyder and Zack snyder inspired dc stuff really that's all it is. yeah true. which is fine but don't just... don't make this broad label of all r-rated superheroes because yeah, he's like lamenting yeah. like oh people want r-rated x-men no it's like but what, you haven't proven why that would be a bad thing inherently, other than saying you shouldn't be children shouldn't have to see that. It's like okay, Helen Lovejoy. That's all you're doing. Mm -hmm. Arc where you within a classic superhero universe, and Logan, which is as gritty and serious, there you go. makes but that work by stripping away all the tropes and iconography of superheroes and shifting into an entirely different genre. He's not Logan, wearing a costume. Logan is the one that kind of falls entirely into his whole argument in in that it's a sequel, technically speaking. It depends on how you view it, right? But you watch X Men One, Two, Three, then you watch X Men Origins Wolverine, then you watch The Wolverine, then you watch First Class, Days of Future Past, Apocalypse, and then this one, or is it before Apocalypse? This one is. It's a lot Point of is, fucking yeah, the, there's a continue. This film relies on you having seen the others. It references them, the events mm -hmm. in them. So, the idea that those films were meant absolutely not for the audience that this is exclusively for, it just destroys his argument. He's like, no, 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 it's fine though, because Logan is like a weir. It's like, you can't do this, it's too late. The child who watched X-Men 1 watched this and went, oh no, Mr. Patrick, I'm so scared by how adult this is, help me. <laughs> you were right, Patrick, they shouldn't be making films like Logan. And then Patrick's like, no, 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 people liked Logan, we're allowed Logan. It's like, oh, fuck Yeah, it's off. too late, I'm already erasing Logan. I thought he said it was a superhero genre and it shifts into a different genre. No, this is still a superhero movie. Absolutely. In, in a darker action adventure that's that's all they are it's different genres that's why th they can make them forever at this point and yeah, and, yeah you know all together heard it's secretly a western so here it's a western okay <laughs> like i said at this point superhero is just something he brands when he doesn't like it <laughs> it's when he likes it. he's like oh, okay yeah it's not a superhero yeah it's movie not a well. superhero yeah. movie when i like it like logan's not a superhero movie because he's not it's a, a spandex called wolverine here's the part i know is coming where people in the comments accuse me of being a hypocrite in other videos i'm advocating for you're a hypocrite in this video let alone other yeah. videos <laughs> it's fine <laughs> You don't have to bring those into this. Not even... Makers to have creative freedom, or I'm. Oh, that's actually another angle. Yeah, it, it would be cool if we let the artists really just try and do this, their thing with the thing, I guess. But um, whatever. I don't know. He definitely feels that way about everything. So it'd be interesting to see how he accounts for it, I guess. Demanding that big franchise entertainment take more risks and move away from predictable homogeneity. So why now am I imposing these restrictions on these characters and saying they have to be done a certain way? Well, that's not really what I'm saying. Ah. Then you phrased it very poorly. <laughs> God. What I'm saying here is really less about the creators of these movies and shows and more about the audience. Which is oh, weird because oh, you, talk, uh, you talk to them a bunch, but dude, yeah, tell me how it's my fault. You talk about pretentious. 
a it's bunch the of audience's fault. There's a bunch of angry white males enjoying violent Ow. comic books and I violent seriously movies. Hope. It upsets me, okay? I hope that's not I where got, he's going I, with this. I, be, I, I have to bug out, but I want to hear this. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> I got to hear it. To own the characters. And there's something kind of selfish about demanding that they change to appeal to us as we You literally old. is this video. <laughs> That's literally this video, Patrick. <laughs> Why are you so dumb? <laughs> you just spent the whole you video advocating that, that's what they do video what you is about. So wait, has Patrick never made the argument that superheroes should become more diverse to reflect a diverse uh, population? I suppose in our he considers 2021 that, modern year, year. I suppose he considers that a different type of argument, a different format. Because what he just said is, we as grown-up children now shouldn't advocate that it grows up with us we should instead allow it to stay for children and so they can enjoy it right how diverse batman is he'd probably be like batman right. being black has no effect on this it's nothing to do with that but yeah but it's just what if yeah, my kids are racist it's just fascinating because yeah. he spent the whole fucking video talking about how, what he wants it to be and he's like we shouldn't be so selfish as to demand that they get he remember he said when i was 13 i thought this too it's like oh you don't need more <laughs> Well, he's gone the full cycle. He's like, when I was younger, I wanted them to be more violent, so they should have been. But now that I'm older, I don't, so they shouldn't be. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> wait, did you say that we're advocating for the reverse of that, that we shouldn't be so selfish, but you get to have what you want? <laughs> like All right, then. It's depriving patients of discovering them the way we did. They can still discover it the way you did. Yeah. Yeah, they just it's still don't care. there. It never went away. I discovered Star Wars the same way my dad did. Obviously not in the theater, but still. They're still making uh, you know, mm -hmm. child-oriented superhero content all the time. I mean, I know that, again, because... Yeah, I, there's I always to, kids. There's more kids than ever. I go to this example because it's just such a, such a quintessential one, but like there are parents right now showing their children the OT from 78. Like some, it's a, yes. a while yeah. ago, okay? Well, Maybe he still thinks it's the seventies where we couldn't, we didn't have VHSs or, or fucking DVDs <laughs> or I don't know. He's got a yellow turtleneck on, so like maybe the, uh, yeah. The, this man's trapped in the past. The strongest argument He's you trapped. can make is like, yeah, but that's not just easily because he said discoverable, as if like the things you stumble across on modern day media. And it's just like, why is this a problem? There is new content for kids always. It's a market. It makes lots of money. There's always right. going to be content for kids. Well. And they're ignoring the money side because if if the people who are making the, the superhero content start marketing to, marketing it towards the older generation, they're doing that because they feel like that's where they can get an audience. Because maybe the younger generation isn't interested in this. Maybe they're more interested in anime or manga maybe, or all yeah. these other things, which off which are video games. Part of their appeal is yeah, that they're not games. they're not um you know so age defined they're, they're like you know you have like hunter hunter and my hero which go all over the place in terms of whether it's for children or adults. i think what he needs to wake the fuck up is to have a son show him batman like that he had he's when he was younger read. and then the son is like this is lame and he's like what <laughs> what <laughs> he's like, so just like i don't like this yep. i'm sorry i just thought yeah i'm not interested in this he's like no because this is the solution to his problem if you want your son or, or whatever the, the, to discover whatever thing, it's like they can go discover whatever they want, but you can be like, hey, son, I'd like you to see something that I think is amazing. And if you have a good relationship with your son, you should be all right. <laughs> In terms of them checking it out. That's how I got to see so many great movies. I was like, yeah, dad, I trust your taste. Let's do it. Look, you'll be this okay. What, yeah, he had. These are the movies that we had to watch. I mean, we had a, we had a, a bin with all the VHSs in it. And so that was my selection. Yeah. And it was yep. a good one. You can pass this stuff on because this seems to be his concern. It's like, nah, kids aren't going to enjoy classic children-friendly Batman. It's like they still can It's still there. There's still tons okay. of it there. Yeah. Take your pick. Claiming ownership over fiction that existed long before us and will theoretically. Oh, you're protecting it for the children on behalf of the. Ch yeah, I, Patrick that's what Williams, I mean. Guardian of the children. He's mm. suggesting um, this is like a horrible crime you. being They're committed. Their future. Like, children grow up and they turn on the TV and Zack Snyder's Batman says, Do you bleed? And they're like, oh my god, this is, I don't like this what guy. Is this like, no. freaky weirdo? My son, Everyone... that is not Batman. Here he is. And then Adam West is going, dun 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 <laughs> Yep. I can picture the son being equally like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> what the fuck is this? Is this a joke? It... Is this a parody? This is such a non-problem. <laughs> He's like, you'll be fine. You can... Yep.
Turns out people gravitate towards the stuff they like anyway, so... <gasps> mm -hmm. That's how we know they it's like it. Kids who grew up watching DuckTales demanded that the recent reboot be catered specifically to them as adults. With Scrooge McDuck, like Snor That should give you the answer, actually. So when you think of a modern, adult-friendly DuckTales, none of us are like, I want to see DuckTales, but with violence and gore. Superhero <laughs> content showing we, we talked about this right at the beginning it comes full circle the actual consequences of taking people down in a justice system as a vigilante we're starting to get to adult topics we just are That's yes just how it who works. deserves this and how do they do that and who watches duck everyone? tales a bunch of ducks discussing things that happened in the more it's like of course that can stay child wrong friendly. with talking animals mauler i didn't say that there is i'm saying <laughs> it is not inherently as as adult topics in terms of how should we deliver justice in a system for society where right. we're dealing with someone who's super powerful? It's like, he, he pretends that DuckTales and Batman have like the, the same level of discussion and topics in, in, inherently tied to whatever they're yeah, about. Obviously, like, Batman uh, doesn't have as much as DuckTales. Absolutely. DuckTales is so much more adult. <laughs> it's just like, you look yeah. at like, oh my god. Like, this was, this was clearly He's his gotcha. He's going after the audience here. This is his gotcha. That's it's his like, you wouldn't thing. expect this of DuckTales, yeah, would you? It's, 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 it's the audience... Uh, this is a bunch of plebs. You're a bunch of idiots. Well, he was the one who said you're watching movies wrong. Mm hmm. Um, Maybe damn it. His, his whole argument is that he's mad at people who are overly critical of like Star Wars and things he likes. Mm -hmm. He's like, if all these people, if they didn't like the content, if this content was geared at children, then I wouldn't have to deal with the criticism because the children would just consume it and not question it. Maybe. It's a straw point. man argument. Yeah, this, this sounds like a real weird argument that maybe comes from another place uh, but i got i gotta cut out guys sorry i hate to break the momentum this is take, oh, yeah, no, fun take, as take hell. care gary one but one I last thing i just always said i kind of want to see it already at ducktales and i'm like hey you know, yeah. if you if you want to do it <laughs> you go ahead and make it see what, see what people have to say about it um but yeah uh before you go thank you so much for joining us mr nerdrotic and do you want to um do you want to tell people about about yourself where you are where they can find you what you're up to oh my god I'm, well i'm gonna go spend some time with my son craziness i know Whoa. uh maybe we'll watch <laughs> joker or you know fight club or something oh my god. Um, awesome. yeah, yes uh, uh yeah my name is Gary, I have a channel, Nerdrotic. I make a video uh, more than Mahler, but less than most people uh, <laughs> once a week. And I uh, do a lot of live streaming. So uh, check me out if you'd like. Uh, and subscribe to all these guys, too. They're great. And uh, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Thanks for being you here. Bet. And uh, we will catch you Take care, soon. man. Take, Take care, guys. Doodaloo. Bye. Bye. Yeah, link in description and chat. Subscribe to Nerdrotic. Check out Friday Night Time. This is so cliche, man. He's going after the audience now. It's just, This is like the cliche. He the thinks he's won. Video. He thinks he's like, <laughs> you, you think in your head, DuckTales, but they're beating the shit out of people. It's like, you wouldn't want that, would you? So now you understand. Well, and you're like, whoa. Know. First of all, yeah, Why we might do. Why do you think do. Star Wars has to cater to you? Why do you think Star Wars has to cater to you? <laughs> like, that's really the subtext yep. here. But like, you... I guess let's go let's go crazy. Winnie the Pooh. It's a straw you could, man. It's totally a straw man. You could have a really adult Winnie the Pooh episode. You know, like a uh, Yeah. I'm not I'm not, I'm not even People going would to demand the, that. I'm not going to the violence or the sexual just like um uh, Eeyore. Set in World War Two, Winnie the Jew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. I went into some adult topics. That's I was good. going to say We're all adults uh, here. We, uh, we, we, Christopher he, Robin. Uh, Christopher Robin gets sucked into Nazism. But you know what we've just highlighted? The value of parody, too. Like, having, like... Oh, yes. Big time. If someone said, I've created an R-rated Winnie the Pooh, and you'd be like, that is not what Winnie the Pooh is for. And you're like, exactly. That's why it's going to be so good. Because it's going to be so fucking funny to watch. Like... Oh, this video is yeah. terrible. It doesn't account for so oh, much immediate. Piglet, it appears I've been diagnosed with herpes. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! If only that's what you—that's what you get, Pooh, for sticking your cock in all that honey. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, so sticky. <laughs> Oh, um, I thought I, it had medicinal properties. I thought it would make me grow. I, I thought it would cure the herpes. <laughs> I should have just put more stuffing in it, honestly, because I'm a fucking bad stuffed animal. I'd fund that. Oh yes, James. Oh yes. Uh, 
what was, I, what was I even saying? Yeah, just like the the these creators <laughs> often look at us as the ones that ruin creativity by like demanding that things are consistent within themselves. But then at the yeah. same time, they'll be like, "You can't do R-rated Batman." You're like, "Oh, oh, okay, all right, mm -hmm. I'm gonna though." Yeah, well, just watch me, R-rated Winnie the Pooh. Here we come. Nording prostitutes or if the south park version what? of mickey mouse okay, was um, now the let's roll that back because all i heard was I, prostitutes. yeah i think we missed part of that <laughs> all i heard was Finally. coke and prostitutes that the recent reboot be catered specifically to them as adults with scrooge mcduck like snorting if it was really good people wouldn't have an issue with the new stuff oh, by the way man. it's it's amazing to me. It's well, do they? I don't know. Is is DuckTales' is new stuff bad or good? I haven't watched it. I mean, I'm just saying for, for new things that are really bad, In general. generally, its mm -hmm. badness comes from somewhere, and oftentimes it will be that they totally lost sight of what made the first one great. But if it's really, really good and it's new, I doubt people will really complain. They will appreciate it for doing something different but well. It all comes back to quality. But this um this highlights again I think his major issue the difference between R rated or at least the Venn diagram that is R rated and mature content they're not synonymous and they're also not mm -hmm. exclusive there's a there's a cross section and so when he says Ducktales but adult he immediately goes to like snorting cocaine and like shooting people down to carnage it's like when I when I, I was almost being kind of serious a little bit back there about the Winnie the Pooh thing how do you do it without uh, appealing to those sorts of things it's like what if Eeyore is legitimately considering killing himself, and there's a story about that. That would be pretty mature, and you don't actually have to have anything explicitly, um, you know, aggressively violent or sexual. Right. And someone could rate it and be like, this is not suitable for children. He's talking about whether or not it's worth living. Like, we can't, I'm sorry, this has to be bumped to PG-13 at least. Yeah, Probably I've something like that. Yeah, have seen Eeyore out on that bridge a little bit more often lately, just staring down at the water. <laughs> Eeyore <laughs> said suicidal. Maybe someone before. should go talk to him. And so, um, I think that's what his mistake is. I'm going to go fuck Kanga's brains out. I think that's what his mistake is. He constantly assumes he immediately make... with R-rated that it's going to be this excessive explosion of tits and right. violence. That's, that's always well, what talking, it is. He's talking specifically about edginess, and yeah. yet he keeps referring to R-rated or mature, which isn't the case. Wasn't it an intimate part of his argument that you should do it with your own characters? Like, do it with no new characters? This is what Watchmen well, did successfully. Like, they didn't go back to the Superman, Batman, well, that was the other uh, guy IP. Writing. Oh, yeah. Well, it's in his video. So, right. But I'm, um, I'm just saying, like, you know, you're right. it seems when he comes out and he's, when he's attacking the fans for not liking it, isn't the fan argument really the same argument as his? Do it with your own characters. Don't fuck up Luke Skywalker. Like make new characters and do it with them you was know fascinating to me fuck up your own shit that we he not... doesn't know he doesn't know that he's making the fans argument right well, now like even the... though he's already made it this is the thing he somehow ends up in the worst of both worlds we usually argue on efap that you're allowed to change a character's like fundamentals if you adapt them in different medium and timeline and everything but if you're going to continue mm -hmm. them you have to respect how they've been established you can't just fucking walk all over it he's saying yes if they're in the same timeline, you can try something new. But if they're in the same IP, you can't. It's like, wait. Well, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> that really that doesn't make right. any sense at all. Do. Um, and yeah, so I think this video is explained when you think about you're, you're, you're just a guy. You don't like all the edgy superhero stuff coming out. You think it's lame. And you've concluded that Logan, though, that's good. And so is Deadpool. So what's the problem? Um... This isn't real. His real argument is, I don't like toxic white male fans. <laughs> Pretty nice. Yes, that's his real totally. Argument. That's his covert I, I argument. I, I, he's I, not even brave enough to say it. I think he just realized he didn't have an argument outside of the edgy thing, which is almost <laughs> subjective. So. And so he was yeah. like, fuck it. Let's just make this about protecting children. <laughs> like, that's good enough, I guess. People like kids, I'll protect those. Children will appreciate my video. Wait. This, this is a video that I put a warning at the beginning that's not suitable for children, essentially. It's like, yeah. oh, no. Well, the parents watch this and they'll tell their kids about their vid this video. <laughs> and how much their kids should like this video because it advocates for them. There we go, we did it. Kids should like the thing that I'm telling them they shouldn't watch. Or if the South Park version of Mickey Mouse was now the canonical modern Disney version. It that would be hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that would be <laughs> fucking hilarious, yeah. I mean, be more realistic, right? Yeah, I mean, at least it would be representative of what that creature is. 
to see a violent, challenging movie made for adults, don't demand an R-rated Batman movie. Go watch what? something like Lynn Ramsey's You Were Never Really Here. What the fuck uh, are you movie, talking yes, about? That movie, what a weird, that's, what does that have to do? If I want a superhero movie that is R-rated, what the fuck am I going to get out of this? That is not. Because we saw this movie, by the way. Yeah, it was fine. It's like, I liked it, but like, he's, he's definitely gunning for like how this is what a superhero movie taken realistically would be. Because, like, you know, he's like a, fuck, I've forgotten. He, does he kill people for money? In that movie, I think or is he doing it? it's yeah, I think something like that. I can't quite remember. But this is like the unsuperhero with superhero movie you could get. It's just it's a guy. This is so not like I love the idea. It's like you want to see Batman, but done realistically. Go watch this completely different movie. You're like, uh, yeah, I I don't I don't know. I, that's not really what I was okay. <sighs> if you like Batman, you'll love Marriage Story. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> maybe it's a, it's a gamble. Maybe, but I don't know. know. It's kind of like Joker, and it also has Joaquin Phoenix, but it is... Why don't you just watch Joker? <laughs> why, why? It's like, it's kind of like Joker. You're like, ah. Oh, it was all right. I guess I could just watch the R-rated superhero movie called Joker. Cause that's how it gets categorized, by the way. I don't know that I would call it a, a superhero movie. Yeah, they're... Mm, they're yeah, definitely they're... different. They're both, you know... I would say I would suggest watching them both. Absolutely, especially Joker. But yeah, they're both they're, they're both worth a watch. Definitely is much much better than Joker. Oh, Look, what? I have details. No. Well, <laughs> yeah. It's Joker is sad. way better than you were never really there. We always yeah, but... forget the name of it. Um, Joker has a toxic male fan base. It's also supposed yeah. to be it's supposed to be for kill children, and now it's for adults. They right. fucked it up. What? It almost feels like he threw that in there just for the just to dig at Joker, I guess. So the Joker is phenomenal. Well, Joker's so good, guys. Watch way, Joker. If you haven't seen it, watch Joker. It's oh. really good. Tailed my many issues and frustrations with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but a key thing that those Some movies get right. Is that they understand who their core audience is. Oh, do they? The things do that they? are like I, have, the most... I don't think they do at all. First of all, yeah. But also, from his POV, the most popular and most prolific like set of movies are all following the rules he's set, and he's establishing, like, we're in trouble, guys. R-rated movies and superheroes are getting in the way. It's like, no, they're not, clearly. The MCU's not going to yeah. have an R-rated film. Well... It, Maybe it will in future, but look how far we've gotten without a single R-rated one. It's like, don't you yeah, think your it, team is winning, are, Patrick? I feel like it'll be definitely a very, in, a, in an obvious way, like its own thing. It won't be, it, it, like, it won't be part of the MCU, or it will not even really address the MCU yeah. stuff. It'll be over at the side. You know how, like, you're going to need to see, yeah. apparently you'll need to see one. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. What about Deadpool? Well, that's apparently getting moved into M yeah so okay so is that not mcu relate no not oh. yet but relating to what rags okay. just said right you have one division something that you would need to see i think in order to fully understand doctor strange 2 that seems to be what's going to be happening because wanda's already confirmed really? to be like main in it oh my god so that's that's a bit of a change it's like now you need to see tv shows to understand the main continuity of the mcu whoa okay i know what people say Agents of shield but like agents of shield wasn't really recognized by the movies much at all um However, now we're sort of changing it. Um, but if they made an R-rated film, I feel like whatever continuity you needed to absorb that film and then going forward from it, what you need from it to go back to the MCU is probably going to be very little. They're probably going to be like, oh, no, it's just it's a small-scale story that happens right. with this one character. You can go watch it or you cannot. It really doesn't matter. But the, the way they're selling Winter Soldier and Captain Marvel, uh, sorry, Captain... Captain Falcon? Cap Falcon. He's just Falcon, I guess. I don't fucking know. Whatever. Captain Falcon. And then you got the Loki series. I imagine all three of those are going to have significant impact on the MCU films. Like, meanwhile, an R-rated film in the MCU, be it Deadpool 3, for example, probably won't. Still could. It depends how things move forward, because the MCU is getting so big now that it can actually survive appealing to a very small audience with one of its movies, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say so. So... Yeah, and, and would we all be against that? It's like, probably not. 
Guardians of the Galaxy was supposed to appeal to a tiny audience, and it was a huge like it was success. Great. Yeah, that yeah. yeah. I don't but, know why they would think that though. I was very surprised by it. Well, I'm just I saying would... they didn't. They obviously didn't know their audience. Like the yeah, audience, I would agree. You don't know the audience until you launch the movie. Because if you sat down and you went through all of the MCU movies, their tone is for the most part consistent. But who yeah. it's for? They, I think they're just shotgunning it. Kind yeah, of when yeah. It comes totally. to this stuff because um, there are great movies and terrible movies and everything in between. Someone said you don't need to see One Division to understand Doctor Strange two. So first of all, neither oh, of us can actually know that until Doctor Strange two comes out. But secondly, I don't mean that you can't watch Doctor Strange two without seeing One Division. In the same way, you you could watch you know fucking I don't know Avengers without seeing any of the movies before it. You can. Like, and you can follow the events relatively. But what I'm saying is the continuity of these TV shows is going to be very important overall. But an R-rated film, they probably will try and avoid attaching it too hard. But then again, I wonder with mm -hmm. Deadpool, because right. he's so loved, that they might play with it a bit more. I don't know. You just like they, they can't have references well, in an R-rated movie because there are people that won't be able to see that movie. It's basically what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, I think yeah. that they will account for that. They'll be like, we don't want to encourage them too hard. It's like, this is an offshoot. It's for a specific sect of the audience. Enjoy, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. we're just mm -hmm. trying a side thing. We're going to have a lot of fun. Like, if they do an R-rated movie, I think they'll probably do something more lighthearted and like a comedy. They'll, I think they'll, they're will they more likely to go the Dare or the Deadpool route than the Logan route, I feel. Mm. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yes. Thing as Star Wars or Doctor Who or Harry Potter. They take it seriously, they make it appealing to all audiences, but they never lose sight of the fact that Star from Who's serious. Fucking. Yeah. Harry Potter totally changed with its audience. It went darker and darker and darker and darker. That's like, it just it stopped before it got, you know, real dark. Too dark. Yeah. Like if you watch the first film, then the last one, the tonal shift is fucking intense. Before Remember when Dolby is Harry to Potter death? meets Boogie Nights? <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the only things before I remember Potter, about the later movies. Potter did the pornography. <laughs> um, when Helen Bottom Carter throws a knife through a portal that hits Dolby in the heart, I was like, Jesus! Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> fuck yeah, Elf violence. In in the the really bad uh, Wild Beast movies, doesn't the bad guy like kill a baby? Like a bad cadaver oh a baby. I don't know. I haven't seen it, but yeah. Um, That's pretty dark. Kill for a baby. Yeah, I'll play it again, but it seemed like he was advocating that you should do what Harry Potter did. It's like, <laughs> what? Grow with the audience? He should have just conjured up a plastic bag and given it to the baby and let things sort out. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's like a killing spell. It's like, it's a little over the top. He's, he's just like, you know what? Baby. Nature has its way. We're about to see yeah. it play out. <laughs> <laughs> this is your test, child. <laughs> Whether you'll survive. I take this plastic bag. Oh my god. With their core audiences. It's the same thing as Star Wars or Doctor Who or Harry Potter. Yeah, he's literally advocating that Harry Potter did it the correct way. Harry Potter grew with its audience, so that just destroyed everything you were talking about. Good job. They take it seriously, they make it appealing to all audiences, but they never lose sight of the fact that from the start, these have been adventure stories for kids. So let's go back to Alan Moore. It doesn't always doesn't matter what they were at the beginning. I know the, well, we were essentially, we've, we've been over this at this point, right? Yeah, much. like it's, I guess In this is his victory lap now. It's like, I was right. <laughs> You see, like you see. you really weren't. You were contradictory yeah. and confusing. Uh, what? Mm -hmm. And your friends made an embarrassing skit. Well, like they're having a contest with Channel hard. Awesome to see who can have the most cringy, embarrassing <laughs> skits on YouTube. <laughs> and you guys are ba you guys are trying, but you got to step up, man. Mm -hmm. Channel Awesome's the big leagues <laughs> for cringe. Who's that? And the Wait, very he also he keeps conflating made for children with made for all ages. Like the original Star yeah, Wars is not I made know. for children. It's just for yeah. all audience. Kind of everybody, yeah. That's yeah. the thing. That quote yes. from George Lucas is like, I don't care. Those films to to argue is so weird to be like, yeah, well, you know what? Any film that can be whatever the lowest age can consume it is the target age. You're just like Of oh, course not. Yeah. No. Like that's not really not even close. 
Right. I mean, they do that with all, and he's, he even said this earlier. I don't know why he's going back on it because that was his point with bringing up the Pixar movies. They're made for all audiences. They are. Incredibles, all ages. Uh, right. Megamind, all ages. Come on. It's hugely different. There are messages in those movies that transcend, transcend childhood sort of audiences. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. There's, there's jokes in there that the parents are the only ones getting, for sure. Last mm -hmm. The very last line of Watchmen. I leave it entirely in your hands. It's a message to the reader, as well as to other comic book creators. Over those 12 issues, Moore and comic, Dave right? Gibbons had demonstrated what could be possible in comic books and the superhero genre. They showed how they could be more challenging and experimental than we were used to. And here, at the end, is an almost fourth wall-breaking message to carry this forward, to keep innovating and evolving. Innovating and evolving? But Wait, not mm. in the ways that I don't think you should. Uh, yeah. This yeah. is the exact opposite just... of this entire argument, the whole video. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Again, you can have like that that stupid Winnie the Pooh example. Like if I if I make one that doesn't not have stupid. any exclusive nudity, <laughs> any exclusive violence, but it still gets R rated because of the subject matter, would he be like, nope, you fucked up? And I'd be like, why? Because it shouldn't be all right. It's such an arbitrary complaint. Can they do that movie? I think it's called Ted. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that all right is <laughs> probably not. I, I, think and it is. I mean, it's pretty much Christopher Robin with a, a bad mouth bear, right? It doesn't count unless it's all rated. Okay. There might have even been sex in that movie. Oh my I think there, god! I think, does, I he think does bear try to talking. masturbate. Uh, what's his name? The football player. Yeah. It's not even original, Mahler. That movie's been made. The R-rated Winnie. I'm going to be honest with you. What I envisioned for my R-rated Winnie the Pooh wasn't quite Ted, but I see the connection. <laughs> oh yeah, this is going to be the the 100 Acre Wood Chronicles here. Mm -hmm. All breaking message to carry this forward, to keep innovating and evolving. And instead, the only message people seem to take from it is that it's cool when superheroes are dark and violent. That's the only message you took. Oh my yeah. god. So because reductive. superheroes can be dark and violent in cool ways and very uncool ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah. Did it? We get an old meta. Because it's like, it's what he's taken from what people seem to like about it. When it's like, there's a lot more to it than that, Patrick. Yeah. Did he's it, trying to read off. Go ahead, yeah, didn't most people criticize the Zack Snyder movies? Like they yeah. weren't. Yeah. I don't remember them being yeah. well loved. We're, yeah, we're, we're in the middle of our DCEU arc on EFAP. This is a departure shortly from going back to it. So yes, mm -hmm. they, they get a lot of criticism. So, but but he's acting like, oh, there's all this legion of fans out there demanding that all superhero movies be like Zack Snyder movies. And I, what is he talking about? Uh, this movie, Batman versus Superman, was kind of ridiculous. No. Yeah, yeah, that's it my was, take. So, wow, it was so good. It, I that ain't oh. just your take. Did I? Did I just? <laughs> a lot of people have that. Take. Did I just ruin your game? All I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. It's such a favorite movie of mine. When, <sighs> when, a, when a, Batman fired his fart gas at Superman and then chose to just <laughs> sort of play with him until he got stronger again, I was just like, this mm -hmm. is such a smart Batman. It's unfortunate that he loses. I can't tell if you're serious. It's but he my... hit him with a toilet. That was like the best that, part. It wasn't a toilet. It was a sink, you fuck. Yeah, so it's, it's symbolic so because the movie is shit. God, <laughs> misrepresenting movies like that. I can't handle it. Total BBS. straw man of Zack Snyder. The, the toilet themes are very <laughs> strong and present in Batman vs. Superman. And what's what's weird is that we're, we're going through them in chronological order in-universe. Mm -hmm. Batman vs. Superman is the best so far. I was, <laughs> It's still yes. Oh, no. <laughs> Um, uh, so I thought so Man of Steel was out of this fucking world bad. I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. It's uh, the more we talked it about it, the more it fell the fuck apart. <laughs> uh, but BBS, you, yeah, you know, you look at a dilapidated building and you're like, well, it's better than rubble, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. Look, it's standing. Yeah, you could probably stand <laughs> under it, and most of the rain thing. wouldn't hit you. Right. Not during an earthquake, though. Oh, don't oh. risk that. Creating new stories and characters that went in new directions, they just made Batman comics grimmer. As Moore himself said, 
it was meant to be something that would liberate comics. Instead, it became this massive stumbling block that comics can't even really seem to get around to this day. I guess this guy must be right because he said it. <laughs> yeah. Why did you bring Jeez. it? Well, what's up with these quotes? They're really strange. But They're terrible. Th th this, this comes off as so pretentious. It's like Alan Moore made a deconstruction of superhero comics that was, that was widely popular, so everyone tries to copy it. He's like, no, I wanted everyone to go back to making comics for children. Why was my work so good? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's so that, yeah, that's, 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 success, that's his POV. Oh, no. He thinks it's gotten all grim, dark, and, and gritty, and bleh, since he did his one. He's like, I wish it goes back to blah, blah, blah. But it, but it's like, we have plenty. The fucking Tick, man. The Tick is a show that came out. It gets adapted <laughs> regularly. It's just like this. It's a show that entirely goes, like, harkens back to a time like that. There's still content out there. People like edgy stuff. There's the- I don't even know what I'm appealing to anymore other than, yes, there's a market for all the types of superhero stuff. You can go and find it. You'll be okay. Pat on your mm -hmm. head. Well, yeah. And this is all, from Moore's perspective, this is all kind of strawmanning secondhand because, according to his interview, he hasn't seen a superhero movie since the very first Tim Burton Batman movie. So he doesn't even know like what he's talking about. He doesn't own a VCR or a DVD <laughs> player. He's a crazy person living under a bridge. He would be the kind of person that would be like, I don't want to watch the new whatever. He has Avengers. a telegraph. And then you're home. like, you could get, look, I'll just show you, a, I'll give you a copy. And he's like, he wouldn't even reference VHS. He'd probably be something older, yeah. Like, can if you, you, could, you, you translate you, a, an ahead. Avengers movie in Morse code? Like, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> he's like, hmm. That was the original telecommunication device, okay? I'm so curious if Alan Moore... If you Moore could show thought... Alan Moore one superhero movie, what would it be <clears throat> to change his mind? I don't... So, already, I'd be like, we're over. He's not gonna like any of them anyway. Um, well, what about, he... like, the silly, childish ones? Oh, Lego um, Batman. He might like Shazam. Like, if we were gonna... He might like, like, a, like a Batman and Robin that's very silly, you know, and whimsical. I would... Yeah, so the fact that he hasn't seen that, because that's obviously after, um, 89... I would love to see what he has to say about Batman and Robin. Because mm -hmm. that What's movie what is I'm absolutely curious. what he's talking about having been lost. The movie is fucking crazy nonsense, but it's all very much like, we beat the bad guys and we saved the good people. Woohoo. Hooray! We cured the disease. Someone said Thor Ragnarok. Again, I feel like anything in the MCU is going to piss him off. He seems that... Yeah. He's like, what? This is good. I don't like the... And so Infinite. he'd be very... A lot of disapproval. Maybe he'll surprise us. He watches Captain Marvel and he's like, all right, this is pretty good. We'll be like, oh no. <laughs> We're like, oh my oh goodness no. gracious, you really are Alan Moore. <laughs> Alan, please. Yeah, I don't know. This feels like Grandpa's regretting I wish a bunch I would have made this, not Watchmen. He's just... That so... man and Robin is 3.8 on IMDb. Be, See, the problem bad. is that's about 6.2 too low. Yeah, it should, it should be a 380 out of 10. That's what it should be. They've lost their original <laughs> innocence, and they can't get that back. Yeah, they and can. They're... What do you mean? You realize that every single person who reads comics is like a whole new capsule for yep. context? Mm -hmm. Not to mention, you can just... It'd be like, Alan, why don't you just make one? Just make a new, new character, well, and they're entirely altruistic and proud of their niceness. Go ahead. I guess he's saying, like, the atmosphere of comics is, is permanently ruined, but at that point I'd just be like, oh, that just that I would have just agree, happened but anyway. I would agree, but for the same reasons. Right. Sure, but, but like, I mean, at the same time, Alan Moore's just the guy who did it first. Someone else would have made that story. Like, hey, what about if heroes weren't the people that we look up yeah, to? more realistic, or maybe they weren't as idolized, or yeah. they were flawed. Well, after Watchmen, I mean, we had that Justice League cartoon come out, which was not edgy at all. It was, you know, a broad audience appeal for that. A broad We've had so much comic say. book stuff come out after Watchmen. That's not just edgelord stuff. Mm. Stuff in this kind of depressive ghetto of grimness and psychosis. They're not, though. Grimness and psychosis. Maybe if you watch them, you'd know that you were wrong. <laughs> The thing I like about Thor Ragnarok is how dark and gritty it is. Depressive ghetto of grimness. Oh <laughs> then it comes to where... piss off ghost. The part when he melts the guy <laughs> with the stick. I'm just like, yeah, melt that guy. That fucking guy when he needs his own the... fucking movie. Sadistically took pleasure in him melting him with this melty stick. Oh. It's so stupid. It's like, we've got such a wide 
variety of superhero content to choose from right now, and it's just this this video is like dooming about something mm -hmm. that's not even true. It's like, well, oh, okay. It's like back in the day when westerns were very popular, so everything would be a western, but all the different westerns would have their own different genres. They'd all cover a million different topics, and that's what superheroes are right now. Yeah, I guess people are like, when will it die? It's like, I don't know. Never. It will never stop. Seems like a genre that can be like in anything and everything, so it might take some time to kill it, to be honest with you. I'm proud of being the author of that regrettable trend. And that's still happening right now. This demand for R-rated superhero movies is a result of the same... Oh no, oh, a woman no, who is wounded. Oh. You're like... <laughs> I can't believe that thing that causes all these dudes to throw fits online oh no is this me <laughs> dudes all these dudes all these women love it dudes. yeah you don't find any girls complaining about star wars do you none whatsoever never. nope ne oh no no never mm -mm. anytime dc or marvel dares to publish a comic for middle school girls oh my god oh god gotham high is so <laughs> shit don't use that as an example Gotham High is fucking trash. We read through it with J-Log like, Boat. It's oh a disaster. Oh my god. It's not made for you rags, okay? It wasn't made for anyone. <laughs> it was made to be studied. It was made for, like, softcore porn for the authorist. Oh no. I love that like, he's like, honestly. This is evidence of, like, yeah, you, you know, these are the things we should be celebrated, yet they get shouted at by angry white men. Just like, Patrick. It's really bad, okay? Gotham High is not what you want to be using to defend anything. You've lost. This is the concession that you've lost, and you should give up and go home. You're always home. But just give up. Or like a wonder cover by Robin Eisenberg. <laughs> oh my god, look at that. She's purple and hideous. <laughs> oh my god, why are you doing this? No, those are the things you should celebrate, Rags. Wait, so no one should celebrate that. Yeah, but so the, the, the Wonder Woman cover is a complete change of the way Wonder Woman has been depicted for all of her existence. But that's good well, for some reason. This is the thing. I don't even know what we're talking about right now. We're talking about whether or not you should react in a particular way. I'd just be like, of course people are going to react the way they did to the Wonder Woman thing. Why would they not? It's a complete departure. And he's like, that's the celebrated sort of deviations. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's why TLG Wix is amazing. Except that sometimes something just isn't made for them. Oh, you mean like R-rated superhero movies aren't made for Yeah, it's not made for you, Patrick. You just need oh, to get no. over that it's not made for you. God. He, a bunch of, I, I'm telling you, man, all these dudes and their turtlenecks on the internet <laughs> bitching that things aren't made for them. Oh, my goodness. Really? I'm sick of it. Self-awareness. Damn. He's never had any, but now he has less than... The none of it he normally has. I'm a 33 year old straight white male. You're 33? <laughs> I would I not have thought I... you were like 40. Yeah. You're 33? <laughs> Holy shit. Also, can I just say, someone telling me I'm a 33 year old straight white male, I just be like, I don't care about any of that. Can you? Yeah. Like, who did, cares? Why did you tell me any of that? Okay. Well, it's a good indicator to ignore everything they're about to say. So. Uh, wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm not supposed to listen. Uh, I'm someone, not supposed to listen to it. That's that's death. So, if someone yeah. feels the need to make that clear, you're like, oh, I'll just leave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if so anyone good. specifies with as a as a sexuality, race, gender, whatever thing, I'm already tuned out. You're talking Just, to yourself at that point. Isn't made for them. Maybe he's looking Look. for a girlfriend. Maybe that's why he's oh, saying yeah, maybe, He's maybe. like, I am, <laughs> I am straight. I am a straight white male. Reach out to me. My tender's a oh great my God. We need the <laughs> I'm sorry. I, should have there. I couldn't help myself. Uh. <laughs> you can't put that on live television. You can't, but it is really good. <laughs> Thank you for the person who made the the Winnie the Jew meme. And remember, <laughs> Thank you. we're on the side of Winnie the Jew, okay? We want him to make it through. Yes, we movie. want him to succeed in whatever it is he's doing. Yes. That's okay. I we give you guys, as as the Jew, I give you guys your Jew pass. Hey. <laughs> oh, we got the J word pass. Get the J pass, yeah. Excellent.
Yeah, I'm a 33 year old straight white male okay. who likes nerdy shit. Had to play Pretty it again. Pretty much the majority of media these days, especially comic books and comic book adaptations, is aimed directly at me. What? No, things no. should be good regardless <laughs> of who they're aimed for. I also thought that the whole. You're like mad that it's not doing what you want it to do in this whole video. Well. Yeah, it, he's not very consistent on that. He doesn't really know what he wants. His mind is constantly changing, and he's trying to keep up. I, and and just one thing before you go, Sage. I just want to the idea that he just said straight white males all get get satisfied from one particular <laughs> thing. That seems a little um hmm. racist. Racist? Oh, just a little bit. Well, that's what I was gonna say. Is that like, he, and he's totally wrong because yeah. the whole the edgy superhero stuff is not aimed at three three year olds. It's aimed at like seventeen year olds and eighteen year olds, or even younger. It's aimed at like yeah. like. If I was 14, I'd be like, yeah, 14. shit. Well, you take the I also agree. F Batman. I can't say that word yet, yeah. but yeah. I don't I don't think there's a bunch of 33 old guys like, yeah, fuck Batman. Yeah, pound his face into the glass. Like <laughs> Gra grab like 50 uh, they have to be these things. A wizard sorts this out, okay? F 50 straight white males all from uh, from uh, the EFAP community and then they have to give a thumb up or thumb down per MCU movie. I guarantee mm -hmm. you the results are going to be all over the place. It's going to be like, wait, it, oh, this seems, oh, this one was like a bit content. Oh, no, this one, oh, it's like, wait, you guys are all supposed well, to like this stuff. What are you doing? I thought all white males went to the white male meetings on Wednesdays and they rated mo movies as a block. They moved it to Thursday. Shh, they're oh, actually going to get to hear about it. So <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> as a Jew, I'm not allowed, so you know, I just have to look out. You're close answer. enough. There's a bouncer you at the door, money. like, mm. you're, you're light skinned and you have money. It's fine. They're like, are you white? <laughs> I don't know. Oh my god. <laughs> don't worry about oh it. Oh my it's god. Good. And that's not, look, I don't need it all. I want new generations. Oh my to god. Come in. Oh my Thank god. You for, How that's magnanimous. so magnanimous of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we've very the kind word. of you, yeah. Patrick. But th this is insane. Let me because share. <laughs> Let me share with you. <laughs> he's made this argument, or he he kept playing authors saying we need to go back to the way comics were, which was primarily for young white audiences yeah, exactly. and now he's making the opposite argument which is oh, like, no, yeah. now it has to be for like the multicultural generation of today it's gotta be for everyone I mean, people aren't people aren't buying them but you know that yeah <laughs> <laughs> well said you know why they're not buying them because it appeals strictly to white they're... straight males that's why yeah let's and they've ruined the whole thing yeah they're they're mad because now that they're making new woke comic books and they're not appealing to anyone, instead of saying, well, maybe we need to make comics appeal to other people, they say, no, 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 it's the audience's fault. Let's just get mad at our audience and berate them. Fuck you, audience. Enjoy stuff that I want you to. Yeah. <laughs> rape Free back man candy. rape mobile. <laughs> say it's the face that sells it for me. Yeah, it's definitely. Uh, it's great. It's the Michael Keaton face. I remember that one. Good shit. Get in, kids. <laughs> What, you don't like candy? Where are the children going? <laughs> stuff the same way I did. And who the fuck are we kidding? The stuff made for kids, like Batman the Animated Series, it totally rules. So why would anyone act like that's a bad thing? Nobody is. Nope. Yeah. What? What? Literally what nobody is. I'm so confused. He just points to this pile of straw on the floor, and he's like, "You, everyone, why are you saying this?" And he's like, "What? Who are you talking to?" At please. Did we do it? Okay, so I watched the video, and pretty gritty, huh? Did you guys actually read the script? Mine smelled bad. So look, this isn't what I had in mind. But I've got to say, it's not bad. I mean, I guess I'm just a sucker for googly eyes. Like, look at those things. <laughs> I don't get this. Yeah, I'm so Like, confused. I don't get it. I, I, I don't even know what the point is that they're... Oh. I don't know. Maybe yeah. my brain's just more I mush. Guess, I guess in the, in the narrative, they're the editors, and he told them to... To make the video grittier, they added a cartoon character called Gritty because they misunderstood, and now he's like, "Is the point that they didn't do the thing that he wanted, being gritty? Instead, they made it sillier." 
and it turns out he enjoyed it, like, it more. Yeah. yeah, he's like, like you know what? I actually like that. More. Silly was the point the whole time. I think that's what he's going for. It's gritty undeliberately is... like the room. Gritty is the friends we made along the way. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Your fake laughter here. Well, I mean, we know it is because it's like scripted, but yeah, you know, you could. Mm, mm. What? What? What's happening here? Yeah. I don't know. I I think you had it backwards, Rags. I think the problem is our brains aren't mush, so we can't. Oh, understand. you're right. It's not they're mu not mushed enough. We're still yeah, we're still too we're too we still got the chonky brain. That's how you know <laughs> when you, you still feel something. Your brain is not mush yet. <laughs> we gotta get there. All right. See, at the end of Fight Club, when you understood why all the splices were in the movie, it made sense. You were like, mm. "Oh, I get it." Right now, I feel like, "Oh, I don't get any of this. What's going on?" It's about as coherent as So video. I think one thing oh. that's really clear in this whole discussion is no. that just putting a lot of edgy <laughs> adult content in a story does not make it good. Edgy and adult, okay, it's, you can't oh, put those two together. It's, it's bad. No, now it's bad on purpose. He's saying it's supposed to be confusing. <laughs> He also just said edgy adult content. It's like, I don't know, it's important the difference between those two things. That's like the big problem right. with this whole video, the fucking difference. Oh yeah, edgy. For a mature audience or for all ages, the fundamental story that you're telling has to be engaging and exciting. So if you want to get okay. better at that. Oh, it's an ad, okay. You should check out the class, Writing oh Suspense, God. How to Write <laughs> Stories. <laughs> oh my God. God. Writing oh suspense, God. how to write stories that thrill in any genre. What do Except I the superhero that? genre. Yeah, that we don't want those no Look at that developing be that characters and suspense. emotion. It's probably good to get emotion in there, yeah. Using mm -hmm. emotional resonance. Oh man. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. Aren't these videos normally supposed to tell you like where it works in this movie and where it doesn't work in this other movie and you know how to well, like, how to do it successfully? What I've always found amusing about these sort of ads is that like there are channels like Just Right who would claim that this is mm -hmm. what they're doing on YouTube and they're like, please check out my sponsor that does a thing totally. that I said that I'm yeah. doing anyway. You're like, wait, wait what? <laughs> I thought you were telling yeah. me how to do good story writing. Why am I having to go here now? <laughs> oh, for, there for the next level. Oh god, the resolution. No. On Skillshare. It's taught by Benjamin Percy, who is currently writing X-Force and Wolverine for Marvel, oh. two series that I gotta say I am really enjoying right now. Doesn't look so like open that those. class is... Oh, well. <laughs> exactly. It's gotta be terrible. Then. <laughs> it's, 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 that's it, his review. I'm enjoying the Marvel. I don't even know if they're real. They could just be cardboard cutouts. <laughs> two series that I gotta say I am really enjoying right now. That class is available on Skillshare, along with Whoa. thousands of others. Not wow. just about writing, but about filmmaking, and music, and cooking, and look, the list, it goes on. I was actually Sourdough just watching- Sourdough Starter, yeah boy. Hell yes. You gotta watch a Skillshare on video on Sourdough Bread. Oh dude, they give you like a, you're at a beginner level, and then once you complete all of the videos and pay them all the money, they'll t they'll say you're, a, you're an expert. You're now. an expert. Ooh. They're going yeah, clear. this is like Blinkist. Well, you gotta get it's them like... dopamine hits, don't you? Mm -hmm. like, yeah, man. I'm an expert. I'm yeah. closer to the red flag now. Oh, Wait, I'm that should there. send up some red flags. I was gonna say, why would you have the yeah, goal I, be I, the, I, red I, flag? the red flag? That's kind of strange. Yeah, you send it. Yeah. Talk about oh, visual wow. language. Well, yeah. yeah. The communist an flag. And, uh -oh. <laughs> Become a communist. Daddy's yeah, Easter. Get away from green. When you bring to the end here, Full communism. Get away from the money. Right now, the first thousand people that sign up at the. Ooh, the first thousand get a special thing. Wow, what is it? You gotta have to let it's a discount. Woo. Link in the description, right down there. We'll get a free trial of a Skillshare premium membership. Hey, Patrick, does Skillshare have the answer on how to do Batman R rated correctly? Is there a way to answer that question? I'm signing up. Let's see. 
Watch that. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's learn. So if you've got some free time coming up over the holidays, you should sign up now, improve your writing skills, oh. and then improve? Like objectively but it didn't work speaking? For you, or... So why should I? <laughs> what are you saying, he Patrick? Needs to take... Improve my skills. There's no such oh, thing. Everybody is just the... what they are, Patrick, and that is just mm -hmm. fine. Write great comic books so that I can read them. Please do it for me. We did it. Okay. All right. Well, that was that. <laughs> what a waste of 41 minutes. Yeah, Patrick. that's like his longest video, at least uh, singular, I think, that he's done. And it's the most bloated, easily. Like, there's so it, much like, to cut out. He, he, it's like a very muddled, confused point that could have been said in like 20 seconds. His main issue is with edginess. He doesn't like it when they get all edgy. Yeah. Like, okay. I mean, I kind of agree. Well, we did it. Yeah, but then yeah. when they <laughs> do the wrong things. Well, the funny thing about it is, like, do you think... Destroy them by making them adult. He doesn't like that either. You'd be like, do you think that um, there's ever time to be edgy? Like, like you know, deliberately? And I'd be like, oh, actually, you know what? Yeah, there probably is times where I... I would like people to indulge a little heavily into like the stupid mm -hmm. or whatever. So it's like, yeah, it's hard to make a ruling on this. But of course, if his only point was I don't like it, I'd just be like, yeah, that's okay. fair, I guess. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we want it. But if he just said I don't like edgy stuff, he couldn't tie that into attacking, you know, the white male audience. So he has to figure out some audience, way. To, I know you got to yeah. find a way, and he did. Patrick finds a way. Patrick is a legend, you see, among men. Um, <laughs> yeah, that took us five hours. Oh wow! <laughs> Not plenty bad. of time. Time flies when you're ha when you're hanging out with your friends. Ends, that just ends a little different. Like, oh. Um, so yeah, I think we'll probably get into super chats now. But of course, oh, yeah. Adam and Sitch, if if you guys are a little like need to head head off or do anything, it's completely you. you're gonna stay. Oh my god. Adam's gonna say, oh, I yeah. have to go actually, but you have to go, Sitch? I do, oh, really? Yes, actually, oh, really? Where? Hot, hot date? What's no, it is Saturday to, to, to Rags' mom's house, obviously. Oh yes. my god, oh, oh what's good. happening over there? <laughs> you know, yeah. nice, nice lobster dinner, you know, Netflix oh. and chill afterward. Oh, <laughs> dang, that, they had lobster, and they didn't invite me. Damn. I mean, if you want, I guess <laughs> we, can, we can go. We can go sample the my mom's lobster tail together. Is that what you're implying? We can That's Netflix and chill with my mom. Damn. Uh, oh, terrible. Do you wanna do you wanna Evil. tell chat where they can find you on your individual channel? Not even taking the time to promote anything else. Just your channel, Sitch. What are you up to? What are you doing? Oh God, I haven't made a video for so long. Oh it's so God. awful. I feel yeah. terrible. Like oh. meme on the show. When is Sitch going to do a real main channel video? Oh my god, he's like me. Yes. I didn't want to say it. I'm glad you said it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're a good company. But yeah, PSA Sitch, YouTube. Uh, PSA Sitch on daily for me and Adam streams every Sunday tomorrow. Maybe. Maybe uh, Rags and Mahler will be on it tomorrow. Who knows? Who knows? We'll yeah. Yes. Well, well, maybe we'll have a chat about it. That's Exciting right. stuff. Anyway. Oh, thanks for having nope. me. Absolutely. We'll catch you around, sir. Peace. Take care, man. I didn't know you guys could be separated. That's pretty cool. Hey, I don't want to make it People weird. People say that anything. about us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be the third wheel here, guys. Like, if you guys want to do this privately, you let me know. But I'm I'm down to stick around. We are absolutely okay. You know what? Some of the Super Chats might even address you. How crazy would I that figured. be? I hope they address Sitch and I get to answer for him, because then I can just make shit up. It'll be oh, great. We kind of miss information on EFAB. What the fuck? We'll get fired what? by our, one of our overlords. Dude, you guys don't do that? All right, then. Come on, you got to get mill running. I suppose. I suppose I will allow whatever it is you're planning to say. How, how do people see this free bat candy meme? <laughs> this bat candy meme? Uh, yeah, the meme of the in the Discord. Uh, Somebody did a meme. The uh, white van mobile. Oh, yeah, the one the rags posted or something else? Yes, the rags posted. Oh, I put that on screen. Don't worry. Oh, okay. Everyone cool. saw it. It was wonderful. <laughs> Magical. Yes. All right, then. 
Starting the day off with, finally, my day can start. Thanks, EFAP. Also, A team is Supreme Team. Oh my god, I'm so glad I stayed. I am so glad I stayed. You a fan of A team? Well, there's a, a two factions of our show. There's the A team and the S class. Oh the shit, A -team yeah, I know. I'm aware of this. Bad. Yeah, okay, so you know. So we make we make fun of that in the comic book as well. So ah. I couldn't do, let's say, I'm, I'm happily married, you guys. I'm not sure if you know that, so I can't necessarily do the sexy cover yeah, that we did tell. for S class. Yeah. Well. Well, you know now. It's not a secret. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I think that's excellent. I'm very glad for you. But A team reigns supreme. I like it. Thank you. Thank you, uh, super chatter. Who was that? We also got S class, best class in chat. So. Hmm. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh, we don't like that guy. Oh no. Uh, <laughs> I don't know which side to take. Um, have have you been put, has this question been put to you? Is it whether or not you're A team or S class? What um what is what is the big question? How do you choose between them? What is the difficulty in the choice? Aiden Paladin is S class. Sargon of Akkad is A team. Hmm. Um, I'm trying to think if anyone else has been. I thought S was a A in, in like rankings anyway. And like isn't it like Japanese? Yeah, rankings? it is. It is. Yeah. That's because they had to make S? up some bullshit Actually. because nothing's better than A. A team is the <laughs> underdog, but people like underdogs. Let's face it. People people love underdogs. Okay? Ooh, I've been called an underdog in certain there you ways. Go. I will, I will there you be go. on the A team. They're good. Oh, nice. Rags is A team. I love it. I'll I can't wait to report that. Mahler, you don't have to take a position. You can I mean, take the enlightenment. That's the thing. I'm kind of chill with both of these teams. You know, I, I'm cool with them. I like them. I'll hang out with the people from both of them. There you go. Yeah, you know, I've like never that. engaged in these sort of team battles of things. Have I, Rags? That's always been something I'm against. Nope. Never pick a side well, on the team. What do you do when the audience goes? I mean, it's like an audience meme. The audience kind of came. Oh, up we with the we meme. reserve the right to ignore the fuck out of our audience <laughs> whenever we feel it's necessary. They get upset for us, uh, us for all kinds of things. This one they'll get over quickly, I think. Well, good. We'll be fine. Um, EFAP VTuber de debut when? Hmm. Give it a few years, and perhaps we will evolve to the level of VTuber. And we can't have any guests on unless they're also VTubers. But, that is going to be tough. Yeah. Well, you know, you better get on it, Adam. I want to see a VTuber version of you. I just turn my camera on. <laughs> like, can I just be me? And it's like, no, that's disgusting. <laughs> sorry, um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I wouldn't want to do. I wouldn't want to disgust you guys. Mm -hmm. Watching your hot fuzz video with Critical Drinker, easily my favorite comedy of all time, with Monty Python and the Holy Grail behind it as a close second. Yeah, I mean, those are some good fucking choices. Yeah, we had a lot of fun in that conversation. We got, we got, we managed to cover a whole bunch. I think hot fuzz is very good. I recommend it to all. Even people Hot who Fuzz don't like was it. my uh, Hot Fuzz was my stripper name, you know. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, RLM gave the Vast of Night high praise. What is the Vast of Night? I don't think we've seen that. I've heard of that. Just a second. Um. Oh, I know. Yeah, this was a. It's like a alien kind of movie. It's kind of uh, hmm. in the fifties. But I've heard it's a. Oh. Yeah, I've heard it's a pretty good. I think I remember the coverage of that. Yeah. Um. Well. Yeah, I, haven't I seen remember it. It, so. it was part of. It was one of like a bunch that they did. I think. I mean, yeah, I haven't seen it, so I don't know if it's any good or not. But you know. Yeah. Seems interesting. Sounds interesting. Could be cool. Um, EFAP only fans when? How oh. bummed were you? That, how bummed were you that Edgar Wright was didn't complete the Ant Man movie? Oh, pretty bummed out. I think it would have been pretty awesome if not only that he did that, but he also managed to become sort of, you know, further entwined in the, the MCU. Maybe he takes a couple of other movies. And, you know, I'm a big fan of his direction. So yeah, would have been totally. fun. But hey, what can you do? Complain uh, on the internet. Yes, and no one can stop us. <laughs> um, exactly. Sitch streaming with known leftist Moeller again. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> no, I'm I'm the known leftist. The, wasn't that the exchange? It was like 
Moeller is a node leftist because of his connection to JX, that it was like, but he, his co-host is Rags. Do you no, think Rags, Ra Rags is a leftist? Rags is a known leftist. Is that what he said? I thought he said that about me. Fuck, no, he said that I'm about you? Leftist. Jesus Christ, that's amazing. All right, well. Yeah, he, yeah. <laughs> I think that's why it's stuck in my memory so yeah. much, because it's so absurdly funny that I'm the known leftist. Have you, as, <laughs> oh, you on good tips with no bullshit, uh, Adam? Uh, I, he, no bullshit DM'd me when you guys were ripping on one of his videos saying, <laughs> oh my God. And I was like, I listened in for a few minutes and what you guys were saying was not that bad. Sitch was actually, the funniest thing was Sitch was on. <laughs> so, so, uh, <laughs> Sitch was kind of partaking. And I think that's why he DM'd me. He was like, your friend, he's ripping yeah, so on me on the internet. Yeah. Cause no bullshit's a fucking crazy <laughs> loon. Lots of really I, stupid things. Fucking nuts. <laughs> I did a live stream with him on the on the white nationalist stuff. So, but I we I don't think we. It seemed like we were talking past each other. I don't think we made any headway. But mm. right now, I would say no bullshit hates my guts. So. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> it's not a bad well, club to be in. Yeah, he's he's a he's not what I'd call a good faith actor. He's a weird one. Really, I always um, question that. I, I'm too. I'm dude, too. Dude, based on what he said to me in like private, like absolutely. <laughs> I, I would what, call him what we call a, a not good person. Hmm. You probably probably shouldn't say it, but I wish you would. <laughs> that he's not a good person. <laughs> I don't know what he said. Private. Come nah. on. No. Come on now. No. Come on. The breach of DMs. I keep it yeah. keep my DMs private. Yeah. Yes. Uh yeah, no. I, I, is he, I think his channel got demonetized, and I don't know if he's even still making videos, to be yeah, honest he asked, with you. Um, he asked Trump to help him out, right? He sent a tweet to Trump asking him for if he Did could he? give him some money. Yeah. Trump wouldn't give him money. I Trump's don't, it, not it, a fucking loon. I just, it was amazing to me. Like, you, you put out a tweet to Trump being like, I'm, I'm starting a family and I've been demonetized. Could you help me out? And it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Maybe you should get a job, you fat fuck. I just, imagine that worked. Everyone would be tweeting you Trump at that point. Yeah. Trump, Trump save my struggling YouTube channel. <laughs> uh, but yeah, as for when we'll do um, an OnlyFans, not sure yet. You guys, you guys make the distinction between leftists as communist or leftists as someone on the left of the political spectrum. Oh, I mean, I, I always say when I say leftist, that means a mm -hmm. someone on the far left to me. So basically, oh, like a socialist communist. Okay. We're on the same page then. Just clear. It's yeah, good I, to I, know. That's generally, what most people mean when they say a leftist, as far seems, as I know. seems to be. Yeah. Uh, no, some people don't know what they're talking about when they say leftist. They just think anyone who's they think leftist means you know Joe Biden. He's a Democrat, of course. <laughs> he's a leftist. <laughs> leftist. He's yeah, just a I mean. weird. He's a senile old crazy man who's who's been kidnapped by the Democratic Party and they won't let him go <laughs> when he wants to just frolic in parades or some shit. I'm waiting for the ankle uh, band, a picture just, of the ankle band. No, he's surfing. just some, there's no and. He's just an old racist boomer, and he wants to be elsewhere. Oh, man. Poor Biden. Poor Biden. He seems like a friendly man, except for the, all the weird stuff. Probably, uh, as long as I'm not like a little girl, probably. Does it, Yeah, he does like the sniffing thing. It's real weird. Yeah, he does that weird fucking gropey, sniffy shit. It's fucking bizarre and creepy. But, however, in Biden's defense, Trump did say something 10 years ago that was kind of... Mate, yeah. you shouldn't so, grab yeah. women by the pussy to throw them places, okay? That's, I you assume shouldn't that's refer what the context to, was. Yeah, you, you shouldn't well, refer to what limit women want you to do to them 10 years ago. they let you do it. Yeah, don't don't let ever don't tell someone else what women would let you do, let you do theoretically. Yeah. That is very. Uh, you what should just grab them. Fired... On, you should just grab them and sniff them. What's sad is they fired the guy that he was just talking to. I think they fired Billy Bush from his job. You can't. Which you, is crazy. You had this sin, the heresy. You were just spoken to. He could no, have the whole time been thinking, it. oh my god, this guy's crazy. Why doesn't he shut his fucking mouth? He like, could've he could have been. been thinking that the whole time, yet he still gets fired. Well, he could have been interested. He could have been like, like oh, yeah, do they? Okay. <laughs> Grab me by the pussy. <laughs> uh, life is weird these days. 
for sure. But yeah, um, it's funny because uh, the, the, the words, I guess you could say like leftist versus alt-right. Is that like the, the equivalent back and forth there? Or is that too, I don't know. It's hard to keep track of there's days. way maybe um there's way more leftist than alt right the words um, are yeah I the words are very um loose a lot of the time in terms of what exactly because like is Probably. leftist and lefty the same thing i don't know it's kind of what you I'm don't know how many i think of alt right as ethno nationalist and i you yeah don't know i think how that's what you have to be yeah are. i think you have to be a a white supremacist to yeah. want to be or, or at least an eth i'll say ethno nationalist yeah um because that's really weird gray areas. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd say you have to be an ethno-nationalist to be considered alt-right. Mm -hmm. That would be the one thing. <laughs> so the, you, you can't say that. They're not the same. Don't equivocate and call it a day. No, 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 no. Just, you see the Overton know. window, and then the amount of space mm -hmm. you go left or right, I'm, I'm interested in where the, you know, the labels come in in terms of, uh, you know how it goes. All that stands. The... Oh, the being full-on communist, though, is inside the Oberton window now because you can go on Twitter right now and put "I'm a communist" in my uh, Twitter bio, and you'll get all kinds of backpats and stuff like that. Yeah, so I mean, you can't say that that's out of the Oberton window. Time, times have changed. Uh, I remember. Yeah. When, <laughs> I mean, we we already made a couple of references. This stream just like the. Well, I can't remember what Patrick said. That was, was, was several people in chat were like communists. <laughs> like, oh no. Fuck, I should be playing on the harder difficulties. I simply can't handle it. Someone's asking, is Rags a doggo nationalist? No. Uh, we're man's <laughs> best friend. You pe I don't know. You people wouldn't be able to get along without us. We'd never want to abandon you. True. We'd never do that. We'd never make a... a no, we'd never do that. We love Too our social. dogs. We do. Oh, wait, what? We love it when they die for us. Dude, I am legend. I mean, it happened. The doggo gets the zombie off him, but dies for it. There's a lot of movies where dogs die, actually. Oh, I know. Yeah, bad ones. <laughs> they are abused There's, uh, their you... emotional value. You guys were talking about the baby thing, and I was thinking Train Spotting is yeah, such an amazing specific. movie. Well, have you seen the movie Train Spotting? Uh, no. Oh, okay. So then you don't know. Well, Is there's a baby in it. I might watch. Yeah. It. Yes. <laughs> but it's the movie's hilarious. It's it's basically a comedy. Yeah, dead baby in it. Yeah, but that part is so bad. Like every time I watch the movie, I forget that it's in there, and then I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> why did they do this? Dogs are pretty tasty. Oh my god. Chat. Calm yourselves. Yeah. Stop eating dogs. Stop. Stop. Um. Let it be known that today was the day I finally officially got good at Mordhau. Also play Mordhau, good schism. Um, you recommend Mordhau, yeah, right, Rags? Good. Yeah. I do. I really enjoy Mordhau quite a bit. I've got mm. like, fuck, oh, how many hours do I have in that? 741? Wow. I like it a lot. Mordhau is great. Hmm. Not even a thousand. Mola, why do you hate Iron Man 3 so much? Hi, Rags. Hi. Um, my Iron Man 3's got really shitty writing. It introduces PTSD to Tony Stark, which is incredibly important, and then it makes a joke out of it several times. Um, fucking wastes its villain, like Ben Kingsley's Mandalorian could... Fuck me. <laughs> Mandarin. It, it could have been uh, excellent, but then they're just like, lol, he's an actor. I'm not even sure how that was something that they got away with. There's lots of really bad writing in that movie, as well as tonal shifts it's a it's absolutely and quintessentially a shane black movie um i will yeah. probably do a video on it at, at some point i'm not a fan of iron man 3. totally agree um chinese joker says it's simple we eat the batman <laughs> oh my god that was before we, we even got edgy in this stream <laughs> champion so. miles ahead of us uh, working out in a parking lot with 32 degree weather and light rain in South Texas. It ain't supposed to be cold around these parts, but hey, I got EFAP. Hmm. I was trying to pick up that handle. That's, yeah, that'll warm you up. Hell yeah. If you're in the middle of the Antarctic, uninhabitable by the way, then, as long as you've got a device that can access EFAP, we will keep you warm. In the darkest of times. And the coldest. Um... Hello, Mola. Hello. Rags and others. Hi. 
more. If you're Hello. looking for a fun co-op game, you should try Magicka or Helldivers. Both are good tism. Helldivers is great. I really like Helldivers. I remember Magicka. Isn't there a Magicka 2? I think that happened. I don't know. Well, I do not know if there's a second Magicka. Um, I remember it vaguely, but yeah, um, you yeah, know, maybe, maybe in the future. Mm -hmm. This just says, Wah! Don't know if we killed someone at that point on the stream. Possible. Is that Wario? It, it feels like a Wario sort of thing, yeah. Wario. Is it Wario or Wario? Um, like in Mario, Mario? I, because Mario over here. Everyone says Mario. I think you're allowed so to I say both, it's also right? Wario. People will allow you to say both. They'll be nice about it. They'll, be, they'll just be like, oh, that's what you say? All right. Oh, Wario. Yeah, fuck you guys. I got the, it's -a -me, Mario. the triple Mario. screw attack. Ooh. Mario. 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 Happy. Are these super chat? Are you reading super chats or are you just reading the chat? These are super chats. Oh, okay. Hmm. Happy birthday, Raggleton. Hi! And uh, <laughs> happy birthday to me is when I was at happy birthday back. <laughs> uh, no, not happy birthday to you. Thank you, though, very much. Thank you. Hi, Mola. Hello. Hail Nerdlioski. Nerdlioski. Oh, All right. God. And a high panel. Oof, you got high panel, Adam. How do you feel? I know. Jeez. <laughs> I have a name, okay? Dehumanizing guy, here. Baby. You know where dehumanizing leads, guys? Nazis. It's not good. It's not good. I'm Don't telling you. Don't dehumanize the Nazis. Then you'll get taken out by the Nazis. Yes. Um, Hot Fuzz is such a great movie. I would choose Point Break first. I'm a guessing out of Point Break and Bad Boys 2 was, the, was what was brought up and... I think that's fair. Um, but yeah, Point Hoffa's Break is great. Awesome. What is Hitler's favorite EFAP episode? 84. I would say. Oh, mm. wow. It's not 88, <laughs> huh? No, no. 84 is just, it's really special to Hitler. It was it was such an awesome episode. Everyone always references it, how much they love it. So. What, were, what, what did you watch in that one? Do you know? Oh, it, you know, it wasn't even when we watched something. There was just a there was a debate about a certain movie, and uh, people really it was just really fun. People really liked it, and I think Hitler would have a lot of appreciation for it artistically. I mean, Hitler always loved a good debate. Yeah, <laughs> with guns. Yeah, exactly. The kind of debate you could never lose. The kind of debate. The kind of debate that you get closer to winning the more firearms you own. Um, thanks for making me aware of Hill House, one of the best shows I've watched. Shame about that ending. Now on to episode 8 of Bly. Hope it ends better. It does. It does. <laughs> Do not you worry. Totally does. But yeah, glad you're enjoying them. Uh, it's finally here. I've asked for so long. S-class cl S is best class. Ah. Well, my true. heart I'm sinks. I'm on the A-team, though. My mm. heart sinks, yeah. Now he's insulting both of us, right? That's not fair. How come S-Class gets no representation? What's so bad about S-Class? What'd they do? Well, I'm not on it. Oh. I thought there was more to it than that. I thought this war had huge amounts of lore and everything. Even though it started yeah. literally five minutes ago. But still. I'm upset. Yeah. No. Oh, well. It's okay. Thoughts on Boondock Sates 2? Go read Bat... Batuk? B A T U Q U E, Batuke. 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 Um, I have not seen Boondock Saints. Is that a comic? Two. A Batman comic? Batuke. Batuke. No, I have not seen the second Boondock Saints. No. I didn't even know there was one. I guess I, I'm out of the loop on that one. But um, oh, you know what? The theme that's playing right now in this in this game is a Fire Emblem one. Um, one of the E5 episodes got hit with copyright for this tune, and at first I was like. Oh, is this just one that Nintendo is like not cool with people using, I guess? Huh. Turns out, it was from a channel. I sent it to Metal. I was laughing my ass off. It's from this guy who sang a cover of the song. And it's like, he's like, it's terrible. And he's got copyright shit going out to people who have similar, like as if people are repurposing his cover. 
and he can grab stuff oh, like a Oh, I've had that episode. issue. I've had some issues kind of like that before where people have taken other people's music without credit, but they put theirs on the content ID system. It's fucking crazy. And I had to reach out to the original person to let them know that someone was using their stuff without permission and then content IDing it for them. The whole system's a fucking shit show. Yes. <laughs> I was, like, I saw it. I was like, you got to be fucking kidding me. I put a counterclaim in and apparently the guy gave up. So I was like, okay, that's good. But, like, what the hell? Who do you think is stealing your cover? Had, like, 10,000 views? Or maybe even 1,000. I just remember being like, what the fuck? It's a weird, weird world we live in. That's what I have to say. Um, from EFAP72, the Mando Season 1, Episodes 1 through 5 stream, past G.I.J. J.I.J. says, Hi, Mr. Wags. Hey. I'm just waiting for it. Hi! Hey. Hey. hey, hey, hey. Sometimes he leaves hey, you in hey, suspense. Hey. Um, ah, there you go. I guess that's a message to Sometimes that guy some... <laughs> from the past to the future in terms of that's where he's at right now. He's catching up on the EFAPTISMS. Um, have you all heard about Gina and Disney? Yeah. So I have, yes. Real fucking shame. Um, what can you it do? Um, to be is honest it? with you... I don't know. I mean, she's going to blow up over this. I mean, it's a shame that we live in a world where people can completely mischaracterize what you say and you can lose your job and all that. Oh, but, well, yeah. yeah. When, I mean, when she's I read, in a way that's better the, yeah, place. That's the part. When I read that... um. Yeah. The, the statement from Lucasfilm was like she denigrated an entire culture and religion. I was like, oh my god, what did she yeah. do? And I looked at the tweet yeah, and I was like, totally. I was like what, what did she actually say? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's yes. quite, quite the read of what she said. Quite the fucking read. Oh, I know. Fake news all the way. Amazing. And yeah, and it sucks because like, as much as once upon a time we could say stuff like, oh, whatever. It's a bunch of people shitting on you. Oh, whatever. It's, it's You get banned from Twitter. Who Oh, whatever. You lose your job. Like, um, yeah. I don't think we can owe whatever, whatever. this anymore. <laughs> yeah. Next, next stop, Siberia. That's the thing, man. You get it's like, if if they agree with each other and you get banned from every platform and then people don't hire you, it's like, oh, good. And then someone's like, yeah, you deserve this. You're like, oh, oh, those people. Oh man. Mm. But yeah, that sucks. They, but uh, you know, I, at this point, are, it's yeah. uh, Just, we right. should expect it more and more, probably, I guess. When in the in the video when he was talking about sadistic violence, that's exactly what I was thinking about. I was thinking about all the people on Twitter that are like, "Fuck it, I want Gina Carano to die." It's like, yeah, it's what? All, oh, yeah, yeah, they get ravenous. Oh my god, she should die. She should be locked up forever. Take it. You know those violent not. right wingers. I know. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy. Uh, Sitch, Adam, and Nerdrotic, my favorite streamers. Yeah, it was an interesting lineup today, I reckon. It was pretty neat. Having you all yeah. a crossing of a couple of worlds. It was pretty neat. It's like you got the, the Friday Night Tights, EFAP, and Adam and Sitch stream all crossing over at once in a way. Crazy. We should we should do more movie stuff. We really should because I have a like a writing background and, and Sitch wants to be a writer. I mean, he's mm. okay, but... He's okay. <laughs> Uh, Sitch and I were actually a great writing team on the comic because he, like, he just has this wealth of ideas, and so much of writing is rewrite. Wait, this uh, stop me if this is boring. Because no, go right ahead. You guys have probably heard it a million times. You know, writing is rewriting, but the hardest thing for me as a writer is is you know getting that first chunk of pages that you're going to rewrite and Sitch just sat down and was like here's 75 pages <laughs> I'm like holy shit Th that's, this is going to be like a 300 page comic Sitch we have to dial it back a bit so. <laughs> well and we're, sti we're still editing it down but yeah I mean but uh, it's good. Yeah. We're, we're very big on redrafting over here so good stuff get, get all do the you best redraft your, do I go you a redraft, bit nuts with redrafting yes. videos? I redraft a lot oh okay yeah, so then you know. I'm that's why I'm saying, yeah, you you know. Any anybody who spends any time writing knows. Mm. It's all about like letting yourself vomit out a bunch of garbage and then editing it down to like the best stuff. Yeah, man, like um especially when you read back your own stuff after you separate yourself a little bit from it, even with even like a day, you can you can look at it differently than when you did when you wrote it. It's, it helps you. Uh, definitely. It's like having two yeah, yous definitely. talking about it at the same time. Yeah, sometimes you're like, what was I thinking? And it's <laughs> funny, you 
when you write it down, you think, oh my God, that was so good. I can't wait to go back and read it. And you were like, what was I thinking? This is, this is terrible. Yes. Mm -mm. That happens on live streams as well. On live streams, sometimes you'll, you'll think, oh man, I was terrible on that live stream with no BS. I'll never be able to live it down. And then you go back and listen to it and you think, ah, oh, nah, I was fine. Yeah, well, I, I think there's totally like a, um, a, a sort of allowance you give to, to a live stream, especially with like a stream of thoughts versus a redrafted. This is the thing. You have like someone in a, in a video makes this clearly insane statement. And then someone implies something similar to the statement casually in a live stream. I'm like, those are two different scenarios, like completely. It, yeah, totally different. The thing is, though, I don't. This guy sat down and scripted out this video. How did he say all this completely bonkers <laughs> garbage after writing it down, like, well, and rewriting it seven times? Nobody stepped in and said, "Listen, this is ridiculous." His point was very confused throughout. Like, it, it, the video screamed like it needed redrafting like crazy. He. he I think he felt like he was happy once he had the Alan Moore quotes in there. He's probably like, well, my work is done. <laughs> Alan Moore's got yeah, taken care true. of for me. Don't you, whenever I'm scripting a video or a story or anything like that, I generally, well, no, not generally. I always start from the simplest version and then add complexity that make my argument. It doesn't seem like he did that at all. Like, what is a simple argument there? The, the simple version of his argument would have to be it's it was made for kids therefore it should never be for for adults exclusively that seems to be what he wants to say the the, the part coming in with all the proofs for all of this obviously didn't really happen oh, I got it. yeah yeah that is simple but not at remotely profound <laughs> no, i feel no. like that i feel like that video was like oh i stumbled upon these great alan moore quotes how do I work these into a video? How do I structure a complete video? How do I use this out? for cred? Yeah, because obviously yeah. The, the implicit element there is that Alamo said it, so you guys have to take it seriously. It's like, um, not really. No, no, we don't. Fuck Alan Moore. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I'll be fine. I can take seriously care. what I want. Yeah. Um, yeah. Weird stuff. This is where you jump in with a super chat. <laughs> I, I'm, you know, I'm doing it. Is, uh, is it a hot take to say Civil War is one of the best superhero movies? Because I see lots of people saying it's not. That's why I wait your breakdown. Yeah, wrong people say that. So, superhero movies can be really hard to uh, nail with all of the variables you're dealing with. All these people with superpowers and stuff. We think Civil War does a really good job. Um, especially with balancing not only all of those variables, but trying to tell a story that tries to take account of a lot of the things that get partially ignored in a lot of superhero movies um, without being dark and edgy as, as Patrick seems to take issue with, you know? It's it's a very rational sort of just like, hey, you guys could be doing a hell of a lot better and you're not. And uh, it's it's enough. You've gone too far. And I think that it's uh, does a really good job with every one of the characters in it. And with how we tend to break things down, uh, we just think it scores pretty high in that regard. Not perfect. Um, and a lot of people really do they really do hate it, and they would probably argue that we have missed a lot of what the flaws are in the film, while we would argue they have missed the details that would fill in the gaps they think exist. That's pretty much the dichotomy. That is okay. But yeah, I think Civil War is very good. What is? Do you guys have a favorite superhero movie? Yeah, it would be Civil War for me. Yeah, oh, okay. that, Homecoming, Spider-Verse, Batman and Robin. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Uh, the the thing. Guardians movies are really good. Yeah. I really like that movie Barbed Wire with Pamela Anderson. That was the one I was thinking of. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever it's a, it's happened a to Bob Wire? Why isn't she in the MCU? Beaver. You should be able to say whatever happened to Pamela Anderson. She's, she's around somewhere doing something. Dragging those things everywhere she goes. I don't know that I have a favorite. Is Sin City is Sin City a superhero movie? I don't think so, but I I guess the connection is comic book or graphic novel being adapted, right? Are there, are there super people in Sin City? Just I don't think people? there are. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think there are. I'm going to go with Sin City just to break the mold. All right. I think that's fair. I remember liking that a whole bunch. Have you spoken yeah. about HBO's The Last of Us series yet with Pedro Pascal as Hitler? Uh, I mean, Joel as Hitler. <laughs> um, 
Oh right, of course, because Joel caused all of the bad things in the world. I forgot my own lore. Um, yeah, I, I don't see how he's going to be able to portray Joel. I don't know why they chose him outside of just he's uh, favorable right now. That's about it. It's, um, I think there's a hell of a lot of people who could have done a closer Joel, I suppose. But at the same time, I'm willing to give him a shot. I think he can be a really good actor, so... We'll have to see, but I have very little hope in the Last of Us TV series being good. Yeah, I doubt it. Uh, Rax, I haven't we'll, seen it. The the news or the the um the game or the the Last of Us TV series. Oh yeah, it's not out yet, but um. Oh okay. I don't think it even has a trailer. I think they're just announcing who's gonna be cast. Um, but yeah. Um, Rags, will your Mandalorian video be timestamped with the bits you edited while on EFAP? Also, hi, Rags. Hi. Uh, what do you mean the time the end times edited on EFAP? That's what I was about to ask. I don't really know what that means. Timestamped with bits you edited while on EFAP. I, I, I don't know what that means. I don't edit while I'm on EFAP. That's I was going to say, I feel like that would be pretty tough to do. You can't do any audio editing at yeah, all if you're on EFAP. Wow. <laughs> it's going to be tough to nail that one. Um... You guys ever doing a Dark Knight arc? You keep alluding to the Dark Knight being bad without elaborating. If not, any videos you recommend on it? I have never alluded to the Dark Knight being bad. That's absurd. No, propaganda. no, that would be that would be crazy for yeah. someone to say something like that. I mean, it's so beloved, mm -hmm. and I mean, there would be so so many people would be very upset if we watched the movie and came away with that as a result. That would be a that fucking be, absurd position to take. Oh, Nobody wow. has that perspective. That's nuts. That's crazy. Um, I sense a bit of sarcasm in your in your voice there. No, what? none. Are you? Uh, is the dark, what? What is your real position on the Dark Knight? Ah, uh, it's great. I feel like I, I might be among friends here. Oh, it's it's yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's I mean, you, you are among friends. You think it's great too, right? Who wouldn't love it? I totally love it. There you go. Excellent. <laughs> so it's uh, great. <laughs> you mean <laughs> you, uh, Heath Ledger's performance? Fantastic. Just utterly. Gets very stellar. good. Yeah, Jaw-droppingly good. Stellar. Yeah. I mean, Academy Award. We're talking. Posthumously, right? Mm. Um, I think. I can't remember. I think so, yeah. Uh, Lord Mailer, please remove these two enlightened centrists from our toxic SJW right wing feminist podcast. I'm sorry they slipped right on. They just, they just came in the back door. One down, one to go. Yeah, I know. We're getting there. We're going to re remove Adam soon enough. Jeez, uh, how many super chats do you have to catch up on? I'm sure a lot of them are telling you Dumbos to play DDLC. Oh, you should play it, by the way. Ah, very nicely done. I've heard that. That's what I. That's a, mm. that is what I have heard. Uh, we we we've got I think one full EFAP's worth to catch up on, and it's literally just the next time we're able to sort of sort out a good date to do it. But um, we're closer to catching up than ever. All right, so we're almost there. Uh. Damn. Uh, Mubes, have you ever seen the movie Arthur Christmas? I think it's up there with Hot Fuzz in terms of the script. Even Doug Walker recommend. Uh, it's a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, um, I think I said it on. I can't remember if it was the Drinker stream actually or not, but I mentioned that I, I've definitely seen at least half of it. I was in a room when it was playing and I remember liking it, so. That's all I can say. Perhaps I shall check it out in, in, in a Christmas to come. Who knows? Um, bonjour, Mr. Rags. Oh, bonjour. Uh, and Sitchin Adam and everyone else. Have you massives watched Cobra Kai yet? Nope. No. Have you, Adam? I watched a, I watched a little bit of my wife watching Cobra Kai, but that's about you it. You watched her as she watched it? Yep. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just as I, as I was wow, walking so... by, I noticed that she was watching... Cobra mm. Kai, but I didn't. I didn't indulge. Yeah, I think I might have saw a first, a, a bit of the first season, but there's. A, it's on the second season now, right? Uh it's on the third, isn't it? Or is it, oh, is okay. it only two? I don't know. I um, I, I'm unaware because I haven't seen it, but I everyone recommends it. Apparently, it is very good. And if there's anything I check out, I like when... super violent movies. So, 
Oh. Is there any decapitation in Cobra Kai? What are you, 14? Might not be to my standards. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Holy white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, that too. Yeah. I do like that implicit sort straight. of... Straight. What he said, all of that? It's white. Like, yeah, white straight people in there. Male. Ripping like, heads oh, off. those white people and their opinions. <laughs> Enough. Oh, we're genetically pre... We're genetically predisposed to violence. That's yeah, why that's we what like he was so saying. Much violence yeah. in our movie. Yeah, basically. If you were going to say what's a race that's genetically predisposed to violence, my mind goes straight to white. You know, the only thing that cures it is turtlenecks. Is that it, the key? It's that constant pressure around your neck, like it's your conscience you put choking a, you. You put a turtleneck on, and suddenly, no violence. Please, don't be violent anymore. I mean, if they proved that. Yeah. <laughs> white people like violence they were like all right whatever <laughs> I was like, yeah I'll, I'll watch some fantasy violence it's fine it, with me. it depends upon the context it totally depends upon the context it's funny this would have been good to elaborate on in his video dude i feel like that's a topic he wants to avoid just because he it does seem like he he fluttered around a lot of points to avoid committing to anything particular because remember he opens the video with saying i am not saying that these things shouldn't exist it's like, you kind of were, though. <laughs> like, that was the video. Yeah, you were sort of. Yeah, kinda, you yeah. was. You lied. There was a lot of things in that video that he was not saying. Like, the whole video was about what he was not saying. Yeah. And then he used a bunch of other people's quotes. <laughs> like, hey, this isn't me, okay? This is this, is this guy. Uh, have you guys seen the Falcon Winter Soldier trailer? I don't like where that's going because Zemo said in the trailer that superheroes shouldn't exist. Yeah, so that worries me. Um, converting Zemo from a man with a goal in terms of the Avengers into a man who thinks superheroes as a whole are just bad people or something is like, mm. Yeah, we never got that. And it was specifically the Avengers and specifically what they did. Yeah, he so... had no issues with them beforehand, you know, before uh, Sokovia. It's gonna be a problem for me if they make him... They turn him into, like, a full-on cartoon villain instead of, um, you know, tragic sort of situation brought him to a position where he thought it was right and proper despite the people it could hurt sort of thing. Rather, now it's like, ah, oh, fuck superheroes. It's like, uh, I don't know that I got that from... Civil War, but you know, I don't want to say it's not right before I see what they do with it, so we'll see. Uh, frog fact the largest water frog was 7.9 inches long. That's a big fucking frog. Damn, yeah. Jeez. Hi, Rags. Hey! What is the EFAB cast's favorite Halo characters, weapons, and races? <laughs> I mean. Um. I'm not too, like, I don't... Hmm. <laughs> this is probably a question uh -huh. for Rags and Friggy. Like, for me, I'm just I like, I think oh. the Sangheili are pretty cool, but I bet a lot of people would say that. Um, uh, as far as character, probably... Probably... Uh, probably the Arbiter. Ready? And mm -hmm. if I had to name a weapon, that's my favorite. Hmm... Um, I really like, gonna, gonna tell you, say an odd one here that most people probably might not say, but I think my favorite weapon, oh, it depends on the games though. Um, if we had to say overall, that's tough. But like you play the original Halo, even on like, you know, veteran and stuff. And you could, you, you have a, the plasma pistol and plasma rifle were dope and they were really good and I always carried them around. Um, but if I, if I had to say overall, that's fucking tough. Maybe the DMR. I just kind of like it. It just seems peppy and accurate and I've used it a whole bunch. I mean, to a, in a way, I'm sick of it because of Halo Reach is basically the DMR game. But I really like it. I like that. Um, I like that DMR. All right, that's that's going to be my tentative um, answer. I just I just don't have anything interesting to say because I don't remember it well enough to have preferences on those things. Mm. Halo's neat. That's that's all I got. And you know what? I'm assuming Adam has even less to say than I do. Sniper rifle. There I don't you know. go. I just looked it up. 
The 10 <laughs> greatest good, yeah. Halo guns of all time. Sniper rifle sounds good. Although I do like trip mines. If there's trip mines, I'm all about the trip mm. mines. In Halo 3, there's trip mines you could throw. Yeah, those They're are like bad. little landmines that get activated if you walk on them. I don't know that heroic. I've ever Yeah, I said Halo. veteran instead of heroic. Yeah, it's I, I was just one thing in there for a second. Yeah. Fake fan confirmed. Yeah, uh, but yeah, <laughs> if I say a second, it might be the plasma pistol. Honestly, plasma pistol's really good. It's got a good primary and it's got that secondary fire we could charge it up but generally i wouldn't use that i would just especially in reach the plasma pistol i generally always pick it up because you could really quickly spam it to drain people's shields and then get that melee in up close and really fuck them up but yeah always pick up that plasma pistol it's good shit done there you go rags have you heard that the dnd sixth edition will add combat wheelchairs Really? Wow! Very <laughs> inclusive. Oh uh, yeah. Give me if you're one in a of them. Wheelchair that. and you're in combat. You fucked up somewhere. Hmm. But what if you're forced into it? If you're what? Yeah. Forced into it. Some kind of horrible dystopia where they they force everyone into wheelchairs before entering battle. Like you were you were crippled in a battle but your infirmary is being assaulted by goblins, and yes. so you're still healing from your broken leg, and you're in a wheelchair, and you have mm -hmm. to fight them off. That's, that's the I'd difference. imagine yeah. if you were in a wheelchair, you want like a, a spear so, or a poleaxe, something with range to it, so you can keep them away from you because you're not going to have that mobility. Well, Isn't a mech suit kind of like a wheelchair? <laughs> so, I like, mean... A mech is ju just a, a someone in heavy armor who's just also in a wheelchair as a medieval mech. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah, you know, the logic is sound. Uh, would you rather have a single testicle the size of a softball or three testicles all the size of grapes? <laughs> hmm. I'm going to go for the single big one. <laughs> softball. I, I would take the grape. I don't know. It seems I guess like I kind of want to like, try them out, never... you know, both of them. I just want to see which one feels better. I'm not sure. I think it'd be a more comfortable. You think it'd be more comfortable for the three oh, or the one? Oh, a softball? Oh, yeah, that's right. The softball. The size part. Um, it's the big one, yeah. Wait, how big is a softball? They're pretty big. You know how big a baseball is? Yeah. You're bigger than that. Oh, okay. I'm going to go with the yeah, three lot. grapes. I don't want to be... I don't want to be... Like, that's, that seems like yeah. it could be uncomfortable. I, I think You've I'd go with three grapes. If the single ball was smaller than a soft ball, I think it's the size that really... Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you were going to say a single larger ball or three smaller ones, I would go with a single larger one. But if the specificity of the question is that it's a soft ball, then yeah, I'm... That's a bit much. That would get in the way. Would not be comfy. Mm. Uh, question. What is your most hated tropes in the media? For example, the trope I hate is when character A lies to character B once or twice, even when character A is making complete sense, but character B will never listen because fuck you, you lied to me that one time. Um, do you mean like, so like the boy who cried wolf, essentially? But like, obviously, only they did it the once. Yeah, I mean, it happens. Um, I don't even know if it counts as a trope, but just people being stupid for the sake of the plot is just so fucking common the idiot ball right that's what it's called yeah, the idiot the ball worst. is just basically if you someone if you're holding the idiot ball you're just a fucking idiot yeah and that's just the trope is this you're just it's just an idiot and that's probably my biggest issue when it comes to writing and stuff characters just being stupid there you go um I, i'm I, gonna go add ninja just to be uh edgy you don't like what ninjas? Yeah, no, amnesia. Oh. Uh, the amnesia trope is in so it's in some really good movies, but most of the time it just bugs the fuck out of me. It's like, oh, we're going this route again, huh? I'm trying to figure out who I am. Who am I? Well, I think that's fair. Nobody it's 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 actually like frowned upon for the most part, right? As a trope. It's like, oh, they got amnesia, did they? Really useful yeah, but it, though. <laughs> I can't wait to get unamnesia at an appropriate place for the story. Yeah. Yeah, that's usually the follow-up trope. They'll, it's like, they remember everything now because they saw that photo, and you're like, okay. Uh, oh, 
Wow, I'm dead already. It was embarrassing. Hi, Mola. Do you think you'll ever have no BS on and also high rags? Hi. No. <laughs> I would have him on, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how long he'd be on for. In the sense of like we'd, like we'd laugh at Reach him a out? bunch. I will. But I will talk to him about whatever he wants to. Mm. I will ask him honest questions about some stuff. It'll be great. I'll ask him if he thinks that Endgame was woke. And then when oh, he says, yeah? if he says no, I'll be like, what about the female power scene? No bullshit. It was terrible. They were so suspicious. And, uh, yeah, I, I, it would be fun. I think chat. We we would open it up to chat. Be like, chat, ask some questions. No bullshit. Yeah. Get the community getting involved. It'd be wonderful. Wouldn't want to take that away from anybody. It'd be great. Um. Yeah. Oi, Morley. Hearing you make takes on Twitter like Iron Man Three beats Civil War and Sicario pales to its sequel. It's all rather cringe, isn't it, bud? How dare you? What? Sicario pales to its sequel. I mean, this is all. I've only heard. I've only heard the opposite. It's 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 all deliberate bad takes designed to upset. How could you say this? Oh, so they're upset. both pretty good. No, I mean... the second one's ass. <laughs> First one's amazing. I'll kill anyone who says anything different because that's how it works. Hmm. Mm -hmm. well, I don't want to die over this. But... Yeah, I know. It's... <laughs> no people want to commit that much to a movie opinion. You know? Sicario is amazing though. Sicario yeah. isn't amazing. Uh, how is Patrick so massively untalented? Hey, I don't know. <laughs> the turtleneck. He might be the Takes turtleneck, all the yeah. Testosterone right out of Just it. talk, say things, edit. Yeah, that'd be pretty neat. Like those people in that people video, I felt real bad for them. If you're gonna humiliate yourself, could it at least be for something? You know? No, it wasn't. Oh, wow, Zelda killed herself. Neat. Um, all of you guests are old. Stop being old, lol. Damn. Adam, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to replace you with someone younger, I'm afraid. Wow. I mean, the, the chat okay. demanding it, I don't know. It's... Can't just ignore him? Rags, you said you prefer <laughs> Far Cry 5 to Far Cry 3 and 4. I can understand 3, but you must not have played Far Cry 4 if you think Far Cry 5 is better. Yeah, I did play Far Cry 4. Well then. I mean, I haven't played any of them, so... I just liked it. I just liked it better. It was just more fun. I think there was. It's, it, now, I haven't played Far Cry 4 in a long ass time. Um, but I, I just going off of memory, I definitely enjoyed playing Far Cry 5 much more. Hmm. I was certainly much more immersed in the world, and I thought the gunplay was really good. Um, I really, really, really liked it. Uh, but. Yeah, five. So far, five has been my favorite with all its problems. Uh, I still would say five has been my favorite. Fair enough. I forget what like is that the general take from people or is it? I really don't know. I have no time. idea. I have no idea what the um, general take is. Mm. Um, Oi, Morley, gather the Shadow Men, being Literature Devil, ER, and Sitch, to explain to you why Avatar is a really well-made show. I, I'll, I'll be alright. I mean, <laughs> not, I don't think they're going to be very convincing, I'm afraid, but it's it's a fair shout. Um, how did the hotbox go, Adam? Great. Always good to hotbox. You guys don't hotbox, do you? You guys don't know what that is. You're too young. What? No. Everyone... <laughs> Why would you think that you'd have to be young or old to know what a hotbox is? It transcends time. Mm. Everyone knows the hot box. Bro, that's some drug culture stuff, okay? Not old and young culture. Oh, we thank pass you, it along. For giving Every me, someone, someone just gifted me Control Ultimate Edition. Thank you very much, Chrono. We'll give a look at this. Probably after my video. I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to start a new game uh, at the moment. But thank you very much. I'll take a look at that. I've heard mm. it's nifty. Thank you very much. Um, birthday present. Yeah, I'm glad that's to hear. Julio. About that, and that you had a good time in the hotbox. All right, that's good. Yeah, great. <laughs> um, not before the show, though. No, during. <laughs> uh, give my idiot clone a kick in the teeth for me. Oh my God, is this person? Is this person? They were cloned, and they created Patrick Williams. Oh my God. Imagine the. 
the botched clone of Patrick Williams was a fan of, or rather the, the, the source of that clone, where they were cloned from, was a fan of EFAP. Must be awkward. Must feel very responsible for all of the pain. Uh, finally around for a live stream. Love you guys, but please learn the difference between the words quantify and qualify. Isn't quantify as numbers and qualify as like explain the the um, how it's qualified? Like status in terms of how it meets a standard. Yeah. Yeah. Did we like, did if we misused it? It was probably just a slip of the tongue. And yeah. Because we definitely know the difference between the two. We might have just. Accid Build. Accidentally said one instead of the other. Yeah, I might have uh, slipped that, but that doesn't sound like a mistake. I don't remember making mistakes like that. Like, quantify the the amount versus qualify the statement. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Quantify, quantify your, your qual statement, which is like. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I feel like that's I something I would say, that but would maybe. Mean. Yeah, I don't know. What I don't know what quantify your statement would mean actually. Mm. Um, I can't stand that people misrepresent Joker by calling it a superhero movie just because it's based on a DC, based on a DC movie when it's psychological drama. Um, I, like I said, I've only ever referred to it as a superhero movie for the sake of that's what I've seen a lot of people refer to it as. Like, I don't see how it really qualifies as that. Yeah, I don't see how it would either. If it, if you just change the name, it, it, if... Joker, if you didn't go into that with a meta understanding of the Joker character, there would not be any superhero aspect of it at all. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. Uh, and the story would function perfectly without that meta knowledge as well. It's just kind of interesting to think about in that sense. You guys tend to say doesn't quantify hurt it, doesn't a lot. Help. I don't know. Well, maybe it helps it. Do we say quantify a lot? I really feel like we don't. Are you trying to oh, quantify how many times we say quantify? <laughs> I know we say qualify a lot, because we're like, I'll often say, like, we're waiting now for them to qualify that claim or that statement. That's why I say that a lot. Maybe it sounds the same when I say it. Quantify, qualify, quantify, qualify, who knows? Maybe. Maybe. Oh, I don't know. I'm going to send me a supercut of me saying it, like, over and over again in all different contexts, and I'll be like, oh my god, my mind ah, they wasted their lives. is blown. Uh, is this where Patrick evolves into Jack Thompson? Um, remind me, who's who's Jack Thompson? He's the guy who wanted to ban video games. Ah. Um. Well, yeah, Patrick is like you can you could say he's in that ballpark, but it's not quite the same. Like no more R-rated Batman. Boo. Three of my favorite channels together at last. Best crossover. Yeah, it's been <gasps> it's been fun. It's been an interesting little. He's wait. He said together. three. Oh, I assume yeah. you meant Adam and Sitch as one. Oh, us two, you, yeah. those two, and the nerd drive. We're okay. going to rename our... We're, we're officially sharing a channel now. We're going to rename it. But I just didn't want to rename it before we launched the comic because, you know, I didn't want people to not find us. You know, YouTube does weird shit, so... Hmm. Uh, what are you going to... Are you going to feel like an actual, like, a full-on name, or are you just going to do, like, Adam and Sitch? Adam, Adam and Sitch... Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's probably just uh, Sitch and Adam streams or Sitch and Adam Don't show or something bitch. like that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Which which one would I be? I would be the dummy. <laughs> Sitch, I think Sitch is smarter than me, so. The, Sitch the, would be the bitch. Sitch God. would be the bitch. Sitch is the bitch. Which I'm comfortable with. At least I'm Nobody likes a, no bitch. Hopefully. Nobody likes a smart guy anyway. Let's be honest. I hope nobody yeah. tells him about this. Nobody clips it out and shows that you've been ripping him to shreds behind his back. What? It's terrible. No. I'm sure somebody will. People like to do that, obviously. You know people like to stir the pot, so. What? I said he was a smart way. one. Mm, you also said he's the worst and a bitch, so I don't know, man. The super chatter said he was the bitch. <gasps> the dumb and the bitch. Oh my and the bitch. And you didn't was disagree the... with that super chat, did you? You know, kind of not. I, oh it does my make god. <laughs> okay. Um, you guys are deliberately trying to get me in trouble now. Nope. It'll work. It'll be great. No, we're far past that. The coconut was from Epstein's Island, which really explains P Patrick Willems. Oh, no. oh, yeah. The coconut. I remember the coconut. Yeah, this is all the way back at the beginning. It was, uh, it was a weird thing. It was, it was weird. I who just was, noticed. Who, Go ahead. who was uh, his girl? Jill, Jill, Jillis Dean, or something like that. Oh, Phyllis Diller, Maxwell, or something like that. Oh, G isn't it Jizz Lane? Isn't that how it's pronounced? Lane, 
Jizz Lane. <laughs> I mean, how could I forget Jizz Lane? Jizz Lane. Jizz Lane. When they, <laughs> when the guy showed the comic, the really disturbing comic of the girl with her eyes gouged out, missing her arms and stuff like that, I was thinking, well, this would be a totally different context if that was Jizz Lane. Dramatic. I bet yes. any yeah. woman would see that and want to fuck on the spot. That's if it was Jizz Lane or uh, or Epstein. You'd be like, oh yeah, and it's time to take <laughs> a trip to Jizz Lane. Is that but, what she yeah, says yeah. when she's in the when she's horny? I mean, you got to be think, you know secret about it, right? Got a euphemism. I think it's a Galen, yeah. That is pretty hey, subtle. Yeah. Jizz, Jizz Lane is better. <laughs> take a ride to Jizz Lane. Uh, yeah, that's a simulation with you right there i just noticed that r rated is an anagram for the r word <gasps> really r rated is an anagram for the r word being retarded yeah uh. <laughs> wait where's the second e yeah i mean i don't know if this works quite as well as you thought it did yeah I, I listen know. i might be dumb but i ain't retarded all yeah right? that one don't check out everyone rebels on the r word yeah, that, well, that's the current line, I think, isn't it? Yeah, um, it seems it's like, like it's you're doomed. Drawing line here. Like, you know, we'll we'll keep saying it until apparently it'll become like a bannable offense. I guess that's when we'll stop. Because, <laughs> oh, speech is but a funny are gonna one, isn't it? They're gonna immediately go back to the stream and they're gonna start banning. They're gonna like fish it out. So sad. Mm -hmm. Um, hi, Mola. Hello, hello, Rags a million. Hi. And hello... Wait, why is Gary here? I heard he's a simp now. I'm so confused. We like Gary's we're, a we're simp. Okay, we're okay with simps being on the stream. It's all right, you know? Yeah, as long as they're simps for us. Yeah. Yeah. Who? And potatoes. Oh, potato simps are the best. Um, It's the same people complaining about the violence in Tarantino films. Yeah, but, well, maybe. I don't know. I don't know how Patrick Williams feels about excessive violence in general that's that's you know part of why we had that conversation it's like there are times when would excessive never go violence against can those work. it's too popular yeah that's very likely um <laughs> patrick saying not to criticize before watching the full video smash cut to i'm not watching a 12-hour response video it's the death of creativity <laughs> well hey the you know we're only at six to hours make a lot of content okay we're only at six hours so that's that's like half 12. Well, you know, it's yeah, he could, he could do that. Yeah. Morning. He can stop at the super chats. He doesn't have to watch the whole thing. He doesn't have to. I think he, he should, He does though. if he needs to get the full context. Yeah. I feel he does. If he only There's watches the whole thing. The well, commentary's continuing. We have made several comments about the yep. video, even after the Some amendments, so. some additions. If he, yeah. If he doesn't consume it all, it's not worth looking into his response, I'd say. We're quantifying all of our commentary. We are quantifying it indeed. <laughs> uh, I just did that to trigger someone out there is triggered. You got him. <laughs> I did not had him. Uh, morning, gents. Hope you're doing well. Hopefully, my criticism at bringing about Wonder Woman's power consistency was a bit clearer. Haven't seen that EFAB yet. Wasn't trying to be a dick or anything. It was only a small criticism anyway. That is absolutely fine. I, I think you're a dick. <laughs> oh, no. Um, <laughs> is this the nostalgia critic? No, this is Patrick. Oh. People would debate in that in the opening, which which they would prefer for us to see a Patrick video or a nostalgia critic video. I would rather watch nostalgia critic. I feel like he's more entertaining. Some people have said we weirdness. should watch his Man of Steel one because it's good. And I was like, interesting. Oh, so he thinks it's bad. I was okay. gonna say I assume that's what they they're referencing. And I don't again, know. And again, Cosmo's fucking worthless prequel video. We yeah, had to defend those yeah, movies because ugh, he's terrible at his job. Uh, Patrick saying not to criticize before watching the full video. Smash cut. Oh, this is the same one. They s <gasps> Did they send it twice? Oh my god. Unless I read it twice. Okay, my bad. This guy is an unironic cinema snob and it's cringe. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, I agree. Uh, rags roast yeah. Patrick's outfit GTA 5 Lamar style um oh I think we had enough of that during the stream yeah, I, I mean, think uh, yeah I even made a yeah I, I made a lot of commentary on his odd wardrobe it's like weird stuff you'd see a sim wearing and then they'd be embarrassed <laughs> about it 
<laughs> yes, the sim itself has a conversation with another server that it just like loses social points because of the t Yeah. <laughs> One of them's know. like, Gaboom ba gur gur gur, and the other's like, ah, ya, gaboom ba dar. And then they, they, the other one just like, he just takes it off and throws it away. The yellow, a yellow turtleneck underneath a black jacket. What are you thinking? Anyway, and the turtleneck extends trend, past okay. the jacket arms. What are you doing? What are you doing? Is that dick supposed to be Alfred? I don't know. We'll never know the answer mm. to that question, ultimately. Is anything supposed to be Alfred? I don't know. Uh, no, sea monster. It's just his Prince Alfred. Oh my. What oh my goodness Prince gracious. Alfred? Prince Alfred, the SS Prince Alfred. Oh, you're saying Prince Alfred would be Team SS? Oh, I thought I thought you meant Prince Albert. I, when his yeah, sea monster and Prince uh, Albert. It says Prince Alfred. I think they meant Prince and Prince. Yeah. Because <laughs> that they... says like a sea monster. So <laughs> close. Hmm. You got it so close. So close to oh, the joke. Oh, man. Well, they they tried. That's what's important. Um, but I mean, you know, with the context of there's that supposed to be Alfred, I think that's a good combo. It evokes the memes. That's what's important. That's well, yeah, because we're asking, yeah, is that supposed to be mm -hmm. Albert? Has well, Patrick flip, really a, a done... A new spin on an old classic. Has Patrick really done his homework this time? I mean, that wasn't really relevant. <laughs> his arguments were just shit. Whether or not yeah, he read he, the comics didn't really matter. He wasted about 80% of the video talking about kind of irrelevant things. Yeah. Which is always fun. I mean, we... 95% of the co uh, video, actually. It was a, it was a 5 lot of... percent of the there's like two five-minute two stretches where we were just like, well, that was that anyway. Five percent of it was good. The violent scenes from the movies, like I might download it and just clip out the violent scenes. I think he did a good job there. Maybe upload it to my second channel and <laughs> jerk off to it later. Yeah, man. Well, everyone could jerk off to it. It's amazing. It's amazing. Sadism. It's amazing stuff, you know. No, I know the moral context behind all those what are scenes you, because white? I've seen all those movies. It's like a, it's like a, a just amazing, it's amazing two minutes of amazing video emotions. footage. Lost. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it's just like that scene from Sin City, you know? Um, you I'm can not... beat up bad guys because it doesn't feel bad. There you go. I love Hitman. Oh yeah, that's the Mickey Rock character, right? Yeah. But what if being evil makes man. me happy? Because you can do whatever you want, and you don't feel bad. That's that's ex like, that's his whole video. His video is complaining about that one moment. Well, he never says it. Maybe he thinks that character's sadistic. No, nah. he just he's forgotten to take his medicine, Mauler. Leave All him alone. Right. <laughs> Any excuse for anything. This one is just a crying face. Oh, Sometimes you feel like, oh, are we are we upset in the audience? We putting them through a video that they don't deserve to see. Well, got a soldier through. Yeah. Uh, speaking of R-rated superheroes, fuck Mary Kill, Gamora, Nebula, and Mantis. Also high rags. Hi. Um. Which, uh, what, at what point for all of these characters, though, isn't it? Because Gamora... Why like... can't we just marry all of them? Well, because we're not Mormons. Yeah. Come on. Mormons. Maybe I am Mormon. I marry them all. That's cheating. All. You've destroyed the spirit of the question. You've upset uh, well, everyone. Well, I'm cheating, um, then. Okay. If you're not I cheating, you're kill... not playing to win. <laughs> I'd probably kill Mantis. Well, okay, so the problem here what? is that I need to oh know... My... Hey, I need to know if they're all at their peak or if they're all <laughs> Man, at their just... Hey, they're all pretty would... awesome, okay. Maybe kill might... uh, Nebula because she's like the most unstable, I don't know. Yeah, kill Nebula. I would marry Nebula's Mantis a robot, and fuck right? Gamora. You can't kill her. Well, they're she's all not even good. killable. Nebula's good now. I mean, yeah. I, I, I'm, more, I'm interested to see what we get more of her, but mm -hmm. yeah. Um... But yeah, I'd say uh, kill Nebula, marry Mantis, fuck Gamora. I think Mantis mm. would be a very good, uh, good, good, good. Wife. I think that is She'd the really safest choice. really understand you. 
I, I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with you because I believe that is the smartest way to go with how we understand all these people. Yes. You know, yeah. Yeah. I think scientific. Mantis would be very entertaining and supportive, but willing to tell you the tough stuff if you need to hear it. Mm -hmm. And she'd know when to say it because you you know you'd be able to open up to her and she'd kind of feel what you're yeah, you know, what you're yeah. getting at, which would be really good for communication. Communication is very important in a relationship. Um, yeah. Uh, totally. So yeah. There you go. That's my. Did she it. would know if you were attracted to other women immediately. Oh, no. Well, she would, doesn't well, she yeah, like read I mean, minds? All women know that you are attracted like, to other women. Yeah. Unless for some what reason. She, that what if like, she's just completely jealous, though, and you, like it ruins the whole thing? Well, if you loved her, she would know it. True, true. Yeah, she'd know the truth, right? Yeah, she would know, yeah. If you, if you loved her, she'd know the truth, and that would settle that. Yeah. Um, chicken Think run. Of what you could do with Mantis's antennae? <laughs> no. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my goodness, no. Eddie can't do that. Uh, chicken run is not a purely child story. Great escape with chickens and a farmer instead of Yahtzees. Um, yeah. I like chicken run. Well, I don't think the comment is trying to say anything in the opposite. Like, it's... It's a point yeah, about Yeah, I'm just how, saying that I, I just, yeah. just wanted to make it known that I'm pro-Chicken Run. I am pro-Chicken Run, too. I, I want to make that clear. EFAP's official position on Chicken Run is that we are pro-it. Adam, are you pro-Chicken Run? That's the movie? Yeah, I think it's good. Okay. All right. For a second there, I thought we were going to have a problem. That movie came out 21 fucking years ago. I feel wow. Old. <laughs> Holy shit. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. There'll be a chicken run too, and it'll be really bad, and then we'll go back. To <laughs> oh my god! Run. Will it be R-rated for violence? <laughs> I hope so. Rated hope so. R. I want an R-rated R, R version of Chicken Run. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Imagine. I mean, when they were trapped in the violence. machine, that was kind of scary. Yeah. Imagine what could happen to those little chickens if they got. Oof, boy. Um, I'm not saying R-rated superhero movies are inherently bad. Later, superhero stuff was made for children. Patrick Wilhelm. He um, yeah. there's definitely plenty of contradictions to point out in that video. He he just he's got a bone to pick, all right, and you just gotta let him pick the bone. Gotta let him. Um. Yeah. Nico Pueringa from Corridor Crew just said that the Battle of the Bastards is a better war scene for its tactics than Helm's Deep in their latest episode. Who said that? Guy called Nico Pueringa. Where? Never heard of him. Um, but um, I'd I'd be interested in hearing the argument. But Battle of the Bastards was, I don't know. There's lots of floopiness in that one. You know, I was thinking about that R-rated Chicken Run, and, and <laughs> yeah. I imagine it'd be, it'd be rated it'd be rated R for foul language. Oh, beautiful! Oh, that would be great. Fucking fucking nailed it. Yeah, that was a good one. Aside from the pun, I would like to see a bunch of <laughs> claymated chickens running around, dropping dropping f bombs. I do now. like everyone's appreciating the pun of that. Y'all just like seriously though. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I no. Do yeah. want some swear words coming out of them clay chickens? Fuck, fuck your pun. I need the swearing. If we've learned anything, it's that everyone likes swearing. Okay, fuck that. Man. Children swearing and chill and children. <laughs> And toy swearing is funnier than anything. Come on. Oh, yeah. Toy For Story real. already. Let's do it. God damn it, Woody. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Andy, you fucking Mother abandoned us. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> it's ten times better already. I hope Andy's cunt mother calls from downstairs <laughs> so we can go walk around. <laughs> she drops the toys in some kind of toy bargain bed. And Woody just sees fucking it. Camera yeah. zooms in on him and just goes, what the fuck? <laughs> what a stupid God bitch! <laughs> <laughs> Can't she see the toys? You whore! What is wrong with you? Think for one fucking when second. It, yeah, when Andy's slack of a mom gets drunk again, we could walk around <laughs> and she'll just blame it on her delusions. <laughs> <laughs> they toy with the mom whenever she's drunk because they know they can get away with it. They get her into a mental institution? <laughs> See, this is the what toys, happens. They move, they talk to me, they speak. And you're like, all right, all right, all right. take your medicine. Man. Take your medicine and we won't have to tie you down. <laughs> this is the world that Patrick is trying to stop, guys. We can't let him do it. Yeah, don't do it. 
Uh, today's lineup is S class. Hey, S class. Yeah, maybe. Hey, S class is a good thing, whether or not you think it's above or below A. All right. Or right. below. I mean, whether or not. He means the ranking, not the. You uh, mean quantify if. Uh, no. Oh, could you, could you quantify what you mean, ranks? Nah, I'm not ready to qualify my statements. <laughs> God. On the use of the word quantify. Uh, my something. grandfather was a golden age comic artist, Al Stahl, I think, and he made comics for other audiences too, uh, older audiences too. He would have totally disagreed with this guy. I mean, I bet he probably would have, but a lot of people would. It was. This were, it was such a. If if nothing Hell else, yeah. oh shit, I meant to hit yes, oh well. Um, if nothing else, that video was so limited in terms of the conversation being yep. had, you know, it's just like, can you please try and bring in some good arguments at all? And it's just like, no, this old guy said I'm right. <laughs> like, okay. You nailed it. Uh, the stop complaining it's for kids implies that you don't need to put effort into kids' media, which is a terrible take. Kids deserve good movies, too. Yep. This is why we want yes. people to be clearer when they say it's silly. You're like, what are you, what are you, what are you saying? Are you trying to say, like, it's bad on yeah. purpose? You're trying to say it's funny? You're trying to say it's non-realistic? trying to say it's at odds with its own tone? Are you trying to say someone's wearing a skin-tight outfit? Like, oh. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Sad. We're covering hypocrite Patrick Soy Willems. I don't know that that's his surname, but... That doesn't really roll off the tongue, does it? <laughs> Patrick Soy Hypocrite Willems. Patrick Soy Williams. <laughs> HPSW, <laughs> even abbreviated. Uh, kids can read the older stories when they grow up. That's what I mean. To a lot, this yeah. are, the, the the harm that he presented. I don't think it outweighs the benefits at all. Yeah, the harm that he showed was basically it might potentially, for a very small amount of time for some people, potentially cause modest amounts of confusion for a moment. What is that? If your parents can't help out in terms of like, hey, what Batman content can I watch, mom? Like, Jesus Christ, it shouldn't be that hard to do. Go look at a Wikipedia yeah. list. Just keep an eye on the bottom right where it has the rating, or wherever it is for your respective countries. You'll be okay. Uh, when the thing ejaculates, does he shoot out pebbles or is it like sand? Um, that's the thing, it's monster. Like, it's like hard to tell. Um, I would assume sand. It, sand I assume it's I like mud. Yeah, it could also be. Yeah, that's a good point. I, yeah, it's I, like a mud. I would it's, expect it's it to be muddy cum. Yeah, like <laughs> it wouldn't. It wouldn't be pebbles. I'm sorry. I'm gonna push back on the pebbles idea. I just don't think it would be pebbles. Yeah, me neither. Those, Those would be, stones. like, if he had kidney stones. Oh, hey, Fringy. Mm. How you doing? <laughs> Hypocrite yes, Patrick hello, hello. Willems is quite the pen name. <laughs> hypocrite. Hello, I am, <laughs> I am Hypocrite Williams. Patrick Sully Willems. Uh, Mr. Williams, what's your first name? I was like, oh, it just, just Williams will be fine. <laughs> You don't have to worry about that. HP Soy. HP Soy. HP Soy Craft. <laughs> no. Uh, Dracula Untold. Uh, that, it, that's all it says in the super chat. Dracula Untold. I like to think that this person is trying to suggest we watch that free fat movies, in which case, you're in such oh, luck. Oh boy. You're in such they luck. are going to be over the moon someone sent me a message my drift. um on twitter saying they were upset that we were covering batwoman season two episode two and skipped episode one and i was for a second i was like oh no what? has it been like has did it been get removed? taken down yeah i checked it it's all fine and i was just like i guess this person just doesn't know that we did the first episode I don't know. A bit awkward but yeah it's there for anybody who didn't know it's there uh with episode three on the way in fact we got a uh, but my schedule's been packed lately. We've got to do Batwoman tomorrow. Um, not that that's some kind of chore. It is epic. Awe-inspiring. As per usual. Um, here, Rags, fetch the stick. Oh! <laughs> if you wanted it, then why the fuck did you throw it? <laughs> Piece of shit. <laughs> Should think twice before having me commit to tasks that are arbitrary and 
ultimately pointless. You need a very snarky, villainous. Well, listen, I'm, I'm definitely a journey over destination kind of guy, but like, come on. Yeah, there are limits to that, you know? It's just, just busy work at that point. Um, this is why Japanese manga is wiping the floor with Western comics. Perhaps the twist in Batwoman should be revealing her massive Richard. <laughs> it's so funny because I'm guessing Dick is not allowed in Super Chats. Massive Richard. <laughs> <laughs> massive Richard. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, Could be. Well, that's what I was thinking. When the quote was like, oh, you know, modern comics filled with violence. I was like, what? I I doubt that's the case. From what I've heard, the complaints are just that there's way too many politics shoved into Shit, them. Shit, yeah. That's, that's genuinely, because I haven't read them. That's what I hear. Um, Senate just acquitted Trump right now. Also high rags. Hello. Did they really? Wow. Double. Yeah, he got double acquitted. He's the only president to be double acquitted for impeachments. Wow. Because because you have to do something wrong. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> but I think they just they just they they just salty. They're just so oh, fucking salty. Oh dude, I salty. can't imagine like, once this stream's over and I vaguely look at my Twitter it's probably filled with <laughs> stuff. Let's just put it that way. Um it's time to let the children one. play. Oh my god, remember oh, that quote? Oh no, that was the... <laughs> I, I will say that is probably the single most creepiest sentence I've ever heard on EFAP. It, yeah, so for context, uh, Adam, right? We're covering this video that's all about how Ghostbusters 2016, the, 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 the remake, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. it um, it's not a film... Great movie. It's not a film that people like us would like, okay? It's, it's <laughs> a amazing. film for children. It is for them. And he ends his video, I think he was going for, like, poignant, but he, like, he gets, mm -hmm. like, a little bit whispery, and he goes, It's time to let the children play. Oh my god. <laughs> it's just like, excuse me, <laughs> why did you... Uh, mm. that's a little weird. It feels a little weird, yeah. Um... This is, that movie oh, was a huge success, right? Oh, everyone loved it. We did a EFAP movies on it with a Critical Drinker and Jay Longbone, I think. Was was Weekend Warrior in that one as well? That was a... For um for Ghostbusters? Yeah, 2016, right? I think yeah. Weekend Warrior was there, yeah. That was a that, legendary that movie one. Puts the, the movie puts puts the suck in success. Yes. I'll tell you yeah. that. That movie's that movie's kind of I'd almost encourage people to watch it because it's 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 that kind of bad. That's sort of bi like bizarre in how interestingly bad it is. Yeah. Uh, yo, Moller and Rags, please go on Adam and Sitch's podcast to cover Vorsh. It would be like seeing CGI Luke Skywalker for me. <laughs> I mean, look at that. Look at that. Well, I mean, it's a big maybe. Yeah, this is the thing. I'm curious what the topic overall is, and then whether or not we'll be able to timeline wise, because we're in. We haven't got anything planned for Sunday, do we, Rags? We're all right. This Sunday, tomorrow? Yeah, well, it's my I thought today, you were saying old. we were like in a different, like, fictional timeline or something <laughs> like our show versus your. I don't know. <laughs> Will well, it I, make sense to people? I, because I, I, for a second there, I was like, wait, when I wake up tomorrow, are we doing Batwoman? It's like, no, wait, Batwoman's Monday my time. Sunday my yeah. time tomorrow is that time. So, It'll yeah, be I might Valentine's be Valentine's Day for us. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know. I'll, I'll give it a big maybe for now. We'll, we'll have a chat about it once the stream's over, I think. See, there's see if no, it works out. There's no, no pressure or anything like that. You could show up in our chat and just say, I changed my mind. I want on... Send me a link. <laughs> let us so. What are you use? Discord, do you? Or uh, stream? We use, uh, we use Zoom. <laughs> really? <laughs> Zoom? Wow. A bunch of people hate Zoom, but uh, Zoom... Zoom just well, seems to give us better audio quality, but I mean, obviously works, I was yeah. out in the in the beginning of the stream. I was out because my audio kept fucking up, and I had to restart a bunch of shit. So, oh my God. yeah. But yeah, Zoom. Zoom is what we use, but it's not difficult or anything. You can come into the Zoom call and whatever. So yeah, I mean it's just interesting because like everyone these days is using either Discord. Or uh, StreamYard, right? StreamYard. I think that's what it's called. Yards. I use StreamYard yeah. sometimes, but StreamYard messes with your computer audio and turns your audio up and down wildly. It's crazy. So, oh. whenever I get into a StreamYard call, cool. everyone is way louder on it than they are in something like Discord. I don't know what it is. I, I just have to turn my overall volume down, which it's fine. It, look, it does seem to work because there's a reason everyone's using it, right? Because 
It was yeah. Google Hangout was the one that was everyone was using who've moved over to a... It's so weird because um, I'm pretty sure the Drunken Peasants still use Skype. I think they wow. do. Yeah, the only time <laughs> I've ever used so Skype. Unstable. Yeah. Yeah, the only time I've ever used Skype in the last years has been the times we went on Drunken Peasants. That's yeah. it. You never know mm. what's still being used these days. Some boomers are Discord still using used Zoom. To... Discord used to fuck with my audio, but it's not fucking with my audio right now, which is awesome. So maybe they fixed it. Yeah, well, Discord is weird. It's like, it's such an amazing sort of program in and of itself, but it also fucks up in really annoying and weird ways a lot of the time. Um, yeah, such as software. Like, EFAP's whole look is dependent on the circles with the green things, and then they updated it so that those just stopped. But it was like, um... I remember that. Can you please give them back? EFAP needs them. EFAP's cancelled. Did they get... Did I mean, we're in the old mode now, so evidently they did give them back. Well, um, they had a yeah, lot of they... pushback. Everybody misses the green circles, so... Yeah. Yeah, they, they had this weird fucking big-ass colored box thing going I remember. on. Like, the, the, yeah. way, the color of your boxes. So and the idea behind all them... All the screen. Yeah, is that they're squares because they're prepped and ready for if anyone screen shares. They thought that no one gave a shit that they were circles or squares. They could just be squares. And it was like, no, 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 people really like the circles. And they're like, okay, but whatever, you can get over it. And it's like, no, they didn't get over it. <laughs> like, the thing is, yeah. most calls I'm in with any of my friends, I'm not typically sharing my screen. Like, it's very rare that I even do that. And so the yeah, idea that it's like, rare. you'll ha yeah, ma happily make this sacrifice, right? Because you share your screens all the time and it's worth that. It's like, nah. Well, like, no, a sacrifice <laughs> implies that, like, I'm losing something to get something. Getting or something. Yeah, that yeah. Some, yeah. someone's yeah. getting something for some, you know. It's, well, I think, yeah. with that, wasn't that the update that made it so that people could, like, screen share at the same time? It did something. Like, it gave you an extra feature, but, like, we didn't really care. It did something useless nobody gave a shit about. <laughs> and so... <laughs> Uh, they've made it now so that whenever you activate screen sharing, if any one person does, everybody goes to squares. Which to me is like, okay, fine. Let's just not screen share. <laughs> we'll be okay. Yeah. You what if I survive. screen share right now? If you screen share right now, it'll turn us all into squares. <laughs> I mean, oh, you, no. you're welcome to do it to show yourself it if you want. I don't really mind. I'm just playing around. That's all right. Uh... I remember for PG-13, fuck can only be said once, and it can't refer to sex either. Really? I didn't know about the second bit. Oh, oh I didn't. It can only refer to violence. Or, or, ref, what's, what, what fuck else can fuck refer up. to? Um, you can't um, say one. Oh, everything. One everything, pretty be, much. Oh, like, yeah, like, basically, if fuck is an extremely... Versatile uh, word. Versatile word. It is used for... You know, like sexually, mm. I will fuck you. Yeah. You know, let's go and fuck. Um, it can be used not. to pretty much accent <laughs> any word regardless of context. Well, this stream is already yeah. already. Fucking any fucking word, fucking regardless uh, of fucking context. <laughs> it just, it fits in fucking anywhere. Hell. It is a wonderful word. It's probably my, it would be one of the best words ever, I think. It really is. Um, like, like fuck you, you can tell someone to fuck me. Mm -hmm. Like like fuck you doesn't even mean have sex with you. It's just like it used in anger. Um, you could fuck shit up. Yeah. You know, get mischievous about it. Uh, you can ask what the fuck is that if you don't know what something is. Um, you could say that someone's like, wow, she is super fucking hot. Um, I got fucked over. You know, I got screwed out of something. Um. Uh, you're a fuck don't up. Don't fuck with me. Yeah, you're a fuck up. Exactly. Um, you like an ejaculation. You could say, "Oh, holy fuck." <laughs> um, you could say that for a lot say, of context, but yes. Yeah. Um, but like you, it just it, it fits in everywhere. Uh, it's very, very, awesome. very interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to make sure. Yeah, it's a fucking great word. Everyone should use it. Except Very if it gets you banned off platforms. I'm sure we're not at that point. We'll be fine. Definitely. We're kind of lucky about that. What, imagine a world where they said you can't say fuck anymore. That would suck. What do you think they did with the with the ratings board in Hellboy 2 when the guy kept saying, Fuck yous! You have to fuck yous! I can't remember that. Is it the Seth MacFarlane character? You remember that movie? Did you Have you seen that movie? Is, isn't it like the German guy who's in like a, it's like a gas or whatever? In a suit? Gas bag. 
Yeah. He said fuck you about a million times. <laughs> well, I just imagine the ratings board being like, mm, I don't know. I don't know. It sounds like he really is saying fuck. Mm. Maybe that's how you can get around it in one yeah, speech channel friend. It's a silly accent. Yeah. No, you, it, it would was be, great. It would be it offensive of you to conclude that that should be a high rating instead of accepting that some cultures are different. I'm guessing that movie's like a PG-13. I don't even think they gave him one fuck use. Mm -hmm. Fuck use! <laughs> fuck use! Uh, plus, ran out of cash at the end of EFAP. Uh, 127? I don't think we've gotten to 127 yet. So, um... I don't know, Maybe it's I'm the lost. future. In case that it wasn't clear in my last super chat on that EFAP, I'm basically saying that I'm not trying to criticize any of you out of spite. I just wanted to keep in mind when reading my future super chats. No problem. And this one says, "Please go away, yeah, Patrick," sure. with a sad face. Oh. I know that feel. Um. Do, do, yes. Patrick Williams is like a white BLM member telling black people how to feel, but about a comic book character and franchises. He's a Karen. Little bit, yeah. Definitely get the Karen vibes in the video. Totally. Talk to your manager. Uh, hi, hail Mola, Rags, and the rest of the Massives. Hello. Yes, hello. Hail indeed. Hey. I do agree that the rating system is very tismy. Like most Disney, me bleh, Disney movies are more PG when they could have been G rated, like they used to back then. Yeah, like over time, it seems to have gotten a little bit more. Um, prudish. It's very easy to set off ratings now, but I don't necessarily, like, it's a tough job, I guess, to be sure about what does what, you know? When When is the like, line Like, even crossed. the mildest form of potential peril is PG. Yeah. So you're introducing an environment that is... You have is to have a show like Bob the Builder, where the stakes are just so fucking low. <laughs> will he be able to build the roof before it rains? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's like, oh my goodness, will the fence be up? before we have to go home and sleep? I don't know. <laughs> oh boy, it's getting very oh sunny God. today. Zero stakes. Sad. Just need him to get punched and blood to come out. Yeah, that's how we know the stakes are there. What we've been advising this whole stream. Uh, hi Rags, happy late birthday. Oh, thank you. And hello. Mm -hmm. Um, he also acts like because new comic book movies and shows came out that somehow it removes the accessibility of the popular stuff from the past. He never addresses that. Nope. It's such an obvious Not sort of addition to this conversation. Like, wait, but they already they they still exist. But now what? Watch them. Enjoy them. Yeah. Um Luke's hand getting cut off. I mean, that didn't affect me as a child or anything, you know? Holds wrist nervously. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, some things they can do stuff. They can do stuff. I feel like back in the 80s and 90s, children's shows and movies treated kids more fairly? Like, less like infants and more respected? Can't quite find the words. Um, I would say this is reflected in just culture in general. Like, kids are more pampered than they used to be for, in some ways, better, in some ways, worse, I'd say. Uh, helicopter parents is like a serious problem. Um, like a, is that a psychological term or is that just a colloquial one? I think it's colloquial. colloquial. Well, yeah. either way, uh, parents. I think it's quantify. <laughs> people being too protective oh. to the point where they could see something very normal for a kid and be like, "Oh my God, Timmy can't see that." Yeah. Meanwhile, oh my Timmy's God, on his Timmy phone. can't drink water. He might choke. Yeah. Timmy's got his phone Googling hardcore pornography all day long. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're a part of this. I mean, I think everyone had certain moments like that in their life where their parents are like, oh, oh, shit, this this thing. And you're like, that thing. I'm very familiar with that thing. <laughs> but, but yeah. Okay. Um, I'm making a kid the right now. Yeah. High M count even. To be fair, I'll probably leave it though so it has no people. Uh, gonna so be... He was the last kid during name. the stream. Yeah, then he was going to be solo. You were making a kid during our stream? Well, with Patrick Willems? 
I mean, sex. whatever helps I'm get not, the job done. I was gonna say, know? I'm not gonna say that it's an impossibility that EFAP should be played when having sex. I think that's a, you know, I can't, I can't say I recommend <laughs> against it. You know? We can make a track, says. like a special EFAP track, a fuck track. Fuck track. Where we're like, yeah, you can do it. You Yo, get in there. don't stop. Yeah, give it to him. Go. Yeah, harder, faster, stronger. Congratulations. Fuck him up. <laughs> yeah, you did it. Excellent. Fuck you. Now take a breather and get back to it. You yeah. get 10 minutes. 10 minute break, then get back to work. Uh, Harry Pothead and the Drug Cartel Stone. Oh, no. Yeah, that's I, I watch it. right there. People apparently were not allowed Dude. those kinds of movies, which is bullshit. I want J.K. Rowling to write it. Yeah. Get it back in. Let's see what let's see what ideas she's coming up with these days. Uh, Return to Oz, rated PG, screwed me up as a kid, and I know I'm not alone in that. Also, howdy rags. Hey. Like I said, I want to do that for EFAP movies, just for the, so we can have the discussion on some of the stuff in that movie and be like, hey, this is this is PG. <laughs> It'd be like, hmm. I don't know. Uh, Maggie May Fish says Robocop is a trans icon. Okay. Maggie Interesting. Maggie sounds like she has an agenda. Maggie May Fish is a, quite the name. That's that's my commentary on that. Um, but would you really want like Robocop is 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 just such a such an awesome, absolute white male rage character? Why would you want to associate with them at all? Uh, the, the, sort of those characters, I mean. Leave it to us, all right? We'll have Robocop. You guys can have other stuff. He's ours. He's ours. So is T2 Terminator. So is Predator. Predator is a white male rage character, right? Well, they did take over Terminator. They made a female Terminator, didn't they? Was they, it, well, they tried I, to do it with metal. all of them, right? Like, they, they kind of do that. <laughs> John Connor? Nah. Now it's... What's her name? Danny something. It's like, she's the oh, new yeah, hope for the universe. Like, okay. I didn't watch any of those where they really started going off the rails. <laughs> Wait, what Terminator Three? <laughs> they, they did the, uh, they did the one with Christian Bale, which was extremely poorly written. Oh, the Salvation one, which yeah. was sad. And yet, it's it was probably sad. the they best had, of the sequels. Like Bale playing John Connor. I mean, that's so. Oh man, yeah. that's like amazing. It like it could work. They were like. Uh, just, you know, whatever the writers shit out. We'll just take it. Mm -hmm. No! Make it awesome, please! <laughs> yeah. Sad. Yeah. Very sad. Yeah, pity that there I was do like never that. a sequel to T2. Ever. Not one. It really the should've. motorcycle, a like the Transformer motorcycle was super badass in that movie, too. Oh, I remember what you're talking about, yeah. Well, bad. that's the thing. Salvation... Bad. Salvation is one that, like, a lot of stuff in it is kind of cool, and a lot of people appreciate bits of it, but, like, T3, T Genesis, and Dark Fate, everyone just hates everything about all of them. Right? It's like, fuck them all. Yeah. Salvation is the ugly duckling in terms of, like, the one that we look at and go, you're not so bad in the selection of the good ones, but in relation to the bad ones, it's like, man, you're actually kind of kind of sweet. I'm more just disappointed in the like the massive potential wasted. Yeah. Like that movie should have amazing. Oh well. Uh hey guys. It happens. Anyone here seen Support Your Local Sheriff? If not, you should. Yes. It's a great movie. Yeah, I enjoy it. It's very funny. I've I like it a lot. Never heard of it. I think I have seen it, but I can't remember. I'll really? look it up. Support your local sheriff. It's a comedy, right? Yes, it's a Western comedy. Is the when when did it come out? Do you know? Uh, let me check. Say a million years ago. Uh, nineteen sixty nine. Sixty nine. <laughs> Hilarious. Is there an updated version that we're missing here? <laughs> it is rated G. It is. Uh, Bert, I've got Bert Kennedy. Nineteen six. You're looking at the same one, right? Nineteen sixty nine. Support your local sheriff. The director is Burt Kennedy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Oh, James Garner. That's who is the guy in it. Comedy. Western. I don't know. Check it out. Yeah. Uh, insert Mark Hamill yelling, oh. Nazi. We need that on uh, B-Dial, if you will. 
Especially when we're mentioning punching Nazis. Gotta get it done. I'm uh, surprised you're mentioning Angry Men. Like, when was that? That's like an ancient movie. Wait, what movie? Angry Men. Oh, 12 Angry Men, yeah. Um, I think that's 57, I want to say. Oh. Wait, there's a 1997 TV movie, 12 Angry Men? Can't be the same, right? No. A I, remake? I don't even remake. know. Walter, Walter Matthau. My or God. no, Jack Lemmon. Now we're really drifting into the old movies. Oh, yeah. Speaking of criticisms, in relation to your criticisms of Diana missing Steve, well, Jay Longbone can say better on her Wonder Woman, I assume, stream. Timestamp. Oh, dude, I, I... It's all in Roman numerals. <laughs> it's not... I don't, like, I don't know. Um, if you don't mind, gents. Well, so... She knew Steve for a couple of weeks, and she hasn't seen him for 70 years. Um, yeah, I, I think it's dumb that she is this impacted by it. I think in 70 years, a person will have She's moved on. She's been depressed for 70 years. This is not a small amount of time, okay? <laughs> what? They say one year. They say you get over it in one year. 70 years? Oh, my God. Um, You've got some mental se going like there. 70 years, you will have changed who you are potentially several times. I'm not even kidding. Like d Depending yeah. on the person, that's 70 is a long amount of time. If this was one year, I'd be like, yeah. I can see how she, I guess, still thinks about him and everything. Yeah, okay, I guess. But 70? Come on. I don't know about that. And um, yeah. I think we would be able to argue it better, if not for the fact that she knew him for so little. Like, it's kind of ridiculous. We know her for so little. True. Kalel, no. Kalel, no. Also, Mooples, watch the Mothman <laughs> Prophecy or I'll turn you into Movie Bob's sissy bimbo servant. Ew. We'll have to pleasure every one of his roles. Oh my god. Ugh. Why? You haven't seen that? Such a cruel prophecy. fate. I have not seen it, no. I think that's pretty good. Alright. Uh, Superman doesn't need an R rating unless you're adapting something like Superman vs. the Elite. Need is an interesting choice of words. Um, obviously the need would come in with the, the creator and what they're trying to, what story they're trying to tell, I would assume. Um, and if there is a version, this, this is why the video got so confusing when he was like, oh, you know, Batman, um, Dark Knight Returns would be an example of Batman doing the thing I said he shouldn't be doing, but it's okay because it's outside of the mainline comics, and so it's weird that Snyder adapted that. It's like, but if he did adapt that, that's, that makes it chill, right? That means it, it's totally okay. When I think his answer would be no, because it's not about whether or not he adapted the right thing. It's about how fucking edgy he is. That's the problem. What were the views like on that video? I don't know. I um, Just out of curiosity. If you search, I'm always um, wondering why. What's the point of R-rated movies? Uh, do we hear yeah, movies? You'll I'll be look able to find it. it. Ooh, Moltres! Oh yeah. Fuck him up, Moltres. Um, you were 14. I'm mad that I liked the intro of uh, the Wonder Woman 1984. He got super mad at me. <laughs> like the intro of Wonder Woman. Yeah, Wonder Woman 1984. They oh, do like a in the mall, the Olympics thing. Oh or no, the mall? The, the no, 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 no. The mall, thing? the mall was horrible. But the <laughs> you thought the Olympics the, were good. Uh, Amer uh, the American Gladiator <laughs> thing I thought was pretty cool, and Sitch got all pissed off. You should. That's dumb. Look, wait. If look, I it depends. What were you? Well, enjoying? you guys can get pissed off. I'm entitled to my opinion. What were you enjoying? I'm, I'm, I'm going to grill you. What were you enjoying, Adam? What was it that you were enjoying? I like. I like the show American Gladiator. Uh -huh. It was very uh -huh. much like American Gladiator. I mean, it was totally ridiculous. Oh, so it's a bullshit thought, reason. That's fine then. Wow. Yeah. I was so worried I'm it was super, an actual reason. I'm superficial. Sorry, guys. I'm totally superficial. That's your power. But then you were in the mall. <laughs> yeah, that's my superpower. I can be superficial about anything. No, the, uh, in the mall, the mall stuff was c completely ridiculous. So, and I checked out after the mall. Well, how stuff, come the right? Olympic thing wasn't ridiculous? Because <laughs> it wasn't it, like American Gladiators, which he likes. All right, Adam, I'm seeing a flaw to your system. It's I'm allowed sorry. to be ridiculous I'm unless sorry. it's American Gladiators. I didn't no, say that. it was logical. Okay, I'm All willing right. to admit it's completely illogical, but. Oh, it's a funny scene though. That's that's what I was expecting. It to is say. funny. 
Um, so it I'm totally funny. fine with you laughing at that. And then movie. they have a, like a little girl competing against him, which is totally ridiculous, but still at the same time. I don't know. And the, <laughs> the different sporting events that they had lined up were pretty cool. It was kind of like American Gladiator. Like they kept pushing the envelope. Yeah, I'm not going to deny that. Pushing just, the envelope? Yeah. It was they such did. a scene, though. There's so much funny shit in it. Yeah. When she cheated. <laughs> When she cheats, well, she oh my even, god. Can you really call that cheating when she clearly didn't understand that's what she did? Yeah, no. It's so weird. It, the, the film is like, you your, fucked up, and she's like, what? I did? <laughs> well, I don't even know if that's what she felt. It's it's so, like, the scene was so bizarre, I'm not sure if it was what, what, the, what the little actress was trying to convey. Like, was she coming to terms with the fact she cheated? Was she confused that she even cheated? Does she even know what cheating is? I didn't like even you, know that it was cheating. Yeah. It seemed like all bets were off. Like, this isn't it's, cheating. <laughs> it yeah, doesn't... it's so poorly structured, and the contest is so fucking batshit insane. I have no idea what is and isn't cheating. Or what I find weird I know. is that if the challenge for us, right, was to shoot five targets, and I shot four and then ran across the finish line, you guys did five and finish line, I would expect to be told you missed the fifth target. And I'd be like, oh, shit. I wouldn't oh, expect yeah. to be thrown to the ground and told you're cheating. I'd be like, huh? Yeah, that's true. What do you mean? And it's like, you didn't hit the fifth target. It's like, I didn't fucking, I didn't, uh, I, like. Oh, I thought I did. Yeah, like, the, clearly she did. It's, it, it's an, it annoys me because it portrays it as though she's like, haha, I'm going to win via cheating. And it's like, you need to learn about cheating. Surely you have to know the rules of that before you enter. You, she had yeah. to have known what she was supposed to do. Because remember, you jump into the fucking ocean and then there's a bunch of, horses that are just like at a nearby beach that you have to know to swim to to get on to go down this road like you there's have to no know what the rules are where, before you enter there's no scene where we see her like being sly about it yeah like that's it what didn't you seem like she was cheating because it seemed like she was doing it bold-faced and in the open like i didn't think she was cheating until the very end well, they just also, like, it's what? pretty that dumb was, that like 90% that of the competition cheating? takes place where none of the people can see. Hey, I just like <laughs> the sporting events, okay? Get quick. Don't give me a hard time. It was very American Gladiator. I liked what they were going for. All right. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, Adam. We don't think any less of you. I feel you silently <laughs> judging me now. Yeah, we got our eyes on you, but you know. <laughs> I feel it. I feel it. The heavy it's gaze, okay. EFAP's it's judgmental okay. gaze. I if it if it's any consolation, I didn't watch until the end. <laughs> oh, but wait, as long as you I, saw I the totally... RPG scene. No, I didn't. I didn't see. I didn't see. Oh, oh my god, you're missing so much. Gold. Halfway, like you'd love it. It's just like American Mall <laughs> scene. <laughs> halfway through the mall scene, I was like, "This is lame." Fuck this movie. Oh, well, man. Now I know that whenever we need to get you to watch something, we could just say it's like American Gladiators. <laughs> yeah, we yeah totally. You got me. Tell me this that that scene is at the end, though. <laughs> Tell me it's at the very end. No, it's I might... like in the middle. You gotta earn it. Well, seriously, you need to see that RPG scene. It's <laughs> really it. fucking excellent, honestly. It'll change your world, or at least how you view life itself. Um, I might watch it for the cringe. Oh, yes. Uh, instant death is opposite of sadistic. Well, I guess if the death looked pain... You know what? You've got a kind of a point there. The guy who was hit by the crate fucking died straight away, seemingly. And so someone was yeah, like, I enjoy causing dead. pain in a sadistic way. It's just like, you probably don't prefer it then that it's instant, right? I mean, you probably... Yeah, you you can, I guess. Himself. Like, you just like the... <laughs> you just enjoy people dying or something, but... How did he know that little tidbit? How there's... A blood streak in one and there's not the blood streak in the other like how did how did that come to his Pretty attention big detail i guess you could yeah he maybe i guess the, the question i would have I, I think is that i didn't know that and i've seen both versions but then again it's been a while since i saw them to you know in between them so that's yeah, you so probably weak. noticed it you just didn't think yeah to, like assign it to memory or something like that it wasn't is what you'd expect and maybe either way if you like you maybe he read a thread about it somewhere you know, or forum post about like how, hey, Zack Snyder added Blord. Someone complaining about it on Tumblr. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Only seeing Batman causing people to bleed. Fucked up. Think of no the one children. makes him bleed his own blood. Yep. 
Uh, by the way, kill Patrick's hair. Goodbye now. <laughs> Can't kill his hair. You know, 100 kind of opening 1,000 views? Wow. Yeah, that's a lot of dumb. <laughs> hey, you understood his point very clearly, so of course that video... I don't even know what the discussion on that video will be, other than I hate it when they get edgy. Like, that would be... I'm just fascinated by, like, people will just watch propaganda if it's slickly produced. Like, they don't give a fuck. It's so sad. I mean, well, I guess humans have always kind of done that, right? It's kind of a, a weakness us a lot have. By that, I mean, no, Maybe. no shitty species. Maybe. I don't know. We'll get there one day, all right? No more propaganda. <laughs> I don't know. We'll break Seems like free. It's now anyone can make propaganda. How do you define propaganda, by the way, out of curiosity? Propaganda is something that's designed to shape your opinion with lies. Mm. That is what that that's what a um, that's what a British person says when they're gonna want to go want to go look at something. They say, hey, "I'm gonna go propaganda at the, at the window there." You want to be ava propaganda? I'm gonna have myself a propaganda. Yeah. Hey. That's, nice look. That sounds like you're delving into your Australian rags. <laughs> yeah. Oi, oi. Gonna what? go propaganda. You're gonna have me a propaganda. Propaganda. It's Australia. <laughs> Australian yeah, side. Propaganda, propaganda out the window. See the kangaroos as they hop on by. Hell yes. <laughs> That's pretty good. Oh yeah. yeah. Steve Urkel. <laughs> Is Steve Urkel? Steve Urkel. Steve, Steve Urkel. <laughs> yeah, he's an abo. <laughs> Uh, I recently rewatched Civil War, and the argument between Cap and Tony about the Accords might be my favorite scene in the MCU. They don't grant visas to uh, weapons of mass destruction, I think he says. And then she says, she's a kid, and he says, give me a break. So good. Hell yeah. It's a really good scene, because they both, they both have a point. Um, mm. Wanda is obviously way out of her depth, but at the same time, she is an adult. And what she can do makes her one of the most dangerous people on the planet. Oh. It's good stuff. Um, you were 14 once, but Patrick, violence and gore isn't for children, right? Also, obligatory, these are superhero films intended for children joke. Yeah. We're at that point, I guess. Still. He trolled out the fucking George Lucas quote, so. What do you expect? Um, also, also, Dino Fun Fact of the Week. Did you know that the T-Rex was as intelligent as a chimpanzee? Oh yeah, well how come it's fucking dead? Yeah, so explain smart. that. Yeah, checkmate science. Well, I would be interested to know, like, what kind of I stuff would, it could yeah, get up I'm to, I guess. Yeah, I'm actually curious, yeah. What was the extent of its intelligence? What is too big? Oh. It must be so awkward big. to be intelligent, yeah, but also of... have no arms, really. <laughs> like, you have them, but, you know. Yeah, because intelligence in and of itself doesn't have really any survival value. You have to be able to apply that intelligence to, mm. you know, survival-related activities. I guess um, you could nudge stuff but, with your yeah, head, curious. move it around, use your feet. Uh, I'm, a, bombshell. I'm a bit late, but I hate when people say you want a mature movie, it better be R, but not all mature movies are R, like Civil War. Interesting thought uh i think we did talk about that like i said venn diagram is the best way to explain r-rated films and mature films there is a cross section and that cross section is probably why when you see something is rated r that you're like "Ooh, are we in for some deep tisms and uh i mean it, it can it can mean that that's what you're gonna get but it can also mean it could be edgy and you see batman get shot in the dick or something i don't know uh schadenfreude I assume that's in reference to watching Patrick Willems? I don't know. Watching us watch Patrick Willems. They yes. watch us suffer. And they get pleasure from watching us suffer. Having to watch My Patrick god. The perpetual oh, talking system of suffering. Of the emotions that you're pressing in the movie. Mm. When Mola. you see the bad guy come up, it's that's schadenfreude. Is it? Yeah. I don't know. I don't think that's how that's categorized. I, I don't think. Like, cause... Yeah, because if a bad guy gets his comeuppance, that's justice. That's not schadenfreude. It's not the misery of another person that's, yeah, what, yeah, that, that's what getting you off. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think of if like the there's a meaningful... Um, 
something beyond simply is it is it misery of a person you think has any sense Shot of deserving it, or is it specifically just misery Shot in general? Him. Yeah, when you see your enemies uh, get hurt, it's when you feel good, right? But I mean, it could be your enemies could be getting hurt because they're generally your enemies because they're shitty people. Mm. Yeah, if they're bad Shot people getting their getting justice, essentially, I don't think I'd categorize that as Schadenfreude. But if it were, like if it went further distinction. than justice, you'd probably call it that, I guess. If yeah, like if it, yeah, it. if it goes yeah. further in justice, then it, you yeah. know, and it's not like proper justice anymore. Um, like if I saw a, a, like a, a school of or a school bus full of children like, crashing, and you know that just uh, made me fucking happy, and I thought that was poggers, that'd be Schadenfreude. However, um, if it was a school bus full of ISIS terrorists, <laughs> and then it crashed, school bus. or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> They're just going to just like, what? terrorist That's school. Not... <laughs> They're going to terrorist school. They're yeah, they're going to, to the evil. school. What? What's so weird about that? They'll be like, okay, that's like some that's some weird cosmic justice there, some karma, you know? It's not because they suffered, it's because they karma? You know, they it be suffered Busma? because of Pleasure derived from someone from another person's misfortune. Mm. So you see the misfortune of other people but if you see the misfortune of someone that is like a good person that you like you're not going to experience shot for it you're only going to experience it if the person is a total scumbag i mean um, right well as, uh, I'm, you can argue that the perception like you're perceiving the person well, you know like a scumbag a, in there if we just watched scumbag. a video i guess of some guy like he's just going about his day and then like he drops his cup of coffee all over himself and he's like ah and then he slips on that coffee and then an anvil from up a... well, i don't want him to die in this scenario i just wanted to the idea being it's funny and you kind of laugh at it even though it's really sad and he's probably he's probably fine as a dude you don't even know you know sometimes no. i guess whether or not you think they deserve it doesn't necessarily play in i think yeah that poor guy he was just trying to have his coffee okay oh god Leave him alone. He doesn't deserve it. Muller, it's okay to punch the kid. He was a Nazi. Ah. I'm gonna use this whenever I commit to any violence. I'll be like, but they were a Nazi. Leave me alone. I don't deserve to go to Twitter jail. Yep. Crazy. Um, instant. Oh, yeah. Uh, don't you lie about us, long man. I would never do that, chat. Have infinite respect for your autism. Uh, cement is hard come. I await your Civil War video. Oh, one day. One day. Uh, thoughts Sidewalks. on Mike Tyson Mysteries? Hi, Rags. Hi. And I've end. seen it. It's hit and miss, but it's alright. I had no idea that even existed. Is that like he does... He just hosts a show about mysteries? No, it's a cartoon show where Mike Tyson plays himself, and he goes around solving mysteries, and Norm MacDonald plays a pigeon. That sounds awesome. And it's, it's pretty great. <laughs> oh. Oh, there's some pretty yeah. good stuff in there. It's amazing. You gotta check it out. Um, out of curiosity, I like Mike Tyson's mysteries. <laughs> he needs like a mystery mobile type thing. The Mike Tyson the mobile. Kind of, yeah. God, what are you talking about? Um, out of curiosity, what are you guys' thoughts on both Deadpool films? And if you would be down to cover Nostalgia Critic's Deadpool 2 video or his Ghostbusters video? Uh huh. That we have so to. oddly enough i haven't actually seen any of the deadpools what um, oh my goodness hmm. oh, wow. be interesting uh i really liked the first one i don't know how i feel about it if i was to watch it again nowadays i i, I but i liked when it came out and as for the second one i didn't like it as much but i think some of the jokes had me laughing more like 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 heartier than the first one did like so greater highs but mm, less highs yeah there you go. So, um, I don't know. Okay. I have to rewatch them, I guess. Maybe we will sometime. Maybe we will. Yeah, I don't know if one or two is better. And that's a tough one. Because well, I agree with what you're saying. There I are, like the, um, when they're all, like, two. lifting off, I guess, and, um, the invisible dude turns out to be a really good cameo, and you just fucking. Oh, I'm yeah, not gonna spoil yeah. it. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no. That had me laughing quite a bit. <laughs> um, Samurai Jack started PG and became TV-14 with five seasons because the creators knew the ones who watched it grew up. Yeah, totally happens. 
he doesn't really like he doesn't really put much uh, stock into that concept when he's doing that video he's like he doesn't no barely barely even mentions it hmm. in any way um hey mola i've been watching you for years and love your work but i was wondering when you'll make more videos i am currently on a boy season two video it is a big chungus i will give more updates on how it's going as as it becomes relevant i don't want to be uh, giving anybody any expectation of when or what you know but um it's, it's what's been worked on and there's uh there's just a lot of Lots of stuff is to come. I've absolutely not stopped. Uh, I've absolutely not stopped making videos. They're the words I was looking for. Um, and obviously, EFAP stuff would be the the tied you over. Good for um, you. If if you're in, because I know a lot of people wanted to know like a deeper take on like Hill House or obviously all of Mandalorian season two. All of that is available on the Moolah channel. Go have a look, see if you want to. Um, what do you look for when assessing objective quality outside of internal consistency? Um, that's a tough one because mm. a lot yeah, of that is tough. continuity is like a fundamental. That's one of the things you can fundamentally appeal to. But when you get past that, you have to start accepting that a lot of it is a bit more uh, difficult to identify in a more definitive sense than simply you just don't like it. Because at one point he does say... Um, uh, in that video we were covering, Patrick is like, or he doesn't use the word gross, but um, it's something like it. Or he, sa he says it's um, unappealing. He, he uses a word that kind of gives away, like, this is the core of it. He just doesn't like it. And, like, that's why he's making the video. He's trying to find an argument that appeals to something higher than he just doesn't like it. But sometimes you just got to come to the terms of the fact it's like, yeah, I just don't like this. It's not appealing to me. Which is fine. I would but say... I would say, like, no fat, uh, like, everything in the movie is either a setup or a payoff. Like, and best case scenario, there's some kind of subtext going on constantly. Yeah, like, uh, I would I, uh, I would even appeal to, like, you want to try and achieve more than one thing at any one time, but at the same time, um, yeah. as long as you're achieving something, it's worthwhile. But uh, <laughs> And so the implication is, like, wait, so you should cut anything that doesn't add something to an overall in some way, shape, or form? It's like, well, yes. But yeah, basically. Because yeah, if, be... if we're talking about if it doesn't have a point, then what do you lose by losing it? Yeah. Well, it looks cool, though. <laughs> Could do. Too many well, movies in it. Yeah, but at that point, something... I would argue that it, it is perhaps serving a purpose. So, you know? Too, yeah, too it, many movies. It depends what that do. thing is. Yeah. Too many movies do the it looks cool excuse, which is awful, I think. So. Even though it does look cool. I mean, why can't you spend the time making a scene that is actually meaningful look cool? Yeah. Well, someone said, does that mean no TFA Part 4? Oh, TFA will be finished. I just don't exactly know when. But don't fret. It will come. It all will come. Oh, yeah, that was definitely me, Dad. Uh, where are we? Bone Tomahawk Lunchbox. Absolutely. I don't see why anyone wouldn't have a Bone Tomahawk Lunchbox. Yeah, of Kurt Russell's face in the front. It's a new subscription Jesus. service bone box. Bone subservice Toma box. I like moving words around. It becomes fun. Uh, I will be. Uh, I will be right back. Mm. Grape Man is a Corrupt. thing, Mola, by the way, and three episodes minus the G from Grape Man. So Rape Man is a thing, apparently. Well, we made him up on this stream, okay? So we have all the rights. <laughs> Anyone wants to pay us royalties you to make this our attorney. belongs to us. I don't want the good name of Rape Man besmirched by anyone's interpretation. Yeah, we need to add a Rape Man to like the Incredibles property. I think he just needs to get his perspective in there. That's all I'm saying. It upsets me that people ignore Rape Man and what he has to offer. Oh my God. Just want to let that sit, all right? <laughs> Army no, is I'm full of what? I'm scared to explore what Rape Man super. <laughs> <laughs> I would probably I want to go the way of it has absolutely nothing to do with what the name implies. You know, if there, if there was really a movie with Rape Man in it, you know, <laughs> and it, you, it was a superhero movie. You know, you'd be watching it the whole time to find out what's the superpower. Is it just never reveal it? Like he fights crime, and you could possibly guess at what powers he might have, but it's never explicit. You're just like, what? What is? Why? What? 
I watched this whole movie and I don't even know his power. And like the whole time, the the universe just doesn't react to it that way. They're just like, yeah, he's right, man. You're like, what? Why is? Why are you all chill with that being his name? It's like, what do you mean? <laughs> he's, just, he's right, man. You could do one of those scenes where you know one character whispers in the other character's ear and is constantly telling people just to like really fuck with the audience. Everyone story. in the story knows what great man's superpower is and nobody in the audience does. Oh man, I, a lot of triggering out of this movie. I can feel it. That would be subverting expectations. Oh yeah. Uh, Iron Man is just Alfred Noble as a superhero. I think there's a lot of things you can tie to. A lot of people are saying Elon Musk, obviously. Like the, not necessarily any particular characteristic or not, just this concept of a very rich person being able to make big differences by making certain decisions, right? Like, that's why calling it a superhero movie, I'm like, what are you, what do you, when you say that, what are you, what are you saying? Have you read books on writing and stuff like that? Uh, not really, no. Oh, okay. Because a lot of the writing books categorize superhero movies as like outcasts. Like that's the thing about a superhero movie. These people are outcasts. So I always see him that way. When when the guy was talking about how it's a pa power fantasy, I was thinking, mm, not really. I mean, uh, it's more about a not fitting in. Thing. I mean, I would accept both, depending, right? Like on different different stories. I think they they cover so many different options that I wouldn't want to box any of them in ultimately on anything other than the the umbrella term being someone in there has a superpower. <laughs> it's like, yep, that's that's the constant. There can be a lot of different things that's happening though. Um, yeah, but I because I get where he, like him saying power fantasy and you saying like uh, an outcast, I'd be like, there's validity to both of those as for which one is more applicable than the other. Yeah, outcast typically, I just think it's like there's someone who um doesn't fit in is you like one of the most common tropes, right? We were just talking yeah, about Iron Man and he like he fits in just fine, so it's it's yeah. Iron Man seems really like the exception though, because I mean you look at them all. Like Hulk is fighting this this thing, like the inner demons thing mm -hmm. is big in super movies. Yeah, like it's all about that. X Men are like, oh, I just want to fit in. Every uh, everyone in the audience, I do admit, is going, "Why you have these amazing powers?" Don't and it's fit kind in. of a kill. Kill. Like, kill. Oh, I, would I would give this up in a minute if I could just be normal. And everyone's going, no. I don't know. I don't see him as a power fantasy. I don't think, I think very few people have power fantasies and those people generally, generally t tend to be sadistic people. And I don't think movies are structured. I don't think you could have successful movies that are aimed at just an audience of sadistic people, but that's the way the guy made it out to be like, no, oh, these, uh, these movies are for sadistic people. Disagree. Um, it's yeah, it's, I just consider it all very. It, it's super interesting to talk about, I reckon. And uh, I think a lot of people would like to box it in a little faster than. Like, you totally can. It's just a matter of um, making sure you cover all of the obvious places. Because the idea that there's a sadistic hero, that's his whole thing, and that anyone who watches it is probably going to be someone who just enjoys pain. It's like, yeah, I, I struggle to see that one being popular as well. In fact, I, it feels like the kind of thing that would get cancelled. Yeah. Like this is unacceptable. And Kirby versus Bowser always comes across as so like God Bowser's gonna eat Kirby. It's gonna be horrifying. R-rated Bowser. He consumes Kirby. Mm. Um Mutually your voice got me pregnant. Also I'm a man. Oh my god. Well Um <laughs> I was, wow. was going to make a reference to like the, well, you know what, it's not worth it, uh, I am I guess I'm glad slash confused and uh, also high rags. He is currently in the bathroom, I believe, or getting a drink, I don't know. You should be right back, I'm sure. You should turn yourself over for science um, if a boy is pregnant and you're a guy. Possibly. That should definitely be studied. You said before that one of your standards is that it must make sense. What if you guys say it makes sense, but someone else says it doesn't? Well, that's what conversation is for, right? If if, if they're uh, obviously wrong, though. 
be clear here. If we are mistaken, or if they are mistaken, then the well, exchange... Oh, is that right? <laughs> the, the they is always... They're always the mistaken one. <laughs> they're always wrong. Well, yeah, uh, it makes... This is, I, I was gonna say, like, this is... This happens all the time. Like, we, uh... EFAP is not really ever in the popular opinion, I think. We, we're often uh, against the grain. But that's fine, and I'm more than willing to hear out some arguments. Like we did today. That was an experience where we listened to arguments, you know? You could say From that's what between we Between us, we were the ones making the arguments, though. I, I, yeah, I do agree with that. Discussion is cool, that's what someone just said. I agree with that. Uh, comics are just books about superheroes intended for children. But God. Yeah, yeah our adult book ones. is not intended for children at all, really. Children should probably steer clear of it. <laughs> children should just steer clear of media. They're ruining it for everyone. Yeah, that's true. How dare Steer they? clear of me. Oh my God. Yeah. What? Hello. There was, there was one high rags. Oh, hello to you. Hmm. Iron Man is just... oh wait, I read that. Batman is quite famous for having magic powers. Yes, he is. The magic of grappling yeah, another hooks. Another one. There probably is some iteration of Batman where he has magical powers. Right? They're, all, they're usually something I've never heard of where it's like, he grasped the gauntlet of Gargalash and it gave him power to move mountains. And you're like, whoa. You awesome. never know with, uh, with comics, yeah. Um, Army is full of special nicknames. Yeah, it was weird that one of his requirements for how it's silly is that you have an alias. It's like, oh. Okay. I don't think that's silly, my Okay. Uh, so all the idiots that dressed up at the Capitol riots must have been comic book superheroes. Oh. <laughs> Did they have their own names as well? <laughs> like, aliases? Did, was, was Rape Man there? <laughs> was he... Mother Eagle. Freedom Man. Sh the snake trader. Had, had a another name, a secret name, or hacker name. Uh, would Alan Moore call brave LGBT plus POC Batwoman a fascist? I don't know. That would that would start. We'd Maybe. start to get into complicated territory. I don't know what he'd say. Patrick makes the arguments I made when I was 14. Yeah, so if anyone pulls the, that card, you could just reverse it. When they're like, I used to think like you when I was a child. It's like, yeah, I used to think like you when I was a child. <laughs> there we go. What a good conversation. Uh, this man looks unfortunate. Yeah, the I just don't think he can make a turtleneck work, okay? I'm not gonna wipe out the idea of wearing turtlenecks, but I just don't think he can pull it off. That's my hot take, I guess. You uh, know this... he wants to make movies. That guy totally wants to oh, make yeah. movies. Oh, yeah. He 100% wants to be. He's like, there's a, lo a lot of the video essays really want to be movie makers, but they're, uh, they're stuck on YouTube they for can. now. Well. Like... Has... I wonder if he's made a movie. Uh, He's made shorts, I think. I want to say he's made shorts. I'm not sure. I don't know. The one only one I saw was um, in full... No, I saw two. I saw the toilet guy. That one was shit. <laughs> oh, the plumber, um, yeah. Yeah, the plumber. Uh, that one was fucking the toilet long. guy. <laughs> and give us the rundown so we don't. Know what's the plot? Yeah, Someone's yeah, that a one toilet. The plot is a, is a guy who kills people. He's a plumber. The other one oh, I okay. saw was that notes for Melanie one. That was fucking dumb too. And I saw parts of the Ralph Movie Maker one. That one was shit. Oh yeah, well, what, what can you do, Rags? Have you made a short film? I don't think so. No, I haven't made a terrible short film. Well then, what could you possibly say? This is a genuine argument yeah. people make. Well, who are they to say that it's good? They haven't made one. True. Yeah. Can you really say something's any good until you've made one? Mm. Yeah. Uh, I've made several, so I can. I am prepared to judge away. Oh my god! I can put my judging cap on. This toilet guy is like disrespectful. <laughs> Calling a plumber a toilet Here guy we, is I fucked don't up, right? Care. Toilet yeah, guy. Yeah, what's up? I can remember if that was his occupation or not. I just know that he had an obsession with toilets and poo. Yeah, yeah. My God, for the real. Tru the truth <laughs> is the truth. Crazy. 
Um, this guy's officially ruined Tittlenecks for me. Oh, Down they go. Uh, the fuck Batman thing. The show is crap, but it's one of the few things the show gets right. Scenes where Bruce slash Dick talk on their history and Dick brings up the hang-ups. He admits that Bruce did well. But again, dick. I got I got no context for any of that, so I just I do not know. Um, his whole "when I was younger" thing sounds like he's arguing kids are stupid, so why bother putting an effort with stories that will test them? Yeah. It's uh, some. I just I just got the, the strong the sense of disregarding the argument because it's it's a young person argument and and thus a less seasoned argument. This is the same guy that did the video shut up about plot holes. <laughs> yes, it is. He's the guy who... This totally makes sense. Like, he doesn't... If he doesn't think plot holes are bad, like, he doesn't understand. This guy doesn't understand anything. It's like a disqualifier for me and I know. to you ever talk about movies. I would say plot certainly... Plot holes don't matter. Certainly if you wipe them all out. If you want to make a caveat, like, some plot holes really don't matter. I'd be willing to listen to you, but, like, the idea that none sure. of them matter at all would be like, oh, uh, okay. You, you're re willing to let them slide if the movie's amazing in, like, all other areas. Sometimes well, you're just, like, oh my well, god, it, matter. it just depends on the plot hole for me. It's just like, I just need to know what we're talking about. And if he was like, oh, yeah. you highlighted that they don't have their shoe in this shot when they did in the other one. I, just, yeah, I don't, I don't that's really a plot hole. That's a not plot. a plot hole. Well, <laughs> that's a continuity yeah. error. Yeah. Sure, but, like... You know, depending on categorization here, we can just talk about it's a it's a missing piece of information that's supposed to be there. Um, to fuck up. And, it, you know, it depends on how charitable you want to be, because if we just extend that out, you can eventually turn it into a literal plot hole, as in um, someone has a gun and it disappears in one shot when they could have used it, and then it reappears when they can't use it. You'd be like, oh, well, that that's fucked. Like, <laughs> I would like to reference a certain knife. The worst is when the plot hole... Like, if you filled the plot hole in, the movie would be ten times better. Like, they're not even using the plot hole because it's absolutely necessary to make the movie good. Like, it's like just a complete oversight. Did you, have you seen the movie? It's Us. A horror movie, Us. Oh, fuck that movie. None of it makes any sense. Well, in the end, there's like, it's it's like completely wrong. You're going, what the fuck? Dude, so the many whole movie, scenes. like, I was tempted to consider making something for that. Cause it's just like, Us is blew my mind with how much it didn't make any fucking sense. You should. The ending is just so weak sauce. Yeah. Like, beyond weak sauce. Yeah. You're like, what the fuck? Because all the scenes in the movie should have literally been different than the, they were in the movie if the twist ending is, like, legit. Ma yeah. That movie makes absolutely no sense by adding the twist ending on that they did. Dude, it didn't make sense to begin with. I swear to God. All of the... How it all works... I'm assuming you know what I mean by that. Like, none of that lines up. Um, yeah, totally. Yes, no, it's uh, it's very... Yeah, it's silly, let's call it. Well, like, <laughs> you can tell silly. when watching it, there's a message they're trying to give you. It's not really about the writing at all. In, t in terms of, like, how they execute it, it's more like, oh, okay. can you listen to what I have to say about carbon tree? You're like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's basically a TED Talk in the style of a movie. Really shitty movie. <laughs> I'm okay with a TED talk, all right? Just write it well. You want to talk about how the frogs are being turned gay by 5G? Go for it. Just write the story well. I'm I, invested in frogs. I, movie, I thought the movie was really decent until the end because I thought, okay, well, they better pull this off. I mean, it's intriguing the whole way through. Were you, were you I, I was, interested? Yeah, I was interested for sure. Um, yeah. disappointed though. We're ending totally fucked it up. Yeah, exactly. It's a disappointing ending. You're going, oh man, if they can pull this off, if they have some answer for what's going on here that makes logical sense, I am all in. And then they just like flush that down the toilet. They're basically, nah, we can't ride our way out of this one. I want Alex Jones to make a movie. We all do. We all do. He needs to make a movie. That would be great. Um... Mole, you ever see Speaking of Al YouTube channel? Kylo Ren explains Star Wars is great. I don't know if I have. That doesn't sound familiar, though. That sound familiar to either of you guys? Speaking of Al? No. Speaking of Al? Of no. Uh, 
And it's not even like DuckTales, at least the 2017 reboot, hasn't broached dark topics. Not edgy Miracle Man levels, of course, but broken families and attempted genocide happen on screen. Yeah, again, it's possible. You can definitely do it. Like, if we want to get serious for a second, it's like, yeah, you can do this with pretty much anything. It's always going to be about execution. Oh, how exactly did you do it? Yeah. Execution is everything. Hmm. You guys should check out Djibouti Dubs, Winnie the Pooh movie trailer on YouTube. Oh, Djibouti Dubs. Yeah, he's funny. I haven't hmm. seen that one, though. Yeah, neither have I. That sounds funny. Um, that scene of slaughter and mutilation that Patrick said was a realistic depiction of, um, of the aftermath of a superhuman battle. Some misrepresentation there. Kid Miracle Man was going on a killing spree before the fight. Well, that's the thing. If someone said a realistic result of two superhumans fighting each other would be mutilated humans, that... I'd be like, well, not necessarily. It depends on what's, like, it's really up to you what kind of situation you want to create. That's not just the end result every time. Um, been listening for a while. You guys help me get through my shift at work. Please watch Attack on Titan. It's incredible. Also, High Rex. Hi. Um, good to hear it. And yeah, everyone's recommended Attack on Titan these days. I'm assuming the season's still coming out. I don't know. For sure, yeah. I don't know if it's the last one or anything either, but a lot of people are liking it, and that's what's important. You know what you get when fans grow up and leave the comic to a new audience? You get Garfield. Constantly renewing audience equals utter staleness. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, a lot of those old comics, they died years ago. They just keep going on. They just keep <laughs> existing and carrying on. They just linger. Yeah. Oh, it was speaking of AI, not Al. Capital I and lowercase L are annoying. Yeah, yeah, I got you. I uh, still don't recognize... Great. Uh, oh, I couldn't find. <laughs> oh, Alan Moore did make an inspirational Superman type hero after Watchmen. Actually, well, technically, he retconned an Edge Lord into an inspirational character. It was called Supreme. Ah, perhaps he was trying to be the change. Maybe he wanted Sega to see. should ask him for some pointers. Do it. Bring down the Edge. You know, shave it all off, smooth it all out. We're the same age? Oh, sorry, that guy. Discovering that, I guess. Um, mm. More like getting the J-Word pass. Your pass will make a fine addition to my collection. Oh, yes. Uh, have you guys already discussed Robot Heads the Boys Season 2 video? It was so off point, I'm surprised you didn't cover it. Hi, Mola and Wags. Um, Hi. We saw it. It was shit. It was really um, bad. <laughs> it's really horrific. Um, um, I'm gonna reference it in my video um, at a certain point, so that'll probably be what you're looking for in terms of like, um, it's it's been really hard to fully articulate everything wrong with episode six, particularly, especially the scene where both Butcher and uh, Starlight are fucking ruined, um, and that would be an again for Butcher, by the way. The and the fact that that's referred to that scene as like uh, people change <laughs> seems. It's pretty fascinating to me. So, yeah, we'll um, we'll, we'll uh, I can I can probably address some of it in that video. That video is going to be enormous, probably. So we shall see what ends up happening. Uh, speaking of sexy covers, naked James C is YouTube is on YouTube trending. What? James C. Who's, Who? Who's James C? I don't know. James. It's not Corden, right? No one would want to see him naked. I was going to say, but... Mm. Um, wait, ew, don't know what an A class is, but it is best. Oh, well, there you go. A A's apparently got some love again. A class, wow. Yeah. Combination, I like it. Um, and three, Gina C got a job with DW. Uh, that's Daily Wire, right? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, she did. She's going to make her own movie. Hope it's good. Hope yeah, it's I hope great. it's good. Uh, been watching the Sardonicast episode on the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy, and I'm happy to report that both I Hate Everything and YMS have the same issues with Spider-Man 2, despite them still enjoying it. Ralph failed miserably, however. Of course he did. He's not... <laughs> He's not fantastic. <laughs> Ralph's not... Yeah. He's one of those guys who could... He can only hit the softballs, you know? 
I mean, I can't I can't even reference like stuff that I've seen from him that I was like, oh that was really good. I I've probably seen something that I thought was good. Just can't quite recall. Um, I've got a question on Star Wars Episode 1. Why did the green Asians want Naboo so badly? I get that they're a greedy trade federation, but what's the value of Naboo? Dude, you see Naboo? Yeah, Fucking... it's pretty great. That looks like a resource-rich planet with a stellar sort of set of buildings for the... I don't know, the the people and the Republic of, of, of representatives. I don't know, it seems... I th let's put it this way. I would be chill with having Naboo myself. I'd be like, yeah. Yeah, Naboo <laughs> seems like it'd be great to have. Be pumping out cash. Also, you get a whole bunch of Jaw Jaw Binks people to kill, you know? I, I mean... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like... I mean, <laughs> befriend. <laughs> befriend. Um, Southwell said Ralph nailed it with his Wonder Woman 2017 video. He touched upon many things that we did. There you go. Uh, anyone here remember King Arthur and the Knights of Justice? Kind of a G.I. Joe clone about a football team sent back in time by Merlin. It was very silly, but I'd still totally watch it as an adult. Uh, no familiarity. I do not know that one. There was one with, like, Whoopi Goldberg that was similar hmm. to that. I think it was based off of uh, 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 Mark Twain's in Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court. I think he wrote that. Um, hello, EFAP crew. This is Sitch on my alt account. That's Literature Devil. I know you two aren't the same person. <laughs> Don't try and convince me otherwise. Deception. Can hello. we do Literature Devil uh, Mauler shipping in our comic? Oh since my. we're both tech bonds here. We're both peoples of shadow. Is that uh, want to see? Um, I got another spicy hot take. The grunts from Halo are better shooters than stormtroopers. Is that a hot well, take? Of course they are. I was gonna say, isn't that just true? It's not a spicy take. Wait, I don't know how to put this. If you can shoot someone, ever, <laughs> you're probably better than stormtroopers. Like, so, yeah. Not too hard to get to that point. I believe in you, the creature that is trying to be as good as stormtroopers. You can do it. Yeah, I should put that in the video. The Halo grunts are more deadly than... Yeah. I would like to apologize to you masses for doubting your infinite wisdom on Buffy. It's really good. Should make it a requirement for the channel. Oh, don't feel like I don't even know what you would have said before. That, but like, there's plenty of bad in Buffy, but there's also really, really good stuff. And I'm just glad you've enjoyed it. Apparently, um, but no, no required reading or watching for Ethan. We welcome all people. I mean, you must have noticed that there's there's people in our community who haven't seen Lord of the Rings. So, we are a pretty welcoming community at that point, I'd say. You don't gotta worry. Um, did Bob mistake the power lines for string cheese? Don't know what that is referencing. I'm completely honest with you. He mm. probably doesn't know that power has to be delivered, like, through a series of, like, tubes and wires. <laughs> he probably assumes that just... It, it's just there for him. As if the universe is providing him power so he can, you know, just have a grand old time. I keep killing myself as Peach. I don't know if this is... The game's trying to tell me something. Um, which is worse? The Lost Will Jurassic Park or Jurassic Park 3? Oh, I think the... So the, the knee-jerk reaction is Jurassic Park 3. However... That would be really fun to do an EFAP movie set on, I think, those those ones. Because um, for Fallen Kingdom, I remember re-watching all of them, and just I was just like, fuck me, Jurassic Park 1 is the only good one. Um, but, as for which is worse, that is an interesting question. I do not know off the top of my head, because I remember The Lost World is just something of a surprise in terms of, like... Seems like this is pretty good, because a lot of people like to point out that like, The Lost World is the, the best of the sequels, and I'm always like, eh... But, uh... Lost World is the second one, right? Yeah. It's got issues in them. Um, but I'm afraid I can't answer that quite yet, but maybe someday. Uh, Rags, how would you fix the Mass Effect 3 ending? Gosh, that's asking a lot. Um... Let me see. Um... I would get the universe back to a state that I would want to be in it. 
You know, like, I'd still want to be in it compared to this one because it's still, like, great. But compared to all that you've seen and done for the last three games, the state of the universe is really, like, you really want to be there and it's really cool and amazing and it's opened up and there's so many possibilities and so many of them are just completely shut after the Mass Effect 3 ending. Um, so, like, I'd keep the relays up. I'd, I'd, I'd kind of almost almost reset in the sense of we've ended a cycle and everything that happens from this point forward has never been done ever before again. Uh, so, um, that's probably where my starting point would be without getting into character stuff and relationship stuff. But just kind of off the top of my head, that, I think that's a good general sort of answer to what should be happening and what should be done at least. Hmm. Uh, if you had to make a video game movie, what game would you pick, and how would you adapt it? I.e., how would you handle the switch to non-interactive? Um, Say that one more time. Uh, if you were to pick, what game would it be that you would pick if you were to adapt it into a movie, and uh, how would you handle turning it from non-interactive to non-interactive? Um, so one of the ones I've kind of been interested in, like, I think Bioshock would work for a movie. Just the, the world of Rapture yeah, being realized setting, in movie form, yeah. I feel like it could really work. I'm, um, I'm actually on board with The Last of Us being a movie rather than a game. I think it might work better as a movie. I'm, I'm in that camp as well. So all of the, and, and of course the idea of, like, transferring from interactive to non-interactive is just you, you, the same way that movies usually function. I would like references for the fans of the games, um, but I wouldn't want it to be too tied, I guess. I don't know how I would handle it with uh, Bioshock. Would it be an adaptation of the first game, or would it maybe be, you know, before the fall for Rapture, or another person going through the, the area? I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. I would, I would, hmm. I don't know. Uh... Hard to say. Ready, I think you can do a lot with it, and it wouldn't have to be Rapture specifically. Mm -hmm. But Rapture would be a good place to start because it's super interesting. Oh my god. That luck. I just thought a fight with three guys spawned Moltres and just killed them all. I am okay with this. Um, Any games you'd like to see become movies, Adam? Games, games that, that I would like to see a movie. I don't know. Maybe Carmageddon 2? <laughs> Hell yeah. Why not? Would you want a star main character? Uh, well, you know, if they have a good deal going, you know, talk to my agent. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. What the hell? Why not? Uh, Mola, since you're a fan of Adventure Time, what's your thoughts on Bravest Warriors? Uh, I don't know what that is. Is that like the other show that got made? I'm, I'm, my memory's blanking on Bravest Warriors, I'm afraid. Um, you'll have to... Someone will have to remind me what Bravest Warriors is. Well, that should tell you enough. I, I don't have thoughts on Bravest Warriors. <laughs> it's familiar to me, but I, for some reason I'm blanking. Uh, Cobra Kai succeeds at being a sequel in every way we wish modern Star Wars did. Watch the first three Karate Kid movies for amazing payoffs in the show. That's what I've heard. But, um, very respectful to the Karate Kid movies. Which, um, I think we many would consider that a plus when it comes to a lot of modern takes on past stuff. Get Hell out, yeah. You know, you know, you know. You know. Hell uh, yeah. Closest thing to come again would be Death Race 2000. Have you seen Death Race, Adam? I have. I've seen the original. I don't... There was a remake that I think I saw, but I don't remember very well. Where they're like in prison. The, um, Have you seen Death Death Race 2000 remake? I'm pretty sure I've seen Death Ra the Jason Statham one. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've seen Jason that. Statham, isn't it? Yeah, I think I've seen that too. Uh, yes. Greetings, greetings, Efap. Hello there. More. Hi. I made the mistake of watching your Soma video before playing the game. They were just too good. Excited to play it myself. Oh yeah, go forth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Get immersed. Make your choices. Do your thing. Um, the issue with the combat wheelchair, besides the absurdity of wheelchairs in medieval settings, is widespread healing magic. <laughs> really? 
<laughs> I guess if you're going to give them a speciality, the people bound to wheelchairs heal people around them. Make that, that lines up, right? Guys? Hello? Totally. Yeah, totally. Wheelchair magic. We, we have a... Wheelchair magic? We have a, like a... We have a wheelchair girl in one of our scripts that tricks out her wheelchair with a bunch of stuff on it. Sweet. So it's not unheard of. <laughs> it's not unheard of. I mean, I conceptualize doing Does she heal people yes. with this magic? I don't know. No, she has no magic. She's Boo. actually abducted by a guy who is has a fetish for wheelchair girls. Girls in wheelchairs. Cripples? Qu yeah. Ripples? Quadriplegics, I think you'd I mean, call them. cripples anymore? Quadriplegics? Is, is it... Just... Or, or paraplegics. Yeah. Uh, if Broken if you people. have a if you only have feeling in one arm and one leg, are you technically still a paraplegic? I don't know. I'm gonna have to check Google. No. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like these are the questions. It would be a weird. You still, it would you be still a weird... have all your limbs and you can move them. You just don't have feeling in half of them, so you can jerk yourself off with one of your hands, and it feels like someone else is doing it. Hmm. Well, that that might be good, right? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that might be something people are into. Maybe there's a definition and like a word for that in Google, like erection plegic. It would something. be weird spinal injury because you'd be like halfway through your neck, so only on the right side you would lose your ability. Hmm. You'd have a left leg and a left and a left arm, but you'd still be a paraplegic, right? Para as in two, quadra as in four. Quadriplegic is from the neck down. Interesting. But anyway. I was back when you could do interesting stuff. Oh yeah. Now I can't imagine like uh, any guy, like any wheelchair type fetish, being in a movie. Hmm. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. One of the videos. I mean, I... I, I I could roll with it. Oh. <laughs> uh, one of the videos I plan to make this year is a. Th a thematic analysis and review of Metal Gear Solid. Do you think there is an audience for this after all this time? Any advice would be appreciated. Sure. I'd say there probably is. I mean, the fact As that you want to see it done and you don't think it's quite been done yet, that should tell you there's people out there. And sometimes you don't make a video because there's an audience for it. Rather, you have something to say. People can listen, yeah. or people can't. So make your own audience. Yeah. If it's executed. Great, of course, people. You're gonna find an audience. That's the whole point of it. Yeah, because a lot. I mean, I'm assuming you guys are the same, but you must have seen a video at some point where you're like, I have no idea what they're talking about, but I'm interested. I don't know what the subject is, but I'm interested. Yeah, it that's happens. great. I love that. It can often be down to presentation. Uh, Y'all can't start an EFAP with the Swats and the Proto Christians. I need to know. I'm ready, I promise. Also, hi, Rags. Hi. Sorry, YouTube won't Swartz? let me post what Rag said in English. Oh, well. Was it related to Nazis? Did we talk about Nazis in the intro? I can't remember. I don't Probably. think so. We often do. I mean, Hitler, Hitler, but no. Oh, oh we mentioned Hitler. Hitler. All right. That's, him yeah. specifically. Him yeah. as a person. Uh, greetings, Massives. Rags, is you Mando review just season one, or is two in there as well? It's going to be the first four episodes of the first season. There's no way I can do one season in a video. Yeah, I know this feeling. It's complex. Uh, and which Resident Evil movie did you dislike the least? You know what? I don't like that for I like them all. Yeah, I yeah. was going to say. I enjoyed honest, the show. I liked them all. They were very enjoyable to watch. They were they were a thrill. Um, um, I've actually got my rankings right oh, here, we go. here. Let me scroll down. All right. In order of our favorites to our least favorites, Retribution, Afterlife, Apocalypse, Final Chapter, Resident Evil 1, and then Extinction. Mm-hmm. Those were, yeah. Everyone should check and, out Retribution, uh, yeah. just out of context. It's a real good movie. Excellent. It's amazing. Really pushes the boundaries on what can be considered a story. <laughs> <laughs> they are all, I mean, like, events happen. Yes. In a, like, uh, but do they look cool? How cool do they, they do look? Sometimes they do look cool. They're super yeah. duper cool. Resident well, then Evil fucking great. There's a meme in the coverage okay. of the last one that rags and myself are very good. That it'll be a while before you guys see it, but we'll be so ready for it to be joined into the community once you do. 
It's, um, something happens in the in the coverage of the wait seventh one was it seven or six? It is seven, right? One, two. I think there's six. Okay, well it's the sixth one then. <laughs> something happens and it's wonderful. Coming to a cinema near you. Uh, Muller and Rags, have you guys seen Taxi Driver? Yes. Yes, we have. Of course. It's one of them movies, the ones that you're supposed to have seen if you review films, yeah. and you're supposed to like it too. Like Blade Runner, Godfather, um, Dark Knight, uh, Shawshank Redemption. What else are there? What, what are like the the movies that you're not only supposed to have seen, but you're also supposed to like them? Uh, Cat in the Hat. Yes, Cat in the Hat, definitely. Menace to Society. And. Um, one of the door of Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I can say at this point. Uh, would you rather fight in World War II or the drug war? You get to choose your side. The drug war as the police. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I feel like that would be the... safe, right? Or safer. Yeah, I, mean. I feel like that'd be way, way safer. And you're probably like, you get to go home every night, you know? Yeah. Like, it, and there's a lot of things to do. You'd probably just be a cop. What if some Dude, of these drugs you know, here? I smell marijuana in your car. I'm going to search your car. Oh, yeah, you can't have this. Here's your citation. Or just like yeah, doing exactly. cop stuff. Cop stuff. Um, oh, my God. Yeah. It's Kilo. Cop stuff. <laughs> what happened? Um, when I said R rated as an anagram for the R word, obviously it did not mean the one with ED at the end. You R rated id R rated z. Retarded. I think you're saying we're retarded. How dare you? I think he's saying he's retarded. Yes. I think he's retarded. He's got to be retarded. Um, also, this will get past YouTube's R-rated word filter. Ah, very clever. Uh, how about an X-rated Toy Story? Andy's toys meet his mommy's toys. Oh no. Oh my, oh my God. God. Genius. <laughs> well, mean? yeah, we talked about that a Make little bit. It, I cowards. think, like the. Do dildos? Do they get a? Uh, I don't know why I said it like that. I don't. I, do I have no idea why I said it like that. It just sort of came out. Um, I have no idea if a dildo would have like a conscience. Or anything yeah, like we can that. only hope. Speak. No, Ever it'd be like if it would be one of those I have no mouth and I must scream kind of things oh, yeah, where they, they they're sentient. Dude, remember but the chair? They can't speak or, it was just a chair with eyes. Oh yeah, it's a chair with a face, and that's it. It's it could terrifying. just be a chair. Yeah. Well, and Who's the next the one says, "Stop the gay." I mean, I think we should allow some gay. You know, just a bit of gay. Let it seep in. See what happens. Spice things up. S class may be the best class, but A team reigns supreme overall. A team for life. Oh. Hell yeah! I oh. saw that one go by. Uh, Maybe. Patrick Willems, pot man, pot turtleneck, all cringe. Pot <laughs> man, pot turtleneck, all cringe. I like that. I mean, it's an honest take, you yeah. uh, Any fans of the show Dan vs. The Creators are trying to revive it? Look up Dan vs. Revival to see how to help. I have no idea what that is. But I, you know, yeah, good luck I've, to fans I have no of that clue. show. It doesn't ring any bells. Uh, oh my god, yes, Rags on S and A talking about Vorsh is better than Endgame. Well, that's not, that's not, you know, oh Endgame was alright. <laughs> Sounds like he wants you to come on tomorrow. Mm. Uh, out of context, EFAP quotes, you'll get your money when you fix this and then end with door. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember right. that. Yeah, that was funny. I regret nothing. That's not even one of those out of context, but we'll never forget that one. That was a good moment. The right? whole point is that it was absurd, yeah. yes. Um, this is, he, he, yeah. Fuck. I died. Uh, hey, I was wondering what you guys think of Neil Gaiman's Sandman. He's one of my favorite authors, and I've always been curious how it actually, how good it actually is. What do you guys think? Is it, is it, is its weakest and strongest parts? I have not read it. Neither have I. Adam, it's up so, to you. Yeah. I've read it. Sorry, guys. God damn it! Yeah. One reason I brought you on the show. Bullshit! I, I, you told I, me I didn't have to read anything. Ten weeks ago, <laughs> I, I said read Neil Gaiman's Sandman. 
<laughs> if you oh, don't yeah. know, fuck you up. Evidently, I'm supposed to read between the lines here. Yeah, you it was in the, the subtext. Actual, the actual yeah. message was, no, you don't need to read anything. Fuck me, I killed myself twice with Donkey Kong? I don't deserve Donkey Kong. I've heard good things about Sandman, though, as the comic, yes. I have heard good mm. things. I'm gonna play classic mode now until we until we get to the end. We are we are coming to the end. Um, dude. so soon. I know, right? Uh, oh wow. Out of context. Oh wait, I read that one already. Patrick had hmm. his chance. <laughs> True. That's quickly becoming a, a great little <laughs> meme. Some, yeah. Fill in the blank had its chance. Yes. Patrick had his chance for what though? That's kind of it, right? Oh, you you fill in that blank yourself. Glory. Um, is how that is that video? popular <laughs> that's just like it's kind of crazy to me you can never really figure that stuff out sometimes you know youtube is just a strange beast it is the puppets... here watch this wait sorry what that's what youtube says here watch this oh, watch yeah. this It'll rot your brain but watch it <laughs> you'll love it i swear the puppets in team america will police are better actors than gal gadot better action scenes too oh Oh, such hot, hot takes from Swatha, the Duke of Wellington. Um, I mean, yeah, you know, they, they just have so much more emotional range. I'm sorry. Yeah. It was a lot more entertaining, too. They'd really string you along with those jokes. Oh. Oh, Ooh, dun, dun. <laughs> uh, how is WandaVision so far? Hi, everybody, but rags. Oh. oh fuck wow. Hi. Nice question. Hi. Um, I have not seen episode That's six fine. yet. Getting there. I need yeah, to um, to watch it. Um, it started out strong with the first two episodes, then the third was, uh, it, it's just kind of all been downhill since the second. Oh, glad, I'm glad to hear that. I'm losing Are interest you? as time goes on, unfortunately. Well, I, I yeah. think I watched like, episode two or something, and I hadn't watched episode one, and it was just kind of, eh. So... And now I'm seeing ads for it everywhere, and people are people really into it, or are people into it because they're supposed to be into it? Um, I think people mostly really like it, from what I've seen of okay. general takes. I I need to see it all, honestly, and then I can give a way better understand. I might even need to rewatch it if we do like an EFAP for it, just going over all of it. But I'm worried right now, and I'm not happy mm, with a lot of the yeah. choices they've made. Um, but I'm you yeah. know I'll check it all out, obviously. I, I hope it'll be better. I was disappointed by the lack of decapitations in the yeah, episode of, that of I saw. Of course, yes. That was the main issue. It, it would be, it, if it was rated R, it'd be good. Yeah. No disemberment, no disembowelment, nothing good. I hate it when the bowels remain connected to the person. <laughs> it's just wrong. What the hell? Ban it, ban it, ban it. Oh boy. Um... Scientists think a T-Rex penis was around 12 feet long. Wow. 12 feet? <laughs> wow. I mean, I don't know about that. I don't I don't believe I don't I don't know about that. Right, you just have to believe. Like a, Come on. No, I Okay, so for reference, the basketball hoop is 10 feet from the ground. That plus a fifth. No. <laughs> I don't believe that. If yeah. you said it's a it, like if you said a whale, I'd be like, okay, I could believe a whale has a twelve inch donger, but a T Rex, I do not believe. Dude, I just did like a legendary throw just then. But also, I fully believe it, and I believe that the creature was mainly just penis. Like the rest of it was sort of. <laughs> it's just a penis with two <laughs> tiny arms. Yeah. Now the two tiny arms make sense, right? Exactly. It's like they don't oh, need to it do wasn't that. even a, it wasn't even like a reptile it was just a big penis this was like the missing link Walking but in around. dinosaurs it's like oh we understand it now context thank goodness uh no way the t-rex was as smart as a chimp i don't even think they were as smart as the smartest birds primates are op smart no lizard brain no way, birds are completely smart. Birds yeah, are I thought birds smart. Were super birds smart are well. pretty smart, yeah. Birds have shown a lot of intelligence, yeah. 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 Some birds are really smart. Do you uh, know where intelligence comes from? You know how they measure it? It comes from a penis? No, it's a <laughs> surplus brain capacity. Like you, It takes a certain amount of brain capacity to run your body, and you have... Just so, so they have can't a, breathe. They well, they, they have a metric where they measure your body weight and the size of yeah. your brain. And if the size of your brain is bigger than 
enough that you need to run your body. It's that surplus brain capacity. And birds have it like in spades, even though they have tiny brains. Because mm. they're such lightweight bodies. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, everyone, if you want to get smarter, lose some weight. There you go. There you go. That's the point that's Adam was works. making, 100%. Yeah, I'm glad you should. Yeah, that's the yeah. more that's the moral of the story yeah. that I got. Now we have a logical reason to fat shame people. Yay! So I can believe that like certain dinosaurs were smart because you know dinosaurs became birds essentially. Um, well, I don't. So. I don't know. But this, if that's yeah. true, dinosaurs would have to be super dumb because they had huge, gigantic bodies and very tiny brains. So well, I doubt. Someone said T Rexes were smart. So maybe, I mean, and besides, maybe not all brains work exactly the same. Maybe he no, had a big old chungus brain. You don't know. Yeah, maybe the, they had big old brains in their head. I don't believe it for one second wow. now. I'm, told. I'm, I'm yeah. canceling you for being a dynacist. Dig it. Yeah. Unacceptable. Bone, <laughs> bone tomahawk lunchbox of guy upside down scene. Yeah, I feel like that's going to be inappropriate for a kid. But, you know, what do I know? Kids these days, they have opinions. Um, speaking of AI, oh yeah, I read that one out. Can we get your take on Major Sam music video? They're like two to four minutes long, History Plus music. I, I don't have any context or idea what that's about. Major Sam music video. No idea. Uh, Rags, we need our fun fact and all Bible verse of the day. Oh yeah, let me get my uh, fun fact book. Nearby. Oh wow! All right. Yeah, you, you, it's, it's just such All a variety right. on the EFAP stream, you know. Uh, Can't wait. Mm -hmm. What's it about? What's the fun fact of the day? Let me get Is a good about one here. Intelligence. Let's see. Um... How many F words you can use in a movie without getting an R rating? What is it? Tell us. I'm dying. Here. Very good one. I guess if you needed to know, a dime has 118 ridges around the edge. Hey. Oh my god. Well, well. That'll blow your mind. Yeah. About can... that. Oh, okay. This is a good one. Three of the first five U.S. presidents, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, and James Monroe, died on July the 4th. I've heard Whoa. that from somewhere else. Yeah. It was, uh, I remember someone mentioning it's fucking crazy. It's... Whoa. And I'd... one more fact about James Madison. Uh, the fourth president of the United States. He stood only five feet, four inches tall and weighed less than 100 pounds. Whoa. Well, Ooh. James was a little guy. He's a little, little pres, little, 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 little pres twiglet. Little, little pres boy. Pres lad. He was, a, he was, a, he was one of our founding midgets. <laughs> founding midgets. All right. Um... Mubes, would you consider EFAP movies soul? It's tism me. I saw the um the quickie review from YMS. It seems disappointing that uh the new soul movie in terms of like nothing makes any sense in terms of how the afterlife rules work, but um Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh possible. Oh, certainly no promise on that one. Uh where are we? You're, you primarily focus on writing when criticizing media, correct? Yeah, pretty much. We, we're very into the writing more so than anything, but we'll definitely mention other elements here and there. Also, what was your final rating for Iron Man 3, and would it change if you factor in things like acting, special effects, etc.? Um, yeah, well, I mean, they would probably matter ultimately, right? But, like, um, I usually try and to, to level the playing field... Uh, I want to focus on talking about like the writing rating and um, that's why we're often very dismissive when it's like oh the special effects were amazing it's like yeah they had lots of money that's true uh, seems unfair sometimes that's all but um, Iron Man 3's rating I don't even know I can't even tell you what it is because I need to see it again it's been a while I just I remember a lot of what I didn't like about it but I'm not sure where I would place it on the scale uh, have you guys watched Kung Fury? If so, some thoughts? If Hell not... yeah, oh my god, I love Kung Fury. Yeah, I've definitely seen it. I can't remember when the last time I did, though. It's been a while. but um... I watched it recently. The The Kung Fury feature-length movie was supposed to come out la oh, this year, I believe. Hmm. Seems like I looked it up recently, and it was like in post-production. So, any day now. It's got Arnold Schwarzenegger in it. Oh. What about Blind Fury? Oh, that's uh, Rutger Howe, right? Yeah. 
legendary movie. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, it's good shit. I like it a lot. And uh, if not, I truly believe it would make a good EFAP movie that is short and free on YouTube high rags. Hey. I mean, yeah, that could happen at some point. Um, Oi, Molly. What, what is that? Hmm? You like watch it or something together? Is that what he's talking about? Yeah, we have like a series where we just watch movies and react to them and stuff. Oh, Get cool. chopped up to protect from copyright. As you do. You still haven't seen uh, uh, Hardcore Henry. No, we have. Yeah, we have. Oh, you you have? Okay. Last there's time an, I was on, a, you hadn't seen it there's yet. There's an EFAP movies on it now. If you search EFAP Hardcore Henry, you can watch us watch it and react to it and talk about it. Yeah. 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 Crazy. I lined it up on a call in stream and our, our we call in stream got yeeted. I didn't know. Yes. We are merciful. Uh, Oi, Morley, when's the Shadow Ooh. Fap happening? Hi, Adam. Um, I am not against it happening whenever. It's just a matter of finding the right topic and the right time for all of the Shadow people. Uh, Do it. If you haven't seen Band of Brothers, you guys really should. I swear the only thing wrong with that series is the damn long intro. I have seen Band of Brothers. It's very good. Either of you guys seen it? No, I have not. Band of Brothers? Band of Brothers, yeah. It's a mini-series. Not... Not the show, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the show. I ha I haven't seen the show. Oh. Yes. Well, yeah, uh, it's a good recommendation. Chicken Run, but it's Rocky being anti-Semitic. <laughs> okay. I mean... Yeah, we, we wouldn't have fight if it wasn't... Oh, you mean Rocky the Rhode what? Island Red, not Rocky Rocky's <laughs> and Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. Never mind. Carry on. Hey, I can understand how the mistake was, was made. I was going to say something about the Jews and his voice, but it doesn't even make sense anymore. So don't worry about it. Uh, Adam and Sitch for EFAP movies, please. Oh, my God. Uh, I'm not against that idea. I guess we could probably find a movie you guys to watch with us, if you want to. The yes, Wonder Woman 1984 is a great intro. Um, well, we've already done that for <laughs> EFAP movies, I'm afraid. So. Did you, have you really? Oh, my God. Yeah. Hell yeah, man! That movie is incredible. You know, there's so much to talk about in terms of. There is a lot to talk majesty. about, definitely. Well, um, that is us caught up. We did it. Sweet. Um, Thanks for wow. having me on, man. Well, before we say such goodbyes, Adam, why don't you uh, why don't you talk a bit about that, 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 that? Everything you're up to these days. Why should people subscribe <sighs> to you? What channel do you even wish to promote? If you would only one, is is it your combo channel? Yeah, that's tough. Because last time I was here, I was like, yeah, I I think I pimped my short film, which I don't know. It seems like nobody watched it, so Aww. maybe I won't. I have to have a short film, Carjackers for Jesus. You guys should check that out. There you go. Fun, tons of hilarity. Yeah, a movie, Carjackers for Jesus. How could you go wrong with that? So, oh, but obviously, yeah. uh, the PSA Sitch on Daily Channel is a channel that i'm on once a week with sitch we do long form stuff like this uh i someone called me out for for lying about us being at show 126 i think we're at show 122 so ah. we're, we're nipping at the heels this year we're gonna pass them up we're gonna do a couple show two shows in one week and we're gonna beat them we're gonna beat you guys so well but i do that and uh obviously we have the comic so yeah. Super Villains Anonymous that I wrote with PSA Sitch. So, and once, um, one, I'm super excited because once we send it out, then we get your feedback. You guys can love it, hate it, and you can, you can savage it. I think it's amazing. Tell you I think to it's never great. write in this town again, kiddo. Having, having a writing partner does help though, because it, it, you do have, like, Sitch will tell me if what I'm writing is garbage, and I'll tell Sitch what he's writing. I've told him many times, this is garbage. We need, this has to be better. So, it is, it is super helpful, but you'll get to see our writing chops. If you want to see my writing chops, uh, Social Justice Detective is a short film that I made. Uh, you, like, YouTube is not about short, these short films. I am very much from a filmmaker background, so I would love to do short films, but it's just really not. You can't do that on YouTube. People are not that interested in them. Man, you, well, you I, I, should totally do more um, video essay coverage on YouTube at, the, th at this point. With your interest, it's like, oh, there's so much to... Like, I mean, me and Rags have been doing this now for... I've con I contemplated doing that. 
I've contemplated doing that, but I don't, it just, these, all these videos are so much work. It's so much easier just to sit on a live stream and gab with you guys. <laughs> like, hey, you know what? It creates some interesting conversation about Ryan, you know? And that's what we're in it for. They're all vehicles. These people say really strange things. And then you're like, essays. Hey, yeah, what, what do we think on these topics? Creates all the funsies. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you can check, check that stuff out. That's enough shilling for me. What's up? What's next? What's next? Oh, we got a couple more that are coming. Uh, Mola Gay, of course. 100%. Uh, toy Story, but they reanimate Sid into a toy to save him from Sid's, and he has a breakdown. Also, Rocky would call Ginger an oven dodger. Oven <laughs> <laughs> dodger. Like Chicken Run R rated is, 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 is really just it's getting pretty edgy, you know? We have Sonic to get in there. Do you. You, do you oh, avoid out. politics on this channel? Is it wrong of me to ask that? Or? Sort of, a little bit. If, when it pops up, it you pops up. To. Well, we avoid it like... It's... We, we try to stick to writing. It's like the main one. But any tangents that are yeah. semi or vaguely relevant, we're not going to like yeah, be like, Oh, God, we can't feeling? possibly talk about... You know, it's like, yeah, it's okay. Well, I, I'm ju I just... I, I did remember I'm doing like a weekly show with a friend of mine who's a total like woker than woke... Um, documentary filmmaker and i've been doing he he asked me to red pill him which i don't you know i don't believe you can change people's minds but i thought it would be interesting just to have conversations with him because he he definitely seems you to be in the progressive bubble minds? you don't think you can change I, people's people minds? have to change their own minds yeah i don't think you can i don't think you well, can change get the people's minds i think sometimes somewhere. i was gonna say like surely well, people can be influenced by you i do i do agree there but if like it's very difficult to change someone's mind unless they're it's a team thing they have to be on board with it don't you think i mean i i think that mm. element's super important but at the same time if they are set in ways because of information and then you make them aware that that information is faulty yeah but most of the time people don't accept that new information because it completely destroys their worldview can happen Which, yeah, this, this is do. This is why this is why I'm I'm saying it. So uh, we've been uh, we've done we did one today. We I've done like eight talks with him, and people seem to be pretty furious about the talks. But they it's like a train wreck. They can't necessarily look away. So your audience might be interested in that if they want to check it out. If they're looking oh, for yeah. content, this is the thing. Yeah. Everybody in this audience has probably got political views. <laughs> they might yes, even consume yeah, yes, political content, yeah. and this is some of the stuff that, you know, who knows? So, yeah, you can... Uh... That That's on my Adam Friended channel, yeah. I know I have there a million go. channels, but that's on my Adam Friended channel. It's, uh, like, Red Pill. It's, like, crazy SJW Red Pill, like, conversations or something like that. Fair I enough. titled them differently every time. I'm definitely not trying to cater to the algorithm, so... Um... Toy Story Schindler's List edition. I don't, I don't. I don't think they ever made that edition. But I'm certainly not against it in concept. You know, you gotta Siddler's let artists list. really experiment. Uh, caught up? Ha! I still have four billion dollars to send. Hi, Rags. Hello. Feel free. Four billion dollars. Yeah. Happy birthday, Raggleton. Yeah, go for it. Oh ha! I'm gonna say it again. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Happy birthday to you too. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we are caught up. And, uh, yeah, I guess we, you know, uh, for anybody who didn't know, we've already uploaded another EFAP yesterday to Moolah. It was, um, it was a bonus FAP on the Man of Steel Twin Perfect video. If you aren't aware that that thing has happened, go check it out. That was episode 124. This was 125, I believe, which means we are officially halfway from 100 to 150. Ranks is officially two and a half years we've been doing EFAP. Wow. wow. Yeah. Impressive. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> There's always that gap <laughs> when you're having fun. I just had to remind myself how much mm -hmm. fun I was having. Sometimes it just blows you away and you forget. Absolutely. But yeah, thank you all so much for hanging out with us, for um, for the kind donations and for, well, you know, just interacting. It's been some good schisms. We will be back Hooray. on, well, I guess next Saturday. That's at least tentatively. Who knows what we're up to between then and then. Then and then, the, then and then and now, now and then. There then, you go. Words. Then and then. Okay. Then. Um. And yeah, thanks of course to Nerdrotic, Adam, and such. You guys, very, very, very good guests. We had lots of fun. Good topic. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, we had a good time. 
And I watched it all. Good for you, Butter <gasps> Anvil. He watched all of the episode. I'm glad you had fun. Nice. Yes. I watched. I didn't watch all the episodes. <laughs> Please, no more Filmento. <laughs> <laughs> but I think Butter Anvil has been watching my talks with Isaac as well too. He's ah. a prolific super chatter over there. I think Isaac drives him insane. Oh, yeah. Uh, again, thank you all for watching, and we will catch you next time. Good night, everybody, and goodbye. Oh uh, yeah. Take care. Good night, everyone. Thanks for showing up. See you later. Bye. Bark. <laughs>